Chapter 481 Ronely. Tell me, what will happen if there is news that someone has obtained magical time fragments? Lingji said, licking his lips, with a sinister flash in his eyes. This, Ling Yuan's eyes lit up when she heard this. If this news spread, I'm afraid she would get into all kinds of trouble. Let's go. Put these away, and we will spread the news. Lingji coveted Ji Yao's bracelet, which he was bound to get. The two of them dealt with the traces here and spread the news everywhere. Soon, many people knew that a female cultivator in red at the foundation building stage had obtained magical fragments. For a while, everyone's hearts were a little confused and many people had other ideas. Jia didn't know everything that happened now. She just kept looking for it in the long river of time. Along the way, she took the initiative to avoid people she met so as not to cause trouble. After all, she came to find pieces, not to fight. Brother Ronli, wait for Xiang Yu. A female voice suddenly came from the distance. Soon, a man and a woman appeared in front of Jia. Sure enough, there was another pair of handsome men and beautiful women. The man was wearing white clothes and had an impatient expression on his face. Walking in the direction of Ji Yao, the female cultivator, also wearing white clothes, was following the man anxiously. Ji Yao raised her eyebrows in surprise. The woman was already in the early stage of Golden Core, but the man was in the early stage of Foundation Establishment. This combination is really strange. After all, that man is now in his 40s and is only in the early stages of Foundation Building. He really can't be said to be a powerful person. On the contrary, that woman was in her 40s and in the early stage of Golden Elixir and was already considered a genius. Why do you care so much about that man? After all, in the world of immortality, strength is respected and women generally admire and admire those who are higher in cultivation than themselves. Romley felt extremely impatient when he heard Lu Xiangyu's voice. Such noisy chatter gave people a headache. Jia watched the two people approaching and was hesitating whether to avoid them directly. But the other party had already seen her. Ronli turned around impatiently and glared at Lu Xiangyu. When he turned around, he saw a stunning beauty in red standing in the distance looking at them. She just stood there quietly, turning everything around her into nothingness. Lu Xiangyu noticed that Ronli had stopped. And before he could be happy, he realized that Ronli was in a daze. Lu Xiangyu followed his gaze and saw Jia. His heart suddenly felt sour and astringent and his eyes were red. Jiyo had no intention of getting to know them and planned to leave directly. Ronli came to his senses and took a few steps closer to Ji Yao. I'm Ronli. I've met my Taoist friend. Ronli smiled and saluted Ji Yao with his fists raised. Lu Xiangyu hurriedly followed Ronli. She didn't say a word as she followed him, but just bit her lip tightly, looking at Reeb. Jiyo was a little helpless. She didn't do anything. Why did she feel like she had bullied others? On the seventeenth night, I met my Taoist friend. It was a chance encounter, and Jia didn't intend to say her real name. It turns out to be fellow Taoist Yi. Rong Li's heart beat faster when he heard that the beauty's voice was so beautiful. Yeah. Jia just nodded lightly. She didn't want to cause trouble for no reason. Especially for this kind of peach blossom debt. Didn't you see that the woman's head was getting lower and lower? I wonder if I can go forward with my Taoist friends. It just so happens that I have a certain understanding of this long river of time, which can save my Taoist friends from making many teachers. Ronli wanted to spend more time with the beauty. Chapter 482 The Breath of the Divine Beast Just as Jia was about to refuse, the voice of Xu Xu suddenly came from the Sea of Consciousness. He is in the early stage of the Golden Core and has hidden his cultivation. Jia was shocked when she heard this. She didn't expect to meet a person who had hidden his cultivation level, or even a large level. No need. I still prefer to be alone. So I won't disturb you two for now. She smiled, then turned away and walked forward. Boy, that little girl has a treasure on her. Rong Lijing felt a little pity when the senior in Dantian suddenly spoke. Baby? What baby? Rong Li's eyes lit up. If the senior said there was a baby, she would definitely have one. I don't know, but I can be sure that she must have a treasure on her body. Long Tian paused and then said, it's just that this girl is really strange. She can't see her luck at all. And the secrets are all blurred. And there is something evil about her. Romley raised his lips and smiled. The female cultivator was not only beautiful, but also extremely talented. She was at the peak of foundation building in her 20s. And even he could not compare with it at the beginning. Now he is still carrying the most precious treasure. Only such a person is worthy of him. 
after all, he will ascend to immortality in the future. Thinking of this, Rongli became more determined to chase Ji Yao. Lu Xiangyu looked up at Rongli aggrievedly, biting her lip and refusing to speak. She didn't dare to complain at all. She was afraid that if she spoke, he would annoy him and he would ignore her. Okay, I didn't do anything. You are destined to be sisters in the future. Can't you tolerate this? Rongli gently pinched Lu Xiangyu's face and teased. Lu Xiangyu suddenly blushed and nodded stupidly. Anyway, Brother Rongli now has his maid by his side. And there is Miss Lin who once saved him. Now one more one is not unacceptable. It's just that I feel aggrieved in my heart. When Rongli's brother turned from a genius to a cripple with his Dantian destroyed, he never gave up on him. Instead, he always supported him silently. But he still could only occupy a small position in his heart. But considering that Rongli's brother's talent is now even higher than before he was injured, she could only suppress this grievance. Brother Rongli is so outstanding. It is normal for him to have a few women around him. Didn't his father have many concubines besides her mother? As long as he has a place for himself in his heart, he will be content. Lu Xiangyu felt better thinking about this. Let's go! Rongli looked at Lu Xiangyu's changes and smiled. With his current talents and opportunities, they could no longer keep up. At most, they would be concubines in the future. As for Taoist companions, they must be able to walk side by side with him. Rongli glanced in the direction Ji Yao left and left with Lu Xiangyu. Beautiful girl, did that man just have any plans for you? The white fox had been quiet before because it felt a sense of oppression on the man. Huh? What have you been thinking about all day? Ji Yao rubbed by whose head in a funny way. I always feel that there is something wrong with the man just now. He seems to have the aura of a mythical beast. Bai Hu hesitated for a moment, but still expressed his feelings. The aura of the divine beast has a natural sense of oppression for them. Jia paused in her steps and looked at Bai Hu with some surprise. Mythical beast? Jia raised her eyebrows. Are mythical beasts so common nowadays? Chinese cabbage? Every person you meet has a mythical beast. My feeling shouldn't be wrong. Bai Hu also rarely became serious. Chapter 483 Arriving at the Five Seas Region in July that man is pretending to be a cultivated person. And he has suppressed such a high level of cultivation. He also has the aura of a divine beast on his body. It seems that he is not an ordinary person. Jiyu stretched out her hand to touch her chin and began to think seriously. Because mythical beasts are indeed rare. And they really require great luck to obtain. In addition, the Chiffon continent is sealed. And there is only one Suzaku in July in the original work. But now this is a real world and it is normal for this situation to occur. After all, novels can only describe a very small part of it. I think we should stay away from him. He was obviously uneasy about you just now. The white fox curled his lips. He had never seen anything like this before. He could see through this method of seducing a little girl at a glance. Well, if you meet Li Yuan in the future, just stay away. Jiyo nodded. That Rongli's posture also made her feel uncomfortable. Although he hid it well, Jia could still clearly feel the other person's hidden arrogance. And he always had a condescending air. With his appearance, he is not worthy of our beautiful girl. The white fox flicked his tail with some disdain. He was a pretty boy. And there were other women around him. He didn't like her. Hey, you finally said the right thing. Jia suppressed a smile after hearing this. She still agreed with this sentence. Looking at his attitude towards the woman. You can tell that he is not a good person. Let's go. I haven't found the fragments for so long. Ji Yao, with a headache, continued to search for the fragments with Bai Hu. These fragments of time are really rare. And she hasn't found another fragment after all this time. Five months later, Xia Chi Yua and the others finally arrived in the central domain. Master, let me send you to the Five Seas region first. Shang Guan Nanxian put away the spirit boat, flicked his sleeves and put Xia Chi Yua and Luo Chiuli into his sleeve pockets. Tor opened the space and stepped in. It was not until three days later that the three came out of the space crack again. This is the Five Seas territory, which is very suitable for you. I will go to Songlong Realm as a teacher. Please be careful during this period, Shang Wan Nanxian said as he took out a few life-saving charms and handed them to Xia Chi Yue. This was all prepared by him for his apprentice some time ago. After all, there are many high-level monks in the central region and the most golden elixir monks. This is not the situation in the northern region. If she accidentally provokes someone, and she is not around and cannot come in time, she can only prepare these for her. Thank you, Master. Xia Chiyue took the life-saving charm and smiled warmly. 
the more she got in touch with her. She realized that her master was a person with a cold face and a warm heart, perhaps due to his spiritual roots and skills. He looked cold, but he was extremely dedicated to her and was a good master. Yeah! Shang Wan Nanxian nodded, turned around and tore open the space and left. In July, there are many golden elixir months here. Luo Chioli didn't dare to speak until she saw Shang Wan Nanxian leaving. Uncle Shang Wan was notoriously cold, and she didn't dare to take the initiative to talk to him. Xia Chiyue heard the words and looked forward. Sure enough, almost all the people coming and going here were golden core cultivators, and there were only a few foundation establishment cultivators. As expected of the central domain, the spiritual energy here is so rich. Luo Chioli smiled softly and looked at Chiyue. Well, let's go to the Five Seas region first. This is just the outer area. Xia Chiyue smiled back and took the lead to head towards the interior of the Five Seas region. Luo Chioli followed Xia Chiyue and said no more. She was full of expectations for these Five Sea areas. Chi Chi is now in the late stage of foundation building. But he is only in the middle stage of foundation building and still needs to work hard. Chapter 484 Trouble Xia on the other side was very distressed at this time. In the past few months, not only had she not encountered another time fragment, but she had also encountered several months robberies. As soon as she came up, she was asked to hand over some magical time fragment, which made her confused. When did she get the magical time fragment? Here we go again! Bai Hu sighed helplessly as he looked at the two middle-stage Jean Dan monks and a peak-level foundation establishment monk who appeared in front of him. It has almost forgotten which way this is. Why are these people so obsessed with it that they rush here to die? At this time, the golden elixir phase of the river of time is like cabbage. Everywhere. And it is always targeting beautiful girls. It was a little excited at first. But now it's numb. Chiyo felt helpless when she looked at the three people in front of her. She didn't want to cause trouble. She just wanted to understand the meaning of the sword. But these people always lingered. Old Bai, do you think someone is plotting against me behind my back? Is it the Romri I met before? Chiyo really couldn't figure out the reason. It was obvious that these people got some wrong information. One robbery was a coincidence. But if it happened so many times, someone must be up to something. And the only person she could think of was Rongli, whom she met before. Could it be that he deliberately spread the news? And then when someone robbed him, he came out as a hero to save the beauty? This grandson is too thief. The white fox's hair suddenly exploded. Thinking of this possibility, it wanted to beat that guy. TSK, when you say that, I think it's very possible. Jia nodded. This reason is quite reliable. After all, who made her so beautiful? It makes sense that someone wants to use this hero-saving method to pick up girls. Fellow Taoist in front. A rough voice interrupted the communication between Jio and Bai Hu. Zhongbin felt a little annoyed when he saw that the stunning female cultivator and Bai Hu opposite them didn't take the three of them seriously at all. Are the current foundation establishment disciples so arrogant? Or are all the disciples of these big families so arrogant? Is something wrong? Jia raised her eyebrows and asked lightly. Ha! Huh? Fellow Taoist, your tone is not very good. Chiyo Shizu laughed angrily at Ji Yao's arrogant attitude. Not only does he look better, but he is really a brainless idiot. When Ji Yao heard this, she smiled and glanced at the female cultivator at the peak of foundation establishment with an unclear expression. Sometimes, she would always receive inexplicable hostility from some female cultivators, which really made her a little upset. We are both female cultivators. Why bother making things difficult for each other? What are you looking at? Or do you think my two senior brothers will be fascinated by you? Hee <laughs> hee. We have never seen any beauties. In our Wanshan sect, there are many beauties. You can't even compare to a hair of Master Lu Lianxiu's uncle. Xiao Xiaosu couldn't stand the ways he didn't take them into consideration. But she felt a little sour in her heart. Sometimes, good-looking people always get preferential treatment. Jia was a little speechless. She didn't say anything. But the other party was so angry that she jumped up. But it seems that now her pretense skills are getting better and better. Sometimes it is this arrogant and fearless look that can always make her opponents underestimate them. This is a trick she has tried time and time again. As she continued to act, she became a little bit into the drama. But I didn't expect that the other party was actually a disciple of Wanshan sect. Isn't that guy Nangong Che from Wanshan sect? What do you want from me? I'm very busy. Jia pouted her lips deliberately, looking impatient. She was itchy at this time and wanted to hit someone. Chapter 485 Pretty Boy 
I heard that fellow Talist has obtained magical time fragments. And we brothers and sisters are going to borrow them for use. Zhang Bin raised the corner of his mouth and smiled sarcastically. As expected, he was another arrogant disciple of a big family. He has seen many such people. There is always a lot of praise from people around you. So you really think you are a powerful person? Oh! What if I don't want to borrow it? Jia looked at the three people opposite her, with her hands on her chest, looking down on each other. But in fact she was already ready to take action. Then don't blame us for being rude. Zhang Bin sneered and was about to attack with his spiritual sword in hand. Friend Yi Dao. At this moment, a somewhat familiar voice came. But in an instant, a white figure appeared in front of Jia. It was Rong Li who he had met before. Beautiful girl. You see what I said is right. It is indeed this boy's good deed. Bai Hu glared angrily at Rong Li's back while transmitting the message to Ji Yao. Ji Yao was also a little speechless. This is really. Brother Rong Li. Lu Xiang Yu also ran over quickly, stood beside Rong Li, and then turned back and smiled at Ji Yao. Ji Yao was stunned. Could this woman be a fool? The person she likes stands up for other women. And she still laughs at herself? Fellow Daoist Yi. Don't be afraid. As long as I'm here, they won't let them hurt you. Rong Li also turned around and comforted Ji Yu with gentle words. He had been observing for a while just now, and he deliberately found this time to come out to save the beauty, so that the other party would be grateful to him and fall in love with him. Ha ha! Ji Yu smiled awkwardly and rolled her eyes in her heart. She was not afraid. On the contrary, I am more afraid of him. Do you think we are dead? Xiao Xiaosu became even more angry when she saw another handsome male cultivator appear to stand up for Ji Yao. He's just a hero in the early stage of foundation building. But he's here to save the beauty? Boy, are you impatient? Zhang Bin's attack was interrupted. What kind of big shot did he think he was? The result is an early stage of foundation building. Are all the monks crazy now? Rong Li's face darkened when he heard this. His Dantian was destroyed and his path to immortality was cut off. From then on, his life was turned upside down, and he turned from a leeling genius to a useless person. Later, he finally got the opportunity to practice again, and he had to hide his cultivation level, so as to avoid the detection of those high-level monks. But these people are always short-sighted and always want to step on him when they see his low cultivation level. He was tired of feeling looked down upon. One day, everyone will bow at his feet. Those who follow others will prosper. Those who go against others will perish. I think you are the one who is impatient. Lu Xiangyu suddenly felt a murderous aura coming from her body. She took out her magic weapon and glared at Zhang Bin with murderous intent. Xiao was a little surprised. It turned out that this was not just a delicate girl. TSK, why are you so arrogant? It turns out you have a little girl covering you. Ha ha ha. You turn out to be a pretty boy who relies on women. Zhang Bin burst out laughing as he spoke. Senior brother Zhang, be careful of scams. Wu Lifeng warned. He had been standing by and didn't say anything before because he felt something was wrong with the situation. The people on the opposite side were all too calm. And it was obvious that they were not pretending to be calm. But really not worried. What are you cheating on? Are you cheating on this pretty boy? Zhang Bin didn't listen at all and was still laughing. Rong Li raised his head and glanced at Zhang Bin gloomily. Then disappeared from the place in a flash. Chapter 486 Headshot Ha! Huh. Zhang Bin was smiling happily, but suddenly stopped. He lowered his head in disbelief, trying to see what was happening to him. But he suddenly fell down. Rong Li succeeded in the attack and immediately turned back to Ji Yao. He took out a handkerchief and wiped his hands gently with an indifferent look on his face. Senior brother Zhang, Wu Linfeng and Chiu Xiuzu came to Zhang Bin in disbelief, helped him up, and found that he had fallen, and there was only a faint red mark on his neck. Wu Linfeng's heart tightened. He didn't see clearly how the male cultivator took action just now. And he actually killed Zhang Bin directly. At this time, Ji Yao was also very surprised. She didn't expect that Rong Li could teleport. Moreover, his cultivation level is higher than mine. And his teleportation speed is faster. I didn't see his move clearly just now. It seemed like he was a powerful character. You hid your cultivation. Wu Lifong put down Zhang Bin's body. Stood up and looked at Rong Li with a wary look on his face. The hand holding the spirit sword turned white. Rong Li just curled his lips and smiled. He liked to see these people's shocked faces after discovering his strength. Lu Xiangyu looked at Rong Li with admiration. And her heart was beating fast. My sister always said that she has no discernment. But now it seems 
that she is the most discerning person. Fellow Daoist Yi, how about I deal with these two people for you? Rongli showed his strength and looked at Ji Yao with a gentle look on his face. It's just that he originally expected to see her look of admiration. After all, he had just killed a middle-level Jean Dan with one move. But unexpectedly, what he saw when he turned around was her with an extremely calm expression. No need. I like to handle my own affairs by myself. Ji Yao refused with a cold expression. This man was a dangerous person, and she didn't want to have anything to do with him. Let alone owe him a favor. Rongli didn't expect to be rejected, and the smile suddenly froze on his face. Bai Hu looked on and snickered. Who allowed this boy to meet a beautiful girl? How could he need his help? Lu Xiangyu didn't expect Jia to refuse, and was a little surprised. Sister, Brother Rongli is very powerful. He can help you deal with him. You can't do it yourself. Lu Xiangyu tried to persuade Ji Yao. Ji Yao's forehead jumped. What the H? L is my sister. Sorry. I don't have a sister like you. Ji Yao spoke more directly. She really didn't like people like Lu Xiangyu. If you depend on a man, do you think others need you too? Moreover, Ji Yao found that the two people opposite her already wanted to run away. But they were still talking nonsense to her. Wasting time. Rongli looked at Ji Yao's ungrateful look. Not only was he not angry, but he became more interested in her. It's just a woman like this who will have a greater sense of accomplishment when conquering her. Right? Jia glanced at Lu Xiangyu indifferently, then turned towards Chiyo Shiosu who was about to escape, and punched her hard on the head. Poof! Chiyo Shiosu only had time to spit out a mouthful of blood before he fell completely, losing the breath of life. Bai Hu smacked his lips as he watched. The beautiful girl's body training was at the late stage of the Golden Core. It was not easy to deal with such a foundation-building stage. Ugh! Lu Xiangyu didn't expect Jia to be so cruel. He shot her head with one move and retched to the side. Rong Li's eyelids twitched when he saw it. He didn't expect that this beauty, who looked so delicate, could be so irritable. Chapter 487 Time Vortex Wu Linfeng didn't expect Ji Yao to be so fierce. He was startled and thought in his heart that there was something evil. Why did these people hide so deeply? Thinking of this, he ran away faster. And Ji Yao's choice of headshot was really deliberate. Such a simple and crude way will definitely scare Rongli. And he will not pester her again in the future. I just apologize to Chiyo Shiyusu in my heart for making her death more miserable. After getting rid of one of them, Ji Yao chased after Wu Lifeng who was escaping. Rongli and others quickly followed. Wu Lifeng tried his best to get rid of Ji Yao, but found that it was useless. The other party doesn't know what means he will use. After suddenly disappearing, he will move forward a lot and cling to him. Jia looked at Wu Lifeng who was not far away in front of him. She flicked her fingertips and threw a thunder ball formed by the Nine Heavens Divine Thunder at him. Bang! As Ji Yao's cultivation level increased, the power of the Divine Thunder also increased, directly wrapping Wu Lifeng and exploding with a bang. A strong aura of destruction came, forcing Rongli and others to stop. Rongli stared at Ji Yao's figure with an incomprehensible expression. Can this woman control the Nine Heavens Divine Thunder? He also has Thunder Spirit Roots. But now, he can only control Ordinary Thunder. The more he understands, the more he wants to get the other person. In the beginning, he was attracted by her appearance and qualifications. But now, he admires her a little. With such excellent conditions, it was a perfect match for him. After a while, the Divine Thunder gradually dissipated, revealing Wu Linfeng's tattered figure. At this time, his hair was completely disheveled and some of it was fried. His cassock was in tatters, and there was blood on the corner of his mouth. Wu Linfeng felt miserable because he was seriously injured. He hated those people who spread random information about what was called the Pika Foundation Establishment. This must also be hiding his cultivation level. My senior brothers and sisters will be killed by this bad news. If he knew she was so cruel, there would be nothing he could do to sway her. He still has a long road ahead, and he doesn't want to die yet feeling that Ji Yao continued to chase behind him. Wu Lifeng felt helpless, took out a few high-level blasting talismans, and threw them toward Ji Yao. Ji Yao was startled and immediately stepped back. The blasting talisman exploded completely, forming a small mushroom cloud that completely separated Ji Yao and Wu Lifeng. Wu Lifeng breathed a sigh of relief when he saw this, and was about to continue running away when he suddenly found a wolf exuding a destructive aura chasing him from behind. Wu Lifeng felt despair. He was undefended just now, and was seriously injured. If it happened again, he might really be blamed here. Thinking of this, he decided to take a gamble. 
step on the spiritual sword and run away into the distance in an instant. The mushroom cloud disappeared. And Jia saw Wu Lifeng flying in midair at a glance. She was about to catch up when something surprising happened to her. He was flying just fine. But a vortex suddenly appeared in front of him, swallowing him completely before he could react. Time vortex? Lu Xiangyu screamed and covered her mouth in disbelief. This was the first time she saw a time vortex. When Jia saw this, her heart sank. At this time, the whirlpool appeared mysteriously and did not give anyone any time to react. It appeared directly beside her. It was really hard to guard against it. No wonder Master has warned him several times not to let him fly with his sword. As the risk is too great. I'm afraid Wu Lin Feng didn't expect that he was so unlucky that he just happened to meet it. Once you enter the time vortex, it is almost impossible to come back. Chapter 488 Good Wife and Mother Beautiful girl! Is the whirlpool so scary at this time? The white fox came close to Ji Yao. A little scared. The whirlpool just came too fast. If it encountered it, it would definitely fall into it. Well, so remember not to fly. Ji nodded and warned Bai Hu seriously. I understand. The white fox agreed seriously, as it still cared about life-related matters. Fellow Daoist Yi, Rongli called Ji softly. He felt a little depressed at this time. And he really didn't expect things to develop like this. Now the hero's chance to save the beauty is gone. Fellow Daoist Rong. Jia responded calmly. She had been so violent before. So the other party should not harass her anymore. Right? I see that there are many dangers in the river of time at this time. And there are so many people who are interested in fellow Daoist Yi. How about we be companions for the rest of the time? We can also avoid a lot of troubles for fellow Daoist Yi. Rongli smiled slightly. Now Jiu is becoming more and more mysterious in his eyes. Sometimes cold. Sometimes rough. And sometimes gentle towards the white fox. He couldn't help but want to know more about her. Thank you, Daoist Rong. But I'm used to being alone. So I won't disturb you two more. Jiu quickly refused. She was crazy to join him. But I didn't expect that he would act so irritable. And he still planned to get together. I don't know what Anne's intentions were. Sister, look at how dangerous it was just now. If it weren't for Brother Rongli, you would definitely not end well. It's safer to be with us now than to be alone. Don't worry. I won't mind. Lu Xiangyu held back her heart. She opened her sour mouth to persuade Jiao that as long as Rongli's brother wanted to do something, she would be willing to find a way for him. Jiao's eyes widened when she heard this. And she looked at Lu Xiangyu in confusion. She is now 100% sure that there is definitely something wrong with this girl's brain. Is this the 24 filial wife and beloved mother? I told you. I'm not your sister. Jiyo felt uncomfortable with Lu Xiangyu's eyes. Is this person forcing herself to make things worse? Touch yourself series? Jiyo was speechless. If her man dared to eat from the bowl and look at the pot, she would kill him. Even if you can't kill him now, you must practice hard to kill him in the future. Unlike this little fool. He was just brainwashed. It will happen sooner or later in the future. Lu Xiangyu forced a smile. Why didn't she hope that she would be the only one beside her brother Rongli? But he was so good that this was impossible. And she didn't dare to hope. Rongli was very satisfied with Lu Xiangyu's performance. Only with such a generous woman can everyone get along well with each other in the future. But after all, Lu Xiangyu still treated him a little differently. As a direct disciple of the Lu family, he never left him when he was at a low point. No matter how many women he has in the future, she will be a very important one among them. It's not like his former fiancé, who fell into the arms of others after he became a useless person, and even made all sorts of sarcastic remarks about himself. I wonder if she will regret it when she finds out her true strength. Ha ha. I'll leave first. Ji really couldn't stand Lu Xiangyu anymore. The look of him sacrificing himself to help others really made her sick. After Ji Yao finished speaking, she quickly ran away without waiting for their reaction. She was really afraid that she would teach her a lesson if she couldn't help it. I really want her to wake up. Chapter 489 Waiting for Others Rongli didn't expect Ji Yao to leave immediately, and finally couldn't maintain the smile on her face. And her face became gloomy. Could it be that the other party also looks down on his own cultivation? Even if he could kill the Golden Core cultivator instantly? Brother Rongli, my sister is still young and just ignorant. Don't be angry. Lu Xiangyu grabbed Rongli's arm and comforted her softly. As soon as Rongli lowered his head, he saw Lu Xiangyu's affectionate and worried eyes, and a warm current flashed through his heart. He slowly lowered his head, pressed a kiss on Lu Xiangyu's lips, and then gently pinched her cheek. Fool, 
Lu Xiangye's face turned red instantly. His heart was beating wildly, and his whole head was almost buried in the ground. This was the first time that Rongli's brother was so close to her. At this time, her mind went blank, and she only felt that she was the happiest woman in the world. Beautiful girl! How did that grandson do it? I will be able to coax my little fox sisters from now on. The two of them had already walked some distance away, and the white fox couldn't help but speak. It now somewhat admires that boy for how he deceived that woman into fooling around and was still willing to do so. Hey, you also want to have a harem. She grabbed the back of its neck with a half smile and lifted it up. Hey, I was just kidding. Just kidding. Bai who immediately admitted his mistake pitifully. If I find out in the future that you deceived the little fox sister's feelings, I will. Ji said as she looked around the white fox with an inexplicable expression. Bai who trembled at Ji Yao's eyes and hurriedly assured him. I am the young master of Phantom Fox. How could I do such a thing? Ha! Huh? Jia sneered and put down the white fox. This guy is still young, so he can't let him learn bad things. It seems that I will educate them more if I have nothing to do in the future, including those little guys. Don't let them grow crooked. Hee <laughs> hee. Bai Hu smiled awkwardly and jumped up to Ji Yao. After all, it was too embarrassing to be mentioned, and it still wanted to save face. Jia looked at its back, shook her head, smiled, and followed. You're Nandong Ryu I came to Wan Shan Sek star picking peak and saw Nandong Yu sitting on Wan Tian Song playing chess alone. A flash of heartache flashed in Nandong Ryu's heart. Because of her martial arts skills, Yu had no friends since she was a child, and she never understood what happiness and sadness were. The only thing she had was the responsibility of the family. His life is gray without any color. If it weren't for a chance to ascend, and for their Nanong family, you wouldn't have endured this. Maybe he will be as wanton in the world as Xiao Che. Auntie. Nangong Yu raised his head and responded calmly. Songwang Realm appeared recently. Why didn't you join in the fun? I heard that your master and master Jian Song both went there. Nangong Ryu felt a little embarrassed when she thought of Jian Song. Waiting for someone. Nangong Yu continued to lower his head and began to think about the chess game. Waiting for someone. Nangong Ryu was a little surprised when she heard this. When would her nephew be waiting for someone? She came and sat down opposite Nandong Yu and found a sensing jade placed on the right side of the chessboard. Whose is this? Nandong Ryu was a little curious and was about to pick it up and take a look. But the thing was suddenly put away by Nandong Yu. Master gave it to me. Nandong Yu always spoke briefly. And Nandong Ryu didn't feel any difference. But I don't know who is on the other side of this sensing spirit jade? Chapter 490 Ice and Snow World the sensing jade is originally a pair, divided into one yin and one yang, mainly used to sense the position of the other one. Who are you waiting for? Nangong Ryu's Bagua soul burned. Lord Qin Shen actually gave you this thing. I don't know. Hey, there is a strange cave here. The white fox was looking for time fragments, but suddenly found a very small cave. Oh. Shiyu heard the voice and quickly came over. Taking a closer look, I found that there was indeed a cave in the corner here. To be precise, it is not called a cave, but a dog cave would be more appropriate. Originally it was just a hole, and it would not arouse the white fox's idea. The main thing is that there are wisps of white smoke coming out of this small hole. It's so cold! The white fox put his head to the entrance of the cave, and was immediately infected by the cold air, shivering. When it took its head back, a head of frost had already condensed on it. The white fox shook his head vigorously before throwing Bing Shuang down. Jiu used her spiritual consciousness to explore into the cave. But she was suddenly frozen when she got close. Hiss! Jiu hurriedly took back her consciousness. At that moment, her consciousness was almost frostbitten. It seems there is a big treasure here. The white fox's heart became restless at this time. It has been searching for a year in the long river of time. And it has not found even a hair. Now it finally met a treasure. Which made its my heart felt itchy. Well, there may be a lot of mystery inside. But how do you get in? Jia frowned and looked at the cave. Suddenly, a flash of light flashed. And Jia took out two earth escape talismans from the storage ring. This was given to him by Uncle Chin. There are all kinds of talismans. As well as life-saving things, like the thousand mile escape talisman. Let's try to see if we can get in. Jia first put down the formation discs around to cover the place. And then attached the talismans to herself and the white fox respectively. Let's go! As soon as Jiyo finished speaking, 
one person, and one fox disappeared from the place. However, more than ten breaths of time passed before Zhiyao and Bai Hu appeared in the cave. Hiss! The white fox shuddered as he looked at the ice and snow world in front of him. How could there be such a place in the long river of time at this time? Zhiyao was a little surprised when she saw the scene in front of her. The cave was actually a world of ice and snow. This cave covers a very large area, and Zhiyao can only see a small part of it at a glance. All the flowers, plants and trees are covered with frost, and the river has long been frozen. But you can see fish swimming under the ice. But other creatures were never found again. Zhiyao used her spiritual power to wrap herself up, and the cold feeling suddenly eased a lot. Let's be careful. The river of time is so vast, and there are so many months at this time. It's impossible for us to just discover this place. It's not that Gio is not confident, but she knows that she is not so lucky. This place has either been explored by others a long time ago, or it has just appeared, and not many people have discovered it yet. If it's the latter, I'm afraid more people will find out one after another. After all, even a very nervous fox like Bai who can find out, let alone other monks. There are likely other entrances. Ha ha! This kind of good thing finally happened to me. The white fox shook a little, while using his spiritual power to keep out the cold. Its luck is not much better than that of a beautiful girl. It has never encountered any good things since it came out of the fox clan. Now it finally encountered this legendary opportunity. This made her burst into tears. Chapter 491 Ice Insect Gia knocked the white fox on the head to remind it to avoid getting into trouble later. Let's go in and take a look. Gia added a few defensive talismans to herself and by who? Took out Li Yuan and walked towards the depths with a wary expression. Boy, there is a problem here. Rong Li was searching for time fragments in the long river of time. When the voice of senior Long Tian suddenly came from his Dan Tian. What's the problem? Rong Li stopped and looked at the wall in confusion. But didn't find anything wrong here. There is something wrong with this wall. The spiritual consciousness cannot penetrate. Long Tian has never seen anything like this. This is the only area where the spiritual consciousness cannot penetrate. There must be something wrong. Brother Ronli, what's wrong? Seeing Ronli suddenly stop walking, Lu Xiangyu came to the wall in confusion and looked at Ronli in confusion. Ronli didn't answer. He just observed the wall carefully, then stretched out his hand and began to explore it. He tried it just now, but his spiritual consciousness really couldn't penetrate it. Hey, Brother Ronli, look here. Does it look like the jade talisman you bought in Fonshire before? The patterns are the same. Lu Xiangyu found a tiny groove under the corner of the wall and looked at Rong with excitement. Li said. Rong Li raised his eyebrows when he heard this, squatted down and looked at the groove, and there was indeed a strange pattern inside. He took out the jade charms he had found in the market from his storage ring, compared them carefully, and found that the patterns were indeed exactly the same. Rong Li curled his lips and smiled. He had seen this thing in the market before, although it had no aura at all. There was a voice in the dark reminding him to buy it. Unexpectedly, its use is here. It seems that my current luck and opportunity have really come. Thinking of this, Rongli became more confident about his future. After all, there is no one else but him who can be a blessing in disguise and practice again after his Dantian is destroyed. Be careful. Rongli warned Lu Xiangyu and carefully placed the jade talisman in the groove. Crack! Just as the jade talisman was put in, the wall suddenly made a crisp sound and something broke above it, casting a white light and covering the two of them. Suddenly, the two people disappeared from the place. Beautiful girl! Look! By who pointed forward and yelled. Gia looked along and found a frozen monk. It was a male cultivator in the early stage of the golden elixir. At this time, he was standing upright, completely wrapped in ice, like an ice sculpture. His eyes were wide open, and there was a small hole in the center of his forehead with a trace of blood underneath. He is dead. Gio observed carefully and confirmed that he was dead. Is this person frozen to death? Or? By who looked around cautiously. There were actually people here. Maybe there were others around. It feels like he was killed by something. Gio looked at the hole on his forehead seriously and remembered that there was a kind of monster called the Ice Worm recorded in the classics. This kind of monster is only about the size of a thumb and it mainly appears in the ice and snow. They are best at hiding their bodies, and their attacks are hard to guard against. They always pop up suddenly to suck people's souls. If you accidentally get a little bit of it, your soul will be sucked away, and you will perish. Be careful. I suspect there is a soul-sucking monster here. 
Jiyo approached the white fox and tied a bell around its neck. This is a magic weapon to resist attacks from spirits. Chapter 492 Ice Sculpture The white fox shook his head, and the bell made a crisp sound. You are the young master of the fox clan. How can you wear something like this for a pet? The white fox curled his lips, looking dissatisfied, but did not take it off. TSK. That's true. You are the young master. This is not appropriate. Presumably the monster will not attack you. Besides, even if it attacks you, it will only eat your soul at most. So it won't be a problem, Ji Yao said, reaching out to untie the bell. No, 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 no. For the sake of your hard work, I will just wear it for a while. Bai Hu quickly stretched out his paw to cover the bell, fearing that Ji Yao would really take it away. Really? Then I'm really touched. Ji Yao glanced at the white fox with a half smile, stopped teasing it, and began to explore around. It is recorded in the classics that wherever there are ice worms, there will most likely be ice spirits. Ice spirits, like fire spirits, are spiritual creatures of heaven and earth formed spontaneously between heaven and earth, and are priceless. If you can find it, the trip will be well worth it. When the white fox saw that Ji Yao had dealt with it, it put away its claws and looked around. It was just worried that some monster would swallow its soul, and the whole fox looked wretched. Ji Yao occasionally turned around and saw the white fox hunched over with its eyes wandering around, which really made her laugh. What a living treasure. Brother Ronli, why is there a statue here? Lu Xiangyu pointed excitedly at the huge ice sculpture in front of him and grabbed Ronli's sleeve with one hand. Ronli raised his head and glanced at the statue, then felt a turmoil in his soul, with a faint intention of leaving the body. Ronli was startled and immediately stabilized his mind and began to look at the statue in front of him. This is an ice sculpture of a male cultivator holding a trident in his hand and wearing a jade crown. Looking toward the sky. Let's go over and have a look. Rongli took Lu Xiangyu close to the statue and soon arrived in front of it. The two of them were only as tall as the calf of the statue. Rongli looked up and saw the two words, Bingli, engraved on the trident in the statue's hand. This must be the name of this trident. Rongli stretched out his hand and touched these two words gently. His! Rongli suddenly gasped because his finger was suddenly broken, and blood was sucked in along the two words. Brother Ronli, Lu Xiangyu was startled, seeing the blood being sucked away by the ice sculpture. He looked at Ronli anxiously, and wanted to pull his hand away. It's okay. Ronli was a little surprised at first, but now he was a little excited, because as his blood flowed into the trident, he felt as if there was a slight connection with this thing in his mind. Lu Xiangyu stood aside, and was a little worried because the ice sculpture was still sucking blood, and Brother Rongli's face had begun to turn pale. At this time, Rongli felt worse and worse. The blood was flowing away too fast, and his head was already a little dizzy. But his intuition told him that he must not give up. Otherwise he would definitely regret it. Relying on this belief, he has persisted. Finally, when he was about to collapse, the ice sculpture stopped sucking blood. Rongli fell backwards. Lu Xiangyu quickly protected him, and stuffed the pill into his mouth. At this moment, the ice sculpture that had absorbed the blood suddenly erupted with a strong white light, which stung the two of them and quickly closed their eyes. The entire ice and snow world began to shake. Chapter 493 The Secret Realm Appears Ji Yao and Bai Hu were digging at ice spirit grass when suddenly the entire ice and snow world shook violently, startling them both. Ji Yao immediately took out a defensive spirit bell from the storage ring and placed it on the heads of one person and one fox. She held the yuan and looked around cautiously. This movement was so similar to when the death forest collapsed that Jia was a little worried. But the whole shaking lasted for about a quarter of an hour and then stopped. And there was no change at all. Jia waited patiently for a while. And then she put the bell away after making sure it wouldn't shake anymore. Beautiful girl. Was there an earthquake just now? Bai Hu widened his eyes curiously and looked around. I don't know. But it must have something to do with this ice and snow world. Jiyo has been here for a day and has only explored a small area so far. But this small area always made her feel that it was a man-made place. It's very much like a certain senior's territory. However, the area of the area is really wide, which is impossible for ordinary people to do. So Jiyo is not sure. I suddenly felt a little evil. The white fox shuddered. After the shaking ended, it felt a pair of eyes staring at itself. But it looked around and saw nothing unusual but I felt very uncomfortable in my heart. Mao Mao. Yeah, I think so too. 
Jia just noticed a sense of peeping, but it disappeared again in just a moment, leaving her a little confused. But now that we're here, there's no reason to give in. Let's go and see if we can have better luck meeting the ice spirit. Jiyu calmed down. If someone really peeps, since she doesn't dare to come out openly, then there is no need. Worry too much. Either the other party is not malicious, or he is malicious but cannot take action for some reason. As long as he is careful, there will be no problem. Then let's go! Bai Hu is not in the mood to laugh now, and continued to follow Ji Yao deeper despite the numbness in his scalp. At this time, the river of time was in chaos, and all the monks became restless. Just now, the whole time was shaking, and then a five-color glow rose into the sky, attracting everyone's attention. After the shaking ended, a secret realm appeared in the long river of time. At this time, countless people crowded into the ice and snow world, and the news that a secret realm was born in the river of time spread quickly, and more and more monks came towards the river of time. Huh? Jiu breathed and rubbed her hands as they went deeper and deeper into the ice and snow world. The temperature became lower and lower. The spiritual power to keep out the cold has no effect, and she doesn't have a fire spirit or anything like that, so she can only suffer it for the rest of her life. I've been here for so long, but I haven't found anything except a few broken grasses. It's too poor here. The white fox's freshness has passed. It has been five days, and it has been gone for five days, apart from getting colder and colder and stepping on a few broken herbs here and there. They encountered nothing. Don't worry. It's still big inside. Ji rubbed her hands while observing a tree in the distance ahead. Such a lush and dense tree growing in a world of ice and snow. It looks weird no matter how you look at it. Is there a formation? Ji Yu suddenly became interested and took a few steps closer to observe carefully. There really is a formation. Ji Yu was a little surprised. There was actually a natural formation here, that completely isolated the big tree from the surrounding ice and snow. Chapter 494 Shilian The white fox's eyes lit up when he heard this, and he hurriedly ran to the big tree and squatted down. Jia thought about it carefully and found that the level of this formation was not high and it was easy to crack. Old Bai, please help me keep an eye on it and I'll break the formation. Jia warned Bai Hu, then took out a few top quality spiritual stones and held them in her hands. Okay, don't worry. Bai Hu finally regained his energy at this time, turned his back, and started walking around. After a while, Shio figured out the formation, found a few nodes, and threw the top grade spiritual stone. Suddenly, a pattern flashed around the big tree and began to twist. Come on! Lao Bai! Shio was delighted and immediately waved to the white fox. The white fox dodged and came to Jiu's side. Jiu picked it up and stepped into the formation. The figures of one person and one fox twisted and disappeared from the place immediately. Soon, the array pattern returned to calm, and no trace could be found. Jia felt dizzy as soon as she entered the formation. When she regained consciousness, she was already in a green world. Hey, there are two completely different worlds here and outside. Bai Hu felt the long-lost warmth and squinted his eyes comfortably, finally no longer shivering from the cold. Sister, it's so comfortable here. Xiao Yan's happy voice came from the sea of consciousness. Jia took a deep breath, and suddenly the fragrance of green grass was inhaled into her belly. With this breath, Jia suddenly noticed that her spiritual power had increased a little. Jiu's eyes lit up. The with spirit energy here was so rich that it actually helped her cultivation. You must know that she is a thunder root, not a wood root. There must be some mystery here. Sister, can I come out? Xiao Yan felt the rich with spirit energy and asked with some anticipation. Of course. Jiu smiled and released Xiaoyan. I just didn't expect Xiaoyan to have a little tail. As soon as the little white ball came out, it rolled around on the ground a few times, its eyes shining with excitement. The white fox became a little stiff when it saw the little white ball, and took a few steps back, fearing that it would touch it. Wu, Xiao Bai Tuan whimpered in grievance towards Bai Hu. His eye circle suddenly turned red, and he looked like he was about to cry. The white fox suddenly scratched his head and ears anxiously, wanting to pat the little white ball. But he didn't dare. Ji Yao looked at Bai Hu's bewildered look with some amusement, and understood a truth. It's true that one thing brings down another thing. Sister, I feel something calling me. Xiao Yan floated in the air with some embarrassment, rubbing Ji Yao's cheek. Really? Ji Yao raised her eyebrows in surprise. Could this be Xiao Yan's opportunity? Yes. 
Xiuyan felt an extremely friendly feeling, which made her eager to get closer. Okay, then let's go take a look and you lead the way. Xi Yu became really happy for Xiuyan. Xiuyan has been following her for so long, but has almost no chance to advance. The only time she absorbed resentment in the forest of death was when she absorbed the resentment. Old Bai, take Xiao Bai Tuan with you and pay attention to safety. Ji Yao glanced at the white fox and followed Xiao Lian towards the place where she summoned it. Yu Bai Hu and Xiao Bai Tuan stared at each other and froze in place for a moment. Wu, Xiao Bai Tuan came up and gently rubbed his head against the white fox. Suddenly, a wave of heat rushed to the top of his head. The white fox felt that his face was getting hotter and hotter, and his tail started to wag wildly again. Seeing that Ji Yao had gone far, Bai Hu had no choice but to stretch out his paws. Carefully hold Xiao Bai Tuan in his arms and then chased towards Ji Yao with stiff steps. Chapter 495 Buddha Repairs the Bones As Ji Yao and the others walked along, it was extremely peaceful here. There are towering trees everywhere, with rich with spiritual energy. But there is no sound of any animals, except for Ji Yao and the others' communication. There was no sound in the entire space. It was so quiet that it was like entering a dead space. But the rich with spiritual energy and trees here are all real and not an illusion. Jiao and a few friends walked along quickly, and finally stopped after a few hours. What appeared in front of Jiao was a temple. It just appeared suddenly in the green. As soon as Xiaoyan came close to this place, her mood became depressed. And she was currently leaning on Jia's hand and feeling depressed. Jia touched it with some distress. This was the first time she saw Xiaoyan unhappy. Xiaoyan's emotions were infected by Xiao Bai Tuan, who huddled in Bai Hu's arms and blinked uncomfortably at Xiaoyan. Is there anyone there? Although she had already guessed that there would be no one here. Xi Yu still asked politely. Only after confirming that no one was here. Xi Yu opened the door of the temple and walked in. The temple has three floors. All made of sandalwood. As soon as Xi Yu walked in. She smelled a strong smell of incense. At this moment. The bracelet on Xi Yu's hand suddenly flashed with light. And then became calm again. As if she had never reacted before. At this time. The bracelet has begun to absorb the incense and merits in the temple. These incense merits also include the beliefs and prayers of believers. Shia didn't notice anything unusual and stood at the door for a while, not daring to move forward. This place is very similar to the temple she has been to in the present world. There are a total of 12 Buddha statues scattered in this lobby, all of which have rather sinister looks. He stared at a pair of big copper bell-sized eyes, as if looking at himself. Shia didn't know much about this aspect and couldn't tell what kind of Buddha statues they were. I just feel like I feel a little butterflies in my heart when I see their eyes. Jiyo exhaled. Although she didn't do anything bad, she suddenly felt a little guilty. Why? Bai Hu was also a little scared, and quickly shrank to Jiyo's feet, hugging Xiao Bai Tuan tighter. Why does this Buddha statue look so scary? Jiyo calmed down, clasped her fists and saluted the Buddha statues, and then she didn't dare to stay any longer, and walked towards the room next to the first floor. Sister, it's on the third floor. Xiaoyan felt that she was getting closer and closer, and she felt increasingly sad. It doesn't know why. It just feels sad. Okay. Jia rubbed Xiaoyan and walked along the steps to the second floor. As soon as she got to the second floor, Xiao found that the second floor was full of various Buddhist paintings. Each portrait does not depict the same person. It's just that these Buddhist cultivators are all wearing cassocks holding beads, and of kind-hearted looks, as if they are looking at themselves with a smile. It is completely different from the Buddha statue on the first floor. Shio was in a hurry to go to the third floor at this time. She didn't have time to take a closer look and climbed directly up the stairs to the third floor. As soon as she stepped onto the third floor, Xiaoyan suddenly flew out from Jiu's hand. Shio was startled, and when she raised her eyes, she saw Xiaoyan flying in front of a skeleton, and she was actually crying. It was a well-preserved skeleton, maintaining the Buddhist posture of chanting sutras. The left hand was placed not far in front of the cheek, and the right hand maintained the gesture of turning the Buddha string. However, the Buddha string had long since disappeared, and the cassock on the body had long been annihilated. However, the futon under the skeleton was still intact, with no signs of damage at all. Chapter 496 Pure Fate Bead Xiaoyan stretched out her petals and gently rubbed the bones leading tears one after another. Jia stood far away and did not step forward, just watching quietly. Presumably, this skeleton is related to Xiaolian's past. Xiaobai Tuan felt Xiaolian's sadness. Tears fell down. 
and he huddled in by Hu's arms and sobbed. The white fox was a little anxious, but he didn't know how to comfort him. He could only stretch out his paws and gently smooth the fur of the little white fox. Sister, Xilian called Jia softly. What's wrong? Jia stepped forward and touched Xilian gently. Sister, I feel so sad, but I don't know why. Xiaolian's tears still couldn't stop falling. It felt that this skeleton was extremely familiar, but it didn't understand why. Well, you'll be fine after being sad for a while. Jia comforted her gently. Xiulian is a sacred object of the Buddhist clan. And this is another Buddhist skeleton. The only possibility Jia can think of is that this skeleton is its previous owner. But he died for unknown reasons. How about you stay with him for a while longer? And then we can put his bones into the ground? Jia asked Xiulian patiently since he was its former owner. She couldn't let him stay here like this. Okay. Xiaolian sobbed and nodded, lying quietly on the hand holding the Buddhist string on the skeleton. Jia looked at Xiaolian, leaving some space for them to say goodbye, and then led by Hu toward the second floor. Beautiful girl. The white fox looked at Jia with some worry. At this time, the little white ball in its arms had cried to the point of sobbing and was hiccuping nonstop. It's okay. Jia bent down to pick up the little white ball and gently put it on its back. Gradually, Xiao Bai Tuan finally stopped hiccuping. Wu, Xiao Bai Tuan stared at her red eyes and rubbed Ji Yao's palm affectionately. Ji Yao smiled when she saw this. Her mood that had been depressed because of the bones finally got better. After Xiao Bai Tuan calmed down, Ji Yao came to the front of these portraits. There are a total of more than a hundred portraits here. Each one does not show the same Buddhist cultivator, but everyone is dressed exactly the same. Huh? A portrait caught Jiyu's attention. It was an ordinary-looking Buddhist cultivator, but he was different from other portraits in that he wore a pair of bracelets on his wrist. This bracelet looked very similar to when she first got the pure fate bead. It looked like an ordinary bracelet engraved with a spirit gathering array. Jia raised her right hand. After finding the hosta earlier, the lotus flower was combined with the bracelet. It was also at that time that she knew that this was called the Jingyuan Pearl, which was a Buddhist object. The difference between the bracelets in the portrait and the Jingyuan Pearl is that there is no lotus. But even if she didn't see the appearance of the original owner of the Jingyuan Pearl, Jiyo was sure that he was definitely not the person in the portrait. After observing for a while, Jiyo didn't find anything special about these portraits. It seemed like they were a place to record Buddhist practice in the past. Let's go! Let's go up! After finding nothing, Jiyo didn't stay any longer and returned to the third floor. Sister! Xiaolian flew directly to Jiyu's side. At this time, it had restrained its sadness and was no longer so sad. But it's okay! Jiyu smiled and asked softly. It's ready! Xiaolian nodded. It had already said goodbye to him properly. Yes! Then we will let him rest in his grave! Seeing that Xiaolian was indeed fine, Jiyu breathed a sigh of relief and walked towards the skeleton. Chapter 497 Lotus Grows Step by Step Senior! I'm offended! Jia clasped her fists in a serious salute, and was about to step forward to take the bones away and bury them underground. Suddenly, the entire skeleton began to gradually dissipate, revealing a shining golden bead inside the skeleton. Jia looked at the golden beads in the bones with some surprise. Could this be the legendary relic? The cultivation and merits of a Buddhist's life? Within a moment, the bones completely dissipated. The golden bead hovered on the spot for a while, then suddenly swooped and flew towards Xilian and was swallowed by Xiulian. Sister, I'm going to bed. Xiulian suddenly started shaking, and could no longer maintain her figure. Jiyo immediately took it, and Xiao Bai Tuan back to the sea of consciousness, and asked Xu Xu to look at them. Beautiful girl, there is something else here. The white fox squatted next to the futon, looking at a book on the futon with bright eyes. Jiyo raised her eyebrows in surprise when she heard this. When she stepped forward and took a look, she found a book of exercises lying on the futon. Lotus grows every step. Jia read aloud according to the cover. She opened the book with some curiosity and found that this was actually a magic technique. People who have practiced this technique will have countless red lotuses appear under their feet when running the technique. These red lotuses are the natural enemies of resentment and ghosts and can protect themselves from evil spirits. At the same time, running this body technique can also form a protective shield, allowing you to travel freely through the nine nether hells without being affected by any yin chi. Ji Yao's eyes lit up after reading the introduction. This method is a good thing. Especially being able to travel freely in the nine nether hells is really attractive. 
the Nine Nether Hell is filled with all kinds of reincarnated ghosts and ghost cultivators. Other monks will be corroded by the Yin Chi when they enter. If you want to move around inside, you must always prepare the ghost nether pill. As for this kind of elixir, the recipe has also been lost long ago. So the Nine Nether Hell is a forbidden place for the spiritual and demonic cultivators in Shifong Continent. Because once everything in the world enters cultivation, it will lose the opportunity to be reincarnated. Once it falls, it will truly fall. Therefore, the ghosts in the Nine Nether Hell are ordinary people who have never practiced spiritual practice. The person who manages the Nine Nether Hell is a ghost cultivator. According to ancient records, the person who manages the Nine Nether Hell now is Lord Jiu Ming, a late-stage ghost cultivator who transformed into a god. In addition, the Nine Nether Hell is also very rich in mineral resources and some elixirs. So many monks have always wanted to visit it. These things are not used by ghost cultivators. So ghost cultivators often exchange materials with spiritual cultivators and demon cultivators. Therefore, if you learn this movement technique, you will have the opportunity to take a walk in the Nine Nether Hells in the future, and you may gain something. In the original work, Chiyua went to the Nine Nether Hell during her nascent soul stage, and her Nine Nether Fire was upgraded to the Nine Nether Sky Fire. At that time, she was already a master of alchemy, and the ghost pill was not difficult for her. Is this a skill? Bai Hu stretched his neck and looked at the book in Ji Yao's hand. Curiously. Yes, but it's a pity that you can't practice. Ji Yao knocked the white fox on the head in a funny way. Oh! The white fox curled his lips. He knew that he had never encountered anything good that he could use since he came out. Shu Shu, can you help me see if there is anything wrong with this technique? Ji Yao opened the book and asked towards the heavenly book in the sea of consciousness. Given her luck, it would be safer to ask. Chapter 498 Meditation Futon There's no problem. Shu Shu read the technique carefully and found no problem. However, it would be great if you could get the strange fire in the future. Shu Shu said with some regret. However, given the luck of its owner, it was impossible to obtain a few of them by burning incense in the previous life. So it was impossible to obtain strange fire or anything like that. Huh? What do you say? Jiyo was a little curious. Why was it related to the strange fire? Because I can change the technique and incorporate the strange fire into it. From now on, these lotuses will not be transformed by spiritual power, but will be made entirely of strange fire. The power will be completely different. Shushu is a bit arrogant. These skills in its view. All laws have flaws and loopholes. Then can you change it first? Maybe I can meet you later? Jia asked without any confidence and twitched her lips in embarrassment. That's okay. I changed it. Now you just have to use your spiritual power. If you encounter strange fire in the future, you can blend it in. Shu Shu strongly agreed with Ziyu's idea. After all, dreams still have to be had. Maybe we will meet him at some point. Wow. Shu Shu. You are so awesome. Jiyo would make a lot of rainbow farts every day, which would make Shu Shu a little shy. Ahem. Please wait for a while. Shu Shu coughed unnaturally and began to modify the technique seriously. Shia didn't bother. Walked to the futon and touched it curiously. The skeletal cassocks were all weathered. And I don't know how many years had passed. But the futon showed no signs of damage at all. It must be a good thing. Shia thought about Xiao Jiujiu. And used her spiritual consciousness to take a good look at the futon. But found nothing wrong with it. After hesitating for a while. Shia still decided to admit her master. Although she had always encountered good things before when she ran to identify them. She still wanted to give them a try. People cannot stand still because of the past. Ji Yao made a small opening with her finger and squeezed out a drop of blood towards the futon. The blood was absorbed as soon as it came into contact with the futon, leaving no mark. This time, there was no such thing as fainting. But after a while, there was no movement on the futon. Just when Ji Yao thought she had failed to recognize her master, the connection with the futon finally appeared in her mind. Meditation futon? Ji Yao felt the message coming from her soul and quickly understood the function of this futon. This futon is actually made for monks to meditate. It can make the monks calm and unaffected by the outside world, and at the same time reduce the interference of inner demons. It is also a good thing. Master, it has been changed. As soon as Shushu finished speaking, a series of skills symbols suddenly appeared in Jiu's mind. Thank you for your hard work, Shushu. Jiu smiled and thanked Shushu, and at the same time took out an 8th grade formation plate and placed it around. Old oh, bye. It's safer here. So I may have to practice for a while first. 
Shio said, and sat down on the futon. The wood spirit power here is rich and safer than the ice and snow world. So it is very suitable for practicing this movement technique. Okay. I understand. Don't worry. No one will harass you. The white fox also understood Gia's plan and patted her chest. It was safer in here. So it wasn't afraid. Can't protect her. Okay. Then I will leave my safety to you. If there is any problem. Wake me up immediately. Gia warned seriously. But with the array around. There shouldn't be much danger. Chapter 499 Enlightenment Tea Tree Gio closed her eyes after finishing speaking. Suddenly, an invisible aura rose up from the futon and enveloped Chi Yao. Gio's soul suddenly felt a sense of warmth, as if she was lying on a cloud. Soft and soft, everything around him disappeared, and nothing except the skills disappeared in Gio's mind. Girl Xia, hurry up! Get that tree in front of you into space! Senior Ling Yu's excited voice suddenly came. Startling Xia Chi Yue. Some time ago, she and junior sister Luo came to the Five Seas region. Unexpectedly, not long after, a secret realm would appear. Countless monks entered the Five Seas territory. At this time, the Five Seas territory was full of dangers, and she encountered several ways of robbing monks. When the secret realm appeared, she was also separated from junior sister Luo. Now she is looking for her everywhere. What is this? Xia Chiyue was a little confused. She had never seen this tree in the classics. It was an ordinary tree. Extremely short. With rather lush branches and leaves. Chi Chi Chi! The treasure hunter mouse was also very excited at this time. He ran to the side of the tree in a flash. Stretched out his little paws and started digging at the soil crazily. Xia Chiyue became even more curious about the tree when she saw the treasure hunter mouse so excited. She had encountered this treasure hunting rat in the secret realm of the sect before and it had led her to find many treasures of heaven and earth. But she had never seen it so excited before. This is the legendary enlightenment tea tree. Ling Yu was a little excited and couldn't restrain his emotions. In ancient times, the enlightenment tea was a treasure, and monks would rush to snatch it up whenever it appeared. Enlightenment tea tree? Xia Chiyua raised her eyebrows in surprise. Just hearing this name is a good thing. After carefully observing the surroundings and confirming that there was no danger, Xia Chiyue immediately took the entire Enlightenment Tea Tree into the space. Then she hugged the treasure hunter and followed her into the space. As soon as she entered the space, she saw that the ginseng doll she had harvested before was already helping her plant the Enlightenment Tea Tree next to the spiritual spring. Xia Chiyue picked up a spiritual fruit and took a bite, then came to the Wudao Tea Tree to observe. Senior Ling Yu, is this Enlightenment Tea Tree capable of enlightenment? Xia Chiyue thought of its name and understood its name. Yes, when it matures, you can pick the Enlightenment Tea. This Enlightenment Tea can help monks better understand the way of heaven and the path they are walking on. With it, you have to understand the artistic conception and the power of rules in the future. It will become a lot easier. Ling Yu sighed in his heart again about this girl's opportunities. These spiritual creatures from the world always wormed their way around her like cabbage. He had been numb to her luck before, but he didn't expect that now he would encounter such a heaven-defying thing as Enlightenment Tea. It seems that by following her, his idea of reshaping his physical body in the future will most likely be realized. Really? Xia Chiyue was very happy to hear the effect of enlightenment tea. If one cannot understand the artistic conception of the nascent soul through dharma cultivation, his combat power will be greatly weakened. And if you can't understand the artistic conception, you can't advance to become a god. So this enlightenment tea is extremely precious. And with the speed of time in this space and the blessing of the spiritual spring, it will surely mature soon. And then it will help you understand the artistic conception early. Ling Yu looked at the Enlightenment Tea Tree, which was about to sprout buds at this time. Yes! Xia Chiyue looked at the Enlightenment Tea Tree with some joy, looking forward to the early maturity of the Tea Tree. At this time, she thought of Ji Yao. She was a sword cultivator, and Enlightenment was very important to her. Therefore, this Enlightenment Tea can be of great use. Chapter 500 Someone is Coming Jia on the other side was immersed in the practice of the exercises. Her spirit came directly to Shushu's body space and began to prepare to understand the exercises. At this time, a person was projected in the learning space. He was a Buddhist cultivator. He stepped forward gently, and countless red lotuses rose up from the soles of his feet, spreading around, and a sea of flowers instantly appeared around him. It's so beautiful! She sighed a little when she saw it. This technique is really necessary for showing off. Jia thought secretly. 
If you pretend to be aloof and run this technique, it will definitely catch people's attention. Why is she also a goddess? Jia thought with some satisfaction. But at the same time, she was a little distressed. Such a beautiful technique cannot be used often because it is too ostentatious. It's really hard for someone as low-key as her, who has bad luck, to be too arrogant. Buddha practiced the technique over and over again. While Jiao invaded the projection with her soul, after being amazed for the first time, and began to understand it seriously, the white fox was a little bored outside, and jumped up to the third floor window. When it looked down inadvertently, it suddenly discovered that someone was coming. By who became anxious. The beautiful girl had not been practicing for a long time. She must not have understood the technique at this time. He could not disturb her unless he had to. However, far below, two people are gradually approaching. The two people were practicing Jean Dan. They were both wearing cassocks and holding bracelets in their hands. At first glance, they were Buddhist cultivators. I'm afraid they came just for this temple. Bai Hu scratched his head and looked back at Jiao. Finding that her face was peaceful, and she was obviously in very good condition now. In the blink of an eye, he thought that the level of this formation was relatively high. And the white fox exhaled. If those two people really want to attack them, they should wake up the beautiful girl. Thinking like this, it turned all its attention to the two Buddhist cultivators. Brother, there is actually a temple. Ling Yuan said in surprise when he saw the temple not far away. Well, my feelings are never wrong. Ling Yi was a little proud. Before the secret realm appeared, the two of them didn't care about the trouble of the female cultivator and plunged into the ice and snow world. Unfortunately, the two of them searched for several days and found nothing good. But some time ago, he suddenly discovered that the tree actually had a natural isolation formation. After cracking the formation, as soon as he entered this green world, he was sensitive to the smell of incense and merit. He used to deal with these all day long. And he was very familiar with them. The two of them followed the familiar scent and saw a temple in front of them. TSK! There must be something wrong with a temple appearing in a place like this. There must be a great opportunity. Lingyi licked his lips excitedly. His opportunity was finally coming. Bid us! Lingyuan gave Lingyi a knowing look. And the two of them walked quickly towards the temple. Hey! Why is this door open? When he arrived in front of the temple, Lingyuan looked at the open door with some confusion. Be careful there is someone inside. Ling Ji's heart sank when he saw the open door. Could it be that someone has already climbed in first? Ling Yuan's heart tightened, and he took out a broad knife and held it in his hand. This was the magic weapon he used after practicing evil Buddhism, and it suited him very well. But Ling Ji's natal magic weapon is a lamp, an extinguished lamp. The texture of the lamp is very simple and elegant, and it looks like an antique that has experienced countless years. Chapter 501 Spirit Pearl Let's go in and have a look. Ling Ji calmly walked into the temple with a lamp in hand. Ling Yuan also followed in. The two of them roughly explored the lobby on the first floor, but found nothing. So they headed towards the second floor. Hey, isn't this Master Jingling? As soon as he stepped onto the second floor, Ling Yuan's eyes were attracted by a portrait beside him. It's really the master. Ling Yi raised his eyebrows in surprise. They had already seen the portrait of this master before when they visited Putua Temple. This is the founder of Putua Temple. Hey, it's just a pity that the spiritual beads from our Putua Temple have been lost. Ling Yuan sighed while looking at the bracelet on the hand of the ancestor in the portrait. In fact, he didn't know much about the function of this spiritual bead. He just heard from those seniors that it was a Buddhist treasure. But unfortunately it had been lost long ago and no trace of it was found. Maybe the spirit bead is here? Ling Ji suddenly thought of this possibility. And suddenly his eyes lit up. Maybe the opportunity here is the long lost spirit bead? Ling Yuan's eyes lit up when he heard this. If they were really here, they would have made a lot of money from this trip. Ling Ji looked at Ling Yuan's excited look and sneered in his heart. This junior brother is really not very smart. If he really got such a treasure, does he still think he would let him leave alive? But it's this kind of fool who is better at being a gunman. Isn't it? Ji Yao, who was immersed in the practice of Kung Fu, didn't know that someone had mistakenly guessed that the spirit bead was in this temple and was already coveting her Jingyuan bead. At this time, she has understood the technique to a small extent and can already raise about a dozen red lotuses on the soles of her feet. However, she is still a little far away from reaching the level of red lotuses blooming everywhere under her feet. And she needs more understanding. Bai Hu realized that the two of them were about to go up to the third floor. He was very anxious and looked at Ji Yao who was meditating. 
Bai Hu decided to carry it on his own for a while. Ling Ji and Ling Yuan searched the second floor, but did not find anything of value, and their moods became depressed. At this time, they all believed that someone had already looted the treasure, and they probably didn't even have any soup left for them. Thinking of this, the two became even more anxious. They glanced at each other and rushed towards the third floor. However, as soon as the two of them stepped onto the steps, the white fox threw an illusion towards them. The white fox looked back at Ji Yao anxiously. Its cultivation level was similar to that of these two people, so this illusion could not trap them for long. Ling Ji had already seen the third floor, but in the blink of an eye, he was in the lobby. At this time, the hall was full of Buddhist practitioners, and everyone was chanting sutras with their eyes closed, looking at the wooden fish in his hand. Lingji was a little confused. What happened to him? Lingji! Just when he was distracted, the abbot of their Putuwa temple suddenly called his name. Lingji didn't dare to be distracted anymore, so she quickly closed her eyes and chanted along with the crowd. Bai Hu breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that the two of them looked calm and showed no signs of waking up. Fortunately, my illusion still has some effect. About a quarter of an hour later, Lingji suddenly opened his eyes. He finally realized that something was unusual. He had obviously betrayed Putua Temple. So how could he be chanting sutras here? In fact, he could detect the problem from the beginning. But deep down in his heart, he missed this kind of life. If it weren't for the fact that it was too difficult to accumulate merit, his own cultivation had never been able to advance and his past brothers and sisters were getting further and further away from him. Why would he change to practice evil Buddhism? Chapter 502 Red Lotus Karmic Fire Realizing that something was wrong, Lingji quickly broke away from the illusion. When he opened his eyes, he saw a white fox squatting on the third floor window, staring at it with a vigilant expression. Junior brother Ling Yuan! Lingji used his magic power and shouted in Ling Yuan's ear, finally pulling Ling Yuan out of the illusion. Senior brother? Ling Yuan was a little confused. He was chanting sutras in the main hall just now. How come he was here in the blink of an eye? After reacting for more than ten breaths, Ling Yuan finally remembered what happened before. It's that stinky fox who did it! Ling Ji looked at the white fox and sneered, but didn't immediately step forward to take action. Because he has discovered traces of the formation not far away from the white fox. And it is still an eighth grade formation. Ling Ji was a little worried. There were very few people in Chiffon Continent who could refine the 8th grade array disc. I don't know if there are formation masters who refine the formation discs, or just people who use the formation discs. If it's the former, then the opponent's cultivation level must be very high, and he is no match at all. But if it's the latter, then the treasure he or she took away before will belong to him. Beautiful girl! Wake up quickly! Someone is coming! Bai Hu quickly transmitted the message to Ji Yao, squatting on the window with a calm and lazy look on his face and even stretched out his tongue to lick his paws. But in fact he was panicking. I don't know if it can successfully frighten the opponent with its appearance. And Lingji was really frightened by the white fox's appearance. The opponent's seventh level monster didn't take the two of them seriously at all. So its owner was probably a master. For a while, he didn't dare to take action in a hurry. So he could only observe the situation first. Ling Yuan had always followed Ling Ji's lead. Just standing aside and looking at the white fox with a wary expression waiting for his senior brother's instructions at any time. Shio was continuing to comprehend the movement skills and wanted to go further. But she suddenly heard the voice transmission from the white fox. As her heart tightened, Shio's spirit immediately withdrew from the book space. As soon as she opened her eyes, Shio saw two Buddhist cultivators appearing outside the formation, standing on the steps. Shio frowned. Why are these two Buddhist cultivators again? Is it because this is a temple? Ji Yao felt chills all over her body when she thought that these two people relied on the monk's energy and blood to improve their cultivation. Old Bai, how long have they been here? Ji Yao sent a message to Bai Hu while thinking about how to deal with the other party. The main reason is that she has never fought against a Buddhist cultivator and has no idea about the opponent's attack methods. It didn't take long. I just controlled them for a while. And they woke up. The white fox felt happy when he heard Ji Yao's voice. As long as the beautiful girl woke up, he was not afraid anymore. There is no one that beautiful girls cannot defeat. The white fox puffed up its chest arrogantly and glanced at the two of them. It was so confident. Ji Yao nodded when she heard this. Seeing the fearful looks on the two people's faces when they didn't make a move, she probably didn't dare to make a move rashly. Shu Shu, do you know what the attack methods of Buddhist cultivators are? Ji asked Shu Shu in the sea of consciousness. 
in her opinion. Shushu was her encyclopedia. Buddhists practice merit, and their attack methods are mainly merit. They incorporate the power of merit into their attacks, causing their opponents to suffer from the fire of karma. Shushu paused. Especially if you are a Buddhist cultivator with profound merits, you may obtain the red lotus karma fire. This kind of strange fire can have a huge impact on monks. Because since you become a monk, you are destined to kill evil in your life. Chapter 503 Seeing the Evil Buddha Again Once a monk commits a crime of killing, it will form a karma. If there is no chance to resolve it, then the calamity will be extremely severe, and the power of merit is added to the Buddhist attack. The heavier the monk's karma, the more painful it will be when the karma is burned. The stronger you are, the more serious the injury will be. Shushu once saw a big demon burned to death by the red lotus karma fire. The karma on his body made him frightened. The stronger the merits of a Buddhist cultivator, the stronger his attack power. Therefore, many high-level Buddhist cultivators are unwilling to provoke, because the power of merits and virtues is all-pervasive. In a real fight, the monks are more likely to suffer losses. But if, if the Buddhist cultivator is not high, he will be suppressed by the monks, and the attack will not be effective. Shushu explained to Jiyo seriously. Jiyo frowned when she heard this. She had checked about karma after hearing it mentioned by her master before. After a monk kills someone, karma will form. The more serious the killing, the heavier the karma will be. When passing through the heavenly tribulation, a thunder calamity will be dropped to wash away the karma of the monks. Therefore, the heavier the karma, the more severe the heavenly calamity will be. Master also said before that Xiaoyan seems to have the effect of purifying karma. I wonder if she still has karma. If there is, and the other two are higher in cultivation than you. Then you will be in trouble. But if there is no karma, then the opponent's attack will be ineffective against them. And they can only use physical attacks to be effective. Such as carrying a knife and directly slashing her. Master, you don't have any karma on your body. Shushu also guessed she his thoughts and pointed it out directly. The owner of his family was so lucky that he met Xiuyan and Jingyi Wanzu. Let alone kill a few people. Even if she destroyed the world. There would be no cause and effect, let alone karma. These two Buddhist monks are in trouble. Really? She used eyes lit up, and she laughed slightly obscenely. These two guys wanted to eat her own flesh before. But now, they want to harm her. How can they not repay her? Yes. Shushu looked at the smile on Jia's face. His heart trembled. And he silently lit a candle for the two Buddhist cultivators. Now that it is certain that there is not much danger to her. Shia is not so nervous but she still remains vigilant in her heart. If the other party has any hidden methods, then she will commit suicide. Ji Yao glanced at the two of them and put away the formation disc with a wave of her hand. Suddenly the entire formation disappeared and Ji Yao's figure was revealed. TSK, who do you think this poor monk is? It turns out to be my little friend? Ling Ji breathed a sigh of relief when he saw that the formation disappeared and the female cultivator from before appeared. Ji Yao looked at him calmly and said nothing with a cold look on her face. Lingji didn't expect Jia to have no response, and suddenly he looked a little embarrassed. Just when he was about to say a few more words, he found that the female cultivator's cultivation level had actually increased after not seeing her for a while, and she was now at the peak of foundation building. Could it be that the other party got some treasure? Thinking of this, Lingji's heart jumped, but when he touched the bloody hole in his palm that hadn't healed yet, Lingji's heart felt like a basin of cold water was poured down on him. In fact, he had always doubted whether the bracelets were the long-lost spiritual beads of Putua Temple. After all, they contain such strong power of merit. But there is a lotus on her string of beads, which is different from the spirit beads. And what he couldn't figure out was that he could obviously absorb the power of merit and practice. But why was he injured instead when he was contaminated with the power of merit on the bracelet? And this wound cannot heal at all. Chapter 504 The Cup of Merit Uh-huh. I wonder if my little friend has been here for a long time. Lingji asked Chiyu while making plans in her mind. This bracelet is dangerous to you. But the other party doesn't know it. So as long as you don't touch the other party's hand during the fight, there should be no problem. Junior brother, later you find an opportunity to destroy her right hand directly. Lingji directly transmitted the message to Lingyuan. As long as her right hand is broken, the other party will no longer have any threat. Okay. Ling Yuan agreed and placed his eyes on Jiyu's right hand. Jiyu felt the strong gaze of Ling Yuan, and her heart tightened. Could it be that the other party wanted to steal her Jing Yuan pearl? 
Why don't you say anything? Little friend? Could it be that you look down on the poor monk? Lingji wanted to attract Yu's attention so that the junior brother's chances would be greater. I really looked down on it. Ji Yao smiled with a smile on her face and looked at Ling Ji with a mocking look on her face. Who doesn't want to attract hatred? Sure enough, when Ling Ji heard Ji Yao's words, her face immediately darkened and her heart was filled with anger. It has always been like this. Ever since I embarked on the path of spiritual practice, I have been looked down upon by others. Every time I travel for experience, I always meet those who are self-righteous. Dharma cultivation is amazing? It would be unlucky to meet him now. Ling Ji laughed sinisterly, as if he had seen Ji Yao being burned by the fire of karma and dying of pain. Since my little friend doesn't have to drink wine as a penalty for toasting, don't blame the poor monk for being rude. Ling Ji sneered, holding the lamp in his left hand, holding a hand gesture in his right hand and throwing it into the lamp. Suddenly, the lamp in his hand lit up with a golden flame, becoming more and more powerful. Ling Ji looked at the lamp with satisfaction. This was one of Putua Temple's treasures. The Merit Lamp, which could increase the power of merit and double the ability to burn karma. This was stolen when he rebelled from Putua Temple, which also caused the people of Putua Temple to hunt them down everywhere. It's really a waste to use the Merit Lamp to deal with the opponent. Ling Ji thought so, but still held the lamp and gently stroked it in Ji Yao's direction. Suddenly, golden flame separated from the lamp and rushed towards Ji Yao completely covering her figure. Ling Ji saw that Ji Yao was motionless and showed no resistance, and laughed out loud. In his opinion, the female cultivator was completely frightened. Before, he acted like he was fearless. But it turned out that he was really a fool. Ling Yuan originally wanted to take the opportunity to rush forward and cut off Ji Yao's hand, but stopped when he saw that she was completely enveloped in merit, but showed no resistance. It seemed that there was no need for him to take action at all. But Ji Yao didn't feel any discomfort at this time. On the contrary, as soon as the golden light appeared, she felt very friendly and comfortable. So she didn't resist at all. And at the same time, she wanted to see what the other two's expressions would be like when they found out that the attack had no effect on them. At this moment, Ji Yao's pure fate pearl suddenly flashed and began to absorb the power of these merits. At this time, Lingi finally realized something was wrong. The female cultivator was shrouded in golden light and did not resist. But at the same time, she did not show any pain. You must know that after the bonus of the merit lamp, even the monks in the nascent soul stage can't get it. The other party is only a peak foundation building person. How did it do it? Senior brother, has this person never killed anyone before? Doesn't he have any karma at all? Ling Yuan also noticed something was wrong. And after thinking about it, this was the only reason. Not good. Ling Ji's eyelids twitched he actually found that the golden light was gradually fading and the power of merit was dissipating. Chapter 505 Introspection Ling Ji suddenly had an ominous premonition and quickly held hands to regain the power of merit. It's a pity that Jing Yuan Pearl will let go of things that come into your mouth. No matter how hard Ling Ji tried, he found that those merits didn't obey his orders at all. And he was suddenly so anxious that he was sweating profusely. These were the merits he had accumulated over the years with great difficulty. Quickly! Kill her! Ling Ji felt that the power of merit was getting less and less connected with him. And he was going crazy with anxiety. He turned his head and shouted to Ling Yuan. Okay! Ling Yuan didn't expect such a big turn of events. He was stunned for a moment. Then rushed towards Ji with a broad knife. He slashed with his sword. And the same golden light rushed towards Ji Yao. Ji almost couldn't help laughing when she saw Ling Yuan moving like this. This Buddhist cultivator seems to have a hard time with his brain. Didn't he see that merit was completely useless to him? Don't you notice that this merit is being absorbed by you? He ran up to deliver the food. I asked you to chop her. Chop her? What are you doing? Ling Ji's face turned red with anger from Ling Yuan. And she pointed at Ling Yuan with a trembling finger. Why does he have such a pig teammate? If he didn't know how to attack with the power of merit, he would have rushed up on his own. Oh! Ling Yuan was startled by Ling Ji's roar and did not dare to use the power of merit anymore. Instead, he carried a broad sword and planned to fight Ji in close combat. Ji Ye took out Li Yuan and waited for the other party to approach. The shortcomings of Buddhist practice are clearly exposed at this time. Without merit, nothing is left. If you meet someone like her, or someone with very few karma, then the outcome will be to wait for death. Maybe the other party didn't have this kind of experience. So he let the Buddhist cultivator kill him in close combat. 
ignoring the attack methods of the spiritual cultivator itself. Ling Yuan looked at Xiao and felt relieved. After all, it was too easy for him to deal with the opponent at his golden elixir stage. Xiao sensed that Ling Yuan was finally approaching and slashed out with a sword of time. Suddenly, Ling Yuan stopped. At this moment, Ji Yao teleported directly in front of him, used Li Yuan to touch his neck, and then immediately teleported away. The time sword intent disappeared, and Ling Yuan fell down directly. At this time, his eyes were wide open, and a deep bone visible scar appeared on his neck. Junior brother! Ling Ji didn't expect that the other party would kill his junior brother so easily, and he couldn't accept it for a while. Ji Yao glanced at Ling Ji indifferently, then attacked him with Li Yuan in hand. This threat had to be removed. She didn't want to be constantly worried about the thieves. Lingyi noticed Ji Yao's murderous intent, and her legs were shaking a little. She immediately took out the Earth Escape Talisman and activated it, disappearing in the blink of an eye. At this time, he had no fighting spirit, and the other party was completely immune to his attacks. He would be a fool to stay for revenge. Jio didn't expect that the other party was so cowardly that he ran away and stopped helplessly. I should have known I wouldn't have put away the formation plate just now. Ji Yu was a little annoyed. She had seen those monks escaping in various ways in the long river of time. But now she had forgotten it. It seems that I still underestimated the enemy too much. I thought that the opponent's attack on me was ineffective. So I didn't pay much attention to the opponent. Which led to the current situation. Gio reflected on herself. And realized that her luck had gotten better during this period. And her strength had improved. But after all, she was still slightly swollen. No matter when in the future. No matter how much strength you gain, you must not underestimate anyone. You need to maintain your original intention and move forward in a down-to-earth manner. After thinking about this, Xiao's spiritual platform became clear for a while, and her state of mind, which had not improved for a long time, finally advanced again. Chapter 506 Escaped After thinking about her own problems during this period, Xiao let out a sigh of relief. Fortunately, she had noticed this problem early. If it was left to the advanced golden elixir, it might give the inner demon an opportunity. Beautiful girl. Is this grandson really a Buddhist cultivator? Doesn't it mean that Buddhist cultivators are compassionate and practice meritorious deeds? White Fox did not notice anything unusual about Ji Yao, but was a little surprised by what the Buddhist cultivator did when it was among the mortals. It often heard about how the monks there were so merciful that they saved all sentient beings. And he is too cowardly. He ran away so fast that I didn't even react. Otherwise, I would have kept him no matter what. The white fox curled his lips. This man ran away faster than him, without even struggling to resist. Not all Buddhist cultivators are good people. You should be careful if you meet them in the future. Some Buddhist cultivators practice evil Buddhism, but they practice by sucking the blood of monks. Jiu paused and looked at Baihu teasingly. Of course, the blood of demon cultivators is also very tempting to them. What? The white fox jumped up in shock. It was so arrogant just now. Fortunately, it was not caught. Otherwise it would be eaten. Beautiful girl, don't abandon me in the future. I'm determined to follow you. This world is too dangerous. Bai Hu stepped forward and hugged Ji Yao's legs, pretending to cry. Ji Yao couldn't help but burst out laughing. This white fox really didn't look like a fox at all. Do your parents know that they gave birth to such a cowardly little fox? Ji Yao lifted the white fox up and looked at it teasingly. The white fox stretched out his paws and pretended to wipe away his tears, then stared at Ji Yao innocently with a pair of clear eyes, and said, I am only cowardly to save my life, so that I can stay with you for a longer time. In this life, as long as I have when I am here, I will protect you and prevent you from getting hurt. I, stop. Ji Yao's head hurt and her forehead jumped, and she hurriedly shouted stop. Where did you learn these words? Huh? You need to deal with it. Right. Jia pretended to be vicious and waved her right fist to threaten the white fox. Hey, I learned this all. It's useful to coax a woman. The white fox retracted his paws, smiled obscenely, and narrowed his eyes. These words are all learned from it, and they are 100% effective. Women love this trick. You are not allowed to learn these messy things from me in the future. Otherwise, I will give you to evil Buddhist cultivators and let them eat your flesh. Jia flicked the white fox's forehead. This guy looked more like a gangster than a young master. Rogue. Oh. The white fox shuddered and smiled flatteringly at Jiyo. It didn't want to be eaten. Jiyo sneered, put the white fox down, and then put the futon away. 
Let's go! Jia waved to Bai Hu and took the lead downstairs. There is nothing of value here anymore. And it's time for me to leave. I don't know how many people have entered the world of ice and snow now. Lingji was running for his life all the way, using several earth escape talismans before returning to the big tree, untying the formation and escaping. Thinking of how easily his junior brother died at the hands of that female cultivator, he felt terrified. How could they be so unlucky that they happened to meet someone with no karma? Thinking of the merits he had lost, his heart ached and bled. Fortunately, because he looked down on the female cultivator, he only used a small part of his merit. Otherwise, he would have wanted to die now. Chapter 507 Ice and Snow World Hey, Brother Ronli, there is actually a Buddhist cultivator. Lu Xiangyu looked at the Buddhist cultivator, who was resting in the distance with some surprise. She has long known that there are Buddhist cultivators in Chifong Continent. But this is the first time she has encountered them. Lingyi heard the sound and looked up to find a pair of male and female monks looking at him. Xiangyu, don't be rude. Rongli frowned. Xiangyu had been pampered by thousands of people since he was a child. And his temper was too simple. If she was talking like this, if she met a petty monk, she would probably become enemies. Oh, I'm sorry. Brother Rongli. Lu Xiangyu lowered her head guiltily when she heard Rongli's scolding. Ha ha, little friend. Don't worry about it. Lingji smiled with a kind look on her face. One look at the robes on her body and her talent and cultivation. And you can tell that she is our disciple. The chi and blood of such a genius disciple must taste very good. Thinking of this, Lingji smiled even more peacefully. As for the other male cultivator, he completely ignored him. He was just a waste in his forties and in the early stages of foundation building. When Lu Xiangyu heard what Lingji said, she raised her head and smiled gratefully at Ling Ji. As expected, Buddhists are all compassionate. Boy, this Buddhist cultivator has a treasure in his body. Rongli was about to speak, but Long Tian's warning voice suddenly came from the sea of consciousness. Rongli paused, originally not wanting to pay attention to his change of mind. Rongli has met Senior. Rongli cupped his fists and saluted Ling Ji. He was already thinking about how to deal with the opponent and win the treasure. You're welcome, little friend. Ling Ji nodded with a smile. But her attention was on Lu Xiangyu. There are a lot of monks coming into this ice and snow world now. Why don't we go with our seniors so that we can take care of them? Rongli invited Ling Ji sincerely. Ling Ji felt happy when he heard this. He was worried about how to go with them. So he handed over the olive branch by himself. Of course you can. Ling Ji nodded calmly and began to think about how to deal with these two people. The three of them formed a team with evil intentions and acted together. Jiao on the other side walked around in the green space, dug some herbs, and returned to the ice and snow world two days later, looking at the mess and destruction in front of her. Jiao frowned. It seemed that there were more and more monks in the ice and snow world. I don't know if there is any cultivation limit in this ice and snow world. If not, that's a problem. Beautiful girl. Why do I feel like I'm being spied on again when I come back to this world of ice and snow? The white fox looked around nervously. This feeling was really uncomfortable. Well, I'm afraid our actions are all under the eyes of others. Jiyo nodded, and she felt it too. However, based on previous experiences and novels I have read, this situation usually involves some remnant soul or weapon spirit observing the successor. From the moment she entered this place, Jiyo felt that this place was like a man-made world. If it was for selecting a successor or something like that, it would be very reasonable. Let's go! There shouldn't be much of a problem if you're careful. Shia and Baihu continue to explore the ice and snow world. Since they are choosing successors, they will not harm them. What they need to be wary of are the monks who come in together. After all, this kind of secret realm is a good place for killing people and selling goods. It's just that Jiyo is a little regretful that Brother Chiyua and Brother Eleven are not here. After all, they can use ice attacks. So they will definitely get a lot of opportunities. Coupled with the good fortune of July, it is impossible to say that we can still get the inheritance here. Chapter 508 Colorful Glow Seven days later, Jiao and Baihu were wandering around in the ice and snow world, feeling bored. Along the way these past few days, they encountered nothing but ice and snow, and not even a single herb. They were so poor. Hey, what the H, L is this place? There's no hair! The white fox muttered dissatisfiedly as he walked. Jiao also frowned. This was the first time she encountered such a secret realm with nothing. In the past few days, 
They had also met several groups of monks. But they did not rush to make enemies. And they were all in peace. Okay. It's only been a few days. Think about how old you are. Seeing that Baihu was unhappy, Xiao deliberately cheered up the atmosphere. And maybe, we'll meet some kind of treasure soon? Xiao blinked at the white fox. Come on. You're just lucky. Baihu was about to complain about Ji Yao, but suddenly stopped and looked in the direction behind Ji Yao with his mouth slightly open. What's wrong? Xiao felt nervous when she saw Baihu suddenly staring at her behind without saying a word. Could there be any danger behind her? Thinking of this possibility, Xi Yao immediately turned around, holding Li Yuan in hand and about to strike out with a sword, but found that there was nothing behind her. But in the distance behind him, there was a colorful light pillar rising into the sky, which was extremely dazzling. Xi Yao took a few more careful glances to confirm that it was a real light beam, and looked back at the white fox with bright eyes. At this time, Bai Hu also came back to his senses and looked at Xi Yao with bright eyes. Beautiful girl. You can do it. This mouth is completely open. White Fox smacked his lips and said shaking his head. That's necessary. Who am I? I am the biological daughter of Tian Dao. Jia raised her head and spoke nonsense seriously. Let's go on a treasure hunt. The White Fox rolled his eyes and ran away in the direction of the light beam, not wanting to talk to Jiyao at all. This fool. Jia curled her lips and followed immediately. This old white guy doesn't even understand her humor. Sure enough, it's because she's too old and there's a generation gap. One person and one fox walked all the way. And it took three hours before they approached the position of the light pillar. Old Bai, be careful. There are more and more people here. Jia hurriedly stopped the white fox, fearing that it would annoy others by running around. When the white fox heard this, he stopped and looked around with his head. Jia's steps also slowed down because there were people passing by her quickly at this time, all heading towards the light pillar. And among these people, there are not only foundation establishment monks and golden core monks, but also nascent soul monks. Unexpectedly, this secret realm has no restrictions on cultivation. Jiu's heart sank. It seems that the danger will not be small later. Old Bai, this secret realm does not limit cultivation. A nascent soul cultivator has just passed by. It seems that we need to pay more attention to it later. It is best to keep a low profile. Jiu walked to the white fox and hugged it. In arms. Got it. The white fox nodded seriously. It had just discovered the Yuanying monks. And one of them even looked at it one more time. Startling it. Seeing that it had taken it into her heart. Jia said no more and hugged it towards the light pillar. After a while. A huge ice and snow palace appeared in front of Jia. There was a round platform in front of the palace. And there was a huge ice sculpture on the platform which was a male cultivator holding a trident. Jia frowned and tried her best to recall the records in the classics she had read, but she did not find any senior monks who used the trident in Binglingen. Chapter 509 Meeting Again At this time, the palace showed no signs of opening, and was still glowing with glow. Outside the palace, people have gathered, with all kinds of cultivation levels, standing together in twos and threes. It's just that everyone's demeanor is not very natural and their eyes are always looking at the nascent soul cultivators. There are a total of five nascent soul cultivators here. Two of them are female cultivators. One of them is wearing white clothes and has a cold expression. She is at the early stage of nascent soul cultivation. The other person was wearing purple clothes and was also in the early stage of yuanying. At this time, he was half leaning on one of the male cultivators in the late stage of yuanying who was wearing a moon white robe with a more charming expression. The male cultivator stretched out a hand and hugged the purple-clothed female cultivator's waist tightly. It was obvious that the two had a close relationship. The other two male cultivators are both in the middle stage of nascent soul, and their appearance is exactly the same. They are both wearing black clothes and looking bored with their hands folded. Could it be twins? Or the legendary clone? Jia glanced at the two monks with some curiosity. But at this moment, the two Yuanying monks noticed Jia's gaze and looked at her at the same time. Jia was startled and quickly lowered her head trying to reduce her presence as much as possible and hide in the crowd. When the two male cultivators saw that Ji Yao was just a foundation-building cultivator, they just looked at her lightly and looked away. This kind of cultivation poses no threat to them, so there is no need to spend energy on her. Look, beautiful girl, isn't that the Buddhist cultivator? Bai Hu was looking around when he suddenly spotted Ling Ji with a compassionate smile on his face. Xia followed her gaze and saw Ling Ji. 
but he didn't expect that the people standing next to him were wrongly, and the fool he had met before. TSK. How did these three people get together? Bai Hu also noticed wrongly, and his eyes widened in surprise. This world is really a coincidence. We still need to find an opportunity to get rid of that Buddhist cultivator later. Jia frowned. This person was a hidden danger and must be eliminated. Isn't it easy to deal with him? It's just the grandson named Rongli next to him who is difficult to deal with. By who is not a fool. He has seen that Rongli is difficult to deal with before. Not to mention that he still has the aura of a mythical beast. Ling Ji, who is waiting for the palace to open, also discovered Ji Yao at this time. Suddenly, the smile on his face froze, and a cold air rose from the soles of his feet. He has cultivated to this point, and although he is greedy for life and afraid of death, he is not a coward. It is just that the other party has no karma at all and can absorb his merits, which really scares him. He was like a piece of dough in front of her, and she could only let her round and flatten it. Rongli had also discovered Ji Yao a long time ago. After all, her robes and appearance prevented her from keeping a low profile. Didn't you see that many male cultivators around her were secretly glancing at her? As expected, she is the woman he likes. And she is the center of attention wherever she goes. Romley raised his lips with satisfaction and smiled, thinking he was handsome. Unfortunately, Jiu just glanced at him and never looked at him again. Romley was a little disappointed in his heart. But he was not in a hurry. He had plenty of time to make her fall in love with him slowly. He never thought that any of the women he liked would not love him. After all, his appearance and qualifications destined that his future would not be ordinary. Thinking of the trident he got before, Romley smiled even more proudly. Although Jia didn't look at Romley, she still paid attention to them with a part of her mind. Sensing the intense gaze of the other party, Jia shuddered in her heart. This pervert. Chapter 510 Blood and Water More and more people gathered in front of the palace. Looking at the black heads, Jia felt helpless. This central territory is really full of outstanding people. Almost 70% of these thousands of people are Golden Core cultivators. There are very few foundation establishment cultivators like her. Fortunately, there were no more nascent soul cultivators. There were still the same five. After all, the river of time is no longer suitable for Yuaning monks at this time. So there are not many Yuaning stages to come. Jia looked up at the beam of light. And it was obvious that the beam of light was gradually fading. The atmosphere at this time was getting more and more tense. Thousands of people gathered together. But not a single sound could be heard. Everyone stared at the light beam with bated breath. Waiting for the moment, it completely dissipated. A quarter of an hour later, the light pillar finally dissipated completely. And the palace door slowly opened at this moment. At this moment, several foundation building monks, who were closed suddenly rushed towards the door. No one around stopped them. Everyone looked at them as if they were fools. Ah! Just when they reached the door, their bodies suddenly began to melt. And several people screamed in shock. In just a few breaths, several people turned into a pool of blood. Gio looked at the pool of blood in silence. These people were too anxious after all. Or maybe they didn't have enough experience in the secret realm. So they wandered into it blindly. Even she, who is in her twenties, knows to observe the situation first. After all, she can't eat hot tofu in a hurry. TSK. These kids are really impatient. Ha ha. Song and Chung. A purple-clothed Yuanin female cultivator covered her mouth and laughed, as if she was not dead just now. But some kind of joke. Su Yun, the female cultivator in white, glanced at Song and Chung with some boredom. In her opinion, the cultivators of the Huanqi sect who practiced dual cultivation techniques were just like evil cultivators. Sister, do you think so? Song and Chung glared at Su Yun charmingly and asked with a half smile. She knew that Su Yun looked down on her. Of course, there were not many monks in the entire Chenfeng continent who thought highly of their Huanqi sect members. But the less she likes herself, the more she wants to disgust her. Who is your sister? Su Yun's face immediately darkened when she heard this. And her whole body was exuding cold air. Seeing the tense atmosphere between the two, the surrounding monks did not dare to speak and tried to minimize their presence. Everyone wanted to enter the palace quickly. But several Yuanning seniors refused to go in. And they did not dare to cross them. Well, since sister doesn't like it, then she won't call you that. Song Ying Chung pretended to be aggrieved and rubbed herself against the male cultivator. Sure enough, the male cultivator's face suddenly darkened. He looked at Su Yun with a dissatisfied look on his face and scolded. Junior sister, why are you so rude? When Su Yun heard this, 
She looked at the male cultivator in disbelief. Feeling aggrieved. She didn't expect that the senior brother would scold her for a woman she had known for several months. Duan Yin glanced at Su Yun impatiently. But when he saw her looking at him with aggrieved eyes, his heart suddenly softened. That's not what I meant. It's just that we will be a family in the future. So don't make it too ugly. Duan Yin sighed and consoled him. Su Yun tugged at the corner of her mouth, feeling a little uncomfortable in her heart. It has been more than 500 years since my senior brother became a disciple of my father. I grew up with him since I was a child and really treat him as my own brother. Unexpectedly. In the end, hundreds of years of love are not as good as a few months of a woman's words. Su Yun put away the disappointment in her heart, looked aside, and stopped talking to Duan Yin. Chapter 511 Enter When Song and Chung saw Su Yun looking like this, the corners of her lips curled up slightly proudly. Okay. Let's go in first. Duan Yin felt a little annoyed when he saw Su Yun ignoring him and immediately walked toward the door with Song In Chung in his arms. When approaching the door, Duan Yin took out a Qixia umbrella from the storage ring. As soon as he opened it, a colorful glow appeared and enveloped the two of them. Duan Yin looked back at Su Yun and saw that she had no intention of going with them. So he could only take Song In Chung and step in together. Sure enough, with the protection of Qixia umbrella, the two of them passed through the gate peacefully and disappeared from everyone's sight. Seeing that the two people had already entered, the crowd began to commotion, fearing that everything would be looted after entering. After several nascent soul cultivators used their own methods to pass through the gate one by one, more and more golden core cultivators flocked to the door. However, there were still a small number of monks whose defensive instruments were of insufficient quality and were directly melted into a pool of blood. Shiyo took a look at everyone's defensive weapons, and breathed a sigh of relief when she found that no particularly high-level defensive weapons were needed. She could get through with a defensive hairpin given by senior Nangong Ryue. But now there were too many people in front, and she couldn't squeeze in during the foundation building period. She could only stay in the back and wait for them to pass before going in. Beautiful girl! Rush inside quickly! The treasures will be gone soon! Bai Hu scratched his head and ears anxiously when he saw that Ji Ya was not in a hurry. It's treasure! You must wait until the master comes. Don't worry. If we rush up now, wouldn't we be a target for others? Jia stroked the white fox's fur to soothe it while looking at the door. With my level of cultivation, even if I rush in at the beginning, I won't be able to gain any favors. It's better to wait for them to have a good time while we pick up the slack behind the scenes, and maybe we can get some benefits. Jia is quite clear about her own strength. It's okay to deal with one or two golden elixir stages. But now there are so many people. She can't please them at all. It would be better to secretly cause trouble behind their backs and quietly pick up the leaks while they are fighting fiercely. Wait a minute. I'm looking for the talisman that Master Qin gave me. She has suddenly remembered that the pile of messy talismans among the things that Master Qin gave to her might be of some use. Hey. Loud bye. It seems that we can go and do a good job. She has smiled and took out two invisibility charms and two breath-condensing charms from the storage ring, and then put on the old bamboo hat that isolated the consciousness. He took it out and put it on his head. Jia attached the talismans to herself and the white fox respectively, and then she hugged the white fox excitedly and went into the crowd. Now as long as she doesn't launch an attack, or someone has special means such as the Eye of Deception, she can't be discovered at all. Sure enough, Jia came to the gate without incident, activated the defensive hosta, and stepped through the gate. This step was completely empty. A feeling of weightlessness came, and Jia suddenly fell forward. Jia was startled and immediately used the Yuan to thrust forward. Fortunately, the pit seemed not high, and Li Yuan soon hit the bottom. Jia used Li Yuan to stabilize her body and fell into the pit. When she looked up, she found that there was a big pit, but there was no one else except her. Jia rolled her eyes in her heart. She didn't know who designed it, but it was randomly teleported, and it's this deceptive way of transmission. Chapter 512 Trapped Bah! Pervert! What are you doing? Why are you throwing me out? The white fox was suddenly thrown out by Ji Yao just now, and he accidentally took a bite of it. The white fox glared at Ji Yao angrily, and he was sure that she must have done it on purpose. Sorry! Wasn't that scary just now? Ji Yao spread her hands and refused to admit it at all. She just didn't panic at all when this guy fell. She just wanted to scare it. Now it is becoming more and more at ease with itself. If it continues like this, it will not take it to heart when it encounters danger in the future. Then you will be in trouble. 
Are you afraid? Bai Hu looked at Jia suspiciously. She didn't look like she was afraid. No. I'm so scared. Jia patted her chest exaggeratedly. In order to avoid Bai Hu's further questioning, she quickly walked towards the pothole and began to explore where this place was. Sure enough, Bai Hu was distracted by Ji Yao's actions and stopped pursuing the issue and started walking along the pothole. The beautiful girl can't even protect it from a pothole, which shows that it is unreliable. Everything depends on its handsome and rich young master. Jia looked at the bare pothole and her expression gradually became serious. Divine consciousness can be used in this pit, but these walls are completely impenetrable by spiritual consciousness and cannot detect the situation. Let's go. It seems there is nothing here. Jia looked around for a few times, but found nothing. She waved to the white fox, then stepped on the Yuan, planning to fly out of the hole with her sword. The white fox jumped onto the Yuan and sat firmly. This was the first time it sat on the Yuan. Ji Yao's sword flew towards the top of the pothole, and the journey was relatively smooth. However, when she was about to rush up, she was directly bounced off by the protective shield of the pothole. Ji Yao was startled and tried to stabilize Li Yuan to prevent them from falling. At the same time, she stopped not far below the protective cover and observed the protective cover. But no matter how she looked, Ji Yao found no traces of the formation. It was obvious that this protective shield was not a formation. In this case, there are generally two possibilities. One is a naturally formed protective shield, and the second is formed by some magic weapon. However, Ji Yao made Li Yuan look back and forth many times, but found no trace of the magic weapon. Apart from the bare walls, the entire pit was covered with dust on the ground. There's not even a blade of grass here, let alone any strange rocks or the like. I knew it! By whose eyes were sore, and he couldn't see any mystery in it. So he sighed helplessly. It knew that with their bullshit luck, they couldn't expect anything good. Everyone else had gone to fight for the treasure. But the two of them were trapped here, unable to even find a door out. Jia was also helpless. But she was also somewhat used to it. If she suddenly fell into a place with great treasures, she would probably be on tenderhooks. One person and one fox returned to the ground. Jia took Li Yuan into his hand, and then took out two earth escape talismans from the storage ring, and attached one to each person and one fox. We can only try to see if we can escape through the earth. This wall cannot be penetrated. And there is no way out from above. The only breakthrough point is underground. Let's go! The white fox was a little excited. It hadn't tried earth escape yet. Okay. Xiao grabbed Bai Hu with one hand and Li Yuan with the other. Activated the escape talisman and disappeared from the place. But as soon as she entered the underground, Xiao felt a little uncomfortable. She was surrounded by hard soil. Mixed with some strange smells and had a very strong sense of oppression. Chapter 513 Rat's Nest The earth escaped talisman led Ji Yao and Bai Hu along the way to open a passage. Ji Yao couldn't figure out the direction, so she could only choose a direction based on intuition and kept moving forward. It just seemed like her intuition wasn't very reliable either. Ji Yao looked at the dense formations that appeared in front of her and felt a little dizzy. There were at least seven or eight high-level formations distributed here, completely blocking the passage of the earth escaped talisman. Is there something important ahead? Jia frowned. And when she was thinking about how to break out of the formation, she suddenly heard a squeaking sound. What a big mouse! The white fox stretched out his paws and pointed at the mice that suddenly appeared in front of him and exclaimed. Jia was also startled by the sudden appearance of a mouse. This world of cultivation is really crazy. This mouse is actually taller than a real cow. Each mouse's eyes were blood red. And their pointed teeth grew out of their mouths, shining coldly. They all stared at Ji Yao angrily. Ji Yao swallowed nervously. She already hated rats. Let alone such a scary rat at first glance. And she clearly used the invisibility charm and breath-containing charm. But these rats were staring at her. What's very strange is that these mice can't see their cultivation level at all. But Ji Yao is sure that they must have practiced cultivation and are not ordinary mice. Old Bai, be careful yourself. Ji Yao just told the white fox. As soon as she finished speaking. All the mice on the opposite side rushed towards Jia. Jia's heart tightened. The passage opened by this escape talisman was too narrow, which was not conducive to her performance at all. Seeing a mouse about to rush in front of her, Jia was about to rush forward. But the white fox suddenly rushed out and grabbed the mouse's neck with one claw. Squeak! 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 The mouse covered his neck and screamed in pain several times before falling down. Seeing this, Jia felt certain 
It seemed that the mouse was not very strong. Xiu put away Li Yuan, took out a high-grade spiritual weapon dagger from the storage ring, and rushed forward. One man and one fox ruthlessly harvested the lives of several mice. But within a moment, all the mice fell. Hey, I thought this thing was so powerful, but it turned out to be like this. The white fox curled his lips and looked at the corpses of these mice. Run! Xia wanted to respond to the white fox. But suddenly, she saw a large group of mice appearing in front of her again. They are so densely packed that they are completely innumerable. Jia hugged the white fox and quickly turned around and started to escape. The thought of the countless rats behind her made her scalp tingle. It was so scary. With so many rats, even if she wasn't killed, she would be exhausted. Jia thought about taking out the escaped talisman again and sticking it on her body. The talisman just now was almost ineffective. The white fox was startled by Zia's sudden action. It stretched out its head and looked back, then trembled. Have they broken into a rat's nest? This is a rhythm that scares the fox to death. Above the formation just now, Rongli was looking around in confusion. As soon as he entered the palace, he was teleported here. But there was nothing here except a stone tablet. The outside of this stone tablet is full of high-level formations, which he cannot solve at his current level. Senior, what is the stone tablet? Rongli observed it for a long time and found no mystery. So he could only turn to Long Tian for help. This is the merit steel. Long Tian also noticed this steel and began to sigh in his heart at this boy's luck. It can be teleported directly here. The merit monument? Rongli frowned slightly when he heard this and looked at the stone monument in confusion. Chapter 514 Escape Yes, merit transfer steel is something from ancient times. When monks fall or ascend, many of them will leave inheritance for those who are destined to be destined. This kind of transfer steel will roughly record their own experiences, and the rest will be it is the inheritance that the monks chose to leave behind. Just bite your finger open and drip blood into the monument. Long Tian stopped talking after he finished speaking. Rong Li's eyes lit up after hearing this. He broke his finger without hesitation, squeezed out blood and approached the stone tablet. Sure enough, as soon as the blood came close to the formation, it was directly absorbed and eventually soaked into the stone tablet. Rongli waited for the change of the stone tablet. Just when he thought he had failed, the stone tablet suddenly emitted a light and sucked him in. After a moment, the entire stone monument returned to calm, and it was completely impossible to tell that anyone had been here. Ji Yao, who was running away frantically on the other side, complained endlessly in her heart. These mice were too energetic. She had been running away for an hour, and she had spent several earth escape talisman, but they were following behind without feeling tired at all. She didn't dare to stop at all. As soon as she stopped, she would definitely be surrounded, and she wouldn't be able to escape. The white fox swallowed his saliva and looked behind him. Beautiful girl, there are more and more rats. The white fox looked at the originally small passage behind him, which had been completely broken by the rats and became extremely spacious. There was no end in sight of the densely packed rats. It sent out its spiritual consciousness and counted them roughly and found that there were at least several thousand rats following behind it. Yeah, let's rush to the ground in front. Shia was thinking about the opportunity to return to the ground all the way, but there were formation restrictions in the places she passed before. Squeak, squeak, squeak. The mice couldn't catch up for a long time, and they became more and more irritable. At this moment, a smaller mouse quickly caught up with Jiyu due to the joint tossing of several mice behind her. The white fox was startled, climbed onto Jiyu's head, stretched out its paws and grabbed the mouse. Squeak, squeak, squeak. The mouse avoided the white fox's claws while trying to scratch Xi Yao. Xi Yu was speechless. Now that the mice have become spirits, they still know how to cooperate. She was busy running away at this time and couldn't fight back. So she could only speed up again. At this time, she missed her teleportation very much. But unfortunately, she couldn't use it underground. The white fox dutifully protected Xi Yao's back and kept the mice away. Squeak! 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 The mouse yelled anxiously bearing its terrible teeth and biting at the white fox. The white fox snorted coldly, swung his tail, and whipped directly towards the mouse. Squeak! 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 The mouse was shot straight away and hit the group of rats behind it, causing a series of stampede accidents. Get ready! Let's go up! Shia finally found a place to go up and rushed directly towards the ground. The white fox immediately stretched out its paws and hugged Ji Yao's head tightly, and rushed forward together. 
After a short while, Shia finally rushed to the ground. But before she could relax, she suddenly stopped. Who will tell her what's going on with all the monks in front of her? Bai Hu was also a little confused. They rushed into the crowd. Shiyu glanced at the crowd and was instantly attracted by the light group on the high platform. Baby? Shi Yao's eyes lit up. It seemed that her luck was not too bad this time. The people who were waiting for the opportunity to collect the treasures felt the spiritual power fluctuation in Ji Yao's direction. And they all looked toward Ji Yao. Chapter 515 Fishing in Troubled Waters It's just that Ji Yao used the invisibility talisman and the breath-gathering talisman, which had not expired at this time. So they did not find Ji Yao's figure. Seeing that there was no problem, their attention returned to the light group. At this time, nothing else mattered. Ji Yao was a little nervous. But she breathed a sigh of relief when she found that no one in the group noticed her. It seems that there is nothing wrong with this talisman. But the problem is with the rats. But at this moment, Ji Yao's eyelids suddenly twitched. And a sense of crisis came. Ji Yao immediately teleported away and ran towards an uninhabited corner. At this moment, a mouse suddenly appeared where Ji Yao had been. Soon, more and more rats swarmed up. It's a mutant rat! The crowd suddenly became commotion. Ji Yao didn't expect that these mice could actually run up and cling to the corner, trying to reduce their presence as much as possible. When the mutated rats saw so many people, they were not afraid at all and attacked the crowd directly. These monks no longer cared about the light group at this time, and all used their methods to attack the mutated rats. For a time, the entire hall was filled with colors, and various attack methods emerged one after another, almost dazzling Jiyu's eyes. The attack power of these mutated rats is not very strong, but most of the monks are at the golden elixir stage, so it is a one-sided massacre. It's just that there are too many mutated rats. Once you kill one group, a new one will follow, and there seems to be no end. Jiyu watched the battle while avoiding everyone's attacks to avoid being affected. Gradually, Jiyo is getting closer and closer to the light group. Realizing that everyone was busy fighting at this time and no one noticed the light group, Jiyo raised her head and looked at the light group, feeling Shao Jiojio in her heart. There are a total of 20 light groups here, evenly distributed in midair. Jiyo took out a spirit stone and gently threw it towards one of the light groups while no one was paying attention. The spirit stone passed through the light group safely, passed directly through the light group without stopping, and fell to the ground. The spirit stone fell to the ground and made a very small sound. But it was still noticed by a monk nearby. Gio was startled and immediately stared with bated breath, fearing that she would be discovered. The monk picked up the spirit stone with some confusion and looked in Gio's direction. When she noticed the monk's probing gaze, her whole body froze. Fortunately, the monk didn't see anything wrong. He believed that the spirit stone should have been dropped by other monks during the fight. So he didn't think much about it. After putting the spirit stone away, he joined the battle again. Jiyu breathed out a sigh of relief when she saw that he didn't pay attention. The white fox also let out a heavy breath. It almost couldn't help but throw the illusion out just now. After confirming that there was no danger of corrosion in this light group, Jiyu calmed down, jumped up with a few false clicks, and stretched out her hand to grab the nearest light group. Immediately, Jiyu noticed that a soft thing was caught by her. Jiyu didn't dare to take a closer look, and threw it directly into the storage ring then stretched out her hand to grab another light ball. But this time, Jiyo's hand penetrated the light ball directly without grabbing anything. There are actually restrictions. Jiyo frowned. It seemed that only one person could receive this. Old Bai. Try it. Can you catch it? Jiyo sent a message to Bai Hu, asking him to give it a try. Okay. The white fox responded excitedly, stretched out his claws, and grabbed a ball of light. I can. Bai Hu grabbed the light ball excited, but immediately handed it to Ji Yao and let her receive it in the storage ring. Chapter 516 Doubt Ji Yao saw that the white fox could really do it. Her eyes lit up and she immediately released the little white ball. Woo! As soon as the little white ball came out, it rolled in Ji Yao's palm, stretched out its tongue and licked the palm. Ji Yao resisted the itching feeling in her palms and said warmly, Xiao Bai Tuan, go help sister catch a ball of light and bring it back. Okay? Woo! Xiao Bai Tuan blinked his big innocent eyes, jumped up, and swallowed the nearest light ball in an instant. Seeing that Xiao Bai Tuan had succeeded, Ji Yu quickly took it back. Xiao Bai Tuan spit out the light ball, and Ji Yao immediately took the light ball back into the storage ring. The little white ball is great. You should go back first. Ji Yu rubbed the little white ball 
and took it back to the sea of consciousness. It is too dangerous to put it outside now. At this moment, a late stage Jean Dan inadvertently glanced in the direction of the light group during the fight. Finding that the light group was actually missing, the monk couldn't believe his eyes for a moment. How come there are fewer light groups? Who did it just now? The monk could no longer control himself and asked loudly. There are more than 20 late stage golden elixirs here. And it stands to reason that the ownership of these light groups lies among them. But now there are three light groups suddenly missing for no reason. So he may not get any of them. His voice startled everyone who was fighting. Everyone looked in the direction of the light group and found that there were really fewer light groups. And the crowd suddenly became restless. The atmosphere in the entire hall began to become solemn. While everyone continued to fight, they always looked at the people around them suspiciously, wondering who had secretly taken it. Jia noticed everyone's gazes and stood there with a guilty conscience, not daring to move, fearing that others would discover her presence. If she was discovered at this time, she would be beaten by a group of people. Jia looked around, trying to find an exit, but she couldn't even see a door. Where did these people come in from? Jiyu frowned in confusion. She could use her spiritual consciousness here, but it still couldn't penetrate the walls of these halls. So she had no idea what was going on outside. There was no other way. Jiyao could only wait for their battle to end. If she guessed correctly, the exit would not appear until all these light groups were collected. In this way, Jiyo shrank her figure into a corner, then took out the invisibility charm and the breath-gathering charm and attached them to her body to prevent them from failing. An hour passed, and all the muted mice were finally eliminated. Jiyo looked at the densely packed bloody corpses in the hall, feeling a little numb. This was the result of many people using the flame talisman to destroy the corpses while killing them. Otherwise, this hall would not be able to accommodate so many rat corpses. Everyone was a little tired at this time and took out pills to restore their spiritual power. After all, there were more important things to fight for soon. Chin Qixian was the only peak elixir present and took the elixir calmly. In his opinion, there must be a light group that belongs to him. After everyone's spiritual power was restored, the atmosphere became weird again. Chin Qixian cleared his throat, glanced at everyone lightly, and said with some arrogance, I wonder which fellow Taoists secretly collected the light group while we were fighting. The crowd fell silent upon hearing this, and everyone turned their suspicious eyes on others. I know. At this moment, a female voice suddenly broke the silence. Jia looked towards the source and found that it was a female cultivator in the middle stage of Jean Dan. She was very delicate and attractive. Chapter 517 The Scapegoat Oh, then tell me who it is. Chin Qixian now regarded himself as the leader. It's him, the female cultivator said and pointed towards someone. Jia took a look. Hey, isn't this the male cultivator who picked up her spirit stone before and almost discovered her? What nonsense are you talking about? Jung Kun didn't expect that the female cultivator would bite him, and his face turned red with anger. It's you, but you still don't admit it. But I saw you taking the light ball with my own eyes. The female cultivator was sure that it was him, and she was not afraid at all. There were so many people here, and the other party didn't dare to attack her. When did I collect the light ball? Which eye did you see it with? Jung Kun's eyes widened. This person is talking nonsense. But looking at the suspicious eyes of the people around him, Jung Kun felt dizzy for a while. And he probably couldn't explain clearly now. Oh, tell me how you saw it. Chen Qixian had already believed the female cultivator's words and looked at Jung Kun with an extremely ugly expression. I was also in the fight. And I glanced in that direction and found that he had secretly collected something. The female cultivator said with confidence, because she really saw it and was not talking nonsense. I picked up the spiritual stone. I don't know which fellow Taoist fell out during the fight. Zheng Kun was anxious, seeing the increasingly bad looks in the eyes of the people around him. He panicked and hurriedly took out the spiritual stone. Out. Shia was a little amused at the development of this god, but also a little apologetic, fearing that this brother would take the blame. Hey, do you think we are stupid? Who would drop a spirit stone in a fight? Chin Qixian was so angry that he laughed. Only a ghost would believe this. What I said is true. I really didn't. Jung Kun was so anxious that he trembled in his heart. He couldn't imagine what would happen to him if a group of people attacked him. Okay. Okay. No one wants to hear what you say. Either you take out the light ball, or we kill you and get it yourself. Chin Qixian sneered. At this time, he was already very impatient and just wanted to solve it quickly so that he can get the light group. 
The rest of the crowd said nothing and just looked at Zhang Kun. Obviously agreeing with Chen Qixian's decision. Zhang Kun closed his eyes. Feeling helpless at this moment. It would be fine if he really took it. But he didn't. What should he take out? It seems that if you don't eat the toast, you will be punished with a drink. Seeing his lack of energy, Chen Qixian completely lost his patience and struck Zhang Kun with his sword. Zhang Kun was shocked and immediately rushed forward with his sword. But at this moment, a person suddenly appeared behind him and slapped his junior with a palm. Without checking, Zhang Kun immediately fell forward and bumped into Chen Qixian's attack. The scope of this hall is not particularly large, and fighting is also subject to certain restrictions. Jia watched Zhang Kun trying to stabilize his body, dodged a few times to avoid Chen Qixian's attacks, and ran in other directions. At this time, Zhang Kun knew that it was impossible for him to defeat so many people. Now he had only one way out, and that was to escape. Hey, you still want to run? Let's all come together. Chen Qixian waved his hand and chased in the direction of Zhang Kun. And the others also rushed forward. Zhang Kun felt desperate because he found that there was no exit in this hall and he could only wait to die. Soon, he was surrounded by people. Jia looked at Zhang Kun who was surrounded and felt very sorry. But if she couldn't rush out to help, she would definitely die in an ugly way. I can only see if there is a chance to help him secretly. Chapter 518 Explosion Hurry! Hand over the light ball. If you don't hand it over, don't blame us for being cruel. Chen Qixian twitched the corner of his mouth and spoke with some mockery. He already had murderous intent in his heart. He was just an early stage golden elixir. So he still dared not to do so. Give yourself face. Zhang Kuan saw that he had no choice. And a flash of madness flashed in his eyes. Because he knew that even if he handed it over, he would still not be able to escape the word death. Since we're all going to die anyway. It's better to take a chance. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Zhang Kun looked like he was giving up and started to fumble in the storage bag. Jia looked at Zhang Kun with some doubts and suddenly had a bad feeling. He didn't have a light ball at all. What could he use? But Chen Qixian thought that he was really scared. So he sneered, stretched out his hand and waited for him to take out the light ball. When the others saw Chen Qixian extending his hand, although they had some opinions, they couldn't express them. Anyway, usually one person can only get one of this kind of light group. And then, they will fight for the remaining light group. Zhang Kuan smiled strangely at Chen Qixian. But he took out a few time lizy from his storage bag and threw them directly towards the crowd surrounding him. Chen Qixian sensed something was wrong when he smiled and quickly retreated. Unfortunately, it was too late after all. The speed and power of time lizy's explosion could not allow him to dodge. Grass. Xiao didn't expect Zhang Kuan to throw time lizy directly and hurriedly teleported to the distance. She had a premonition that she was going to be unlucky again. Sure enough, several thunderbolts exploded directly, and the powerful explosive force directly covered the entire hall. The hall began to shake violently, and the light group was shattered to pieces. Poof! Gia was hit by the powerful impact and spit out a mouthful of blood. The defensive hairpin on her head was broken into two pieces and destroyed. The talisman on her body was also destroyed and her figure was revealed in an instant. Fortunately, Jia put the white fox into the pet bag as soon as she discovered the danger, preventing it from getting hurt. Tai and Lizy was too powerful, not to mention that in such a closed space, no one escaped the attack and were injured one after another. Some of the golden elixir monks at the center of the explosion died directly. You could imagine how strong the explosion was. Ji Yao's injury was not serious. She immediately took the elixir and was about to take out the talisman and stick it on again, when she suddenly heard a harsh cry. Ah! Who are you? Jia was startled when she heard this. She looked in the direction and found that she had been discovered. Not far away from her was a person half kneeling, pointing at her with a surprised look on his face. It was the female cultivator who had accused Zhang Kun before. Jia's heart skipped a beat when she saw this. It was over. Sure enough, her cry attracted many people, and everyone noticed Jia. Fortunately, she was still wearing a hat that blocked her spiritual consciousness. So no one could see her face clearly. Who are you? Chen Qixian wiped the blood on his face. And his heart was filled with hatred. He hunted geese all day long. But his eyes were pecked by geese. But a person in the early stage of Jin Dan dared to plot against him. But now the hall is too chaotic. And Zhang Kun himself is seriously injured. Chen Qixian has to let him go first to deal with the sudden appearance of Ji Yao. Jia looked at the crowd that was gradually gathering around her and swallowed nervously. 
This was terrible. She had just stung a hornet's nest. There were so many golden elixir cultivators. Each of them could drown her with just a drop of spit. Ha ha. Misunderstanding. I just happened to be passing by. Jia twitched the corner of her mouth in embarrassment. Holding Li Yuan tightly with her hand. Ready to take action at any time. Chapter 519 Discovered Misunderstanding? Chen Qixian reached out and covered his heart. At this time, his injuries were not healed yet. It seems that you are the one who really took the light ball. Right? At this time, he finally realized it. It seems that this person had something to hide his figure and then used them to collect the light ball while they were fighting. Xiao originally wanted to defend herself, but the entire hall suddenly began to fall dust and some gravel. Obviously, the aftermath of the explosion came out and the hall was going to be destroyed. Xia complained in her heart that the quality of this hall was too poor. But this time, it was an opportunity for her. The crowd also became commotion at this time. They originally wanted Xia to give an explanation. But when they realized that the hall was about to collapse, they all rushed towards the light ball flying randomly in the air. After all, it would be faster to grab the light group directly than to question Ji Yao. Chen Qixian was also a little unsure, seeing that others had joined the fight. He felt a little anxious. After hesitating for a moment, he turned around and rushed towards the nearest light group. The person opposite was wearing a bamboo hat that blocked his spiritual consciousness, so he couldn't detect the other person's cultivation level at all. He was already seriously injured, but the other party had no problem at all. If the other party had a higher level of cultivation, he would not be able to gain any favors in a real fight. It would be better to snatch the light group with a group of similarly injured people. Chia didn't expect that in just a blink of an eye. All the people surrounding her turned around and joined the fight, leaving her in a daze for a moment. She was ready to run away if she couldn't beat him. But this development was completely unconventional. But seeing dozens of people fighting for a ball of light, Chia felt lucky. Fortunately, they didn't know they had taken three. The battle was too fierce and Jia could only try her best to reduce her presence to avoid being accidentally injured. However, the hall was almost unable to support itself, and he should be able to escape soon. Jia was paying attention to their battle situation and the hall, as long as there was a chance. She must escape as soon as possible. Soon, someone harvested the light ball, and Jia raised her eyebrows in surprise. It turned out to be an early stage golden elixir. The man noticed Jia's gaze, turned his head, and glanced at Jia lightly. Jia's forehead jumped at his gloomy eyes, and her intuition told her that there was something wrong with this man. But the man glanced at Ji Yao and turned back. Gradually, more than a dozen light clusters were assigned to themselves, and Chen Qixian also successfully harvested one. Just when the last person accepted the light group, a white light suddenly appeared in the entire hall. Jia was so stimulated by the dazzling white light that she closed her eyes. At this moment, her eyes were hurt and painful. A feeling of weightlessness came. Xiao immediately took the pill, tried to stabilize her body, and spread her consciousness to see her current situation. However, she found that her spiritual consciousness could not be used at all at this time. But it was obvious that she was being teleported now. She couldn't use her consciousness, and her eyes were injured and couldn't open. At this time, Xiao was like a blind person. She could only hold Li Yuan tightly, and tightened her body to prevent any unexpected situation. The feeling of weightlessness lasted for a full quarter of an hour before it stopped. Shio had tried her best to stabilize her body, but she still sat down. Boo! A sound of breaking things came, and Ji realized that she seemed to have broken something. Chapter 520 Broken an Egg Shio felt a cold feeling in the ground. She reached out and touched her buttocks, and suddenly found that it was a piece of ice water. Shio tried to emit her consciousness but found that it was still completely useless. There was no other way. So Jia could only concentrate on opening the healing elixir. She was inevitably a little anxious, fearing that there was any danger around her. After a while, Jia's eyes finally recovered. As soon as she opened her eyes, she found herself in a vast white space. Jia stood up and looked at the ground, and found that she seemed to have broken an egg. It's just that the SH. L of this egg is actually transparent. At this time, the yolk and egg white are all muddy on the ground. It's really a tragic murder scene. Jia coughed in embarrassment, and she actually sat on her but and broke her into pieces. Sinful. Sinful. She accidentally killed a living being. But this kind of egg is really a bit strange. Jia pulled at her cassock. And sure enough, 
there was a mark on the back of her buttocks. But after she used several cleaning charms in succession, the traces were not destroyed at all. What the H, L is this? Jiyo was embarrassed. How could she meet people like this? After struggling for a while, Jiyo found that she could not get rid of the traces of egg liquid no matter what. So she had to give up in the end. I want to change to a robe. But I am reluctant to part with the defensive effect of the Yuling feather clothes. After all, this secret realm is full of dangers. After hesitating for a moment, Jiyu still didn't change it. Anyway, since she had a bamboo hat that blocked her spiritual consciousness, others couldn't see what she looked like or her face. So she didn't need it for the time being. After thinking about this, Jiyu stopped worrying about it and began to observe the surrounding environment. This is a very warm place. And everything is white as far as the eye can see. Jiyo looked at the white mass in front of her with some doubts. She stretched out her hand and touched it. Feeling a soft and waxy feeling. Is it really a cloud? Jiyo's eyes widened in surprise. And she carefully looked around at the white masses around her. And found that they were really clouds. But clouds usually appear high in the sky. But that's obviously not the case here. Jiyo's feet are on the ground. And some of the clouds only reach Jiyo's waist. These clouds were so comfortable to touch that Ji Yao felt a little too happy to miss Shu. If she hadn't known that this was a secret realm, she would have wanted to lie on them and sleep. After walking in this vast white place for a while, Ji Yu stopped. There were only clouds here, but she didn't know what was in the distance. While there was no one around, Ji Ya took out the three light groups from the storage ring. After the three light groups were taken out, their true colors were quickly revealed. They were actually three keys made of ice sculptures. Jia raised her eyebrows in surprise. Based on her experience in reading novels before, this light group should be a magic weapon or a skill. Why is it a key? It seems that if you want to get a chance, you have to find the purpose of this key. Seeing that she couldn't figure out its purpose for the time being, Jia put the key away and began to figure out how to get out. The space seemed a bit big and there was not much danger. So Jia chose to fly with her sword. The journey went very smoothly and Jia did not encounter any danger. However, the more this happened, the more worried she became. And she always felt that she had been ignored somewhere. Whoops! Suddenly, a white shadow quickly flew past Jiyu's eyes. Almost as fast as a shooting star. Jiyu was startled by the sudden white shadow. She flicked her fingertips and a thunder ball appeared. Just as Jiyu was about to throw it towards the white shadow, she heard the sound of Shu Shu. Chapter 521 Yunling Master! That's Yunling! He doesn't mean any harm. Seeing that Ji Yao was about to take action, Xu Xu immediately spoke out to stop Ji Yao. Yun Ling? What is that? Why haven't I heard of it? Ji Yao was a little confused. She had heard of Fire Ling and Bing Ling. Is there also Yun Ling? In Shifong Continent, Yun Ling should be rare now. In ancient times, as long as you were in the depths of the Sea of Clouds, you would have a great chance of encountering them. Xu Xu was nostalgic for the past as there is no such barren cultivation environment now. At that time, there was a sea of clouds in Shifong Continent, and many monks would go fishing for Yunling. Yunling should be the thing that generates spiritual consciousness in the clouds. Right. Is it that the clouds have become spirits? Jiyo thought about several other natural spiritual creatures, and roughly guessed Yunling. Yes. Yunling is mainly used as a means of transportation. It can completely obscure spiritual consciousness, and cannot be discovered by even high-level monks. Therefore, it was very popular in ancient times. However, this Yunling is quite smart, and is usually very difficult to detect. Take the bait. So not many people can get it. Xu Xu has already made up his mind to Yunling. With his master's luck, he will inevitably run away in the future. If he can get this thing, it will be of great use. Xi Yao's eyes became brighter and brighter as she listened to Xu Xu's words. She looked at the small group of white clouds in the distance and began to think. It would be such a blessing to have such a comfortable flying magic weapon. But how to catch it? Jia asked Xu Xu while scanning several storage rings, wondering if she had any that could be used. Don't tell me. You really have this thing. Xu Xu replied in a funny way. This was quite a coincidence. Originally, Yun Ling's favorite thing is the spiritual things of heaven and earth, such as 10,000 year spiritual ginseng, spiritual marrow and the like but the chance of catching it is not high. But with this thing, you have great confidence. Xu Xu said and buffed forward. Jia was waiting for the next chapter of the book. But Xiao Bai Tuan suddenly flew out of the sea of consciousness. Jia was startled and immediately reached out to catch it. Wu, 
Xiao Bai Tuan's eyes were red with grievance. He was sleeping. But for some reason, he was kicked out by Brother Xu Xu. Seeing Xiao Bai Tuan's aggrieved look, Jiao's heart melted, and she quickly smoothed its fur, fearing that it would really cry. Xu Xu, why did you bring out the little white ball? Xiao looked at the little white ball, and then at Yunling. Although they were both small white balls, they were obviously not the same species. Xiao Bai Tuan is the overlord of the universe. These floating spiritual creatures in the world are naturally afraid of it. Just ask Xiao Bai Tuan to swallow it back. Xu Xu rolled his eyes in his heart. He would not be fooled by Xiao Bai Tuan's appearance. Blinded? That is a space-devouring beast that can grow up to swallow the world and the universe. When it really grows up, even a Tian Dao will not dare to mess with it. And this entire big world is composed of countless small worlds, each of which has its own way of heaven and its own trajectory. In ancient times, some monks were even able to form a world inside their bodies by chance, thus evolving into the way of heaven in that world. Therefore, Chifong Realm is really inconspicuous in this big world. It is just one of hundreds of millions of small worlds. Therefore, it is not a big problem to let Xiao Bai Tuan deal with this kind of heaven and earth spiritual creature. Chapter 522 Big Bird Ji Yao looked at Xiao Bai Tuan with glowing eyes after hearing this. It seemed that her Yunling had hope. Xiao Bai Tuan was startled by Ji Yao's bright eyes and suddenly felt a little leaky. Xiao Bai Tuan. Ji Yao tried to be as gentle as possible and called Xiao Bai Tuan softly. Wu, Xiao Bai Tuan rubbed Ji Yao's palm and looked at Ji Yao with wide eyes, waiting for the next step. How about you go help my sister swallow that little white thing back? You will be a brother by then. Ji Yao smiled and stroked the little white ball. As soon as Xiao Bai Tuan heard that he could become his elder brother, his eyes lit up, and he stopped rubbing Ji Yao's hand and stood up directly. Ji Yao looked at Xiao Bai Tuan with some humor and pointed at Yun Ling in the distance, who had been trying to hide himself in the clouds. Go! As soon as Ji Yao finished speaking, Xiao Bai Tuan jumped and ran over. Yun Ling sensed the danger and immediately ran away into the distance. The speed was so fast that Ji Yao could not see its figure clearly and could only see a white mass passing by. Xiao Bai Tuan is not slow either. But after all, his cultivation level is lower. So naturally he cannot compare with Yun Ling. Ji Yao saw the two white balls and started playing a game of chasing each other. An hour passed and the two of them were still chasing after each other happily. A row of black lines fell off Shia's forehead, feeling a little helpless. Shu Shu, did you agree to swallow it in one gulp? Uh, Shu Shu was speechless for a moment. It was really that he overestimated Xiao Bai Tuan's current strength. He was really weak. Sure. Just as Ji Yao was paying close attention to Xiao Bai Tuan, an extremely harsh sound suddenly came, which almost shattered Ji Yao's eardrums. Moreover, the cry was accompanied by a shock wave, which made Ji Yao take a few steps back. A bad premonition came. Ji Yao looked into the distance and found that a white spot in the distance was getting bigger and bigger, getting closer and closer. Sensing the danger, Ji Yao immediately commanded Li Yuan and flew in the direction of Xiao Bai Tuan and the others. Even if you run away, you have to take it back first. Sure. The harsh cry came again. Ji Yao glanced back and realized that it was actually a ninth level bird. It is equivalent to the nascent soul stage of human cultivation. And this is a completely transparent bird. Its internal organs are just a ball of white. But there is a long red feather on its head. The mouth has a very long hook. Much like an eagle's mouth. But longer and more pointed. Just looking at it can make you imagine how painful it would be to be sucked on. At this time, the bird's eyes were locked tightly on Gio with extremely angry eyes. And it swooped over very quickly. At this time, Gio finally understood what she had overlooked. She actually ignored where the egg came from. Now it is obvious that mom is coming to take revenge on her. Who could she have accidentally done? Jiyu was about to cry, but had no tears. She really didn't mean it. She couldn't see it at all at that time. However, the big bird doesn't care about the reason. It finally laid an egg. Although it is not a fertilized egg that can hatch life. It is also the first egg it lays, which has a different meaning. Who would have thought that it was just going out to look for food when it suddenly felt that the egg was broken? This was really distressing for it. Thinking of this, it glared at Ji Yao even worse and sped up to chase her. Ji Yao felt the big bird behind her getting closer and closer. Her heart tightened and she sped up and flew forward. Ji Yao couldn't help but feel sad when she thought that she had been chased all the time recently. Poor her. Chapter 523 Pursuit Battle Little White Ball! Jia shouted loudly to the small white ball in front of her, trying to make it stop 
and then take it back. But at this time, Xiao Bai Tuan was competing with Yun Ling, looking like he would not give up until he caught up with him. Sure. At this moment, the big bird finally caught up with Ji Yao and stretched out its claws to grab Ji Yao. Ji Yao was shocked, turned around and threw a thunder ball at the big bird, then continued running forward. This is a ninth level monster. At this time, Li Yuan was being used by her to escape, so she could no longer use her sword in tension. Ji Yao once again had thoughts about Yun Ling. If Yun Ling had taken over, she would not have faced this problem. After all, my current understanding of swordsmanship is too low, and I have not yet reached the point where man and sword can become one. So the magic weapon of my destiny is extremely important. The big bird was frightened by the sudden appearance of the Nine Heavens Divine Thunder, and quickly retreated back. The Thunder Ball chased it with powerful destructive power, because monsters and plant-based demon cultivators need to face extremely powerful tribulations if they want to advance into human form. This heavenly calamity is much stronger than human cultivation, and usually involves a narrow escape from death. Therefore, monsters and beasts are afraid of thunder, not to mention the nine-day divine thunder. Explode! In order to buy time for herself to escape, Ji Ya directly detonated the nine heavens divine thunder. Boom! The nine heavens divine thunder exploded into space, and countless white clouds were enveloped in it. The big bird was affected by the shock, screaming and retreating into the distance. Seeing that the Divine Thunder had stopped the big bird, Ji Yu breathed a sigh of relief and continued to chase Xiao Bai Tuan and the others. Huh? Ji Yu saw Yun Ling turning around and trying to run from the side. Her eyes lit up. She also changed direction and flew towards the direction it was going, hoping to intercept it with Xiao Bai Tuan. On the other side, the remaining power of the Divine Thunder disappeared, and the big bird chirped twice angrily, and chased Ji Yu again angrily. How dare this guy blow it up? In this way, one person, one bird, one beast, and one spirit started a pursuit battle. As long as the big bird came close, Jia would throw thunder at it, almost killing the big bird. Two hours passed. Jia suddenly braked to a stop, and the big bird also stopped, stopping not far away and looking at Jia panting. After all, it can't take pills like Jia, and its spiritual power has been consumed a lot. Senior bird, can we stop chasing him? Ji Ya smiled ingratiatingly at Big Bird. But there was really no end to this, and she could only waste time here. She also wants to go out and pursue opportunities. Sure. Big Bird can understand Ji Yu's words. But he has not yet transformed and cannot speak human words. After all, to be able to speak human words at a young age requires a relatively noble bloodline. Generally, monsters can only do this after they have transformed. I'm really sorry. It was my fault for breaking your balls while sitting on my seat but I really didn't mean it. How about I compensate you? Ji Yu sincerely apologized to Big Bird. It was indeed her seat that broke it for no reason. There is nothing wrong with others chasing her for her eggs. Sure. Big Bird tilted his head in confusion and looked at Ji Yu in confusion. There's drama. Ji Yu felt happy when she saw the Big Bird looking like this. She took out a lot of elixirs and herbs and even found an egg. This egg was also given to her by Uncle Chin, saying it was the egg of a nine-headed eagle. The nine-headed eagle is a powerful monster with nine heads and nine lives. Here, can I give this egg to you? Ji Ya twitched her lips in embarrassment and tried to hand out the bird egg. Although it was not the same species, it was still a bird egg after all. Chapter 524 Compensation Sure. The big bird chirped twice at Ji Ya with some confusion and stretched its neck to look at the egg in Ji Ya's hand. Ji Ya felt happy when she saw that it was not angry and was still very interested in the egg in its heart. Looks like there's drama. Ahem. Look at this egg. How round and cute it is. It can hatch babies in the future. Ji Yu stretched out her left hand and pretended to touch the egg in her hand, while paying attention to the big bird from the corner of her eye. Sure enough, the big bird was attracted by the egg in Yu's hand. This was the first time it had seen such an egg. Think about it. How boring you are here. You have no friends. If you hatch it in the future, you will have friends. Ji Yu's little mouth talked about the benefits of this egg. Sure. The big bird finally wavered and tentatively stretched out its claws towards Ji Yu. Seeing that it agreed, Ji Yu immediately narrowed her eyes with a smile. Then you can't hurt me. I'll hand it over to you. Ji Yu said as she tentatively handed the egg to the big bird. But she was always prepared in her heart. If the big bird went against her promise, she could launch it. Attack. But everything was fine. Ji Yu successfully handed the egg to the big bird and also gave it all the elixirs. 
The big bird curiously took the egg and held it carefully in its talons, fearing that it would be crushed. Jeeves smiled. It seemed that this big bird had been staying in this secret realm for a long time and had a relatively simple mind. The big bird looked at the egg for a moment, then turned around to find a cloud and carefully hid it. While hiding it, he looked back at Ji Yao defensively, fearing that she would break its egg again. Ji Yao looked at the sky speechlessly. She really didn't mean it. She was not interested in those eggs. After the big bird hid the egg, it returned not far away from Zio. Sometimes it tilted its head to look at her, and sometimes it looked at the pill that Zio handed it. What is this little black lump? Big Bird is a little confused and doesn't understand why this person is doing this for him. Seeing its appearance, Zio suddenly realized that it seemed that it had never seen the pill. This elixir is very delicious. You will grow up after eating it. Zio smiled and took out an elixir and demonstrated how to swallow it. Sure enough, when the big bird saw that she had finished eating, he also imitated it and took a bite of the pill. Suddenly, a warm breath spread throughout the body. The medicinal power spread, and the spiritual power gradually recovered. The big bird's eyes lit up, and he immediately pecked another pill. Seeing that it liked pills so much, Ji Yu looked at Xiao Bai Tuan and Yun Ling who were still chasing, and started fighting Xiao Jiujiu again. Ahem, that senior bird. How about we negotiate a deal? Jia said, taking out more pill bottles from the storage ring and shaking them in her hand. While the big bird was melting the elixir, he looked up at Ji Yao, somewhat curious about what kind of deal they could negotiate. Senior bird, please help me conquer Yun Ling together, and I will give you all the pills in my hand. Okay? Ji Yao shook the bottle and tried hard to attract big bird's attention. Big bird looked at the medicine bottle and Yun Ling, and finally succumbed to the charm of the medicine and nodded. Seeing this, Ji Yao happily put her hands on her hips and laughed. She is such a clever little girl. Let's go then. Ji Yao waved to Big Bird, stepped on Li Yuan and chased Yun Ling. The Big Bird chose another direction and flew over, preparing to intercept Yun Ling. It had discovered Yun Ling a long time ago and knew its habits very well. Chapter 525 Conquer Yun Ling Sure enough, the direction in which the Big Bird flew was exactly the direction that Yun Ling had chosen. As soon as he saw the Big Bird appear, Yun Ling immediately stopped and was about to change direction and continue to escape. However, he was stopped by Ji Yao and Xiao Bai Tuan and was surrounded by them. Yun Ling suddenly became anxious and rushed left and right, trying to take advantage of the opportunity to escape. Seeing that it was finally stopped, Xiao Bai Tuan let out a cry of excitement, then opened his mouth wide and bit Yun Ling. Suddenly, a phantom appeared and swallowed Yun Ling with its mouth wide open. Yun Ling was startled and ran around anxiously but still couldn't escape and was swallowed by Xiao Bai Tuan. Seeing that Xiao Bai Tuan's shadow was bigger than before, Ji Yao smiled happily, and at the same time, she felt a little sorry for Xiao Bai Tuan. Although he is still quite wealthy, he mainly buys some cultivation materials. Because he is a sword cultivator, no one prepares any spiritual objects from heaven and earth for him. As for his own luck, he couldn't match any spiritual beings from heaven and earth. As a result, Yu Xiao Bai Tuan had only reached the second level after so long, and his growth was far away. The same goes for Xu Xu. Without the spiritual beings of heaven and earth, his recovery is extremely slow. If you follow yourself, you will end up wronging them. This is why she is now more and more eager for opportunities. She wants them to get better and better, instead of just herself making progress. Wu Xiao Bai Tuan swallowed Yun Ling without any discomfort, and happily jumped into Ji Yao's arms. Jiyo caught it with a smile and gently rubbed its head. Xiao Bai Tuan narrowed his eyes comfortably and enjoyed a wave of Ji Yao's smooth hair before carefully standing up and preparing to spit out Yun Ling. Master, be prepared to shed your blood to recognize your master. And don't let Yun Ling run away again. Xu Xu hurriedly warned. It didn't want them to engage in another pursuit battle. Okay. Jiyo nodded. First broke the fingers on her right hand and was ready to recognize her master. Seeing this, Xiao Bai Tuan spat out the Yun Ling towards Ji Yao's right hand. Ji Yao immediately held it, and the blood immediately stained the Yun Ling and penetrated into it, sensing the blood seeping into Yun Ling. Ji Yao immediately entered into Yun Ling's soul with her left hand by forming a contract of acknowledgement. Soon, Ji Yao felt a connection with Yun Ling in her soul, and a close will came from her. Done! Ji Yao felt happy, and now she was in the mood to observe the Yun Ling in her hand. This Yun Ling currently looks very small white, fluffy, and extremely comfortable to the touch. 
making Ji Yao unable to put it down. What name should I give you? Ji Yao looked at Yun Ling with some distress. After all, Yun Ling also produced a spiritual creature of heaven and earth with intelligence. So he still needed a name. Then, how about calling her Duo Duo? Ji Yao was very satisfied with this name. Yun Duo Yun Duo. Such a soft and waxy girl must be a cute girl. So calling her Duo Duo is really suitable. Yun Ling realized that she had a name and twisted shyly in Ji Yao's hand. Ji Yao was so cute by Yun Ling that her heart melted. She picked up Yun Ling and kissed her gently. Suddenly, Yun Ling suddenly turned red, startling Ji Yao. When she felt the shyness coming from Yun Ling in her soul, Ji Yao breathed a sigh of relief. It turned out that she was shy. She thought her kiss was poisonous. Ji Yao put Yun Ling away happily and then looked at the big bird who was waiting obediently. Thank you, senior bird. Ji Yao smiled and handed the elixir to Big Bird and took some out of the storage ring. Anyway, she only took elixirs that healed injuries or restored spiritual power. These elixirs improved her cultivation. She didn't need it. So she gave it to her too. Chapter 526 Drilling into the Dog Hole Big Bird was not polite to Jiyo and put away all the elixirs. Jiyo saw that the matter here had been settled. And there were clouds everywhere. And it didn't look like there was still a chance. So she planned to leave. But she didn't know where the exit was. Senior Bird, do you know where this place is in contact with the outside world? Jia asked Big Bird. Big Bird thought for a while and nodded. Really? Senior Bird, can you lead the way? Jia smiled obediently at the Big Bird. With its guidance, she could save a lot of effort. Big Bird nodded, turned his back, and squatted down. Jia was stunned for a moment. And then she realized that Big Bird was going to take her there. Thank you. Senior Bird. Jia thanked him happily took the little white ball back into the sea of consciousness and climbed up behind the big bird. As soon as he sat down, the big bird spread its wings and flew forward at great speed. Gio lost her balance, leaned back, and immediately reached out to grab the big bird, thus preventing her from lying down. This big bird is really impatient. Gio held the big bird tightly and felt herself moving quickly through the white clouds. It was really a bit dreamy. The big bird flew with Gio for about an hour before stopping at a corner. Thank you, senior bird. Jia jumped off the bird's back and boldly touched the big bird's head. Big bird narrowed his eyes and touched Jia's palm. Obviously very happy. Jia smiled and took back her hand, preparing to explore a way to leave. But the big bird turned around and flew away, leaving her with only a handsome back. It has to go back to hatch eggs. Jia didn't hesitate and looked at the white wall in front of her intently. Soon, she saw a small hole below. It's not what she thinks. Is it? Jiyo has a row of black lines on her forehead. Could it be that the way to leave here is to get out of this hole? What is the difference between this and drilling a dog hole? Jiyo refused. After all, she was a goddess with unparalleled beauty and integrity. So how could she get into a dog's hole? How embarrassing. Jiyo shook her head, took out an escaped talisman from the storage ring, and planned to repeat her old trick and leave in this way. Unfortunately, this method doesn't work at all. Jiyo had no choice but to explore around again to see if there were any other mysteries. A quarter of an hour later, Jiyo returned to the cave resignedly, looking at the hole with despair. It seemed that he was really going to get through this hole. Cough! Jiyo coughed unnaturally, then squatted down and prepared to crawl over. After all, for the sake of cultivation, her face is a trivial matter, and no one would recognize her anyway. After some mental preparation, Jiyo crawled toward the cave entrance with a hot face. Fortunately, the white wall was not thick. Jiyo climbed to the other side as soon as she entered. Jiyo felt happy and immediately stood up and clapped her hands. No one should see such a cowardly look. Right? Jiyo thought so in her heart. Raised her head, but suddenly froze in place. Because at this moment, someone not far away was looking at her with interest. If not the wrongly I met before, who could he be? Romley looked at the monk crawling out of the hole in amusement. He didn't expect there to be monks who were so careless about their image. However, the person in front of me was wearing a bamboo hat that blocked out spiritual consciousness. So I couldn't tell who he or she was. At this time, Jia felt unlucky in her heart. Why did she meet this annoying guy again? Just looking at him affects my mood. Chapter 527 Meeting Romley Again Fellow Taoist, you are really in a good mood. Romley has obtained the inheritance. And this is the time when he is very satisfied. In this secret realm, 
The only ones who could pose a threat to him were the nascent soul cultivators. But they could never wear hats. So this person was definitely not one of them. Ji rolled her eyes. This man was really annoying as always. He looked so aloof. She didn't know how he survived to this day. Ahem. Fellow Taoist. You are joking. Ji Ya deliberately lowered her voice. After all, she had been in contact with him before. And she would be recognized by her original voice. Romley raised his eyebrows in confusion when he heard Ji Yao's voice. The voice seemed familiar. But he couldn't remember who it was. But no matter what he thought, he couldn't doubt Ji Yao. After all, in his opinion, how could such a stunning beauty do such a thing as drilling a hole? Unable to think of who it was, Romley gave up and just smiled. Ji Yao also took the opportunity to look at the surrounding environment. This was a relatively empty room, with just a monument standing there. That's a merit steal from ancient times. The voice of Xu Xu came from the Sea of Consciousness and explained to Ji Yao. Oh! Ji Yao responded in the Sea of Consciousness. It usually contains the inheritance of monks. Used to find successors. The book is relatively concise and concise. It roughly observed the transfer monument. The level is not very high. At most, it is left by the monks in the integration period. It really can't see it. Upper eyes. When Jia heard this, she looked at Rongli and saw that his face was full of contentment. She must have gained the inheritance. It seems that this person is quite lucky. Rongli glanced at Ji Yao and made sure that the other party had no intention of taking action against him. And then began to observe the surroundings. He has been delayed in the merit monument for a long time. And he doesn't know what's going on outside. But he doesn't want his treasure to be snatched away by others. Jia was also looking around for a way out. With Rongli's temperament, there would definitely be no good things left here. So she might as well leave as soon as possible. But Jia looked at it for a long time and found no mystery. The walls here seemed to have been polished. And there could be no mechanism at all. The same goes for Rongli, who couldn't find the exit and frowned slightly. Finally, his eyes turned back to the Merit Monument, which was the only unique thing here. Returning to the monument, Romley quickly discovered a small bulge at the bottom of the monument. When he stretched out his hand and pressed it, the entire power transfer monument suddenly turned into powder and dissipated directly into the air. At this moment, countless thunderbolts rained down from the space, crackling and flashing. Ji Yao was startled and immediately took out Li Yuan and drew her sword to resist the thunderball. As soon as the sword intent is emitted, it is divided into dozens of sword intent, which scatters the approaching thunderballs. It's not easy for Ji Yao to use the Nine Heavens Divine Thunder. After all, Rongli has seen her before and can easily recognize her. Rongli was not panicked. The student from Chuanggong Bai Middle School just happened to be able to deal with this situation easily. It must be a test. But he didn't expect that person to be a sword cultivator. And judging from the fluctuations of her sword spirit, she was a peak foundation building cultivator. Rongli glanced at Ji Yao lightly, took out the trident from the storage ring, and lightly swiped upwards. Suddenly, a thunder net easily wrapped all the thunder balls. And then ice sculptures quickly formed into balls. And in these ice sculptures, the thunder balls are still crackling and flashing. Immortal weapon! Shu Shu shouted in surprise. Chapter 528 7 Star Shuanji Formation. What? Jia was so shocked that English came out of her mouth. She once wondered if she had heard it wrong. Shu Shu! Are you saying that the trident is an immortal weapon? Ji Yao asked Shu Shu in disbelief in the sea of consciousness. Yes, it is indeed an immortal weapon. Xu Xu did not expect to see immortal weapons in Shifeng continent. Ji Yu looked at Rongli with admiration. This is another son of heaven. In the original work, the immortal weapon can only be encountered in Chi Chi later. But I didn't expect that this person could also encounter it. It seems that this is also a man of great luck. Rongli saw that he could control the thunder ball easily and raised the corner of his lips with a faint smile. The power of the immortal weapon was indeed extraordinary. It directly doubled his combat power. I don't know how powerful this trident will be in the future as my cultivation level increases. The thunder ball was completely controlled at this time. At this moment, the entire space once again cast a white light, immediately covering Ji Yao and Rongli. Ji Yao immediately closed her eyes, fearing that her eyes would be hurt again. But I didn't expect that the white light this time was extremely comfortable and had the effect of restoring spiritual power. This is really infuriating. Ji rolled her eyes in her heart. This Tiandao's biological son was treated differently. A feeling of weightlessness came, and Ji Yao tried her best to stabilize her body. Within a few breaths, Ji Yao felt herself touching the ground. 
When she opened her eyes again, she realized she was in the main hall. What she saw before her eyes was a dark mass of human heads. Shio was startled. But she didn't expect to be teleported into the crowd again. Some of the people she met during the previous raid were also here. But Jia took a quick look and found that there were only a few hundred people here. I don't know if the others haven't teleported over yet, or have already died. Brother Rongli! As soon as Rongli appeared, Lu Xiangyu rushed over, threw himself into Rongli's arms, stretched out his hands, and hugged his waist tightly. Rongli smiled and reached out to touch her hair. Jia looked at the sky speechlessly. With so many monks here, these two people did not shy away from suspicion. This is a secret realm. They dare to fall in love. They are indeed children of luck, and have no fear at all. Humph! It's better for this girl to be more careful. A beautiful female cultivator in white said with slight dissatisfaction. TSK. Jia seems to smell the sour smell in the air. Hearing this, Lu Xiangyu came out of his arms in embarrassment. He lowered his head, and his ears were red. He looked shy and didn't say anything. Seeing her like this, the female cultivator in white became even more angry. But she couldn't say anything else, and could only tilt her head to the side. Shio didn't have the time to eat melon at this time. Instead, she looked towards the front of the crowd. But there were so many people, and she couldn't use her spiritual sense to detect. There were all monks higher than her here, including those nascent soul monks. If she used her spiritual sense, they would consider it offensive. There was no other way. Shio could only step on the yuan and rise into the air, crane her neck and look forward. There are three doors in front, namely black, white, and red. There is a formation on each door, and many monks are sitting in front of the door studying the solution to the formation. Shia took a quick look and found that she knew the formation on the black door. Among the inheritances given to her by her master before, it was an ancient formation, the seven-star Shuanji formation. This formation is more complicated because it has seven ways to open it. After unlocking the formation, even if everyone goes in together, the places they go to are completely different. Chapter 529 Sneak Attack At this time, there was only one monk sitting in front of the black door, staring at the door with a frown. The other two doors are not ancient formations, so there are more people trying to solve them. Jiya was a little hesitant. Should she solve this formation? If you don't go... It's likely that no one will be able to open the door. And you'll probably miss the opportunity. But if you go there, and know how to use ancient formations, you will definitely attract the attention of others. But my cultivation level is too low. So I may be in danger. Jiyo was entangled in her heart, and couldn't make up her mind for a while. At this moment, Chen Qixian, the late Jean Dan cultivator, who had snatched the light group before, led a few people, and approached Jiyo, with an extremely unkind look on his face. She used heart skipped a beat. Her dress was so eye-catching that she was recognized. The main reason is that she is the only monk here who wears a bamboo hat. So it should not be too obvious. Fellow Taoist, please hand over your things. Chin Qixian crossed his arms over his chest and looked at Jiyo with disdain. At this time, his injuries had healed and he was back to his full strength. Naturally, he no longer took Jiyao seriously. Jiyao lowered her head and looked at the people on the ground looking up at her feeling helpless. There are so many people here. If they knew what treasure they had got, they would not be able to tear her apart and eat her. However, for this reason, Chen Qixian did not dare to make too much noise, hoping that Ji Yao would recognize the situation and hand over the things. Ji Yao frowned. This person was really haunting. He had obviously got a ball of light, but he still wanted to snatch it from himself. But if there was a fight, he would definitely not be his opponent. After all, the opponents were all golden core cultivators. Shia looked up at the black door, finally made up her mind, and flew Li Yuan over. Chen Qixian did not expect that Ji Yao would not take him seriously at all, and his face immediately darkened, looking at Ji Yao's figure with murderous intentions. When Ji Yao came to the black gate, she noticed an attack as soon as she came down from Li Yuan. Ji Yao quickly teleported away. It was a golden light, with a sharp blade, and it directly cut off a section of Ji Yao's hair. If she hadn't reacted quickly, her neck would have been severed. Ji Yao felt angry for a while, and looked towards the person who made the attack, and found that it was the purple-clothed nascent soul female cultivator she had seen at the door before. At this time, she was leaning on the male cultivator, staring at herself with an interesting expression, as if what just happened had nothing to do with her. An uncontrollable murderous intention arose in Ji Yao's heart. She had no enmity with her, but just now, she had sneak attacked her, and almost killed her. 
TSK. Fellow Taoist, you are hiding your head and showing your tail. But what shameful thing are you going to do? Song Yingcheng played with her hair and looked at Jiyu with charming eyes. Hey, so senior takes action for no reason? Although the best way at this time is not to confront the opponent. Jiyu is still unwilling to be humble. What about the nascent soul monk? It's not the first time she's been provoked. At worst, he would run away if he couldn't win. There was no reason to be afraid of her. Unexpectedly, Ji Yao would be so tough. The smile on Song Yingqing's face froze. And a murderous intent flashed in her eyes. But a junior dared to be so arrogant. Duan Yin noticed the mood of the person in his arms. And became angry in his heart. And the power of the nascent soul stage went directly towards Ji Yao. Ji Yao pouted. His move was useless to her. Chapter 530 Dispute Ji Yao did not dodge. Anyway, the monk's pressure had no effect on her. But at this time, Su Yun appeared in front of Ji Yao and blocked the pressure for her. Ji Yao looked at Su Yun's back with some surprise. The two of them had no contact at all. So why would she stand up for her? Junior sister, what are you doing? Duan Yan asked Su Yun dissatisfiedly. He didn't expect that his junior sister would contradict him in public. She didn't do anything. So what is senior brother doing? Su Yun looked at senior brother with a disappointed look on her face. Wondering when did he become such a strange person? Or should I say that this is his true face? And I have never understood him. My former senior brother was a very chivalrous and kind-hearted person. He was good-tempered towards everyone. And he loved his younger generation very much. So he was known as Junzian. But ever since he met this Wanchi sect woman, he has changed and become unlike him. He puts the woman's happiness, anger, sorrow, and joy first in everything. And even morality is abandoned by him. I wonder what kind of ecstasy soup the woman gave him. Hey, Mr. Duan, don't get angry with junior sister Sue. She definitely didn't mean to deny you face, Song Inching said, patting Duan Yan's chest gently, as if she was afraid that he would be angry. Duan Yan didn't think anything of it at first. But after listening to what Song Inching said, he also felt that the junior sister was deliberately not giving him face. His face suddenly darkened, and he became even more dissatisfied with her. Originally, I became a disciple of my master and worked hard to practice and perform. But my master finally handed over the secret method to my junior sister. He keeps talking about treating himself as his own son all day long. If this is really the case, how can it be so unfair? When Su Yin heard Song Yingqing's words, she looked at her unkindly. This woman was used to sowing discord, which was really annoying. At this time, Ji Yo finally saw that the female cultivator in white was not trying to stand out for herself. But because she disliked the female cultivator in purple. Is it another bloody triangle? Ji Yo shook her head in her heart. Things like feelings could never be forced. Since the other person doesn't love you. Why bother? The world is so beautiful. Why must we indulge in feelings? Are you okay? Seeing that they had stopped talking. The female cultivator in white turned to look at Ji Yao and asked. Thank you. Senior. I'm fine. Ji Yao thanked her sincerely. Although the other party's intention was not pure. In the end, he helped herself. Well, it'll be fine if nothing happens. Su Yun nodded lightly and then returned to her original position. Ji Yao saw that the female cultivator in purple no longer made things difficult for her and stopped talking to them. But she was still wary of her. After all, Judging from the other person's character, he is not a generous person. So he should be careful in the secret realm from now on. Ji Yu came to the black door and sat down cross-legged. As long as everyone wanted to enter, they would not attack those who understood the formation at will. She would be safe in a short period of time. Thinking of this, she calmed down her mind and began to concentrate on understanding the formation. When Song Ying Cheng saw Ji Yao sitting in front of the black door, she smiled disdainfully in order to prevent herself from taking action again. This person actually pretended to understand the formation. That was an ancient formation. But someone like her could solve it. And she really took herself seriously. In her opinion, a person who only dares to wear a hat to cover up is just incapable of trying to confuse the eyes. Chapter 531 Liberation At this time, Ronli also noticed Ji Yao. He didn't expect that the monk who came out together could actually know the ancient formation. Fellow Daoist Rome. This secret realm is full of dangers. Countless people have already died. How about we take action together later? The female cultivator in white came to Ronli and suggested. Hearing this, Ronli looked at the female cultivator in white. And when he saw her red face, the corners of his lips curled up into a smile. 
Ronley certainly couldn't ask for it. Ronley responded with a smile, feeling a little proud in his heart. He was really charming. It's just that he just searched for a long time and didn't find Yishichi. He didn't know that she was in danger? When Lu Xiangyu heard Rongli's response, her heart ached. She held her skirt tightly with both hands, but couldn't say a word of objection. Shi Ye was immersed in the formation, and it took three hours for her to truly find a way to unlock it. The other two doors have still not been opened at this time, and they are still working hard. Shi Yu stood up and was about to untie the formation when Song Yingqing's voice came to her ears again. Hey, let me tell you. Some people always pretend to be fat. But, even if you can't untie it, no one will blame you. Ho ho ho. Song Ying Chung covered her mouth and laughed as she spoke. Stand up. She knew that this person just knew some tricks. And he couldn't sit still after just a moment. When Ji Ya heard this, she turned to look at her. Looking at her, as if she was mentally retarded. How did such a person reach the nascent soul stage? Ji Ya was a little confused. With this ability to attract hatred, she was extremely lucky that she was not killed by others. But what Dio didn't know was that Song and Chung was so unscrupulous because of her low cultivation level. How could she dare to be so arrogant if she met a higher level monk? Xia didn't want to pay attention to her. So she took out a few top quality spiritual stones and threw them towards the nodes on the door. TSK, are you angry out of embarrassment? What do you mean? Song and Chung was about to taunt Ji Yao when he saw this, but suddenly stopped. I saw that the formation pattern suddenly started to flicker at this time, and then completely dissipated in a few breaths. Ji Yao felt happy when she saw this, and immediately rushed in. Others did not expect that Ji Yao could really open the formation. They were stunned for a moment. It was not until they saw Ji Yao rushing in that they came back to their senses. They all rushed towards the door, trying to get in. Poof! The first monk was directly ejected by the door and suffered internal injuries. The monk who was sprinting suddenly stopped a little confused. Wasn't the formation untied? Why can't he get in? There were also monks who refused to give up and insisted on trying. But they were still bounced away. It wasn't until more than 30 people were ejected that the restless crowd finally calmed down. Song Ying Chung didn't expect such a result. And her face was so gloomy that she could shed tears. Duan Yen didn't expect that only that person could enter. He walked to the black door without giving up, stretched out his hand and pushed forward. Suddenly, a force of elasticity hit him. Duan Yen immediately stepped back, thus avoiding the fate of being ejected. What's going on? Did that person just want to take the treasure for herself? She must have done something. Song and Chung shouted angrily, hoping to make Chi Yao offend the public. And then, there would be many people to deal with her. Sure enough, as soon as she finished speaking, all kinds of curses erupted from the crowd. After all, no one could remain calm in front of the baby. Among them, Chen Qixian scolded the loudest. This man is indeed as treacherous as ever. Chapter 532 Spirit Snake On the contrary, Rongli at this time was the calmest of all. Because since he came here, he felt the call from the white door. This feeling was all too familiar. And it meant that his opportunity was about to come. As for the black door, he didn't care. But he was surprised that the man actually unlocked the formation. After all, others have not even solved the contemporary formations for so long. It's a pity that he is good at refining alchemy, refining weapons and making talismans, but he is not good at formations. He can only wait for others to unlock the formations. As soon as Jiao entered the gate, she came to a dark corridor. Unable to use her spiritual consciousness, Jia focused her spiritual power on her eyes, but it was still pitch black and she couldn't see anything. Jia took out a luminous pearl from the storage ring, but found that the luminous pearl did not light up at all. She had no choice but to move forward step by step. As for the formation outside, she wasn't too worried. She did not take the method of unlocking the formation, but chose to change the formation, so that she could only enter by herself. And others had to unlock the new formation before they could enter. This was something she had carefully considered. With her level of cultivation, she might not even be able to drink the soup if she competed with others. At this time, Jia was very grateful to her master. If it weren't for her teachings, she would have missed this door. His! Suddenly, a strange sound came, shocking Ji to stop immediately. His! Another sound came, and Ji Yu's goosebumps rose. Why does this sound sound like the sound of a snake sticking out its tongue? Thinking of this possibility, Ji felt bad. She was originally afraid of this kind of mollusk, but now that she can't see it at all, she is even more afraid. 
She always felt that as she moved forward, she would touch it. Beautiful girl. Are you not injured? Oops. Why is it so dark? Bai Hu was concerned about Ji Yao's body as soon as he came out. After all, it exploded at that time. It's okay. I'm not hurt. Now we have entered a secret passage. Ji Yao was really scared. So she could only let the white fox out to embolden her. Isn't it too dark? Why can't I see it at all? The white fox nervously hugged Ji Yao's calf. It was afraid of the dark. Ahem. Old Bai. I thought I heard the sound of a snake just now. Ji Yao noticed that the white fox was so timid and felt a little helpless. She still expected it to rush forward. What? Snake? The white fox trembled when he heard the words, remembering how it once fought with an 8th level python spirit snake and was finally tortured. It was absolutely tragic. Well, I just don't know what level of monster it is. Just as she responded, there was another hissing sound. At this moment, two green dots suddenly appeared in front of them. She shuddered. Those must be the eyes of the monster. His. The green eyes suddenly jumped up and quickly attacked Jiyo's direction. Jiyo immediately held the Yuan in her hand and struck it with a lightning attribute sword intent. Hiss! The sword struck directly on the spirit snake's head and exploded violently, splitting it into two halves and causing it to fall down. Jiyo breathed a sigh of relief when she saw that it could be solved so easily. It was really difficult to fight this blind enemy. Huh? It doesn't look like a powerful monster. The white fox also breathed a sigh of relief and the psychological shadow was slightly lessened. Let's go on. Jiyo held the Yuan in her hands, tensed her nerves, and carefully continued to touch forward. But after a while, two pairs of green eyes appeared again. Chapter 533 Snakes Jiyo immediately struck one of them with her sword and threw a thunder ball at the other. Boom! The thunder ball was finally detonated by Jiyo and exploded, killing two more spiritual snakes immediately. But Jiyo was not happy at all because countless eyes appeared densely in front of her eyes. Old Bai, Ji Yu swallowed, and her current situation was automatically figured out in her mind. Just thinking about it almost made her suffocate. Ah! The white fox replied to Ji Yu, hugging her legs tightly, looking at the green snakes. He was afraid. Soon, the snakes flew towards Ji Yu quickly. Ji Yu quickly threw out a thunder net to temporarily intercept them, then took out a large handful of flame talisman explosive talisman from the storage ring and threw it over. Suddenly, the entire corridor was filled with crackling explosions, like firecrackers. At the same time, bursts of fire lighted up, and Jia finally saw clearly the situation ahead. But she would rather she couldn't see anything. It was a group of pythons with various patterns. At this time, they were all entangled together. Some were injured by the explosion, with their skin and flesh torn and blood flowing. Jia felt scared and disgusted when she saw it. This thing was so scary. After using up the talismans, Jia quickly grabbed a handful and threw them over, who made her rich. She still didn't feel bad about these talismans. In this way, Jia threw talismans one after another and finally killed the group of snakes. Huh, Jia let out a long breath. She really didn't want to see this thing. Beautiful girl, I think there must be a snake king here. Maybe it is the one who commands these spiritual snakes to attack. Bai Hu hugged Ji Yao's legs and looked around nervously as he spoke. Well, I think so too. Ji Yao nodded heavily. This was exactly what she was worried about. Although there were many spirit snakes, their cultivation was low, which was not bad. But if there is a high-level snake king here, it will be troublesome. Let's be careful. Ji Yao warned Bai Hu, and then continued to move forward. It's open! A monk finally unlocked the formation of the white door and stood up excitedly. The whole crowd suddenly became excited. And Rong Li's eyes lit up. And he was ready to rush in. The monk got excited and rushed into the gate. And one after another, people rushed forward, tentatively rushing to the door. After all, the lesson learned from the black door just now was still there. Surprisingly, anyone can enter. Suddenly, the entire crowd was in chaos. And everyone rushed towards the white door. Several nascent soul cultivators also rushed in, followed closely by Rong Li and two female cultivators. There were only two people left in the entire hall. One person is still immersed in the formation of the red door. And the other person is in silence. Lingji knew that if he went in together, he would probably not be able to grab anything. So he might as well take a gamble. If the red door was unlocked, almost no one would be able to grab it from him. Kang Langji. Jian Song was exploring a cave with Qin Chen, 
when suddenly a thousand miles communication talisman came over. Jian Song raised his eyebrows, caught the communication talisman, and crushed it. Jian Song, I recently performed a divination for your eldest disciple and discovered that his love calamity is about to happen. And I discovered that his love calamity is actually different now, which may endanger his path to immortality. Ji Shizhi said with a heavy heart. The voice came out. Chapter 534 Love Disaster is Coming. Jian Song's heart sank when he heard this. And he looked at Qin Chen seriously. Your eldest disciple still has a love disaster? Qin Chen raised his eyebrows in surprise. He only heard that his little disciple had a death disaster. So why did his eldest disciple have another love disaster? Besides, he had seen Luo Chuan before. He was a veritable cultivator. And he didn't seem to be a person capable of love disaster. Well, Ji Shuzi once calculated it for him. But he didn't say it would be so serious. It would have an impact on the path to immortality. Jian Song frowned tightly. He really didn't expect it to be so serious. Ji Shuzi had talked to him before. Although his eldest disciple suffered from emotional calamity, the impact was not great and it was easy to get through it. But today his tone has obviously become serious. So this love disaster is no small matter. After all, Ji Shuzi has never made a mistake in divination. What should we do? Why don't we go back? Qin Chen was also a little worried about Luo Chuan. Although Ji Shuzi usually looked unreliable, he never joked when it came to divination. What about you? Jian Song has already made up his mind to return to Wanjin sect. After all, with him here, he might be able to prevent the situation from happening. Go back with you. After all, you are also my nephew. So you can help me when the time comes. Qin Chen decided to go back together. Okay, let's go. Jian Song nodded and started to go home. At the same time, he sent a messenger talisman to Luo Hong, wanting to confirm whether Luo Chuan was still in retreat. Jia on the other side had no idea about this matter. At this time, she had walked very far in the corridor. And suddenly, she found a bright place on the left side of the corridor. It was only when she suddenly saw light that she couldn't open her eyes for a while. After a moment of relaxation, Jiu opened her eyes again. His! Jia was shocked by the sight in front of her. This was actually an extremely prosperous room. Why is it said to be prosperous? Because it is golden everywhere. The walls, stone pillars, and beds were all engraved with patterns, like a hundred birds facing a phoenix. With this golden decoration, it is simply eye-catching. Jia once suspected that she had arrived in the room of a mortal nouveau riche. Oh no! Maybe even the nouveau riche won't like this color. Yeah! These are all made of gold! Right! The white fox jumped into the room with excitement, picked up the gold abacus on the table skillfully, and bit into it. Hey! It's true! It's true! Bai Hu happily waved his paw towards Ji Yao, beckoning her to go and take a look. Ji Yao watched the white fox's movement speechlessly. To their monks, this gold was really just dirt. Only the white fox was so excited. Bai Hu was excited for a while. Seeing Ji Yao's expressionless face, he also reacted. He put down his abacus angrily and squatted on the table for a while not knowing how to react. After all, it is also a young master. It was so embarrassing just now. But it's no wonder. When we were in the mortal world, the most precious thing those people had was gold. And everyone who saw it wanted to take a bite. Gio cautiously stepped into the room and looked at it carefully. The most abundant items in this room are gold products. Such as tables, chairs, abacus, flower pots, combs, and even the wash basin are all made of gold. I don't know what the aesthetics of the owner of this room are. Jia shook her head and walked around the room, finally stopping at the bedside, because she finally found something that wasn't gold. There was actually an ice pillow placed on this bed, which was really out of place in the room. Chapter 535, Flowing Firestone. Hey, there is an ice pillow here? Seeing Jia stopping in front of the bed, by who came over curiously and discovered the jade pillow. Well. It seems that the mystery of this room lies in this ice pillow. Jia looked at the ice pillow with a serious expression and did not dare to touch it rashly. Really? Then let me come and see what the mystery is? Seeing Ji Yao's hesitation, Bai Hu jumped on the bed and stretched out his claws to grab the ice pillow. Ouch! The white fox's paws were instantly burned red as soon as they touched the ice pillow and it howled in pain. Jia was startled and immediately took it back. When she took a look at its paws, she found that there were several big blisters on it, and even the skin was peeling off in some places. Ji Yao quickly took out the elixir and gave it to Bai Hu. That's too much. 
Hu the age, Al would deliberately cheat me. Bai Hu nestled in Ji Yao's arms, complaining while holding her little paws aggrievedly. Who would have thought that an ice pillow could be hot to the touch? And it's so powerful? After all, the white fox is a seventh level monster, and the strength of its fur is extraordinary. Even if it is a strange fire, it will take a while to burn before being injured. But this ice pillow was burned at the first contact. Jia watched the white fox's claws gradually recover before feeling relieved. As long as it was not an irrecoverable injury, there was still no change in the ice pillow at this time. It just lay there quietly without even a trace of breath coming out. Jia frowned, took out a blank talisman paper from the storage ring, and tentatively threw it on top of the ice pillow. Sure enough, as soon as the talisman landed on the ice pillow, it was instantly ignited, turned into ashes in the blink of an eye, and dissipated in the air. The white fox's eyes widened. What's the difference between this ice pillow and fire? But no matter how hard I looked, I couldn't see any sign of fire. Jia tried hard to think about the spiritual objects in the world that she had seen before, but she still could not find anything like this. Shu Shu, do you know what this is? Ji Yao had no choice but to ask Shu Shu for help. Shu Shu Bin was playing with Xiao Bai Tuan in the sea of consciousness when he suddenly heard Ji Yao's voice and glanced outside. Why is this thing here? Shu Shu was startled by Bing Jin. How could this thing appear in Shifeng Continent? Huh? Shu Shu, do you know this? Jia's eyes lit up when she heard this, and her heart was filled with curiosity. This is something from the god realm. It's called a flowing fire stone. You'd better not touch it. Shu Shu reminded Jia in a low voice. Flowing fire stone? Jia frowned. This name made her feel a bit like a meteorite from her previous life? Yes. The temperature of this thing will change, and its appearance will change with the environment. For example, it is in the ice and snow world now. So it looks like a block of ice. But if it is in other environments, it will not look like this. Shushu explained patiently. Furthermore, few people dare to touch this thing. Because no matter what level of cultivation you have, it can adjust to a temperature that will burn you. And will adjust itself according to what touches it. No matter what protective measures you have. Even if you have this, the Yuling Yui will instantly turn into ashes if it touches it. Jiyo's eyes widened when she heard this and she looked at the flowing fire stone in front of her in disbelief. Even heaven and earth spiritual objects, such as strange fire or ice spirits, need to be advanced. And they are not very powerful in their initial state. For example, the first level strange fire can't cause any harm to the Yuanying monks. At most, it will cause a little damage to their robes. It requires constant consumption of flames to advance. Chapter 536 Strange Bedsheets Then why is this bed okay? Jia looked at the bed with some confusion. Why was there nothing wrong with it? There must be something wrong with this sheet. Shushu was also a little surprised. He didn't even know what material this sheet was made of. Hearing this, Jia looked at the bed sheet seriously. This was also a golden bed sheet, with an unknown material on it embroidered with a dragon flying in the clouds and riding the mist. Then this flowing fire stone should be considered a treasure. Right. Will it be used to hit people in the future? Jiyu touched her chin and began to think about how to take this treasure away. Yes. It can do more than this. You will know it later. However, you have to find a way to take it away first. And I have never heard of anyone who can identify the flowing flint stone as its owner. Shu Shu then he paused, coughed, and then spoke. Ahem. So you don't have to hope that you can recognize it as its owner. Shu Shu directly broke through Jia's fantasy. This flowing flint has indeed never heard of anyone who can recognize its owner, let alone the mysterious owner of its family. Luck. Ahem. That's it. Jiyu coughed awkwardly. She would not admit that she really had this idea just now. Then I'll give it a try and take the sheet away with me. Jia thought for a while and stretched out her claws towards the sheet. She rolled up the sheet and finally wrapped the flint stone in it. Sure enough, there was a bed sheet. And Li Huisher didn't react at all. And was put into the storage ring by Jiyu. TSK. There is actually something that can restrain the flowing fire stone. Shu Shu smacked his lips. There is something that can restrain the thing that used to give the gods a headache. Although nothing can restrain it. As long as the monks don't touch the flint stone. Won't they be fine? Jiyu was a little confused. Listening to Shushu's tone. This flint stone seems to be more difficult to handle. But as long as she doesn't touch it. It will be fine. Already? It would be great if this flowing fire stone was really that simple. It would also be intelligent. And it would also change into various forms and hide in nature. If anyone accidentally messes with it, 
It can chase you to the ends of the earth. I won't give up. Shushu remembered that there was once a monk from the god realm who accidentally stepped on the flowing fire stone and was hunted for tens of thousands of years, but finally died. This thing is very domineering. Really? Xiao's heart trembled. She didn't offend it by putting it away. What if it chases her in the future? It was burnt in minutes. Don't think about it. Do you really think it's so easy to develop spiritual intelligence? That piece of flowing fire stone can't possibly develop spiritual intelligence if it's not tens of thousands of years old. Unless there are some special circumstances. Shushu rolled his eyes in his heart. And could how can it be so easy to give birth to something intelligent? However, since it is following you, don't think about special encounters or anything like that. When Jia heard this, she felt like an arrow had been hit in her chest. Shushu still didn't give her face when he spoke, and he didn't even know how to take care of her glassy heart. Oh! She curled her lips aggrievedly. Her luck has improved a lot now. When she survives the calamity of death, she will pick up the spirit stone when she goes out and scare it to death. Snort. Bai who watched Chi Yao's changing expressions with great interest. Her eyes were shining sometimes, and her lips were pouting. Could it be that there was something wrong with her head? Beautiful girl. Bai who tugged at Chi Yao's skirt worriedly, fearing that if she was stupid, how could he hold her thigh in the future? Okay. It's okay. Let's see if there are any treasures here. And then let's go. Xi Yao withdrew from the sea of consciousness and touched the white fox's head. Chapter 537, Vestments Okay. The white fox shook its tail, jumped off the bed, and began to rummage around the room. Hey, pretty girl, there are so many beautiful clothes here. The white fox made a loud noise as soon as he opened the wardrobe, stretched out his paws, and pulled at the robes excitedly. Xi Yao raised her eyebrows when she heard this, and walked over in a flash. But when she saw the clothes in the wardrobe, Ji Yao's mother jumped. What's so good about these golden clothes? Originally, Ji Yao felt that her Yuling Yui was already ostentatious enough. After all, the bright red color also had some golden embroidery threads added to it. But when she saw these robes in front of her, she suddenly felt that her own robes were too low-key. These golden cassocks have different styles. And you can tell at a glance that they are the cassocks of female monks. Each piece is embroidered with different patterns. And the colors of the embroidery threads are also different which is really wonderful. However, these robes are all high-grade magic weapons. But the high-level robes have stronger defensive capabilities than the Yuling feather clothes she wears. Chiyo was a little moved. I like it so much. But why can't I wear it? The white fox rubbed his face against the cassock, with a sad look on his face. He couldn't wear such a beautiful dress. Chiyo rolled her eyes. How did this white fox develop its appreciation level? A match for the owner of this room. Let's do this. I'll take these robes away and go out. I'll find a shop to have them altered for you so you can wear them. Xiao thought that there were still traces of bird eggs on her robes. It would be best to change them now. A piece of clothing. But looking at the clothes in the wardrobe, Xiao hesitated. In fact, every piece was a bit glorious. Really? Bai Hu widened his eyes and looked at Xiao expectantly and asked. But I can't transform into a human form yet. How can I wear it? Don't worry about this. You can definitely wear it. And it looks good. Xia thought of the pets in the world. Didn't they just wear clothes? Of course Lao Bai can do it too. Okay. Okay. Put it away quickly. The white fox nodded excitedly. It couldn't wait to wear its little clothes. Okay. Xia nodded and put away all the robes. Finally. She was left with a relatively simple robe. Which she replaced with her own yuling yui. Xia took out the spiritual mirror and mustered up the courage to look into the mirror only to find that it was unexpectedly pretty. The lines of the entire cassock are very smooth. The skirt is a bit large. And it will sway as you step. And there are several red lotuses embroidered on the hem, which are faintly hidden in the folds. Jia took a few steps, and found that the effect of the step-by-step -step lotus technique made her look a bit more beautiful. It seemed that she made this dress look beautiful. Jia patted her face narcissistically. As expected, she looked good no matter what she wore. Bai Hu looked at Jia with envy. He couldn't even wear such beautiful clothes. Gio admired herself for a moment, then put the spirit mirror away, and then searched the room again. But in the end, she couldn't find anything else. Let's go! Gia led Baihu back to the corridor, and then groped forward. I just don't know where the next bright spot is. It would be great if they all have treasures. The red door outside was finally opened at this time, and the monk who had relieved the formation rushed in excitedly. Ling Ji looked at his back and smiled maliciously. 
Chapter 538 Phantom Pearl On the other side, Xiao had been groping along the corridor for two hours and encountered many spiritual snakes, all of which she had to deal with. It's just that the cultivation level of these spirit snakes is very low, and there is no difficulty at all. But it makes Geo feel uneasy. After all, judging from the room just now, there are many treasures in this corridor. How can there be only such weak spirit snakes to guard it? Geo's mind became even tighter, and she held Li Yuan's hand and moved forward cautiously step by step. Just like that, after another half an hour, Jia finally saw the light again. After calming down, Jia led Baihu towards the bright place. After her eyes adapted to the light, Jia opened her eyes and looked over. This time there are no bustling rooms, but there are bustling streets. People were coming and going on the street. Some were shouting and selling things. Some were picking and choosing. And some were in a hurry and never stopped at all. Jia was a little confused. She took a few steps back and the street in front of her disappeared. A few steps further, the street appeared again. Is this? Jia frowned and observed, but found no trace of the phantom formation. Beautiful girl, I feel like my heart is beating so fast. As soon as the white fox came here, its heart kept beating, which made it a little panicked. Huh? Ji Yao's eyes lit up when she heard this. Combining the reaction of the white fox and the scene of the street in front of her, Ji Yao suddenly thought of something. Phantom beads. If the phantom spirit bead has no owner, it will automatically generate some kind of illusion. But there will be no trace of any formation. Once the phantom spirit bead has an owner, it can create illusions according to the owner's wishes. And with the phantom spirit beads, the phantom array arranged will be more realistic and harder to find the dawn. Which is the dream of array cultivators. As a phantom spirit fox, the white fox would definitely have a stronger sense of such spiritual beings. However, he can enter and leave this illusion at will. At present, it seems that this phantom spirit bead is extremely simple, and he should not have experienced it much. Old Bai, I'm afraid this is your chance. Shio turned her head to look at the white fox beside her and smiled happily. Really? I seem to feel this way too. This was the first time Bai who felt this way, and he was a little unsure. Let's be careful. If my guess is right, there should be a phantom spirit bead here. If you swallow it, you will definitely be able to advance. After Ji Yao said that, she took the lead and walked in. The white fox's eyes lit up when he heard this. He had heard of the phantom spirit pearl. It was regarded as a treasure among the phantom fox clan. And his father owned one. Bai Hu narrowed his eyes with a smile and followed Ji in. When Ji came to the illusion, she immediately noticed a peaceful and warm atmosphere. Everyone here was smiling. Even pedestrians who were busy on their way. It can be seen that the people here live in peace and prosperity. Because when Jia looked at anyone at random, she found that their robes were better than the one she was wearing. Many people were holding innate spiritual treasures. And even a random stall had various spiritual objects from heaven and earth. It's just that these people can't see Jia and Baihu. And Jia can directly penetrate other people's bodies. Just like the state of their souls. Jia frowned. Illusions are usually designed to make people immersed in it and completely unable to extricate themselves from it. But this illusion is obviously not the case. After all, in this state, how could one fall into an illusion? Chapter 539 Fantasy Old Bai, do you feel where the phantom spirit pearl should be? Do you feel there is something familiar? Jia couldn't feel the direction of the phantom spirit pearl, so she could only let Bai Hu lead the way. It does seem that there is a bit of intimacy, but it's not very obvious, and I'm not sure, Bai Hu said with some uncertainty. In fact, the feeling was too subtle to be noticed without careful sensing. Then just follow your feeling, and you will lead the way. Jiu stepped aside and came behind Bai Hu. After all, having a feeling is better than relying solely on guessing. Okay. Bai Hu walked forward excitedly and followed his inspiration. Soon, the two stopped at a shop. I sensed that the phantom spirit bead should be here. Bai Hu looked excited, and the feeling became stronger the closer he got. Then let's go. Jiu nodded and stepped in. At present, it seems that this illusion is not malicious. So Jia is not too afraid. As soon as he entered the store, Bai Hu took Jiao and ran towards the second floor, and finally penetrated a door directly. Ha ha! Our phantom spirit bead is of the highest quality. It would be a pity if fellow Taoists miss it. As soon as Jiu entered, she heard a man's voice. Jia looked up and saw two people sitting at the table. There was a jade box on the table. 
which contained the phantom spirit bead. Of course, the things shopkeeper Lu introduced are excellent. Another man smiled, closed the jade box, took out a storage bag, and handed it to the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper took a quick look and put the storage bag away with a smile when he found that there was no problem. If you need anything in the future, fellow Taoist, just come to my Jinbao pavilion and I will surely satisfy you. The shopkeeper was obviously in a very good mood. Definitely. The man nodded with a smile and stood up. Be careful. At this moment, Ji Yu sensed a crisis and immediately squatted down, hugged the white fox, rolled around and left the previous position. The place where they were just now was already filled with ice swords. The work of the monk who bought the phantom spirit beads. Ji Yao dodged the attack, stood up, and sent a message to Bai Hu. I will deal with the monk later. Find the right opportunity to grab the phantom spirit orb. The monk missed the hit and threw another spell in Ziya's direction. Suddenly, countless ice swords flew towards her again. Ji Yao directly threw out a thunder net to intercept the ice sword and then struck it with a fused sword intent. Time sword intention has reached a small level and the power of the fused sword intention has also increased exponentially. It directly immobilized the man and then exploded on him. Poof! The time sword intention disappeared. When the man came back to his senses, he vomited a mouthful of blood and stared at Shio with a gloomy expression. Shio also didn't expect that others couldn't see them. But this person could. Could this illusion be deliberately designed by the Phantom Pearl? Design a peaceful and warm atmosphere so that you can relax your vigilance and kill with one more blow? Or is it because it is aware of its own intentions and wants to protect itself at this time? Shio didn't dare to think too much. It was more important to deal with the opponent at this time. With this in mind, Xiyu attacked again. At this time, the man also took out his own magic weapon, the spirit sword, and struck it towards Xi Yao. Suddenly, the temperature of the entire space dropped sharply, and ice began to condense everywhere. Even Xi Yao's movement slowed down due to this effect. Chapter 540 The Illusion is Broken. Xi Yao felt shocked. This man's attack was so overbearing. Xi Yao flicked her fingertips, and a wolf appeared, roaring and attacking forward. Immediately, all the ice in the place where Sirius passed by collapsed, leaving only debris on the ground. Jia took the opportunity to strike at the male cultivator again with her sword. Tian Lang and his sword intent fell on the male cultivator at the same time. But he did not dodge. But slashed toward Ji Yao again with his sword. Ji Yu was unable to dodge and was hit squarely. She was immediately frozen, forming an ice sculpture. The white fox was shocked when he saw this. And immediately threw an illusion at the male cultivator then ran to Ji Yao's side and slapped the ice sculpture with his paw. Crack! The ice sculpture shattered in response, and Ji Yao regained her ability to move. But before he could react, the male cultivator struck him with another sword. The illusion of the white fox just now was completely useless to him. After all, this was the territory of the Phantom Pearl. So how could he fall into the formation? Ji Yao was startled, hugged the white fox and teleported. She immediately appeared behind the male cultivator and slapped him with her palm. The male cultivator didn't expect that Jia would appear behind him in an instant. He was hit without even checking. He jumped forward and almost fell down. The male cultivator jogged a few steps before regaining his balance. And then, he was struck with another sword. Jia had noticed it a long time ago. Moved away. Appeared behind him again. And stabbed his heart with a sword. But this time, the male cultivator was already on guard. He turned around and held Liu on tightly. And blood suddenly flowed from his entire palm. Jia pushed Liu on forward with all her strength. The male cultivator groaned, and the wound on his hand became a little deeper. Seeing the two people anxiously together, the white fox jumped up and grabbed the male cultivator's eyes with one claw. The male cultivator was startled and immediately turned away to avoid the attack. But the white fox once again grabbed his whole face. The male cultivator stretched out his other hand to catch the white fox but the white fox always dodged him. Xi Yao found that the male cultivator's attention was partially diverted by the white fox. She felt happy and set her sword towards him again. At the same time, she punched his Dan Tian with her left hand. Sensing the danger, the male cultivator immediately let go of Li Yuan and stepped back, then threw a spell at Xi Yao. Countless ice swords came again, and Xi Yao directly slashed them with a fused sword intent, destroying all the ice swords in an instant. Realizing that the time sword intent had little effect on male cultivators, Ji Yu started thinking and immediately stretched out her left hand to start condensing formations in battle for the first time. 
This time, she chose the fourth level trapping formation. She only needed to trap him for a while, and then she could kill him. Ji Ya was seen making a few gestures in the air with a serious expression. And suddenly a pattern flashed out. Go! Ji Ya immediately threw the formation towards the male cultivator and enveloped him. The male cultivator was indeed trapped by the formation. He started to attack the formation and tried to get out. But he couldn't do it for a while. Ji Ya was overjoyed when she saw this. And she also came to the formation. This formation was completely under her control. Covering her figure perfectly. Quietly coming to the side of the male cultivator who was attacking the formation. Ji Yu stabbed the opponent's Dantian with a sword. This time the male cultivator did not dodge again. His Dantian was directly destroyed. And he suddenly fell forward to his knees. At this moment, the entire illusion began to shake violently. And eventually turned into countless fragments and completely dissipated. As soon as the illusion disappeared, Ji Yao and Bai Hu appeared in a room. This room was very different from the first one. It was very simple. And there was a jade box placed on the table in the center. Chapter 541 Soul Eating Insect Beautiful girl! It's that jade box! Bai Hu pointed at the jade box excitedly, looking at Ji Yao expectantly, but did not rush forward immediately. Well, yes! Ji Yu smiled, observed carefully and after making sure that what was in front of her was no longer an illusion. She walked over with the white fox. Jiyo stretched out her hand to open the jade box. And the entire jade box suddenly emitted a burst of white light. After the white light disappeared, Jiyo found that the phantom pearl was lying quietly in the jade box. Here! Here you go! Jiyo handed the phantom spirit bee directly to the white fox. This thing was more powerful for it. But it was wasted on herself. Beautiful girl! You are so good to me! Bai Hu grabbed the hem of Ji Yao's skirt with tears in her eyes. A look of emotion on her face. Okay. Just swallow it now and advance. I will protect you. This secret realm is full of dangers. And I still need your help. Ji Ya told Bai Hu with a serious expression. She is the only one in this tunnel now. But when you get out of this corridor later, you will probably encounter a crowd of people. At that time, the stronger the white fox's combat power will be, the more powerful it can be to help you. Okay. I'll start right away. The white fox nodded seriously. And it also knew the importance of this matter. He is too little help to the beautiful girl. Every time he encounters danger, he will be put in the pet bag, which is basically a hindrance. It also longs for strength so that it can accompany her to face danger in the future. Yes! Ji Ya smiled and nodded. She first threw out an 8th grade array plate and placed it around. Then she took out several thousand top grade spirit stones from the storage ring and arranged a spirit gathering array for the white fox. We are still in the secret realm. So the shorter the time it takes to advance, the better. Seeing that everything was ready, the white fox swallowed the phantom spirit bead. Suddenly, a violent spiritual power rose from the body and headed towards the white fox's limbs and bones. Hmm. The white fox grunted, fell to the ground and curled up in pain, but still tried hard to absorb the spiritual energy. Jiyo stood not far away looking at the white fox with distress. She also understood this feeling. It really hurt every acupuncture point and every pore. As long as you persist in the past, it will advance to the eighth level. Although the white fox usually looks unreliable, Jiyo believes in it very much. And it will definitely succeed. At this time, there were already many corpses of monks lying on the ground in the white door corridor. These were all caused by everyone fighting for things in the first room. It's just that these people couldn't get anything good despite working hard. And most of them were taken by a few nascent soul monks. Rongli followed the crowd with a sullen face. With so many people acting together, he couldn't get anything good at all. Especially those nascent soul monks were very domineering. Leaving a little soup for others to grab. This is not the way to go. Rongli frowned. Thinking about how to run away and advance to find a room. This corridor is completely white. Unable to use spiritual consciousness and invisible with eyes. But there are countless soul-eating insects lurking in ambush. Soul-devouring insects, as the name suggests, are insects that devour spiritual power. This thing is just like bees. It always acts as a swarm of insects. Once it surrounds people, the consequences will be very serious. They can devour the monk's spiritual defense shield and can also bite some of the monk's magic weapons. They are flexible and very difficult to eliminate. Only fire attribute monks or magic weapons can restrain it but he has thunder root. Fortunately, he is good at making talismans. And he usually saves a lot of talismans such as flame talismans, which are enough for use. 
Chapter 542 Teleport Talisman Fellow Daoist Rome, I have two special teleportation talismans here that can be used without being noticed by them. I wonder if you are willing to accompany me to take a step forward and look for opportunities first. After all, if this continues, we will get nothing. Su Yuerong, the female nun before, quietly sent a message to Rongli to seek his opinion. But she was already very confident in her heart. No one would be willing to give up such a big opportunity. And he would definitely agree. Sure enough, Rongli's eyes lit up when he heard this. And he raised the corners of his mouth and smiled. This method was not bad. Rongli is happy to do it. You will be safer if you have one more person. Taoist friend. Rongli responded warmly, giving false reasons. That's great, but I may have to wrong your sister. After all, I only have two teleportation talismans. Alas, I really have more than enough ambition, but not enough power. Su Yuerong said hypocritically. In fact, she still had a teleportation talisman, but she didn't, not willing to take it out. She is not a fool. How could she give such a thing to her love rival? It just so happens that the two of them can take this opportunity to be alone together. And he can find an opportunity to take him down. Then his lover sister will no longer be a threat. Thinking of this, Su Yuerong smiled even happier. When Rongli heard this, he raised his eyebrows and twitched his lips in a mocking manner. It was boring for women to be jealous. But he still couldn't help feeling a sense of pride in his heart. Then let me talk to her. She will definitely understand. Fellow Taoist Su, don't worry about it. After Rongli finished speaking, he continued to send a message to Lu Xiangyu. Xiangyu, my fellow Taoist disciple Su has talismans to leave quietly. But unfortunately, there are only two of them. So I'm afraid you will be wronged. Rongli held Lu Xiangyu's hand at the same time, trying to soothe her emotions. Lu Xiangyu was concentrating on groping forward, but was stunned for a moment when he heard Rongli's message. When he realized what Rongli meant, Lu Xiangyu's eyes suddenly turned red. I'm fine. Brother Rongli, don't worry. Just go ahead. Lu Xiangyu suppressed her emotions and sent a message to Rongli. She held her other hand tightly, and her fingernails were deeply embedded in her palm. I know Xiangyu that you are the most understanding person. I will give you this defensive jade token. Don't try to snatch anything later. Just take good care of yourself. As for those treasures, leave them to me to fight for. Okay. Rongli squeezed Lu Xiangyu's hand gently. Not surprised at all. He knew that she was the most obedient and would never go against his will. Well, okay. Lu Xiangyu nodded reluctantly and took the defensive jade token handed over by Rongli. Fellow Dawa Su, I have already made arrangements. Seeing Lu Xiangyu accept it, Rongli immediately sent a message to Su Yuerong. The earlier he left, the better his chance of getting the treasure would be. Okay, let's go. Su Yuerong handed the teleportation talisman to Rongli, and then put one on himself. Rongli took the teleportation talisman and after attaching it, he gave Lu Xiangyu's hand a final comforting squeeze and let go. Then he walked to Su Yuerong and hugged her waist. I'm sorry. Rongli apologized, activated the teleportation talisman, and disappeared with Su Yuerong. Sensing Rongli's departure, Lu Xiangyu could no longer hold back her tears. In fact, Sometimes she didn't understand why a direct disciple of her dignified Lu family would be so crazy and crazy about Rongli without any hesitation. Even though he became a useless person at first, he later had other women. In fact, with her pride, she shouldn't be like this. But she couldn't control herself. Chapter 543 White Fox Advances In the Red Door Corridor, Lingji had just finished killing the monk who had broken out of the formation and was collecting his energy and blood. Thinking of the way this man had been burned alive by his karma just now, Lingi finally found some confidence. It seems that it's not that he is weak, but that woman is too perverted. He no longer covets her bracelet now. He just hopes that he will not meet her again. After collecting the energy and blood, Lingi continued to grope towards the corridor. The corridor was filled with blood red, completely blocking his sight. He could not use his spiritual consciousness, so he could only grope forward like this. At this moment, a group of bloody bats appeared in front of him, all flying towards him. Three days later, Jia sat not far away and carefully observed her surroundings, fearing that someone would suddenly break in. After all, everything here was unknown. And if there was another entrance? It was possible. The aura on by whose body is now getting stronger and stronger. And he doesn't feel any pain anymore. He is desperately absorbing the spiritual energy. The white fox is advancing from the seventh level to the eighth level. 
which is equivalent to the early stage of the golden elixir to the peak of the golden elixir for humans. So there will be no thunder disaster. This is also the reason why she dared to let it advance here. Just when Jiya was thinking, the white fox suddenly sucked in spiritual power. And then his momentum broke, and he successfully advanced to the eighth level. However, the cultivation level is still unstable. And the white fox is still absorbing spiritual power to stabilize the cultivation level. Jiya laughed happily when she saw this. And finally succeeded. An hour later, Bai Hu finally stabilized his cultivation. At this time, the spiritual energy slowly dissipated, and the thousands of top quality spiritual stones that he had previously turned into powder. Congratulations! Jia looked at the white fox with a smile, and suddenly discovered that a small wisp of red hair appeared on its forehead. It's just that the red color is not obvious, and you can't see it if you don't look carefully. Beautiful girl! Thank you! The white fox threw herself into Ji Yao's arms and took the initiative to rub her head. Obtaining this phantom spirit bead was entirely dependent on her. But not only did she not despise herself for being useless, she also gave it to it without hesitation. Finally, they used so many top quality spirit stones to set up a spirit gathering array. If it hadn't been for this array, it wouldn't have been able to advance so quickly. This speed was faster than it could advance to the seventh level, by whose heart was filled with gratitude and he had already made up his mind to follow Ji Yao for the rest of his life. Ji Yao didn't expect the white fox to make such a move. She was stunned for a moment, then smiled softly and stretched out her hand to gently rub its head. It turns out this guy also has this side. Then the next step will all depend on you, Ji Yao said with a smile. Okay, leave it all to me. Let them see how powerful I am. After hearing this, the white fox immediately resurrected with full blood and jumped out of Ji Yao's arms raising its head with a look of fearlessness on its face. Okay, let's go! Jia didn't plan to stay any longer. She had already spent a lot of time. Okay! Bai Hu agreed and took the lead. Jia shook her head in amusement and walked out of the room, returning to the dark corridor again. Fellow Daoist Rome, look, there is a room here! Su Yuerong fumbled for the door frame of the room and shouted excitedly towards Rongli. Rongli was overjoyed and immediately touched it. Sure enough, when he turned around, there was a room. This should be a female nun's room. The entire room is elegantly decorated and has dreamlike bed curtains. It's so beautiful. Su Yuerong also exclaimed in surprise. This room was too dreamy and full of fairy spirit. Chapter 544 Divine Beast Egg Yeah! Rongli nodded and stepped in. Su Yuerong immediately followed in and began to explore the room. Rongli carefully observed everything in the room but only found a few high-grade spiritual weapons, and nothing else. He frowned tightly. There were so many treasures in the previous room. Why was this room so poor? Boy, have you seen that big stone on the ground? Long Tian's voice came from the sea of consciousness. Hearing this, Rongli looked under the table, and found a black stone lying there. But what's the mystery? Why does it look like an ordinary stone to me? Rongli asked puzzledly. Although the stone was indeed incompatible with the room, there was really no problem. There is an egg inside this stone. And I feel the aura of the same divine beast. Long Tian sensed the aura of the divine beast as soon as he entered the room. After observing it for a long time, he finally determined that it was in that stone. Rong Li's eyes lit up when he heard this. He walked to the table and pretended to check the items on the table. When Su Yuerong wasn't paying attention, he put the stone into the storage ring. Ahem. It seems there is nothing good in this room. Rongli shook his head pretending to be regretful, and said to Su Yuerong regretfully. Su Yuerong didn't expect the room to be so poor, and his face was a little ugly. It's okay. Let's go on to the next room and have a look. Su Yuerong smiled reluctantly, divided a few high-grade spiritual weapons with Rongli, and then went to the next room. Soon after, a large group of troops arrived and came to the room. Why is there nothing in this room? Song and Chung waved his sleeves with a gloomy expression and swung the vase on the table directly to the ground, breaking it to pieces. Don't be angry. Don't be angry. Duanyin walked to Song and Chung and hugged her distressly. Suyun glanced at the two of them, and then continued to look at the room. She always felt that this room would not be too simple. I'm afraid someone got there first. Gu Jing, another nascent soul cultivator, frowned and spoke uncertainly. Next to him is his clone, who is also a nascent soul cultivator. But everyone thought it was his twin brother, because the secret method of clones has been lost long ago. And even if there is a clone, it will be a level lower than the original body. 
This is a restriction on the technique. And it is also to protect the monk's body from being counterattacked by the clone. How is it possible? We all came in together and acted together. Duan Yin had not thought of this possibility. But with several nascent soul cultivators here, it was impossible for anyone to cause trouble under their noses. Gu Jing closed her mouth. But the feeling in her heart became even stronger. Lu Xiangyu mingled in the crowd, holding her hands tightly and her heart beating fast, fearing that they would find that Rong Li's brother was missing. Fortunately, they were not familiar with anyone else and no one noticed them. Let's go! Gu Jing's bad premonition became stronger and stronger. He always felt that someone had already arrived first. If he had been later, I might be like this room. Unable to drink the soup. With this thought in mind, he immediately exited the room with his clone and re-entered the corridor. A group of people were left looking at each other. And for a moment, they couldn't decide whether to continue walking or explore the room carefully. Duan Yin and Song and Chung searched the room again without giving up and found nothing in the end before returning to the corridor with gloomy faces. At this time, some monks had already followed Gu Jing and left first. So the remaining monks felt regretful and could not move forward faster. Chapter 545 Fighting the Snake King 1 Only Su Yun stayed alone. At this time, she was completely out of his senior brother's eyes. Even if she didn't follow, she wouldn't be noticed at all. She always felt that there was something in this room. But she couldn't find anything for a while. Crack! Su Yun accidentally stepped on the vase that Song Ying Chung had swept down before. When he looked down, he suddenly discovered that there seemed to be something wrong inside the vase. She squatted down, took away all the vase fragments, and soon discovered a transparent crystal in the soil. Su Yun picked up the crystal, brought it to her eyes, and observed it carefully, and found that there was a small black spot inside the crystal. But her consciousness couldn't penetrate it, and she couldn't confirm what it was. But her intuition told her that this thing was not simple. Su Yun stood up, put away the crystal, planned to study it slowly later, and then left the room. Old oh, bye. Be careful. Jia held the Yuan and looked nervously at the 8th level snake king in front of her, with goosebumps all over her body. I know. Don't worry. Bai Hu agreed seriously and was ready to set up an illusion for the snake king. The snake king in front of me is completely black, but it has two white horns on its head which looks really weird. It was so huge that it almost filled the entire room. And that's how it looked when it was hovering. Jia couldn't even imagine how terrifying it would be when it stretched out. The pythons in the world are like hair in front of it. Hiss! The snake king stuck out his tongue at the white fox in fear, but completely ignored Jia. After all, in its opinion, Jia's cultivation level was too low, and she could not pose any threat at all. Jia always pays attention to the movements of the snake king and thinks about how to deal with it because this is the end of the corridor. If you want to go out, you must pass through this room. Then this snake king must be eliminated. Otherwise it will never let itself out. Sure enough, the snake king took the initiative and stretched out his neck to spit out a mouthful of venom in the direction of the white fox. Then his whole body spread out and his tail swept towards Ji Yao. The white fox jumped several times to avoid the venom and immediately threw an illusion towards the snake king. In the past, the white fox could only make the other person fall into an illusion based on their memory. But since it swallowed the phantom spirit bead, it can arrange the illusion as it pleases. Jia also teleported to avoid the snake king's tail. But the room was not large. So Jia couldn't dodge too much. Because the snake king's tail began to swing wildly. At this time, the snake king had indeed fallen into an illusion. The white fox had arranged an illusion of beautiful mountains and clear waters. Hoping to calm down the snake king and relax his vigilance. However, although the Snake King's cultivation level is comparable to that of the White Fox, it has advanced earlier than it. Now it is almost at the ninth level. Its illusion has an impact on it, but it will not develop exactly as the White Fox wants, not knowing what it was going through. The whole snake swayed wildly, and even spewed out venom from time to time. Ji Yao and Bai Hu could only keep dodging to avoid being affected by it. But as it swung, everything in the room was shattered and it was a mess. Jia saw the opportunity, and when it was swinging to other places, she got on top of it and stabbed it with a sword while enduring nausea. The white fox also jumped on its back, stretched out its claws and pulled hard. Hiss! The snake king was injured. The severe pain caused it to break free from the illusion, swing its body more violently, and at the same time turned its head to spray venom towards Ji Yao and the white fox. Chapter 546 Fighting the Snake King 2 
Ji Yao, and Bai Hu quickly jumped off the snake's back, jumped up from other places, and repeated the previous actions. Ji Yao mobilized the divine thunder and threw it towards the wound. His! The divine thunder entered the snake king's body along with the wound and began to destroy its internal organs. The snake king swung again in pain, sending Ji Yao and Bai Hu flying away. Ji Yi used Li Yuan to stabilize her body. And when she looked up, she saw the snake king staring at her with red eyes, spitting out a stream of venom at her. And at the same time, he rushed towards her with a fierce attack. Ji Yao was startled, dodged away, and immediately slashed past with a time sword intent. Suddenly, the snake king stopped in midair. Ji Yao seized the moment and slashed at the snake king with a fused sword intent, actually cutting off a small section of its tail. The white fox also jumped up and grabbed the snake king's eyes with one claw. In an instant, blood flowed out and he was injured. As soon as the time sword intention disappeared, the snake king's time resumed flowing. A heart-wrenching feeling came, and the snake king began to swing wildly. Jiyo immediately took a few steps back. It was true that the snake king was now a little crazy, and the entire room was completely destroyed by it. The snake king now hated Jiyo, stared at Jiyo with a pair of bloody eyes and sprayed all the venom in his body toward Ji Yao. Ji Yao teleported away from the place and wanted to hide. But this time, there was too much venom, and it was impossible to avoid it. Ji Yao was startled and immediately took out a defensive shield to cover herself. As soon as the venom touched the shield, the shield immediately corroded, and Ji Yao was so shocked that she immediately threw it away. A small part also got on Ji Yao's skirt. But surprisingly, there was no reaction. Looking at the dissolved shield, Ji Yao's heart trembled. This is the real-world version of sulfuric acid. Fortunately, I reacted quickly. Otherwise, I would be the one who would be corroded. When the Snake King saw that Ji Yao was actually unharmed, he became even crazier and rushed towards Ji Yao desperately. As soon as the huge body stretched out, even Yi swallowed her saliva nervously. This was too scary. If it weren't for the limitations of this room, this snake would probably be dozens of stories tall. Jiyo had no choice but to strike at its head with another fused sword intent, and at the same time threw a serious out. However, the Snake King is a monster, with rough skin and thick flesh, and it is still at the 8th level. The sword intention can cause damage to it, but it is only a superficial wound. And at this time, the Snake King is locked onto her, and she has no way to jump on the snake's back and stab it with her sword. Thinking of this, Ji Yao suddenly had a flash of inspiration took out a dagger and threw it at the white fox. Bai Hu jumped up to help, and immediately understood what Ji Yao meant, and hid aside, and started looking for opportunities. Ji Yao was responsible for attracting the snake king's attention, and began to strike at the snake king with sword after sword, blasting its body full of holes. The snake king was already mad at Ji Yao, and his whole body began to swing wildly. His body with its tail cut off swept towards Ji Yao, trying to strangle her. At the same time, its head came closer and bit Ji Yao with its mouth wide open. Looking at the Snake King's shining fangs, Ji Yao's scalp went numb and she faced it. The Snake King saw Ji Yao rushing forward without knowing what he was capable of, and his mouth opened even wider. He wanted to eat the person who had hurt him. Ji Yao saw the opportunity and inserted Li Yuan into its jaw, then immediately let go and retreated. As expected, the Snake King was so painful that he subconsciously closed his mouth but allowed the Yuan to penetrate deeper. Chapter 547 Death of the Snake King The Snake King struggled violently, and at this time, he no longer cared about attacking Ji Yao. The White Fox found the opportunity, jumped up, held the dagger, and slashed hard at the Snake King's neck. Suddenly, a large gash was cut on the Snake King's neck, and blood spurted out, staining the White Fox's body. Ji Yao also spotted the opening, came to the Snake King seven inches, and punched it hard. Several phantoms of white tigers appeared, mixed with crackling divine thunder, all of which hit the snake king within seven inches. Suddenly, the entire seven inches was completely sunken. The snake king felt a sharp pain, and when he swung his body, he just hit Ji Yao and threw her away completely. Ji Yao spit out a large mouthful of blood, quickly took out the elixir and drank it. Then she and Bai Hu jumped away, standing far away to avoid being affected. The Snake King struggled fiercely, but the movement became smaller and smaller, until finally it hit the ground heavily and became unresponsive. Ji observed carefully, and after confirming that the Snake King was completely dead, she let out a sigh of relief. This Snake King is really difficult to deal with. 
but fortunately the room is too small, which greatly limits its range of activities. Otherwise, it would be impossible for him to deal with it so easily. In the end, it will definitely end in a lose-lose situation. Beautiful girl. Are you okay? Bai Hu asked Ji Yao worriedly. It's okay. Ji Yu rubbed her heart. She did suffer some internal injuries from this slap. But it was not serious. She would be fine after taking the elixir. That's good. The white fox breathed a sigh of relief after hearing this. Came to the snake king's head. And pulled Li Yuan out hard. Ji Yu stepped forward and pulled out Li Yuan together with Bai Hu. And then used several cleaning charms on Li Yuan and Bai Hu to completely remove their blood stains. This snake was already at the 8th level, and Ji Yao had no chance of letting it go. After digging out its inner elixir, she collected the entire body. After going out, she found a place to sell it, which would be worth it. Shailing Chi. Lao Bai, I've given you the magic spirit beads, so I'll give this inner elixir to Xiao Bai Tuan. How about it? Ji Yao asked Bai Hu while holding the inner elixir. Xiao Bai Tuan is also a monster, and he can take the inner elixir to advance. Yes, this is the 8th level demon elixir. And Xiao Bai Tuan can probably upgrade it to the 3rd level. Okay. Bai Hu's face felt hot when he thought of Xiao Bai Tuan. And he scratched his arm uncomfortably. Lao Bai is so good. Jia smiled and patted Lao Bai's head and praised. She was most happy to see all her friends unite and be friendly. Bai Hu was a little embarrassed by Ji Yao's praise. And suddenly ran away to study the door to go out. Ji Yao smiled when she saw this and then brought the demon pill to the sea of consciousness. Shu Shu, this is the 8th level demon pill. You watch Xiao Bai Tuan take it. Ji Yao directly threw the demon pill to Shu Shu. Presumably it will allow Xiao Bai Tuan to advance in the space inside his body. Okay, Shu Shu replied. And then he sucked Xiao Bai Tuan, who was playing with Yunling, into the space inside his body, leaving Yunling alone there in a daze, wondering where Xiao Bai Tuan's brother had gone. Jia did not dare to delay any longer, and directly exited the sea of consciousness, and came to the door leading out. This door is made of gold and stone. This stone is extremely hard, and cannot be destroyed by violence. It requires special strange fire to melt it. There is nothing on this door at all. It is smooth, and does not look like it has a mechanism at all. Ji Yao, and Bai Hu searched around and found no switch that could open the door. Chapter 548 The Function of Flowing Flint Beautiful girl! Is there anything we haven't solved yet? Why is there no mechanism at all here? Bai Hu walked around the door in confusion, with a look of confusion on his face. Since there is a door, it must have a way to open it. Otherwise the design of this corridor will lose its meaning. Ji Yu was also puzzled. She had never encountered such a door without a switch, or had the switch been destroyed in the fight. Ji Yu thought seriously, and thought about the recent events in this corridor. Suddenly, she had a flash of inspiration and thought of a possibility. She had carefully took out the flint stone from the storage ring. The flint stone was wrapped in the sheet. And Jia could only hold it through the sheet. Old oh, Bai, please get out of the way, and I'll try to see if this is possible. Jia warned the white fox. As soon as the white fox saw the flowing flint, he remembered the experience of being burned. He immediately jumped far away and looked at Jia curiously. Jia calmed down and tentatively pressed one side of the flowing fire stone towards the door. Suddenly, the door melted. But in just one breath, it was completely melted and spread out to the surroundings. A solid door was completely burned and turned into ashes in just a few breaths. She quickly put away the flowing fire stone. If she continued, she was afraid that the corridor would be destroyed. However, the power of this flowing fire stone was too great, which was beyond her expectation. It's a pity that this thing cannot be recognized by its owner and cannot be touched at will. It is really weird to hold it with a bed sheet like this. The white fox shuddered as he watched the door melt rapidly. He suddenly felt that he was lucky not to be burned to death. Let's go! Jia waved to Bai Hu and walked out carefully. Bai Hu followed Jia closely and followed carefully. As soon as she stepped out of the door, Jia found that she had come to a large hall again. This hall was currently empty. And she should be the first one to come out. There are actually 20 more doors in this hall. And each door has a key groove. Jia thought of the three keys she got almost immediately, and immediately took them out of the storage ring. After carefully observing the three keys, Jiyu discovered that patterns suddenly appeared on them. One has a lightning pattern on it, which should be of thunder attribute. There is a stone on top of one, which should be of earth attribute. The other one is a flower, which should be of wood attribute. Jiyu turned around and looked at the unopened doors on both sides. 
feeling a little anxious. It would not be long before other people would pass through the corridor. So it would be better for her to go in early. Thinking like this, Jia took off the bamboo hat. She was so arrogant before. If they recognized her, she would probably be beaten by a group and die miserably. It's better to be more generous like this. If you meet them, you can explain that you are from somewhere else. No matter what. It's better than wearing a hat. Jiyu walked through several doors one after another and began to look for the corresponding door. Soon, she found the door corresponding to the flower. But Jia did not choose to enter. For her, choosing the thunder attribute would definitely be the most helpful. If you enter a door, you will inevitably meet other people when you come out. And you may not be able to access the door behind. Therefore, it is most reasonable to choose the thunder attribute. After a while, Shia finally found the door. And she gently pressed the key on it. Chapter 549 Lei Feng Suddenly, a vortex appeared on the door. Bringing a strong suction force. Ji Yao held Bai Hu in her arms and wanted to go there together. After all, there had been random teleportation experiences here. But as soon as Ji Yao walked into the whirlpool, Bai Hu was rejected. Ji Yao was startled and immediately put it into the pet bag, and then was completely sucked in by the whirlpool. Ba! Ji Yao was thrown out of the whirlpool, lying on the ground and eating a mouthful of dust. Ji Yao stood up and dusted herself off, looked around, and found that this place was actually a mountain range and there was a very high peak in the distance of the mountain range, and thunder kept falling in the space, striking directly on the mountain peak. The mountain peaks were also crackling with thunder. Even from such a distance, Ji Yao could feel the strong thunder attribute. A friendly feeling came, and this rich thunder attribute made Zio very comfortable. Ji Yao took out Li Yuan and flew towards the mountain with her flying sword. The journey was uneventful, but when he was about to approach the mountain peak, he was ejected by a transparent shield that suddenly popped up. Jiyo tried her best to stabilize her body and slowly fell to the ground. Then she took Li Yuan in her hand and walked towards the mountain step by step. After a while, Jiyo came to the foot of the mountain and looked up at the mountain peak. Her neck almost broke and she couldn't see the peak clearly. It seemed that she would have to work hard to climb up. But monks are very patient. After all, sometimes they stay in seclusion for hundreds of years. Although Jiyo has not reached that level yet, she is still very patient and climbs towards the mountain in an honest manner. But as soon as Jiyo climbed up to the mountain range, the spiritual power in her body was instantly imprisoned. It's an amazing place. Jiyo looked at the sky speechlessly, unable to use her spiritual power. How long will she climb this mountain? But she had a hunch that there must be something good on the top of the mountain. Jiyo cheered herself up and climbed up the mountain peak resignedly. Boom! A bolt of thunder struck down, hitting the top of the mountain, and instantly the thunder spread towards the entire mountain. Soon, a burst of thunder came from the soles of Jia's feet, spreading throughout her body from the soles of her feet, and finally merged into her Dantian. Shio was delighted. The thunder here could actually enter her Dantian? I had absorbed some divine thunder in my Dantian at Zufeng's secret land before. So that was a huge opportunity. She has never heard that ordinary thunder can enter the Dantian. If she stores more of them, her attack power will definitely be much greater in the future. Master, try to absorb more sky thunder. I have a technique that can help you learn how to control thunder. Shushu was also a little surprised. She didn't expect that the sky thunder here could be absorbed for her own use. Since it recovered a little before, more of the skills in its soul have been revealed. Although in previous eras, these were just rubbish skills. But for today's Chifon continent, any skill can be considered a top skill. Controlling thunder? Shio was a little surprised. She was able to control the divine thunder because she learned the art of controlling objects given to her by her ancestor. Yes, you are a sword cultivator. It is unrealistic to actually use divine thunder like a magic cultivator. Even if you have used divine thunder before, there are great restrictions and you cannot do whatever you want. But I have skills. After you learn them, you can control the thunder in the body as easily as a practitioner. For example, there is no problem with any lightning techniques. Shu Shu said with some arrogance. If the master wants if you want to practice both swordsmanship and swordsmanship, you have to start from scratch. Which is really a waste of time. But its skills allowed her to quickly learn the attack methods of magic cultivation. Chapter 550 Thunder Technique Really? That's great. Shio was a little surprised. She naturally knew the attack methods of thunder attribute magic cultivators. They all condense spells to use thunder attribute spiritual power, or use thunder and lightning to attack. 
It's just that the skills are limited. Without good skills, some people won't be able to use tangible thunder and lightning. But if you know the lightning technique, you will be really powerful. As far as she knows, the lightning technique is divided into large lightning technique and small lightning technique. The small thunderbolt technique is just ordinary thunder, while the big thunderbolt technique is a real thunderbolt. The concepts of the two are completely different, and their combat capabilities are even different. If you master the lightning technique, it will definitely have an unexpected effect. When others thought he was a sword cultivator, if he suddenly struck a thunderbolt from the sky, it would definitely be a pretty sight. She has seemed to have seen the beautiful scene and smiled stupidly. It's true, but you'd better collect enough heavenly thunder first. After all, your cultivation level is already close to that of golden elixir, and you have a lot of foundation to make up for. Shushu rolled his eyes in his mind, interrupting Jia's fantasy. Ahem, I understand. Jia coughed awkwardly and continued to climb up the mountain. At this time, her whole body was full of motivation, as if she had been given a shot of chicken blood. At this time, everyone in the main hall had arrived, and even Ling Ji came out of the red corridor. It's just that when he came out, the hall was already in chaos, so it didn't cause much reaction. It's true that everyone is so excited now that they can't care about anything else. Rongli was also mixed in the crowd at this time. After he and Su Yuerong plundered the things before, they returned to the crowd again and did not arouse the suspicion of others. But at this time, his face was gloomy and he looked at the surrounded group of people with very dangerous eyes. That group of people were the ones who had obtained the key before. They had been exposed by the monks who had not obtained the key before. So everyone knew that they had obtained the key. Originally, they were extremely dissatisfied because they didn't get the key. Now that they have the chance, they can't bear it. At worst, no one will. Chin Chishian looked at the crowd surrounding them and cursed in his heart. Who knew the purpose of this key was like this? How could he enter the door with so many people appearing together? Look, you should hand over the key. We can keep it for you. If you don't hand it over, I'm afraid these people will tear you apart. I'm thinking about you. He, Song and Chung said, then she covered her mouth and laughed. In her opinion, these keys would eventually fall into the hands of their nascent soul cultivators. An opportunity was waiting to her. Duan Yin said nothing, standing next to Song Ying Chung, exuding nascent soul pressure on Chen Qixian and the others. Sometimes it was inappropriate for him to say something, but it was appropriate for Song Ying Chung to say it. All he had to do was stand by her side and support her. Su Yun frowned and looked at Duan Yin, feeling completely disappointed. Although all opportunities are earned by oneself, bullying a lower level monk regardless of status is really embarrassing to the Yuan Ying monk. Usually when high level monks attack low level monks, it is because the low-level monks have offended the high-level monks. There are no cases where they take the initiative to grab opportunities or treasures. Even if there were, it wouldn't be in front of so many people. Seeing Song and Chung and Duan Yin coming forward, Gu Jing was happy to watch the excitement. Then she could take the opportunity to grab the key. So why not? Chapter 551 Melee Senior, you can't say this. This is something we managed to grab. Chen Qixian felt aggrieved and felt a little uncomfortable under the pressure but he was still unwilling to give away the opportunity that was about to come to him. Perhaps, with this opportunity, I can advance to Yuan Ying. Song Ying Chung didn't expect that he would dare to refuse, and her face suddenly darkened. She waved her hand towards Chen Qixian, and a water arrow immediately attacked him. Chen Qixian was startled and immediately ran away, but was still scratched on the cheek by the ice arrow, leaving a bloody mark. Song Ying Ching's arrow was like a signal. The other monks could no longer bear it, and all attacked Chen Qixian and his group. The entire hall was in chaos. Several Yuanying monks stood aside and did not join the battle. Instead, they chose the right time to take action. And Lingyi pretended to wave his spirit sword at the crowd from time to time. But he was very nervous because the person he killed before who unlocked the formation also had a key. And even the spirit sword in his hand was his. Picked it up from him. At this time, he was very worried about revealing his true identity. And in the end, the key was robbed. At the same time, he focused on observing the door over there and began to look for opportunities to get over and enter the door. Ah! A golden elixir monk was hit by everyone's attacks. His dantion was destroyed, and he fell to the ground and groaned in pain. But no one sympathized with him at all, and they all rushed to grab the key. Song Yingcheng sneered, appeared in the crowd, and reached out to grab the key. But at this time, the crowd was already furious. 
they didn't care about Song Yingqing's cultivation level and all greeted her. After all, she was in the early stage of nascent soul, and there were a group of golden elixir monks here, and she couldn't withstand a fight. When Duan Yin saw his sweetheart being surrounded, he immediately felt angry and rushed forward. Seeing that they were all gone, Gu Jing smiled and brought his clone to join the battle. Maybe he could grab one more. Su Yin watched them join the battle. But she was not impulsive and just stood aside and watched. It's not that she's kind. It's just that she feels that rushing into this situation will only hurt both sides. After all, the gap in everyone's cultivation level is not particularly large. But the gap in numbers is huge. If a few of them really offended the public, I'm afraid they wouldn't be able to get away with it. It's better to find someone to discuss the conditions yourself and see if you can exchange the key. Thinking like this, Su Yun started looking among the crowd to see who had this possibility. At this time, Rongli was very angry. These people attacked randomly, and many of the attacks fell on him, causing him some minor injuries. Moreover, these people are so crazy that they are really looking for opportunities. It is really difficult for them to snatch a key. Su Yun on the other side finally found a candidate. He was an early stage Jean Dan monk with an extremely ordinary face and a rather gloomy expression. The reason Su Yun chose him was because she watched someone die just now. And he grabbed the key. In this way, he has two keys. As long as he has a good discussion with him and promises to keep him, he will be happy to give him one key. With this thought in mind, she appeared beside the male cultivator and helped him block a wave of attacks. If she were here, she would find that this male cultivator was the one who got the key first and gave her a gloomy look. Junior sister, what do you mean? Duan Yen saw Su Yin blocking his attack for the man. His face suddenly fell, and he asked in an angry tone. Chapter 552 The Melee Ends Su Yin ignored him completely, turned to look at the male cultivator, and asked directly, I'll protect you. How about you share one with me? Male cultivator Du Chomin raised his eyebrows when he heard this, looked at Su Yin seriously, and nodded. Although he didn't need it, he was willing to give her one. Seeing his agreement, Su Yin smiled slightly and turned to look at Duan Yin. Senior brother, you saw it too. I will keep him. Su Yin showed no mercy at all. Since the other party didn't treat her as a junior sister, there was no need to treat him as a senior brother. So what if his cultivation level is high? In a serious fight, he is still no match for him. Sure enough, Duan Yan's face turned red with anger when he heard this. But he had to let them go and attack the others. It's not that he cares about friendship. It's just that the master gave the secret method to his junior sister. And he is no match for her. Thinking of this aggrieved situation, Duan Yin actually grew resentment towards his master in his heart. Du Chongren glanced at Su Yun and Duan Yin meaningfully, and then seriously dealt with the attacks from others. Seeing that Duan Yin didn't even dare to fight and just gave up, Su Yun despised him even more. Just when she turned around, she saw that the male cultivator was dealing with the attacks of several Golden Elixir Peak cultivators at the same time. Su Yun frowned. Why was he so easy to deal with the Golden Elixir Peak cultivators? when he was clearly in the early stage of the golden elixir. Su Yun kept an eye on it and joined in. Since she said she would keep him, she couldn't break her promise. Shi Yao, who was on the mountain peak, was so tired that she lay down on the ground, spread out in a large shape, and looked at the sky. I was really too tired. At first, I absorbed the sky thunder without any effect. As I absorbed more and more, the attraction of this mountain peak became stronger and stronger. It was like a magnet was holding her tightly making every step extremely difficult. Now she has only advanced a few dozen meters. So one can imagine how slow this speed is. According to this setting, which becomes increasingly difficult as you go up, it may take several years for you to climb to the top. However, this difficulty cannot defeat her. But it only takes a few years, and she can completely afford it. Ji Yu cheered herself up, turned over, slowly climbed up, and headed towards the peak with difficulty again. The sky thunder once again merged into the limbs and bones along the soles of the feet. Jiyo could feel that her spiritual power storage was also slowly increasing. Perhaps she was not far from the advanced golden elixir. After a few hours, the battle in the hall finally ended. There were people lying on the ground. Some had died, and some were moaning in pain. Some people were slightly injured. These people were not very involved in the battle and were standing far away at this time. Standing in the central area are several nascent soul monks and several peak golden core cultivators. The most eye-catching ones are Du Chongren, Ling Ji and Ronli, especially Ronli, 
after all, he hid his cultivation. And what others saw was the foundation building stage. But now no one believes that this is his true cultivation level. And they have all guessed that he is hiding his cultivation level. However, Rongli was really uncomfortable at this time. After all, he only had the early stage of the golden core. In order to snatch the key, he used the trident. The trident is an immortal weapon with great power. But his current cultivation level is too low to be able to control it for a long time. At this time, his spiritual power was almost exhausted. But he pretended to be nonchalant, fearing that others would see his flaws. The other one is Ling Ji. Even several Yuaning monks are now a little afraid of Ling Ji. Just now, they watched helplessly as the peak Golden Core monk who fought with him was burned alive. The painful look was really disturbing. Feeling cold all over the body. Chapter 553 The Gate Okay, since we have both gained something, let's stop fighting. Song Inchung smiled and came out to smooth things over. Everyone has suffered a lot. If the fight continues, we may not know how it will end. It's better to just go to a door each. Yes! Gu Jing was the first to nod. Anyway, he and his clone each made more money than them. Everyone else nodded and agreed to the request. I just have a question. Why are there a total of 20 doors here? But only 17 keys? Duan Yin frowned in confusion. And his suspicious eyes passed over several people. When others heard this, they looked at Du Chongren at the same time. After all, he was one of the people who had obtained the key before. Du Chongren raised his eyelids and looked at everyone before speaking calmly. The other three should be in the hands of the monk who entered the black door before. Although he didn't know how she obtained the three light balls, Du Chongren's intuition told him that she had taken them away. What? Song Yingqing's harsh voice sounded. And her face was like an overturned paint tray. Colorful. If she had known that there were so many things in that person, she would have killed her even then. It's all your fault for insisting on protecting her. Song Yingcheng immediately vented his anger on Su Yun. If she hadn't protected him, he would have killed that person long ago. Su Yun was also a little surprised that the monk actually took three keys. But considering that since she can unlock the ancient formations and play around with the monks, it's not surprising that she can get the key. Even without me, you can't kill her. Su Yun just glanced at Song Yingcheng lightly, then turned and walked towards the door. Although that person's cultivation level was lower, Su Yun intuitively felt that Song Yingcheng could not kill her. After all, she had obtained her cultivation level through dual cultivation, and her combat power was really poor. Besides relying on men, what else can she do? You? Song Yingcheng pointed at Su Yun's back. Her face turned red with anger. Okay, let's go there quickly. Duan Yin stopped Song Yingcheng, fearing that she would really offend Su Yun. After all, the current junior sister no longer cares about his kindness. Yeah. Song Yinchen approached Duan Yin aggrievedly. No longer willful. But he hated Su Yun in his heart. From the first moment they met. She looked condescending and looked down on herself. Humph. When she gets the chance, she will definitely not let her go. When Duan Yin saw Song Yinchen obeying him so much, he felt sorry for her even more. Everyone walked towards the door one after another. Rongli looked back at Lu Xiangyu, who was standing aside, smiled reassuringly at her, and then walked towards the door. Seeing that Lu Xiangyu was the only one in Rong Li's eyes, Su Yuerong turned his head to look at her, with murderous intent flashing through his heart. After all, this is a secret realm. Even if he finds Lu Xiangyu dead after coming out, he can't say anything. Thinking of this, Su Yuerong laughed. Su Yuan and others came to the door and put the key into the groove. Soon a vortex appeared on the door and sucked them in. The remaining group of people hesitated for a while, and finally returned the same way. This ice and snow world is so big, there are always other opportunities. There is no need to waste time here. The injured monk lying on the ground also got up, and went to find a place to recuperate. Lu Xiangyu wanted to stay and wait for Rongli, but Su Yuerong persuaded her to leave. In her opinion, Su Yuerong had become Rongli's woman and her sister, so she left with her without any precautions. Chapter 554 Nan Gong Yu rushes to the river of time. Three months later, Jian Song and Qin Chen finally returned to Wan Jian sect and arrived at Fei Lai Peak, where Luo Chuan was located. At this time, Luo Chuan was still in seclusion, and he didn't know when he would come out. That guy Ji Shuzi said that my eldest disciple's love disaster happened in the past few years. But he is in seclusion. How did the love disaster happen? Jian Song really couldn't figure it out, and he had never heard of him doing this. Is there any female cultivator that the apprentice is particularly impressed by? 
The only one who got closer was his young apprentice. But they were brothers and sisters. And they couldn't be his young apprentice. Besides, his little disciple is the most innocent. He is devoted to cultivation. And has no love at all. Where can he find someone he likes? So that his big disciple can't love him? I find it strange too. Qin Chen frowned and asked tentatively. Is it because Luo Chuan is about to leave seclusion? Then he went out and met someone he liked. And that person ended up having a Taoist partner? How is that possible? Is my apprentice the kind of casual person? Jian Song rolled his eyes. He knew his apprentice would never fall in love with anyone casually. But that guy Ji Shuzi has always made no mistakes in his predictions. What a headache. Jian Song rubbed his forehead helplessly. He hated using his brain the most. So he might as well start a fight. What about Yao Yao's death? What did he say? In comparison, Qin Chen was more worried about Jia's death. After all, that was life-threatening. He said he couldn't calculate it at all. He tried to calculate it some time ago, but his calculations were all broken. Jian Song became even more anxious when he thought about his little apprentice. Why are all his apprentices so ill-fated? Qin Chen didn't expect that even Ji Shuzi couldn't calculate Yao Yao's death. He frowned tightly, always feeling a bad premonition. As God-transforming monks, they are closest to the rules of heaven, so their intuition is often very accurate. And heaven sometimes gives warnings. With this in mind, he took out the communication talisman and sent it to his apprentice. Ji Shuzi said that he is on his way to Wanjin sect, and he should arrive soon. I have been guarding here for the past two years, but I don't believe it. If I don't let my apprentice go out, he will still meet death. Tribulation. Jian Song is also at odds with the way of heaven. No matter what kind of calamity it is, he will strangle it in the cradle. Qin Chen nodded and stayed at Feilai Peak with Jian Song. Central Region Wanshan Sect. Nandong Yu was looking through the ancient formation book in his hand. When suddenly a thousand miles communication talisman came. Reaching out to catch the communication talisman. Nandong Yu crushed it. And Qin Chen's voice came out. You're... Your uncle Jian Song's young apprentice may be in trouble recently. You should go look for her on your behalf and remember to protect her. Nandong Yu felt no emotion after hearing this. But he still put the classics away. Tore open the space and headed towards the direction of the sensing jade. Ten days later, Nandong Yu came to Time River and found that the place was full of monks coming and going. Which was completely different from the previous situation. He has also heard that there are secret realms appearing in the long river of time. But these no longer have any appeal to him. Nandong Yu entered the river of time all the way. And everyone around him was attracted by his momentum. And they all stayed away. After a while, he came to the edge of the ice and snow world. But just as he was about to enter, he was intercepted. This place actually restricts the entry of monks who transform themselves into gods. However, he could sense that the other end of the induction jade was fine and there was no problem at all. Since there was no way to go in, Nandong Yu could only take out the futon on the spot, continue to take out his formation book and study it seriously. He was waiting in the long river of time for the secret realm to end and for her to come out. Chapter 555 Death is approaching. At this time, Jio had no idea what was going on in the outside world. Nor did she know that someone was waiting for her outside. She was climbing the mountain honestly. She didn't know how long she had been climbing until now. She just knew how to keep going. At this time, her aura was getting stronger and stronger. And she was not far away from advancing to the golden elixir. Recently, she always felt anxious. As if something bad was going to happen. No matter how she suppressed this feeling, she still felt stuffy in her heart. She sighed. If her prediction was correct, her death should be coming soon. After all, Yi Jia in the original article did not survive to advance to the golden elixir. So this golden elixir calamity was a good time for heaven to take action. A side of heaven can a people it likes and dislikes. But it must also have its own laws of heaven. If it violates its own laws of heaven, then its world will gradually lose its vitality and eventually become a world of death. Therefore, at most it will make Ji Yao's luck worse. It wants to destroy her through other means. But it cannot do it personally unless Ji Yao violates the laws of heaven. But crossing the tribulation is different. It can justifiably kill Ji Yao without worrying about violating its own laws of heaven. Jio has always felt that her luck is a bit strange. In fact, her luck is not bad. Because the opportunities she encounters are better than many monks. Although it requires experiencing life and death setbacks, it is also a way to train yourself. In fact, speaking of it, she was quite grateful to heaven for the training it gave her. 
so that she could drive herself to make continuous progress. But this does not mean that she will accept her fate. Her life and death can only be decided by her. Thinking of this, Jiyo was filled with strength again and continued to climb towards the peak. After an unknown amount of time, Jiyo finally reached the peak. At this time, she had completely lost the concept of time, and she climbed up step by step with her thoughts. Jiyo checked her bone age and found that she was 31 years old, which made her a little stunned for a moment. Although she has been in this world for so long, she is still not used to the rapid passage of time. However, she felt relieved when she thought that as long as she advanced to become a god, she would have a lifespan of 2,000 years. I am still very young. At this time, Jiyo was too tired to lift her hands and feet, so she could only collapse on the ground to regain her strength. The person who designed this level is really a pervert. It makes people climb the mountain without any spiritual power. And it also has a strong suction force. Once you climb up, the time is measured in years. It is really too challenging. If you meet someone who is not mentally determined, you would have given up long ago. She rested for a full hour before she felt like she was alive again. She stood up and looked towards the center of the peak and found that there was a faint stone platform there. And all the thunder struck at that stone platform. Boom! Another thunder struck down completely submerging the stone platform. Suddenly, the strong power of thunder flowed into Dan Tian from under his feet. Ji Yao felt that she could no longer suppress her cultivation, and the barrier at the peak of foundation building had been hit by thunder and had some cracks. Ji Yao's heart sank. This was a place of extraordinary spiritual power, and she had no control over the spiritual power at all. Moreover, there are so many monks in the ice and snow world now that she cannot advance here at all. In addition, now that the death disaster is approaching, he must find a safe enough place to concentrate on resisting the disaster. Chapter 556 Leaving the River of Time Shia looked at the center of the stone platform. There was a strong attraction there, tempting her to go there. Shia moved her steps carefully towards the stone platform. Boom! The sky thunder descended again. Ji Yao's whole body was numb, and she was stiff for a moment. Countless thunders entered Jiyo's Dantian, filling it completely. The barrier cracked open again, and the gap was getting bigger and bigger. Jiyu was a little anxious. She would be in danger if she continued like this. Thinking of this, Jiyu ignored the thunder and just approached the stone platform. Every step was extremely difficult. Jiyu's whole body was numb. Her hair was completely spread out, and she looked like she was lying down. A little embarrassed, after a quarter of an hour, Jiyu finally approached the stone platform. There is a fist-sized purple stone in the center of the stone platform, crackling with the power of thunder and lightning, and a white line flashes on it from time to time. Shio had never seen the Shirtu before, but she instinctively felt familiar with it. She stretched out her hand and held the stone in her hand. At this moment, another thunder struck from the sky, hitting Jiyo directly. Poof! Jiyo was injured by a blow, and she knelt down directly, but Jiyo still held the stone tightly. Unfortunately, she couldn't use spiritual power or open the storage ring. So she could only hold this thing in her hand. Boom! The sky thunder struck again, and the stone suddenly flickered, bringing with it a burst of white and purple light, which directly enveloped Ji Yao. After a few breaths, the light disappeared, and Ji Yao disappeared. Nan Dong Yu, who was sitting outside waiting, suddenly felt something. He stood up and looked towards the secret realm. At this time, he suddenly couldn't sense the position of the sensing jade, but could only sense a general direction. And this positioning only lasted a moment. And it changed to an extremely far place, already leaving the long river of time. Nandong Yu immediately put away his things, left the river of time, tore open the space, and chased after the location of the sensing jade. At this time, Rongli was sitting in front of a stone tablet, refining it. The key he originally obtained had the image of a key on it. He didn't understand it at first. But later he found out that inside this door was the key hub of the entire ice and snow palace. He was just a little short of refining the key and becoming the new owner of the palace. From the time he was refining it, he realized that this was an immortal palace of an immortal lord. But the immortal lord had already fallen. This immortal palace kept traveling through the cracks in space. And finally appeared here. Done! The last bit of the steel was also refined by Rongli. And the entire steel suddenly shrank in size and plunged into Rong Li's sea of consciousness. Rong Li stood up with a smile. At this time, he already felt the connection between himself and the immortal palace. Thinking that others were searching for things in his immortal palace, 
Romley snorted and directly controlled the Immortal Palace to throw everyone out. The monks who were searching in the Immortal Palace suddenly suddenly shifted and all returned to the long river of time. Then they discovered that the ice and snow world had disappeared without a trace. Xiao on the other side was also startled by the sudden teleportation. But she did not dare to struggle because she found that she had entered a space crack. At this time, she was heading towards an unknown space. A huge force of oppression came from the crack in space. If it weren't for the white-purple light around Gio protecting her, she would have been torn apart long ago, feeling that there was only the last bit of the cultivation barrier left. Gio could only pray in her heart that the shuttle speed would be faster. Chapter 557 Advanced Golden Elixir Not long after, Gio suddenly felt a strong suction force, which immediately pulled her out of a gap. Bang! Gio hit the ground from midair, making a small pit in the ground. Hiss! Gio frowned in pain as her heart almost broke. But at this moment, strong thunder attribute spiritual power suddenly appeared in the air. And they all surrounded Gio and tried their best to penetrate into her body. Gio was shocked. How could there be such strong thunder attribute spiritual power here? But before she had time to think too much, there was a sudden, click, sound in her body. And the barrier at the peak of foundation establishment was completely shattered. Countless thunder attribute spiritual powers turned into thunder attribute liquid and began to squeeze continuously. Gradually, the liquid began to condense into a ball. It was squeezed step by step and gradually became firmer. At this moment, the purple stone held in Ji Yao's hand suddenly penetrated into Ji Yao's dantian and entered the condensing golden elixir. Suddenly, countless thunderbolts exploded directly in Ji Yao's dantian. Ah! Severe pain struck, and Ji Yao couldn't help but moan in pain while holding her dantian. She felt like her body was about to explode, and every hole was aching. Xu Xu watched Jia worriedly in the sea of consciousness. As Jia's magic weapon, it felt vaguely uneasy. It always feels that something bad is going to happen, which makes it very flustered. But in the current situation, it can't help at all. Yunling was also frightened by Ji Yao. He noticed Ji Yao's pain coming from his soul. Yunling was in a panic. He could only lean on the book helplessly and watch Ji Yao worriedly. Bei Yu Ye Jia, Brother Feng, why am I so panicked all of a sudden? Zhao Qian Yu felt the sudden panic in her heart and covered her heart with some discomfort. Yi Feng was the same way. Suddenly, he felt a sense of uneasiness. He was so startled that he immediately took out Ji Yao's soul lamp that he carried with him. It wasn't until he saw that the soul lamp was burning extremely vigorously that he breathed a sigh of relief. But this uneasy feeling always enveloped him. Brother Feng, could something happen to Shir Qi? Zhao Qian Yu was still a little worried even though she saw that the soul lamp was intact. I don't know either. She sent us a communication talisman before, and said, she went to the Central Realm's River of Time. Yi Feng stared at the soul lamp closely, carefully observing whether it had any changes. Zhao Qian Yu always felt flustered and uncomfortable. The monk's intuition was always relatively accurate. But there was indeed nothing wrong with the soul lamp. So she couldn't be sure for a while. She took the soul lamp from Yi Feng and touched it gently. The 17-year-old in her family has rarely gone home since she started practicing. She traveled around for training, and she missed her very much. Head of the family, the great elder has something to ask you, and asked you to go to the meeting hall. The voice of a family member came from the door. Then please pay attention first. I will deal with things first. Yi Feng hugged Zhao Qianyu distressly, and left the room feeling uneasy. Zhao Qianyu was left looking at the soul lamp in trance. Jia on the other side was still suffering from the pain in her dantian. The golden elixir in her body has gradually taken shape but because of the purple stone. Her golden elixir is not golden, but purple, with a few white lines sparsely distributed on it. And this golden elixir is much larger than that of ordinary monks. Until the last drop of liquid was compressed, Jiyo finally successfully advanced to the golden elixir. Chapter 558 Death Tribulation 1 The spiritual energy surrounding her gradually dissipated, and the painful feeling finally disappeared. Jiyo lay on the ground. Her messy hair wet with sweat on her cheeks mixed with the dust on the ground, making her look extremely embarrassed. The pain has disappeared, but Jio is not happy at all, because she had already felt the thunder gathering, and the whole sky began to darken. Master, the catastrophe is coming. You must hold on. Shushu's voice was very nervous. It didn't know why it was so nervous, but it remembered that when its previous master was about to die, it was also like this. General. Ha ha. I'm fine. Jiyu smiled with difficulty and sat up. After advancing to the golden elixir, 
Her spiritual power is now very abundant. And this is not a place of absolute spiritual power, which gives her at least a little resistance. It's just that the severe pain before caused her soul to feel a little numb. And she still didn't recover for a while. At this time, Ji Yao had the opportunity to observe her surroundings. She actually came to an island. This island covers a large area. But there are bare trees everywhere. And the ground is covered with fallen leaves. Making it look extremely depressed. The island is surrounded by sea. And with Ji Yao's current range of consciousness, she has not been able to detect whether there are other islands nearby. Ji Yao scanned the entire island and finally breathed a sigh of relief after confirming that there was no danger. If after overcoming the catastrophe, there is any threat, it will be troublesome. Ji Yao raised her head and looked at the sky, only to find that the sky above her was filled with dark clouds, reaching out to cover her chest. Ji Yao felt a little out of breath, and the whole space was depressed at this time. Soon, she realized that she had been mocked by heaven. Nandong Yu followed the induction jade all the way, but lost the trace of the induction jade when he came to a place in the air. Nandong Yu closed his eyes and began to carefully sense the location of the sensing jade. After a long while, he finally determined the location of the sensing jade. But it is obvious that the spirit jade is no longer in this space. For a moment, he couldn't catch up. He had no choice but to calculate the space nodes while sensing the position of the spiritual jade. Fortunately, he understood the properties of space. It only took him a while to find the space crack leading to that space. Here it comes! Xu Xu said nervously when he noticed the thunder falling from the sky. Ji Yeo's heart tightened, and she raised her head and looked at the sky seriously. Boom! The first thunderbolt descended, locked directly on Ji Yeo, and struck down hard on her. Ji Yeo took out several defensive magic weapons from the storage ring protected herself, and then faced them. The sky thunder struck Ji Yao hard, hitting her directly to the ground. And a deep hole was made in the ground. Poof! Ji Yao was hit into the pit and couldn't help spitting out a mouthful of blood. But she didn't dare to relax at all and quickly used the star tempering technique to make up for some damage. The blood beads, which had been silent for a long time, automatically cooperated and began to emit Qi and blood to help Ji Yao repair her body. Although this was only the first thunderbolt, all her defensive magic weapons were reduced to ashes in an instant. Fortunately, the power of this first thunder was not particularly powerful, and it was barely within the range that Hia could bear. She took out a handful of pills and stuffed them into her mouth, racing against time to recover from her injuries. The next thunderstorm is coming again. Chapter 559 Death Tribulation 2 Sure enough, after a while, the second thunder fell again. Jia jumped out of the pit, took out several defensive magic weapons, and faced him again. This time, all the defensive magic weapons were also reduced to ashes, and the sky thunder slammed Ji Yao into the pit again. Poof! Ji Yao spat out a mouthful of blood again, feeling like her lungs were about to explode. This second thunderbolt was so powerful that her body couldn't bear it for a while, thanks to the robes on her body that shared most of the attack for her. Ji Yao took out the elixir from the storage ring and took it, working hard to dissolve the elixir and recover her body. Tempering Star Ju helped Ji absorb the remaining thunder on her body and helped her temper her body bit by bit. Ji got up and jumped out of the pit, holding Li Yuan and waiting for the third thunder disaster. Her defensive magic weapon has been exhausted, and now she can only rely on the sword in her hand. Ji lowered her head and touched Li Yuan and whispered, Li Yuan, from now on, I have to rely on you to accompany me. Li Yuan shook his body spiritually and expressed his determination. A warmth rose from the bottom of her heart. Ji Yu smiled, raised her head, and looked at the sky again. Boom! The third thunder calamity fell. Ji Yu held Li Yuan and slashed out with a sky-breaking strike. At this time, the scene of experiencing Master Jian Chu's tribulation in the secret place of Zhu Peak appeared in her mind. Ji Yu has advanced to the golden elixir, and the power of breaking the sky has doubled, successfully offsetting part of the thunder catastrophe. However, most of the lightning strikes still struck Ji Yao, smashing her to the ground again. This time, the scope of the pit gradually became larger and deeper, and the rich sky thunder crackled around. But it could not dissipate for a while. Ji Yao lay in the pit in pain, with blood on the corners of her mouth, and couldn't get up for a while. Master! Xu Xu called Ji Yu distressly. It didn't expect that the third thunder tribulation was so powerful. Originally, the golden elixir monk's thunder calamity was relatively weak and it was the monk's first real baptism of heaven. 
but it's obvious that its owner's thunder tribulation is more powerful. There are only two possibilities for this situation. One is that the person who has overcome the tribulation is extremely talented. The talent is too high and the advancement speed is too fast. The other is that the person who has overcome the calamity is not tolerated by the heaven. And the heaven wants to use the thunder calamity to obliterate her. Xu Xu hoped it was the first one. But he always felt uneasy in his heart. At this time, Jiyo had no energy to deal with the book. She took out the elixirs, drank them with trembling hands, closed her eyes, and concentrated on melting the elixirs. After a while, Jiyo struggled to get up and jumped out of the pit again. But this time, the injury was more serious and could not be fully healed. Boom! The fourth thunder calamity fell again and struck Jiyao hard. Jiyo's heart sank, and a ray of sky broke through the sky to meet him again. Poof! Jiyo was still hit into the deep pit. Her lungs were completely broken, and her internal organs began to bleed. Wow! Jiyo spat out a large mouthful of blood again, feeling a sharp pain. The pit expanded again, and countless deciduous trees were destroyed by the thunder, leaving behind a pile of charred trees. Jiyo struggled to take out the elixir and stuffed it into her mouth, but she could no longer muster the strength to get up. She could only close her eyes and wait for the injury to be repaired. The power of this fourth thunder is already extremely strong and the thunder will become stronger as it goes on. And the time it will take to condense will become longer and longer. Zhao Qianyi was looking at the soul lamp when she suddenly saw the flame flicker. And then the flame became much smaller. Chapter 560 Death Tribulation 3 Zhao Qianyi was shocked and stood up suddenly, holding the soul lamp and feeling a little at a loss. This feeling of panic became stronger and stronger. Zhao Qianyi's eyes turned red, and she couldn't help but walk towards the meeting hall. Northern Territory Wan Jin sect. Jian Song walked around anxiously, feeling inexplicably irritated in his heart. What's wrong? Qin Chen asked worriedly, as he had never seen Jian Song like this before. I don't know what's going on. I just feel inexplicably irritable, and my eyelids keep twitching. Jian Song rubbed his forehead and spoke anxiously. Is it possible that Luachuan's love disaster is coming? Qin Chen turned his head to look at Ji Shuzi and asked with a frown. Ji Shuzi stretched out his right hand, pinched his fingers and counted, and his face suddenly darkened. Yes, it's very close. Ji Shuzi's tone was a little low, because the result of the love disaster he had calculated before was very bad, and it was very likely that Luo Chuan's path to immortality would be completely cut off. It's just that all the tribulations in this world have some variables. It depends on whether people can grasp them. When Jian Song heard what Ji Shuzi said, he became even more anxious. He walked around the entrance of Luochuan's cave, trying to relax his mood. Jia on the other side had already passed the sixth thunder tribulation and was lying quietly in the pit. At this time, her face was covered with blood. Her lungs were broken again, and several bones in her body were broken. Jia calmed down for a long time before she had the strength to take the pill. She closed her eyes in pain and began to recall her life. Parents, Master, Senior Brothers, Jia, Nandong Che and the lovely and warm Yi family, as well as Ake, Luo Xiaoxua and the others. She really doesn't want to die, and she really cherishes the happiness she has gained in this life. She went from being a lonely person to being loved by so many people now, and she really couldn't bear to let go. She just wanted to live well, to protect the people she loved, to be with them, and to be with them for a long time. But why? Why must she be eliminated? Xiao's tears fell down her cheeks, her heart full of reluctance. She couldn't imagine what her parents would do if she died. How sad they must be. But Tiandao couldn't hear her thoughts at all. And the sixth path, which had been brewing for a long time, struck directly at Jiyu in the pit. This time, Jiyu couldn't even climb out of the pit and could only passively accept the thunder disaster. Poof! Jiyu was directly submerged by the thunder. The entire island was covered by the thunder. And the sea water turned up huge waves. This thunderbolt directly shattered all the bones in Jiyu's body. If it were not for the protection of the rope, the whole person would have turned into a pool of blood at this time. Pain. It hurts. Jiyo felt a burst of heartbreaking pain, which made her gasp. At this time, she could not move. She could only use her soul to take out the spiritual spring water that Jiyo had given her from the storage ring. And use ordinary the master of things drove the jade bottle to her mouth. Jiyo endured the severe pain and carefully controlled the jade bottle to tilt slightly. And the spiritual spring water suddenly flowed out. Jiyu quickly opened her mouth and tried hard to absorb the spiritual spring water. However, her pills had been exhausted. 
and now she could only do this. As soon as the spiritual spring water was in her stomach, it began to emit rich spiritual power and began to repair Jia's body. It's just that her injury was too serious and her recovery was extremely slow. Jia closed her eyes tightly in pain. It was already the sixth thunder tribulation. And now there was only the last one left. Chapter 561 Death Tribulation 4 But it is this last thunder that is the real highlight. Its power is completely unmatched by the previous sky thunder. So it takes a long time to condense. Shio was in pain and tired. And her eyelids could hardly be opened. She tried to open her eyes bit by bit and recall the past bit by bit to give herself the motivation to persevere. With only this last thunder tribulation left, she could succeed. She just lay in the pit. And it took a quarter of an hour for her bones to grow again. Jia climbed up with difficulty with the help of Li Yuan. Then stepped on Li Yuan and flew out of the pit. At this time, the island was in a mess. With traces of being struck by lightning everywhere. Shu Shu! If! I mean if! I die! Can you take care of Xiao Lian and Xiao Bai Tuan for me? Ji Yao said with a difficult smile, pulling up the corners of her mouth. Master, Shu Shu choked up for the first time and was speechless. He still wanted to accompany her to grow up and witness her attain the immortality. He didn't want her to perish. It never wants to experience the pain of losing its owner again. Shu Shu is my brother! I can definitely take good care of them. Ji Yao's expression softened. This is the partner who has grown up with her all the way and is her relative. We all need the care of our master. Shu Shu burst into tears as he said this. He really felt so sad. But at this time, Ji Yao didn't have much time to comfort her. She could only seize the time to release the white fox from the pet bag and untie the equal contract between the two. In order to put it into the storage bag. I signed a contract with it before. But now I don't need it anymore. It's okay to let me out. But I'm so suffocated. Pretty girl. What's wrong with you? Bai Hu complained about the pet bag as soon as he came out. But suddenly he saw Ji Yao. Who was covered in injuries and disheveled hair. I'm going through the tribulation. Please leave quickly. Ji Yao said taking out the old spirit boat from the storage ring, putting in the spirit stone to start it, and wanted to put the white fox on it. No, I won't leave. The white fox suddenly hugged Ji Yao's leg tightly. It had already noticed that something was wrong. If it was not extremely dangerous, how could the beautiful girl break the contract between them? Old Bai, be obedient. I'll have to rely on you to take care of little Bai Tuan and the others. Ji Yao's eyebrows softened, and she gently rubbed the white fox's head. I won't listen. I won't listen. I'll go through the tribulation with you. I'll accompany you. Bai Hu hugged Ji Yao tightly and refused to leave. You can't withstand the thunder calamity. Be good. Let's go quickly. Ji Yao said and put a holding charm on the white fox. Then put it on the spirit boat, activated the spirit boat's defense formation, and headed towards the sea fly away. The effect of the holding charm was very short-lived. The white fox resumed its actions after a while but was firmly blocked by the defensive shield and could not escape at all. It could only slap the defensive shield over and over again, calling the beautiful girl incessantly, with tears streaming down its face. Jia forced herself to stop looking at it and looked up at the brewing thunder disaster. The pressure at this time was like the entire sky was about to come down. The secret of heaven was firmly locked on Jia, waiting for the final blow. At this time, Jia was calm as never before. She had gained a lot since time traveling from being entangled in the identity of the female supporting role at the beginning, to worrying about death later. I have never really liberated my mentality in these years. The more people and things she cherishes, the more she fears death. Chapter 562 Death Tribulation 5 But at this time, she was no longer afraid in her heart. Neither the calamity of death nor the law of heaven could control her life or death. Come if you can. See if you will be wiped out or if your destiny will be completely changed. She has smiled at the sky holding Li Yuan and pointing directly at the way of heaven. Tian Dao seemed to sense Jia's provocation and became even more angry. Boom! Finally, the last thunder tribulation fell, and it turned out to be the nine heavens divine thunder. Jia was shuddered, but still held Li Yuan in her hand to greet him. At this time, her soul seemed to have come to that vast white space again, and the figure of Master Jian Ichu was right in front of her. Practice against the will of heaven and fight for the day and night. If the way of heaven is blocked, break it with one sword. The figure was mixed with extremely strong will and cut through the sky with one sword. If there is any obstacle in the way of heaven, break it with one sword. Ji Yu's eyes narrowed. 
and she struck at the divine thunder with her sword with the determination to never give up. This sword cut out Jiu's unprecedented determination, and finally made her understand her own way. Never giving up on herself is her way. At this moment, her own conception of Thunder Sword Dao finally came into being. The power of this sword was unexpectedly powerful. The artistic conception of the sword directly offset part of the Thunder Tribulation and violently collided with the Divine Thunder. Suddenly, countless small vortices appeared in midair, which were caused by the space cracks caused by the collision. However, Jia's cultivation level was too low after all, and she could not reach the ability of Master Jianichu. The artistic conception of swordsmanship was eventually annihilated in the Divine Thunder. The remaining Divine Thunder struck Shi Yao fiercely. Poof! In just a moment, Shi Yao was completely shot down to the bottom of the pit. Crack! The induction spirit Jade shattered. Nandong Yu, who was calculating space nodes, paused for a moment when a bad premonition arose, and he immediately focused more on calculating space nodes. The Divine Thunder did not stop after falling like the previous thunder, but there was a steady stream of divine thunder falling on Ji Yao. At this time, Ji Yao's body was completely shattered, and even her eyes could no longer be opened. The spiritual power in her body began to dissipate, and there was a pool of blood around her. Sensing the rapid loss of vitality in her body, Ji Yao felt a sense of unwillingness in her heart. I never wanted to do anything against heaven. I just wanted to survive. So why did I have to kill her? Just because she is the female supporting role? Just because she is a doomed person? Why? An extremely strong unwillingness arose from the bottom of my heart. At this moment, the Phoenix Jade Tablet was also destroyed by the Divine Thunder. And a Phoenix will emerge from it and enter Jiyu's soul. Jiyo, who is almost losing her will completely, finally got some support. I can do it. I can definitely get through it. Jiyo's soul fell into extreme pain. Because she felt a tearing force trying to destroy her soul. The Phoenix will and the flower of divine soul were desperately trying to protect her soul. Even Shu Shu and the others were thrown out of the sea of consciousness at this time, and could only stay aside and worry. However, the divine thunder became stronger and stronger, and finally completely cut off Xiu's life, destroying everything, leaving only a skeleton wearing a robe. Yi Xiu died. Luo Chuan, who was in retreat, suddenly spurted out a mouthful of blood and felt a heart-piercing pain. He was so shocked that he rushed out of the cave immediately. Junior Sister Soul Lamp! As soon as Luo Chuan came out and saw Jian Song, he rushed to him in a hurry. Jian Song suddenly felt sad. But before he could figure out the reason, he saw Luo Chuan rushing out with blood red eyes and blood on the corners of his mouth. Hearing what he said, Jian Song had a bad premonition and immediately took out Ji Yao's soul lamp. How is that possible? Jian Song shouted because the soul lamp at this time had been completely extinguished. Chapter 563 Death Tribulation 6 When Luo Chuan saw the soul lantern, his face was expressionless, but a flash of madness flashed in his eyes. He reached out and grabbed the soul lantern, since the opponent's approximate position, tore apart the space and rushed over. His junior sister will not die. Definitely not. Jian Song stayed there in despair. He couldn't believe why his little apprentice suddenly died. Qin Shen also couldn't accept it thinking of his disciples. He sent the messenger talisman over again. Only Ji Shuzi sighed clearly. It turned out that this was Luo Chuan's love disaster. Unable to love. Originally refers to the fall of the other person. It was obvious that Luo Chuan just now seemed to be possessed. Once he witnessed this result with his own eyes and confirmed the girl's death, he might really become possessed. This also corresponds to his blockage of the immortal path. Jian Song! Qin Shen looked at Jian Song who suddenly tore apart the space and left as if he had lost his soul. He exclaimed and immediately followed. Ji Shuzi sighed and shook his head. Sure enough, even the Phoenix Jade card could not protect her. At the same time that Yi Zhi died, Yi Feng, who was discussing things in the conference hall, suddenly felt his heart skip a beat and an indescribable heartache came over him. He was so startled that he immediately stood up and rushed out of the conference hall to go back to find Zhao Qian Yu. But as soon as he rushed out of the meeting hall, he saw Zhao Qianyu standing in the yard in despair, holding Jia's soul lantern, her eyes completely blank. Yi Feng looked at the extinguished soul lamp in disbelief. And for a while, he didn't dare to approach it at all. What's wrong? Why are you so sudden? Seeing Yi Feng's sudden departure, several other elders of the Yi family followed him out worriedly. Just as they were about to ask questions, they saw the soul lamp held in Zhao Qianyu's hand. That's it. 
The uncle of the Yi family pointed at the soul lamp tremblingly, having a bad premonition, and the others also looked in disbelief. Brother Feng! Zhao Qianyi raised her head blankly, looked at Yi Feng, and suddenly fell backward. Yi Feng reacted, rushed over to catch her, and hurriedly stuffed the pill into her mouth. Brother Feng! She is seventeen! Zhao Qianyi couldn't speak clearly. Tears kept flowing, and her whole body was shaking. No! No! There must be something wrong with the soul lantern. Don't be afraid. Let's go find her. Let's take Zhe Qi home. Yi Feng's eyes were red. And he hugged Zhao Qian Yu and opened the space towards the soul lantern. Go in the direction indicated. Their 17 will be fine. Quickly, send a message to old number 41 and the others. As well as all the Yi family disciples in the central region. Asking them all to rush to the river of time to find Zhe Qi. Hurry! The uncle of the Yi family quickly ordered. Sher Qi is the young man of the Yi family, the hope of a generation was the treasure of their Yi family. And they couldn't just die so mysteriously. Yes! Several other people agreed and hurriedly went to give instructions. On the other side, Nan Dong Yu, who had just calculated the space nodes, was about to build a passage and go through the space cracks to find the person. However, he suddenly received a messenger from Qin Qin and learned that the person he was looking for had already died. Nan Dong Yu paused, but still tore open the crack in space and stepped in, in the secret realm of the five seas. Xia Chiyue, together with Luo Chioli, Yi Shiro, and Yi Qisheng, planned to enter a dead city in a secret realm. But Xia Chiyue suddenly felt something in her heart and stopped. At this moment, Yi Shiro and Yi Qisheng received the communication talisman together. All disciples of the Yi family obey the order. All disciples in the central region immediately rush to the river of time to find the 17th member of the Yi family who has fallen. Chapter 564 Death Tribulation 7 17? Xia Chiyue grabbed Yi Jiro's hand and asked in disbelief. Yi Jiro was completely stunned at this time. He turned his head to look at Yi Qi Sheng and asked blankly, Brother 11, did I hear wrong just now? They said that 1717 fell. But how is this possible? Yi Jiro shed tears as she spoke. She couldn't believe that Shi Qi, who was so powerful and could survive being surrounded by so many monks, had fallen. Yi Qingsheng couldn't hear Yi Jiro's voice at this time, and was completely stunned. The sight of Seventeen's smiling face flashed in his mind. Xia Qi Yu had finally confirmed at this time that they were talking about Ji Yao, the unique Yi family Seventeen. Xia Qi Yu's eyes turned red. She let go of Yi Jiro's wrist, pursed her lips tightly, and pictured Ji Yu acting coquettishly smiling and waiting to her in her mind. She has been looking forward to the two meeting again. Looking forward to her happily waiting to her from a distance again. No! Ji Yao can't fall! She who I know will definitely not fall like this! Xia Qi Yu shook her head, turned around and ran out of the secret realm. Although she couldn't fly here, she could use spiritual power. However, at this moment, she completely forgot that she could also use body skills and just ran instinctively. At this time, all she could think about was finding Jiyo. And she must find Jiyo. Yi Qingsheng and Yi Jiro also reacted and chased after them. They were going to find Shi Qi in the river of time. There was no way anything would happen to her. Absolutely impossible. Luo Chioli watched the three people leave, looked back at the dead city, hesitated for a long time, and chose to pursue Chi Chi Yue. On the other side, Ji Yao's vitality had been completely cut off. And the spirit boat lost control. The white fox finally broke through the spirit boat's defense shield and ran towards Ji Yao in the center of the divine thunder. But it couldn't compete with the divine thunder. Countless divine thunders came into contact with it. And all its fur was destroyed immediately. And its skin was ripped open by the explosion. But at this time, the white fox couldn't feel the pain at all and ran towards Ji Yao in the pit bit by bit. Bang! The white fox fell directly into the pit, looking at the skeleton in front of him. It didn't dare to come close for a while. Beautiful girl. Beautiful girl. Please answer me. Are you kidding me? The white fox was injured by the divine thunder. At this time, he had fallen to the ground, covered with wounds, and his breath was gradually weakening. Beautiful girl. Get up. Will you get up? Can you look at me again? You said you would make clothes for me. You will definitely not break your promise. Right. The white fox crawled towards Geo Hart. And the thought came to his mind. The way she protected herself every time reminded me of the way she gave the phantom pearl to herself without hesitation. The white fox finally got close to Ji Yao. 
stretched out his paws to hold her skirt tightly as usual, and couldn't bear it anymore and passed out. At this time, Shi Yao's physical body was destroyed and her vitality was cut off. Only one golden elixir was left, but it was still absorbing the divine thunder. At this time, the phoenix will and the soul flower were still desperately trying to protect her dissipating soul. But with little success, if it were just a little bit closer, Shi Yu's soul would completely dissipate between heaven and earth. Xiao Lian, you and Yun Ling will take good care of Xiao Bai Tuan later, and the master will be left to you. Xu Xu sensed that Ji Yao's soul was about to dissipate, and forcibly awakened Xiao Lian, who was in the process of advancing. It protects the little white balls in them. Chapter 565 Death Tribulation 8 Brother Xu Xu! Xiao Lian cried and called Xu Xu. She didn't know why. She just slept for a while. Why did her sister die? This makes it unacceptable. In order to preserve the soul of the master, I can only send her to another time and space. I can't control the specific time. Maybe once she leaves, she won't be able to come back. This requires you to take care of Xiao Bai Tuan and the others. Xu Xu choked and said to Xiao Yan, although it usually seems to ignore them. But in fact, it really likes them. Prefer the owner. If the master has a chance to come back, tell her that Xu Xu is lucky to meet her and ask her to practice hard and obtain the immortal way. After saying this, Xu Xu released the little white ball from the space in his body and handed it to the little one. Lian began to gather all the energy. Suddenly, a burst of white light emitted from Xu Xu's body, wrapping Xi Yao's disappearing soul into the time tunnel. Brother Xu Xu! Xi Yan approached Xu Xu and cried reluctantly. Xiao Bai Tuan had also woken up at this time, and began to walk around Xu Xu anxiously twice, and then ran to the outside world. At this time, it could no longer detect its sister's aura. Xiao Bai Tuan anxiously stepped beside Xi Yao's skeleton and then discovered the unconscious white fox on the ground. Oh, Xiao Bai Tuan stretched out his head sadly to rub Ji Yao's bones, and then roared towards the sky. A huge phantom flashed towards the divine thunder, and swallowed a large part of the divine thunder. Wu, Xiao Bai Tuan groaned in pain after swallowing the divine thunder, and then fell next to Ji Yao's skeleton and fainted completely. At this time, its belly was surging continuously, and the divine thunder was making trouble, trying to break through the belly and come out. But Xiao Bai Tuan has no ability to control it at all. Where is this? Xi Yao looked at the pitch black in front of her. A little dazed. She is obviously still going through the tribulation. She is obviously going to die. But why is she here? Thinking that she had lost her life. Xi Yao felt a pain in her heart. She did not dare to think about what would happen to her relatives and friends if she died. At this time, Xi Yao was in a state of trance. A transparent person. She lowered her head to see herself but couldn't see anything. And this space was completely black, with nothing there. Jia wanted to move her body, but found that she was completely suppressed and couldn't move at all. Jia looked around anxiously. She wanted to go back. She couldn't die. At this moment, a loud noise came from the entire space. Go. Just hearing a loud noise, the chaos gradually separated, and something light and clear slowly rose up and turned into the sky. The heavy and turbid thing slowly descended and turned into the ground. After the separation of heaven and earth, a man actually raised his head to the sky and pushed hard on the ground with his feet. The sky and the earth gradually took shape. Jia was fascinated by the scene of the beginning of the world in front of her and was completely immersed in it. When the world first opens, all things and all life will slowly appear. The giant in front of him stood there quietly with his head in the sky and his feet on the ground. After a long time, Xiao came back to her senses. She was surprised to see the world opening in front of her. And remembered a person. Shushu's first owner. Pangu. Gradually, Xiao looked at the wind and clouds. The sun and the moon. Thunder and lightning. Rivers. Grass. Big trees. And animals appearing in front of her eyes. Chapter 566 Death Tribulation 9 Xiao was immersed in this world. And her soul floated up. Along the way, she witnessed the emergence of countless lives and the fall of countless lives. Repeated over and over again. What is life? What is death? Ji remembered that she died in her previous life, but was reborn in this life. Life is death. Death is life. Life and death. What is life without death? Jia now had an understanding of life and death. In her mind, her death was her life. She wanted to live well. Even if she died, she still wanted to live well. The artistic conception of life and death is complete. At this moment, 
fire suddenly fell from the sky and fell towards Shi Yao's head. The phoenix's will instinct protects the master and comes forward to greet him. The sky fire burned fiercely, tightly surrounding the phoenix's will. Shi Yao looked up at Tianhua worriedly, trying to dispel the sky fire. The phoenix will struggle painfully, but still firmly remembered its mission. The mission to protect Shi Yao. Chong Chong! A cry suddenly came from the sky. Jia looked up and saw a soaring phoenix. The whole sky was filled with red light, which made the phoenix look beautiful. Ji Yao was entranced for a while. This scene was so beautiful. The phoenix circled in the sky for several times, but suddenly rushed towards Ji Yao. Ji Yao noticed phoenix's kindness and did not dodge it. She greeted it with a smile. But the phoenix got straight into Ji Yao's soul. Ji Yao's soul felt a sharp pain, and she almost collapsed after losing her balance. At this moment, the golden elixir in Ji Yao's bones finally absorbed all the divine thunder and began to crackle and flicker. Ji Yao, who was in pain, suddenly noticed a burst of tearing force. She instinctively wanted to grab something to stabilize her soul. But she suddenly held the sky fire that had formed into a flower in her hand. A violent tearing force came, and Ji Yao could no longer control herself and was sucked away, leaving that side of time and space. The golden elixir was still flickering hard consuming the energy of the divine thunder bit by bit, pulling Ji Yao back from ancient time and space. After an unknown amount of time, Ji Yao's soul finally reset and returned to her bones. At this moment, two kinds of gas, one black and one white, suddenly appeared under the golden elixir in Ji Yao's bones. The gas became larger and larger, and gradually converged into a bagua pattern. The two gases began to cover Ji Yao's bones in all directions, covering her bones firmly. At this time, the blood beads finally regained their vitality and began to emit the power of qi and blood. Gradually, her internal organs, blood, body, everything slowly grew. Ji Yao's soul was still immersed in the pain caused by the phoenix's will, and she never noticed her situation. After a quarter of an hour, Ji Yao's physical body finally took shape, and the black and white gases gradually gathered at the Dantian, bringing new life to Ji Yao's limbs and bones. At this moment, Countless auspicious clouds suddenly appeared in the sky, and a phoenix appeared, screaming in the sky and flashing past. Immediately, auspicious dew dropped from the sky and began to nourish Ziya's injured body. At this point, Tian Dao finally recognized Jia. Death has passed, with the nourishment of the auspicious dew falling from the sky. Jia's soul finally calmed down and fell into warmth. Spirit World Phoenix Ruins Old Ancestor, I... Our Phoenix clan finally has a new member. Feng Chi hurriedly came outside the ancestor's courtyard and started yelling before entering. It is true that his Phoenix clan is extremely short of blood, and there have been no new members for hundreds of years. Chapter 567 Phoenix Clan Huh? Feng Ling stood up suddenly after hearing this, and after counting with her fingers, she discovered that someone had indeed activated the Phoenix bloodline and became a member of his Phoenix clan. Ha! Great! We finally have a member of the Phoenix Clan. We no longer have to be ridiculed by those dragon clans. Feng Ling laughed heartily. Dragons are inherently licentious and have many descendants. So the Phoenix Clan always mocked him. Descendants wither. Now finally there is a new person. Ancestor! Go pick them up quickly! Feng Chi was very anxious and couldn't wait for the new family member so that he would not be the youngest. Now is not the time. She is not in this world. Feng Ling smiled and shook her head but she was not in a hurry. He had a hunch that it wouldn't take long for them to meet. Xia on the other side finally recovered completely. But at this time, there was no spiritual power in her body. As soon as she got up, she found Bai Hu and Xiao Bai Tuan who were unconscious. Xia was startled and immediately rushed over, trying to feed them the elixir, but found that the storage ring on her hand had been completely destroyed, and her property disappeared overnight. Li Yuan was also broken into two pieces, and was lying quietly on the ground. Jia looked at the two seriously injured little guys, and Li Yuan, who was broken into two parts. Her eyes suddenly turned red, and she felt extremely sad. Sister! Sister! You are finally okay! At this moment, Xiuyan's choked excited shout came from the Sea of Consciousness. Jia came to the Sea of Consciousness, and was about to go up to comfort Xiaoyan. But she suddenly discovered the book on the side. Shu Shu! Jia whispered in disbelief. But at this time, Xu Xu was lying quietly in the sea of consciousness. At this time, it had returned to the state of attributeless technique and could no longer give Zio any response. Xiu Yan, 
What's wrong with Shu Shu? Jia came to Shu Shu eagerly and stroked it over and over again. Brother Shu Shu, in order to send your soul to another time and space, it consumed all its energy and fell into a deep sleep again. Xiuyan approached Jia sadly and said with choked sobs. Jia burst into tears when she heard this. She looked at Shushu in front of her, remembering how Shushu once teased and disliked her while trying hard to modify her exercises. Jia covered her chest uncomfortably and slowly squatted down, trying to contain the pain in her heart. Shiyu, at this moment, Gu Wenying in the soul orb spoke out. She had been so anxious when she saw Ji Yao going through the tribulation before, but she couldn't interfere at all. If the heavenly Tao is aware of her existence, the thunder calamity will increase exponentially, which will harm Jiyu instead. She could only watch Shu Shu sacrifice for Jiyao. But she couldn't help at all. Senior waning. Jiyao raised the corners of her mouth and smiled reluctantly. But she couldn't help but shed tears. A treasure like a book can be awakened. As long as it finds enough spiritual beings from heaven and earth, it can wake up again. Gu Wenying recalled that in ancient times, her father had a treasure that was reawakened in this way. Jia's eyes lit up when she heard this. She remembered that Shu Shu once said that it needed the spiritual objects of heaven and earth, the spiritual power of its own enlightenment, and the sword's will, all of which could help it recover. It's a pity that I have never encountered any spiritual creature from heaven and earth, and I have wronged it. I understand. Knowing that Shushu could wake up again, Jia felt certain and withdrew from the sea of consciousness. Chapter 568 First Meeting Jia looked at the white fox and small white group on the ground, as well as Li Yuan that was broken into two parts. Then she looked up at the exit of the pit and frowned. She had to get out early, but the pit was too deep. She didn't have any spiritual power in her body at this time, and she couldn't even basically fly into the air, let alone fly with a sword. But at this time, both the little white group and the white fox were in particularly bad condition. Especially the white fox, whose body was charred and black, and his breathing was getting weaker and weaker. Shi Yu became anxious and began to try to climb up. She used the broken parts of Li Yuan to insert them into the wall, trying to climb up like stairs. Then she tied the cassock into a knot and wrapped the little white ball and the white fox inside. Jia grasped one cutoff tightly, worked hard to reach the other cutoff, and then pulled out the previous cutoff and inserted it above. In this way, she climbed up bit by bit. But just when she was almost able to climb up the pit, the white fox she was carrying suddenly became unstable and fell out, falling downwards. Oh, bye! Jia was startled and immediately stretched out her hand to catch the white fox. But her other hand suddenly slipped and she fell downwards. As soon as Nangong Yu arrived at the island, he noticed that the last broken location of the sensing jade was in the deep pit. At this moment, a sound of Old Bai entered his ears. He took a step forward, and when he lowered his head, he noticed a female editor falling down. Nandong Yu waved his hand gently, and he controlled the spiritual power of the entire pit. He immediately caught Jio and Bai Hu and carried them up, realizing that she and Lao Bai were rising slowly. Shi Yu was stunned and looked up. This time, she looked into a pair of extremely indifferent eyes. Even though she knew that those eyes were looking at her at this moment, she still felt that he did not see her in his eyes. Within a few breaths, Jiyo and Baihu were fished out of the pit and gently placed on the ground. The first time Nandong Yu saw Jiyo, she was with her hair down. She was wearing a golden robe with a red lotus mark on her forehead. She picked up the hem of the robe and cut it into a section. And there was something bulging inside. Thank you, senior. Jiyo landed safely, hugged Baihu quickly, stood up, looked at Nandong Yu with a smile and thanked her. Seeing this, even though Jio had seen countless beauties in this world of cultivation, she was still slightly shaken. The man in front of her was dressed in white, with his hair simply tied behind his back. He had an extremely good-looking but indifferent face, especially his aloof demeanor, which really made Jio feel that he was out of tune with this environment. She always felt that Nandong Che was already the most handsome man she had ever seen. But she didn't expect that the man in front of her was even better. Nandong Yu nodded lightly and looked down at the bottom of the pit again. The master said that the person he was looking for had died and should be in this deep pit. However, he used his spiritual consciousness to completely scan the pit and found no one else. Only a broken sword stuck in the wall. Nan Ong Yu stretched out his hand and gently grabbed it. And the two pieces of Li Yuan were in his hands. Is this yours? Nan Ong Yu looked at Ji Yao and asked lightly. Yes. Ji Yao nodded quickly. You are the only one here? Nan Ong Yu asked again. 
This female cultivator was the only one here. So she was probably the one he was looking for. But the master said that she had fallen. There is no way that master can lie to him. It should be just me. Gio replied with some uncertainty. After all, she had been in the pit for too long and didn't know if anyone would come from behind. Chapter 569 Confirmation Nandong Yu was about to ask her directly if she was Master Jian Song's apprentice. But Ji Yao spoke first. Senior, can I borrow some healing elixirs? I will definitely return them to you when I get back. Ji Yu asked anxiously and embarrassedly. After all, the two of them had never met each other. He had already helped her, and he had to pay her back. Asking him to borrow, the elixir was really overreaching. Hearing this, Nandong Yu looked at the white fox in Ji Yao's arms. At this time, the white fox was already weak, and he might not be able to survive it if it were later. He took out several high-level elixirs from the storage ring, stepped in front of Jiao, stuffed the elixirs into the white fox's mouth, and then put his hand on the white fox's back, inputting his spiritual power into its body. Help it open the elixir. Soon, the aura of the white fox gradually became stronger. The black sh l on its body gradually fell off, and new hair began to grow. Jia looked at Baihu distressly. If it weren't for herself, Lao Bai wouldn't have suffered like this. After a while, the white fox's breathing completely stabilized, and his internal injuries had healed. But he was still too injured to wake up. Seeing that the white fox had improved, she had gently put the white fox on the ground, then untied the knot of the skirt of the cassock, revealing the small white ball inside, and said with some embarrassment, There is one more! Nanong Yu didn't answer. But he also cut open the pill for Xiao Bai Tuan. Soon, his stomach gradually calmed down. Thank you, senior. Jia thanked her sincerely. If it hadn't been for the senior, I'm afraid the results for these two little guys wouldn't have been very good. After all, she now has no elixirs and no spiritual power. So she is extremely passive. Uncle Jian Song's apprentice? Nandong Yu only cares about whether she is the person he is looking for. Jia was stunned when she heard this and she didn't quite understand how the other party knew her. But looking at the opponent's cultivation in the divine transformation stage, combined with his appearance and those eyes, a person flashed in Jiyu's mind. Senior Nandong? Jiyao shouted with some uncertainty. Nandong Yu nodded, finally confirming Jiyao's identity. Seeing him nodding, Jiyao felt certain in her heart. No wonder he suddenly appeared. It seemed that it must be the order of Uncle Qinchen. When Nandong Yu saw that she was fine, he planned to take her back to the central domain. While putting Li Yuan into the storage ring, he took out some monster meat and handed it to Ji Yao. Seeing him put away Li Yuan, Ji Yao wanted to ask for it back, but she felt that it was impossible for someone else, a cultivator of transformation into gods, to fall in love with her Li Yuan. So she stopped talking. Thank you. Ji Yao took the monster meat with some surprise. She was really hungry since she hadn't taken big a pill for so long and hadn't eaten anything. Nandong Yu didn't respond, stepped into the air, returned to the place where he came from, and began to calculate the space nodes to return. Jia felt anxious when she saw him leaving, but she breathed a sigh of relief when she saw him stopping in midair. She remembers that she came to this island through the space rift, and now she can't go back without relying on him. In this way, Jia was eating monster meat while waiting for Nandong Yu to calculate the way back. The people looking for Jia are still rushing to the central territory. It is true that Wan Jian sect and Yi family are far away from the central territory, and it will take time. After Jia was full, she began to sit down cross-legged, wanting to see her changes now. As her consciousness swept over her Dantian, Jia was surprised to find that there were black and white Bagua patterns there, which were constantly rotating. The black and white gas was also circulating into Jia's flesh and blood, and then merged into the Bagua diagram. Chapter 570 Return as soon as Jiyao's consciousness touched the black and white gas, she suddenly felt a warmth flowing through her, and all fatigue was swept away. It's just that Jiyao still doesn't understand the purpose of this Bagua chart, but it looks pretty powerful. Above the Bagua diagram is Jiyao's golden elixir, but it is different from ordinary people. The golden elixir is purple with sparse white lines on it, and the spiritual power in Jiyao's body was sucked away by this golden elixir, and the flowing flint from before didn't know when it got into Jiyao's body slowly floating on the black and white gas. But the bed sheet was gone. After checking all this, Jia was about to withdraw when she suddenly remembered Tianhua, who was caught by her. She came to Tang with her soul. And sure enough, she saw a sky fire with a lotus pattern floating there quietly. As soon as Ji Yao's soul touched the sky fire, 
a warm feeling suddenly came to her. And at the same time, she also got the message. Is this actually Chaos Skyfire? Ji Ye was startled. She didn't expect that she would grab the number one person on the strange fire list with a casual grab. Chaos Skyfire has long since disappeared in the passage of time. It will only be born when chaos first emerges. And it is too rare. Nowadays, unless a new world is created, it is unlikely to encounter Chaos Skyfire. The alien fires can devour flames of a lower level than themselves and advance. But other alien fires are different from the chaotic sky fires. Chaos sky fire is the originator of other strange fires. Other strange fires can only strengthen their own strength by devouring flames. As for the chaos sky fire, whatever flame it swallows, it can activate the properties of that flame and possess the ability of that flame. When it reaches the highest state, it can be dispersed into a variety of strange fires. Therefore, other strange fires may be generated by themselves or they may be caused by the chaotic sky fire. Gia clicked her tongue. When the chaotic sky fire reaches a certain level, it can burn everything and is extremely domineering. I didn't expect that I was just lucky enough to own this thing. Thinking of the artistic conception of the Sword of Thunder and the Sword of Life and Death that she had realized this time, as well as the chaotic sky fire, black and white gas, and purple and white golden elixir, Gia suddenly felt that this death was worth it. It's so worth it. But if she was given something better and asked to do it again, she would be unwilling to do anything. After all, life is gone. And even if there are good things, there is no life left. At this time, Gio didn't know that her soul lamp had been completely extinguished. And everyone else was going crazy. Northern Chingmu sect. As soon as Patriarch Yilan came out of the Forbidden Land, he realized that the ray of soul he had placed on Gio was actually destroyed. At this moment, the communication talisman finally sensed his breath and flew in front of him. A bad premonition hit him. He opened the communication talisman and received the news of Ji Yao's death. Yi Lan was a little unsteady for a moment, which reminded him of the time when his sinner couldn't wait for him to return because of the Yi family. A flash of sycophancy flashed in Yi Lan's eyes, and he tore open the space and rushed towards the river of time. On the other side, Nandong Yi finally figured out the time point after an hour of calculation. He lowered his head and glanced at Jiao, who was holding two spiritual pets in her hands and looking at him. He rolled her up and put her in his sleeve pocket, then tore open the space and stepped in. Even though Nandong Yu helped Jiao block most of the space pressure, Jiao still felt very uncomfortable from the pressure. She almost couldn't hold her breath and her body started to hurt. At this moment, the black and white gas suddenly accelerated and began to merge into her flesh and blood. Soon, the pain completely disappeared and even the pressure became much smaller. Ji Yao felt happy because she didn't expect that the black and white gas could have such an effect. Chapter 571 Subpoena After a while, Nandong Yu finally brought Ji Yao back to the central domain. However, he did not stop and did not release Ji Yao. Instead, he directly sent the communication talisman to Qin Chen. Qin Chen, who was rushing to the central region, suddenly received a messenger from his apprentice. He crushed the communication talisman into pieces. And the disciples and different voice came from inside. The person has been found. No problem. Qin Chen was stunned for a moment when he heard this. Did he hear it without any hindrance? Did he hear wrongly? Ji Shuzi next to him was also stunned. They had seen the soul lamp go out with their own eyes. And it was completely extinguished and could not be rekindled. You're... You mean Yao is alive and well? Qin Chen sent a message to Nandong Yu in disbelief and received a response after a while. Um. Qin Chen's heart skipped a beat, and he suddenly increased his speed and chased Jin Song and the others. Ji Shuzi smiled and shook his head. As long as the person is fine. That's fine. It seems that the girl must have grasped a glimmer of hope and survived the ordeal. On the other side, Qin Chen finally caught up with Jin Song. Jin Song. Yao is still alive and well. Yura has found her. Qin Chen shouted loudly for the first time regardless of his image. Jian Song was stunned when he heard this. Before he could react, Luo Chuan, who was in front, suddenly appeared in front of Qin Chen. What did you say? Luo Chuan didn't care about seniority or inferiority at this time. He only thought about the safety of his junior sister. I said, Yao Yao is still alive. Qin Chen was also very happy at this time. No one could have imagined that the girl's soul lamp was extinguished and she could still be alive. Luo Chuan took out the soul lamp and looked at the soul lamp that had been completely extinguished. 
I don't know if Qin Chen's words had an effect. Luo Chuan suddenly felt that the heart-wrenching pain gradually faded away, and the blood redness in his eyes slowly faded. I'm going to find her! Luo Chuan desperately wanted to see his junior sister with his own eyes. He wanted to see her appear properly in front of him and call him, Senior Brother, until Luo Chuan had left. Jian Song still stood there blankly, his eyes red in disbelief. Qin Chen, is that girl of mine really alive? Jian Song was deeply afraid that this was a joke. You know, you are never lies. Qin Chen smiled faintly, stepped forward and patted Jian Song on the shoulder. It's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. Jian Song choked and chased after Luo Chuan. You're... Where are you? Qin Chen asked Nandong Yu while following him. Nandong's family. Nandong Yu noticed that there was an abnormality in Zio's body and that she had no spiritual power. It would be too much for her to travel through space for a long time. So she chose the nearest Nangong's family. Okay, then let's go find you and take good care of Yao Yao. Qin Chen replied while telling Jin Song and the others the news. A few hours later, Nandong Yu stepped out from the sky above Nangong's house, returned to his yard, and then released Jiyo. Senior, where is this place? As soon as Jiyo was released, she found herself in a strange place. Nandong family. Nandong Yu responded, calling the housekeeper over. Butler Lin had already noticed Nandong Yu's return, so he quickly came to the yard. But as soon as he entered, he saw a stunning beauty standing next to the seventh young master. I saw her hair spread behind her back, wearing a golden robe, with a red lotus on her forehead on her beautiful face, holding two white spiritual pets in her arms, looking at her. Incredibly beautiful. Chapter 572 Golden Pill Seventh young master. But Le Lin was stunned for a moment before saluting Nandong Yu. What a treat! Nandong Yu glanced at Ji Yao lightly, then disappeared in a flash. Seeing this, Ji Yao smiled awkwardly at Butler Lin, silently complaining in her heart that Nandong Yu was indeed the same as in the original work. He could only speak a few words, but could not speak a complete sentence. Butler Lin also knew the temperament of his seventh son, so he was not surprised. He was just very curious about Ji Yao. In all his life, the seventh young master has never seen him bring a woman back, let alone such a stunning beauty. Butler Lin's gossip soul burned. I wonder what I call this girl. Butler Lin looked at Ji Yao with bright eyes and asked. Yi Ji Yao. Senior. Just call me Ji Yao. Ji Yao replied with a smile. But the other person's shining eyes made her feel a little uncomfortable. Miss Yi. Just call me Butler Lin like the seventh young master. Please come with me. Of course. Butler Lin can't directly call her Ji Yao. After all, he can't tell what his identity will be in the future. And he can't commit the crime of being inferior to superior. Okay. Excuse me. Senior. Ji Yu didn't dare to call like that. After all, Butler Lin was a monk in the early stage of nascent soul. When Butler Lin heard this, he took a high look at Ji Yao. She was talented but also humble. A good and polite girl. In this way, Butler Lin took Ji Yao to an extremely quiet but comfortable place. Miss Yi. Just stay well and give me orders if you need anything. Butler Lin said to Jiyo with a smile. Then, without waiting for Jiyo to answer, he turned to look at the other two maids and said in a different tone. This he was brought back by the seventh young master. Please serve him well. If you have any requests, just come to me. Disciple, I obey. The two maids responded hastily. Yes. Manager Lin nodded lightly. Then looked at Jiyo. Miss Yi, have a good rest. I won't disturb you for now. Sorry for bothering you. Senior. Ji Yu quickly thanked her. Butler Lin shook his head and left immediately. Miss Yi. Please come inside. The two maids did not dare to delay and took Ji to the courtyard. As soon as they entered the courtyard, Ji sent the two maids away. In fact, she had never had a maid take care of her since she was a child, which made her quite uncomfortable. It's better to be alone. Just as Ji Yu laid down. She suddenly thought of her relatives and friends. When she was going through the tribulation of death, all she could think about was them. And she really wanted to see them. Thinking of this, Ji Yu immediately sat down cross-legged and began to regain her spiritual power so that she could send them the communication talisman. But Ji Yu discovered that all the spiritual power sucked into the body would be swallowed up by the golden elixir. The return of her soul was thanks to this golden elixir. Ji Yu still didn't know what the purple stone was in the first place why it made her golden elixir change color, and how it could change her soul from drag back another time in space. But now it still seems to be hungry, 
continuously absorbing Jia's spiritual power, leaving her with no spiritual power in her body and unable to do anything. She really loves and hates this golden elixir, but she has no way to deal with it and can only absorb the spiritual power honestly. Without the storage ring and spiritual power, she couldn't even set up a spirit gathering array, although Butler Lin told him to make any requests. Shio also knew that this was a courtesy. If you really make a request, you don't understand the rules. Chapter 573 Parents In this way, Shio absorbed the spiritual power intermittently for five days, and finally fed the golden elixir to its full capacity, and no longer swallowed the spiritual power, feeling the spiritual power returning to the body. A feeling of satisfaction and happiness arises from the bottom of my heart. Jiyu smiled with satisfaction. And then ordered the maid outside the talisman courtyard to get some talisman paper and talisman pins. This little thing isn't worth much. But it doesn't matter. As soon as she got the things, Jiyu started to make the communication talisman. Because she didn't have the aura of other people. She could only make the communication talisman to send to her parents. This is because they are connected by blood. Even without the breath of their parents. The messenger can still find each other's location through blood induction. After making the communication talisman, Jia quickly passed it on to her parents, Yi Feng and Zhao Qianyu, who were tearing apart the space. Both carried heavy sadness on their bodies. Zhao Qianyu's eyes were red, and all she could think about was the way Shi Qi threw herself into her arms and softly called her mother when she was little. Her family, Shi Qi, was so cute and worked so hard. Why did she suddenly die? She didn't want to believe it. She still wanted Chi Chi to throw herself into his arms and call her mother. But Yi Feng looked haggard at this time. His stubble was sprouting. His eyes were red. And he just instinctively rushed towards the central region. He was going to take their family Shi Chi home. At this moment, a communication talisman flew towards the two of them. Yi Feng glanced at the communication talisman numbly, but had no intention of opening it. He was afraid. He was afraid that he would receive news that Chi Chi's -Chi's bones had been found. Zhao Qian Yu looked at the communication talisman that kept spinning around the two of them, closed her eyes in despair, and then stretched out her hand to grab the communication talisman. As soon as she opened the communication talisman, a voice that made her miss her heart came to her ears. Dad? Mother? Shi Chi misses you. I really miss you so much. Zhao Qian Yu was stunned, and Yi Feng was also stunned, with tears falling directly down his cheeks. Brother Fong, was it Seventeen's voice just now? I wasn't dreaming. Was I? Zhao Qian Yu looked at Yi Fong blankly. She was a little scared, afraid that she had just heard wrong. Really? It's really Seventeen. Yi Fong couldn't help holding Zhao Qian Yu and crying bitterly. His Seventeen was fine. His Seventeen was not dead. And his Seventeen was thinking of him. The two held each other in disbelief and cried for a while before their emotions completely calmed down. Seventeen. Where are you? Are you feeling well? Is everything okay? We'll come to you right away. Don't be afraid. Seventeen. Wait for your parents. They'll be here soon. They're here. Yi Feng quickly sent a message back to Ji Yao. Fu. Said somewhat incoherently. Then the two of them waited in agony. Fearing that it had just been a dream and that Shi Chi would not reply to them. However. Not long after. The messenger came again. This time. Before Zhao Qian Yu could catch it, Yi Feng intercepted it and heard the sound they wanted to hear as soon as it was crushed. Seventeen is fine. I'm staying at Nangong's house in the central region. They take good care of me. You don't have to worry. Take your time. Seventeen will wait for you. Brother Feng. Zhao Qian Yu looked at Yi Feng while crying and laughing. He was the only one who understood her current feeling of regaining something. Their baby is still alive and well. It's okay. Did you hear that? Shi Chi is still waiting for us at Nangong's house. Let's go there quickly. Yi Feng wiped Zhao Qian Yu's tears gently, feeling satisfied in her heart. As long as you and Shi Chi are fine, he is the happiest person in the world. Chapter 574 Knowing Everything Send a message to the family quickly. They must be anxious too. Zhao Qian Yu finally let go of the big stone in her heart and suddenly thought of the other people in the Yi family who must also be anxious. Okay. Yi Feng also reacted and quickly sent the messenger talisman to the uncle of the Yi family, and then happily hurried away with his wife. Bei Yu Yejia, Uncle Ye's uncle was sitting in the hall, sighing. Several other brothers and sisters rushed to Shijiang, leaving him alone to guard the Yi family. Although this is very dangerous, no one can care about it at this time. After all, 
Shirchi and their generation are the future of the Yi family. Without them, the Yi family may not be able to go very far after preserving it. It's just that he also wants to go to the river of time. But he can only stay here in worry. At this moment, he received the communication talisman from Yi Feng. The uncle of the Yi family did not dare to open it for a while. He was afraid that Yi Feng had found Ji Yao's bones and was now asking him to take back the search order for his disciples. Alas! The uncle of the Yi family sighed heavily and accepted his fate and crushed the communication talisman. Brother, sure she is not dead. She is still fine. Let's go pick her up. You can let the others go back. Yi Feng's excited voice reached the ears of Uncle Ye's family, making him unable to recover for a moment. After all, that was he saw the completely extinguished soul lamp with his own eyes. After a long while, the uncle of the Yi family came back to his senses and quickly and excitedly sent the communication charm to all the Yi family members. You must tell them such happy things. Xia Chi Yuan and others, who were almost approaching the end of time, were very silent at this time. Except for Luo Chioli, everyone else exuded an aura of sadness. Especially in July. Luo Chioli was a little worried when she looked like she was keeping strangers away. She has known Chi Chi for many years and has never seen her like this. Although Chi Chi may not seem to be close to being cold, he is actually extremely kind to his friends. And obviously, Chi Chi really likes the Yi Jiao. Just as Luo Chioli was sighing, Yi Jiro and Yi Qin Sheng received the communication talisman together. The two of them were stunned at the same time, neither daring to reach out to pick it up. Xia Chi Yua raised her head and glanced at the communication talisman, then reached out to take the communication talisman and crushed it into pieces. Disciples of the Yi family, listen to the order. Seventeen of the Yi family have been found. They are safe and sound. We don't have to rush to the river of time anymore. The voice of the uncle of the Yi family came out of the communication talisman which shocked several people. Brother Eleven, what did uncle just say? Yi Jiro asked in a sharp voice. Seventeen is fine. Yi Chi Sheng came back to his senses and looked at Yi Jiro with surprise. Their seventeen is fine. Really? Yi Jiro broke her voice, threw herself into Yi Qing Sheng's arms and started crying. She thought she would never see Chi Chi again. Xia Chi Yua anxiously crushed the other communication talisman. It wasn't until she listened to the content again that she was sure that Ji Yao was really not dead and was really alive and well. The pain in her heart left her for a moment. And Xia Chi Yua smiled softly. Ji Yao, where are you? She took out Ji Yao's communication talisman and sent it to her. She desperately wanted to see her now. Wanted to see her very much. Luo Chioli looked at Xia Chi Yua from the side. And when she saw the smile on her face, she also laughed. At this time, she was no longer jealous because of the better relationship between the two of them. It must be nice to be able to make someone like Chi Chi so much. Chapter 575 I miss you so much. Soon, Xia Chi Yue received the communication talisman from Jiyo. Chi Yu, I miss you so much. Do you miss me? I'm staying at Nangong's house in the central region waiting for my parents to pick me up. Do you want to come and play with me? Chi Yu's coquettish voice came. When she came out, she simply thought that Chi Chi missed her. And she didn't know that such a large group of people were worried about her. As soon as Xia Chi Yua heard Jiyu's voice, she finally felt relieved, with a flash of endearment in her eyes. She could even imagine what Jiyu looked like when she said this. Yi Jiro and Yi Qingsheng also heard Jiyu's voice. It's really 17. She's really fine. Yi Jiro burst into laughter, but in the blink of an eye she suddenly curled her lips. 17 doesn't even think about me. She only thinks about others. Yi Jiro glanced at Xia Chi Yua as she spoke, her whole face filled with anger. Okay, let's go to Nangong's house to pick up Shi Chi. Yi Qin Shin looked at Yi Jiro in a funny way. This girl really turned her back faster than turning the pages of a book. He was dead just now. But now, he is full of energy. Okay, let's go quickly. Yi Jiro responded. And the spirit boat they were riding on also changed its direction and headed towards the Nangong family. Ancestor Yelan on the other side also received the communication talisman and felt relieved immediately. He immediately sent the communication talisman to Yi Feng and asked for Jia's location. When Yi Feng and Zhao Qian Yu received the communication talisman from Patriarch Yilan, they were both very surprised. Since Patriarch Luo Tsun died for the Yi family, Patriarch Yilan has never actively contacted the Yi family again. Even though he was in charge of the Qingwu sect, he did not take too much care of the disciples of the Yi family. Just by borrowing his identity, Yi family disciples also got a lot of convenience. This is also the reason why he agreed when Chi said 
he would not join Patriarchy Lan's family. He was also worried that Patriarchy Lan would not accept Cher Chi. They didn't expect that he would take the initiative to care about Cher Chi now. Which really surprised them. Yi Feng didn't waste any time and quickly replied to Patriarchy Lan. After Patriarchy Lan knew that Ji Yao was at Nangong's house. He rushed directly towards Nangong's house. Nangong family in the central region. Third sister-in-law. Third sister-in-law. Come out quickly. As soon as Nandong Ryue returned to Nangong's house, she immediately headed towards third sister-in-law's yard. What's wrong? What's wrong? Lu Huanxiu hurriedly ran out of the alchemy room as soon as she heard Nandong Ryue's voice. Third sister-in-law. This is a big deal. Nandong Ryue took Lu Huanxiu's hand and said excitedly, As soon as I came back, I heard rumors everywhere in my house that you had brought back a stunning beauty. Really or not? Lu Huanxiu's eyes lit up when he heard this. And he held Nandong Ryu's hand back with some excitement. It's absolutely true. It's spread everywhere. Nandong Ryu was very excited. It was in vain that she wanted to set up a match for Yur. Good guy. I have already taken it home directly. Then hurry up and go. Lu Huanxiu was even more excited than Nandong Ryu. Her jaw Yur finally got the idea. But it was a pity that Xiao Che and Yuze were not there. Let's go! Nandong Ryue knew that with her third sister-in-law's fiery personality, she would definitely take her to see her. And then Yur would not be able to blame her. After asking Butler Lin, the two of them immediately rushed towards Xi Yao's yard together. As soon as the two of them stepped into the courtyard, they saw a female cultivator in the early stage of the golden elixir, wearing a golden robe, looking down at some book. The sunlight hit her body, giving her a divine halo. Chapter 576 Lu Huanxue as soon as Jiu heard the noise, she looked up and saw Senior Nandong Ryue standing at the door of the courtyard looking at her. And beside her stood a stunning beauty in red. Jiu immediately put down her book and stood up, looking towards them. But even though it was Jiu, seeing the beauty in red, a flash of surprise flashed through her heart. I never thought someone could be so beautiful. But there was something familiar about this beauty, which made Jiu confused for a moment. When Jiu was observing Lu Huanxue, Lu Huanxue was also observing her. The little girl is in the early stage of gene dan cultivation at a young age. And her appearance is also extremely beautiful. Especially the red lotus on her forehead. Which makes her already perfect face even more beautiful. Lu Huanxue nodded with satisfaction. Her jia year's vision was simply too good to be true. Little girl. It's you? Nandong Ryue interrupted the silence between the three of them and looked at Jia in disbelief. She never expected that it would be her that you were brought back. Senior Nandong. Jia smiled sheepishly at Nandong Ryue. After all, she had already come to someone else's house. Nandong Ryue also realized at this time that her vision was accurate. Nandong Ryue silently praised herself, and then took Lu Huanxue into the courtyard. Girl, this is Lu Huanxue, Yu's mother. You can call her Aunt Lu. Nandong Ryue originally wanted her to call her mother directly, but she was afraid that the little girl would be thin-skinned. So she immediately changed her tune. At this time, Ji Yu finally understood where the familiarity came from. It turned out that Nangong Che looked like his mother. Senior Lu! Ji Yu noticed Lu Huanxiu's intense gaze, and her scalp felt numb. Hey! What a good girl! What's your name? Lu Huanxiu stepped forward and held Ji Yu's hand, enthusiastically pulling her to sit down again, then looking at her with bright eyes, still holding her hand tightly. With Ji Yu swallowed nervously. She was really not used to the other party's enthusiasm. My name is Yi Jia. Jia smiled awkwardly and wanted to take her hand out, but felt rude. Yi Jia, what a good name. From now on, I will call you Yao Yao. Lu Huanxiu became more and more satisfied with Zio as she looked at her. She has good talent and good character. Jia nodded stiffly, hoping that someone would rescue her. Here, this is a meeting gift from my aunt. Lu Huanxiu said and took off the storage bracelet on her hand, which contains her treasures for many years. Then she grabbed Ji Yao's hand and put it on her. Senior, you can't do this. Ji Yao was frightened and quickly took off her bracelet. This is a meeting gift for you. You can't refuse it. Lu Huanxiu had deliberately made a serious face. It was rare for her to give a meeting gift. So how could she take it back? This is too expensive. Ji Yao shook her head. After all, the two of them were not related. So this bracelet was too expensive. Why is it so valuable? I still have it there. Just keep it. Do you think it's too little? Then I'll give you another one. Lu Huanxiu said as he took off the other bracelet. 
Jia quickly grabbed her hand and shook her head. Okay, I'm just teasing you. Just take it. Lu Huanxia looked at Jia's wide-eyed expression and stretched out her hand to lightly tap her forehead. Since it was Yur who brought him back. From now on, she will be a member of the Nandong family. She is willing to give anything to her family. Seeing the determination in Lu Huanxia's eyes, Jia had no choice but to accept it first. Planning to return it to Nandong Yu when she saw him. Chapter 577 Meeting the Parents? So good. Lu Huanxia nodded with satisfaction when she saw that Jia was obedient and accepted. Nandong Ryua looked at the third sister-in-law's desperately raised corners of her mouth. A little funny. The temperament of her third sister-in-law has not changed in hundreds of years. Jia noticed Lu Huanxia's kindness. Although it was a bit inexplicable, she still felt very warm. Yao Yao, since you are here, don't leave. As for you, although her temper is a bit cold, she is very responsible and definitely a reliable person. Lu Huanxia pulled Ji Yao back, hand, and began to babble earnestly, with her jaw years character. Don't push such a good girl away. She should put more effort into it. Thank you for your kindness. Senior, my parents are on their way to pick me up. I'm afraid I won't be able to stay for long. Ji responded with an awkward smile. She was so enthusiastic that she couldn't bear it. Really? The in-laws are coming soon? Lu Huanxia's eyes lit up when she heard this and she gave Nandong Yu a thumbs up in her heart. Her jaw your speed is fast enough. Her parents are about to meet. Could it be that they are holding a double cultivation ceremony? Thinking of this, Lu Huanxiu couldn't sit still. Her in-laws were coming, and she had to prepare well to avoid being rude. In-laws? Jiu choked. She really didn't know where the term in-laws came from. Isn't that right? Don't worry. I will make good preparations for you and make all the female cultivators envy you. Lu Huanxiu has already begun to think about how they should arrange their double cultivation ceremony. Jia was shocked by Lu Huanxiu's brain circuit. She found that the two people seemed to be completely different from each other. Just when Jia was about to speak, a person suddenly appeared in the courtyard. It was Nandong Yu who disappeared as soon as he came back. You're... Lu Huanxiu laughed happily when she saw Nandong Yu appearing. Look, it's just like when he and his father were together. They wanted to be together at all times. Mom. Fifteenth aunt. Nandong Yu called lightly. Hey, since you're here, I won't disturb you anymore. You have to take good care of Yao Yao. Lu Huanxiu patted Jia's hand reluctantly and stood up. Jia also stood up, feeling relieved that she was about to leave. Yao Yao, if you are bullies you, tell me and ask his father to deal with him then. Lu Huanxiu said and glared at Nandong Yu. Ha uh ha. -huh. Jia smiled awkwardly, but she really didn't know how to answer this. Then Auntie is leaving first. Lu Huanxiu reluctantly waved to Jiao, then walked up to Nandong Yu and winked at him. But unfortunately Nandong Yu ignored them. Lu Huanxiu snorted coldly and left. He is indeed a fool. Nandong Ryu wanted to stay and watch the show. But unfortunately her third sister-in-law had left. So she had no reason to stay. Girl, it's so much fun. If anything happens, just ask someone to find me. Nandong Ryu smiled at Jiao and left after her third sister-in-law. Huh, seeing the two people finally leaving, Jio breathed a sigh of relief. It was the first time that she felt so tired from dealing with people. Senior Nandong, please sit down. Jia looked at Nandong Yu who was standing, and didn't know what to say for a moment. So she could only ask him to sit down dryly. Nandong Yu didn't answer, just looked at Jiao quietly. Jia felt a little embarrassed for a moment. The atmosphere was really confusing and weird. Chapter 578 Li Yuan is repaired. By the way, this is what Senior Lu gave me just now. Senior Nandong, please help me return it to her. Ji Yu said as she took off her bracelet. But there was a sudden pressure on her hand, making it impossible for her to take off the bracelet. Yours. Nandong Yu controlled his spiritual power to suppress Ji Yao's hand that took off the bracelet and said expressionlessly. Ji Yu looked at Nandong Yu's expressionless face and didn't know how to react for a moment. The scene became cold again, just when Jio was embarrassed and wanted to disappear underground. Nandong Yu suddenly approached Jio. Jio was startled by his action. And just as she was about to take a few steps back, she found Nandong Yu taking out a sword from the storage ring. It is the intact Li Yuan. Jio's eyes lit up. She looked at Li Yuan in disbelief. And then she looked up at Nandong Yu in surprise. She had originally planned to slowly collect materials to recast Li Yuan. But she didn't expect that it would be fine now. Nandong Yu directly handed Li Yuan to Ji Yao. 
the master said that he should take good care of her. And he would do it since he agreed. If I had found her earlier, maybe she would have suffered less and her magic weapon would not have been broken. Thank you. Senior. Shia took Li Yuan with some emotion and stretched out her hand to gently touch Li Yuan. If it were not for herself, Li Yuan would not be broken. Li Yuan felt Ji Yao's touch and immediately flew around Ji Yao several times, then jumped up and rubbed Ji Yao's cheek and ran back to Ji Yao's dantian. Ji Yao looked at Nangong Yu with some surprise. Why is Li Yuan so spiritual? Silicon crystal. Nangong Yu saw Ji Yao's doubts and answered directly without waiting for her to ask. Ji Yao was stunned when she heard this. And then a warm current passed through her heart. Unexpectedly, Nandong Yu would add silicon crystals into it. This silicon crystal is mainly used to refine magic weapons. But it is very rare. Because once silicon crystal is added, as the monk's cultivation level increases, the magic weapons will automatically upgrade. This effect is extremely powerful. So this silicon crystal is something that will be snapped up as soon as it is thrown out. After all, if a magic weapon wants to advance, it usually needs to be refined by adding things later. Where can it be automatically upgraded like this? Thank you. Senior. Jia raised her head, looked into Nandong Yu's eyes, and thanked her sincerely. The other party not only brought him back, but also added this kind of heaven and earth spiritual creature to Li Yuan. It was really a very heavy favor. I must find opportunities to repay the past in the future. No need. Nandong Yu responded coldly, and then picked up the book Ji Yao put aside. A book of formations. Nandong Yu recognized it at a glance as a formation book from the Nandong family library. It was his previous formation enlightenment. It's just that this book is just a basic formation. Look at this. Nandong Yu took out the ancient formation book he had read before from the storage ring. There were many profound or lost formations in it. Of course, he never thought that Jia might be at the beginner level. Jia took the book and looked at it and saw its cover, a ray. Ask me. Nandong Yu said and sat down aside. The master had already sent him a message before. They arrived soon, and he was waiting for them here. Ji Yao was overjoyed when she heard this. She knew that Nandong Yu in the original work was good at all four arts and had very high attainments. So she could just ask him for advice. With this in mind, she sat down with a book in her arms and devoted herself to the study of the formation. Chapter 579 Meeting Ji Yu studied the formation seriously and asked Nandong Yu for advice when she encountered problems. Nandong Yu still talks little, but he can often hit on the key points directly, giving Ji Yu a feeling of sudden enlightenment. In this way, the two of them taught and learned together, and the atmosphere gradually became natural. Lu Huanxia, who secretly returned, finally felt relieved after seeing the two of them getting along, and went down to prepare to welcome her in-laws. Two hours later, Luo Chuan stepped out from above Nandong's house followed by Jian Song and Qin Chen Ji Shuzi. As soon as these people appeared, they immediately alerted the senior monks of the Nandong family. Nandong Kuming, the head of the Nandong family, rose into the air and discovered Yur's master, Venerable Qin Chen. Standing beside him were Venerable Jin Song and Senior Ji Shuzi. But he didn't recognize the young monk beside him. I've met a few venerables. I don't know. Before Nandong Kuming finished speaking, Qin Chen interrupted him. We are here to see Yao Yao. I'm afraid we will disturb Nangong's nephew. Nandong Kuming reacted briefly and understood that he was referring to the woman you were brought back. Please! As soon as Nandong Kuming invited him, Jian Song and Luo Chuan couldn't wait to spread their spiritual consciousness and soon discovered Ji Yao. Several people quickly rushed towards Ji's yard, and Nandong Kuming also followed. Nandong Yu noticed that his spiritual consciousness was sweeping over him, and he knew that the master was coming. Ji Yao was still unaware. Just when she was about to raise her head to ask Nandong Yu a question, she saw her master and senior brother appearing in the yard. Ji Yu opened her mouth slightly. Very surprised. She never expected that master and the others would come. Girl! Jian Song rushed directly to Ji Yao and gave Ji Yao a popcorn. This girl was really worrying. Master! Ji Yao hugged Jian Song's arm and her eyes suddenly turned red. She once really thought she would never see them again. And Luo Chuan looked at Ji Yao from a distance from the moment he entered the courtyard and did not step forward. Senior brother! Ji Yu smiled and waved to Luo Chuan. She missed them. You girl! The soul lamp has been extinguished. Tell me! What have you done? Jian Song was a little angry and a little distressed. Their ancestor's treasure had suffered a serious crime. The soul lamp was extinguished. How can you imagine I don't know how thrilling it is? 
I just want to overcome the calamity. Jia was a little embarrassed. The calamity was so dangerous that she couldn't do anything about it. Just thinking about the soul lamp being extinguished. Jia was shocked. It seemed that she must have frightened her relatives and friends. You? Jian Song didn't know what to say and could only sigh. Shi Yu smiled and then walked several steps in front of Luo Chuan. Senior brother. Shi Yu called sweetly. Luo Chuan didn't say anything. Just looked at Ji Yu intently. Suddenly took her into his arms and held her tightly. You have suffered. Luo Chuan was filled with guilt. He had promised to protect his junior sister for the rest of his life. But he broke his promise. I'm not bitter. As long as I think about you. I'm not bitter. Jia reached out and patted Luo Chuan on the back. She really didn't feel bitter. She was so lucky to have so many people who cared about her. Luo Chuan rubbed Jia's head distressly and let her go. Golden elixir. Yes. The golden elixir has been obtained. Jia smiled happily. She finally obtained the golden elixir and survived the calamity of death. From now on, she is herself. The unique Yi Jia in the world. Jian Song watched the interaction between the two apprentices, and a warm feeling flashed in his heart. Everyone in his zoofling wanted to be well. Chapter 580 Dad and Mom Junior thanked my uncle. If it weren't for the Phoenix Jade Tablet, I would have died from the thunder. Ji Yu turned to look at Ji Shuzi beside her and bowed deeply. Ji Shuzi accepted her gesture with a smile and then helped her up. Being able to survive the calamity of death is all thanks to yourself. Without your own efforts and persistence, no matter how many Phoenix Jade tokens you have, it will be useless. Ji Shuzi also did not expect that Ji Yao could survive after all the soul lamps were extinguished. Survive. You can imagine how much she suffered. But she still persisted. Ji Yu smiled shyly when she heard Ji Shuzi's compliment. Yao Yao, why are you turning a blind eye to me standing here as a big man? Qin Chen made a rare joke. He had been here for so long. But the little girl didn't even look at him. Uncle Qin, this junior is just about to thank you. If you hadn't asked Senior Nangong to find me, I might not be able to come back now. Ji Yu sincerely thanked Qin Chen. The talismans he had given to her before were already gone. It was a great help to her chances. And later, she asked Senior Nangong to come look for her. If not, her two little friends might have left her. Senior Nangong. Just call him Senior Brother Nangong. He is the one your master watched grow up. Qin Chen said with a gentle smile. Ji Yu pursed her lips and laughed. You're... Thank you. Jian Song also looked at Nangong Yu at the side and thanked him seriously. When Nangong Yu heard this, he just shook his head and didn't say much. Jian Song knew Nangong Yu's character very well, so he didn't expect him to say anything. But he was full of gratitude to him in his heart. Nangong Kuming looked at Ji Yao with some surprise. He did not expect that this girl was the apprentice of Jian Song mentioned by Ru Yu. And it seems that several other elders also like her very much. At this moment, someone stepped out again above Nangong's house. Nangong Kuming was startled and was about to rush forward. Jia also noticed it and immediately waved her hands excitedly and shouted, Mom and Dad! Seventeen is here! As soon as Yefeng and Zhao Qianyu came out, they heard Shichi's voice. They immediately didn't care that they were on someone else's territory and landed directly towards Jia's place. Father! Mother! As soon as Jia saw Yifeng and the two of them, she rushed over and threw herself into Zhao Qianyu's arms. Zhao Qianyu hurriedly took action to save Zio. And tears immediately burst into her eyes. Her 17th year is really alive and well. Yi Feng's eyes turned red at the same time. He didn't care about anyone else and hugged his wife and daughter tightly together. For a moment, he couldn't say anything at all. Mom and Dad! Sure, she really misses you! Zhao's tears fell. When she was about to die, what she missed the most was her parents. What she regretted most was that she spent too little time with them. Ever since she knew she was traveling in a book, she had been running around in order to survive. But she had ignored her parents, who had been thinking about her. Seventeen. Seventeen. Zhao Qian Yu just called seventeen. Her whole heart filled with sadness. Filled with the happiness of being lost and found. After a while, Yi Feng let go of the two of them, and smiled happily. Zhao Qian Yu also let go of Jia. And tapped Ji Yao's forehead helplessly. You are so disturbing. Ji Yu reached out to wipe the tears from her mother's eyes. Then hugged Zhao Qian Yu's arm and leaned against her. As long as her parents are around. She feels extremely at ease. Chapter 581 Your Excellency's Matter Venerable Jian Song Venerable Qin Chen Venerable Jishuzi 
Only then did Yi Feng realize that he wanted to pay tribute to several people. What are you doing to such an outsider? Jian San glared dissatisfied. The other person was the father of his young apprentice. So he was considered a peer of his own. Yi Feng just smiled. He could see that Lord Jian San loved and protected his daughter. I wonder who this venerable person is. Yi Feng looked at Nan Dong Yu who was standing aside and didn't know how to address him for a moment. Nan Dong Yu. Nan Dong Yu replied calmly. It turns out to be Master Nan Gong. Yi Feng was a little surprised for a moment. It turned out that this was Nan Dong Yu, the genius cultivator of the central region. He only came out in the past 200 years. Although I had heard of him, this was the first time I saw him. Just call him Nan Gong's nephew. He is Yao Yao's senior brother. Qin Chen said to Yi Feng with a smile. Otherwise the hierarchy would be in chaos. Yi Feng has always known that Venerable Jian Song and Venerable Qin Chen have a very good relationship. So he is not surprised to hear him say this. Lu Huanchu on the other side also heard that someone was coming and hurried over. Her steps halting as soon as she entered the yard. I didn't expect there were so many people. Venerable Jian Song. Venerable Jishuzi. Venerable Qin Chen. Lu Huanchu was stunned for a moment before speaking. TSK. Lu Yatu is still as charming as ever. By the way, where is that boy Yu a? Why don't you see anyone else? Jian Song spoke as soon as he saw Lu Huanchu. At the beginning, Lu Huanchu was the number one beauty in the entire Chafeng continent and was the dream lover of many monks. In the end, she was abducted by that boy Yu Zhe, making him the public enemy of many male cultivators. He and Lu Huanchu have known each other for a long time because they are relatively familiar with Yu. This girl has a single fire spirit root, is good at alchemy, has a fiery temper, and is very fickle in her work. When he was not familiar with her, he was deceived by her appearance and thought she was an aloof girl. After he sent Xiao Che to the secret realm not long ago, he went to Tsongwang realm. Lu Huanchua and Jian Song are both relatively familiar with each other, and they are more comfortable talking to each other. At this time, Nangong Ryua also heard that Venerable Jian Song had arrived at Nangong's house and she was excited and nervous at the same time. She came outside the yard, but never had the courage to step in. Senior Nandong! Jia spotted Nandong Ryu outside and called her with some confusion. She didn't understand why she never came in. It wasn't until she saw Master that she had a flash of inspiration. Senior Nandong! Come in quickly! Jia let go of her mother's hand and ran outside the courtyard, pulling Nandong Ryu into the courtyard. Senior Nandong! This is my master! Jia introduced her to Nangong Ryue, pretending not to know anything, and then turned to look at her master. Master, this is senior Nangong Ryue, who took good care of his disciples before. Ji Yao introduced to Jian Song with a smile. I know her, the 15th girl of the Nangong family. Jian Song didn't understand the other meaning. He just looked at Nangong Ryue and smiled. When Nangong Ryue heard that Jian Song actually knew her, she suddenly felt a rush of heat and felt dizzy. She didn't know what to say at all. Seeing Nangong Ryu's face flushed, Jia suppressed a smile. It seemed that Senior Nangong really liked her master. It's just that the master, a man of steel, might not be able to notice it for a while. You? Others didn't see it, but Zhao Qin Yu did, and walked over to hold Ji Yao. Feeling helpless, children should stay less involved in adult matters. Chapter 582 July Jia stuck out her tongue at Zhao Qin Yu and said no more. Lu Huanchua also saw the relationship between Jia and Zhao Qianyu at this time. And her eyes suddenly lit up. And she hurriedly walked over and pulled Nandong Yu to Zhao Qianyu. I am Lu Huanchua. Yours mother. I still don't know how to call my in-laws. Lu Huanchua tried to be more reserved and asked Zhao Qianyu with a smile. Zhao Qianyu was stunned when she heard this. She turned her head and looked at Jia in confusion. What kind of in-laws? Why doesn't she understand? Jia also looked confused. She was thinking in her mind at the moment. Does the in-laws in this world mean the same thing as the in-laws in this world? Fellow Daoist Lu, my name is Zhao Qianyu, and I am Shi Qi's mother. I have bothered you during this time. Thank you for taking care of Shi Qi. Zhao Qianyu was a little confused, but she still politely thanked her. After all, my 17th family has stayed in other people's homes for so long. Yeah, yeah. You are too unreasonable to say these things. Yao Yao is so good. I like her very much. Lu Huanchu had directly called Ye enthusiastically. Zhao Qianyu smiled awkwardly and turned her head to look at Jiyo inquiringly. This person was a little too enthusiastic. By the way, Ye Ye, I haven't introduced you properly yet. This is my Yu, Nan on you. 
Lu Huanqiu have formally introduced Zhao Qianyu while looking at Nan Gongyu. Call Anti quickly. Lu Huanqiu had touched Nan Gongyu's arm. Anti. Nan Gongyu called lightly. Ha uh ha. -huh. Zhao Qianyu smiled awkwardly. She could tell at this time that Lu Huanqiu had obviously fallen in love with her 17th and wanted to set him up with her son. Snort. Zhao Qianyu snorted in her heart. It doesn't matter if you are a genius in the central region. No one is worthy of his own treasure. Zhao Qianyu didn't answer, and the scene suddenly turned cold. Just then, Butler Lin walked in. Master, someone is looking for Miss Yi, Butler Lin said respectfully to Nandong Kuming. Let them in. Nandong Kuming nodded, but she didn't understand why so many people came to her. Ji Yao's eyes lit up when she heard this. It must be July. Sure enough, after a while, the 4th of July man walked in. 17. As soon as Yijiro saw Jiyao, she rushed up and hugged Jiyu tightly. You stinky girl. You scared us to death. You know? Yijiro shouted at Jiyu with tears in her eyes and slapped Jiyo hard on the back. To this day, she doesn't want to recall how she felt when she heard the news of Shirchi's death. Jiyu's face turned red due to Yijiro's restraint, but her heart softened. It's okay. Yi Qingxin walked up to the two of them, stretched out his hand to rub Ji Yao's head, his eyes filled with tenderness. Brother Eleven, Ji Yu called with a smile. Xia Qi Yue, on the other hand, had been standing far away, looking at Ji Yu's appearance as usual, and her heart softened. Ji Yu, Ji Yu was hugged by Yi Jiro, looking at Ji Yu as standing in the distance, and shouted softly. When Shi Qiu heard this, her eyes instantly turned red, but she held it in tightly, and just looked at Ji Yao from a distance without saying a word. Ji Yao has never seen Chi Chi like this. Even in the original work, Chi Chi has never been a sad person. She is very strong. And in Yi Yu's opinion, she is a superman. Ji Yao broke away from Yi Jiro's arms, ran directly to Chi Yue, and threw herself into Chi Yue's arms. Chi Yue, I really miss you. Ji Yao hugged Chi Yue tightly. July is different for me than for others. Chapter 583 Happiness Chi Yue put her arms around Ji Yao and smoothed her hair. Does it hurt? Chi Chi couldn't imagine how painful it would be if Ji Yao's soul lamp was extinguished. Hearing this, Ji Yue remembered the pain of the catastrophe at that time and suddenly felt a sense of grievance in her heart. It hurts. Ji Yue hugged Chi Yue tighter and nuzzled Chi Yue coquettishly. Chi Chi paused her hands and sighed. I will be there in the future. Chi Chi thought that her current strength was too low and she had to work hard to practice in order to protect Ji Yao in the future. She wasn't worried about anyone else. Yeah. Jiyo nodded, feeling warm in her heart. After a while, Jiyo came out of Chiyo's arms and smiled innocently at her. Humph. Yijiro was very dissatisfied. Just now Shirchi pushed her away and went to hug someone else. Jiyo saw Yijiro rolling her eyes at her, a little amused, and hurriedly stepped forward and praised. Sister 16 is the best to 17. You're smart. Huh? Yijiro raised her head proudly and then looked at Jiyo's forehead. 17. Your lotus is so beautiful. Yi Jiro was a little envious. This lotus is so beautiful. However, she did not ask what it was. After all, each monk had his or her own opportunity, and she did not need to inquire further. Jiyo reached out and touched her forehead. She had seen it before, and she seemed to be getting more and more beautiful. Yi Feng looked at Jiyo and the others with relief. Ever since they went to the dungeon last time, these juniors have become very close. This is what he hopes to see. The reason why the Yi family can reach this day is inseparable from the Yi family's unity and unity with the outside world. As long as they work together, the future of the Yi family will be better. Just as a few people were talking, someone stepped out from the sky above Nangong's house again. Ancestor Yi Lan! Yi Feng looked up and saw the newly arrived Ancestor Yi Lan. Ancestor! Shi Yo didn't expect that even Ancestor Yi Lan would come and she was very surprised for a moment. Yi Lanli ignored Yi Feng and fell directly next to Ji Yao. Ancestor! Yi Jiro and others quickly saluted. Venerable Yi Lan! Xia Qi Yue and Luo Qiuli also quickly saluted. Is everything okay? Ancestor Yi Lan looked at Ji Yao distressly. Ancestor! Seventeen is fine. Ji Yao was a little surprised. She didn't expect Ancestor Yi Lan to come. After all, the two of them had only met once. It's really disturbing. Ancestor Yi Lan sighed and rubbed Ji Yao's head. His family Shi Qi is a man with great ambitions, destined to go through ups and downs, and will not be willing to grow up under their protection. 
but it was precisely because of this that he felt a sense of pride in his heart. He advanced to Jean Dan when he was only 17, but 31 years old. Even if he was placed in the central region, he would still be a peerless genius. Ji smiled. At this moment, her heart was filled with happiness. She really felt so happy. Several venerable fellows. How about we stay and have a meal together? Nandong Kuming saw that everyone had almost finished communicating. So he came out and planned to show his friendship as a landlord. But he didn't expect that this he girl had a big background and thought he was just a talented family disciple. Then I won't bother Junior Nandong. Chin Chen responded warmly. Everyone else also stayed. Nandong Kuming immediately ordered Butler Lin to go down to prepare food and wine and took them to the banquet living room. During this meal, everyone had a great time. The atmosphere was particularly harmonious, and the relationship also improved a lot, especially Yi Fong and Jian Song. In the past, the relationship between the two was senior and junior. Even if Xi Yao became a disciple, they had no contact. Chapter 584 Parting After everyone stayed at Nangong's house for a while, Xi Yao and others planned to leave. At this time, the relationship between Lu Huanxue and Zhao Qianyu was also much closer. After the two had more contact, Zhao Qianyu discovered that Lu Huanxue had a straightforward temperament, but was very simple. And he was a friend who could make friends. But the premise is that she can't take advantage of her daughter. Huanxue, come to the North Territory to play with me when you have time. Shi Qi has disturbed you during this period. Zhao Qianyu patted Lu Huanxue's hand and stood outside the gate to bid farewell. Jia looked at the sky speechlessly. Her mother had told her to stay away from Senior Lu before. But later, she became like a sister. Women's friendship is really strange. Hey, I will definitely come when the time comes. Remember to look for me when you come to the central region. Lu Huanxue was also very reluctant to let go. She did not expect that she and her in-laws were so close to each other. And she felt as if they had known each other for a long time. Yao Yao, remember to come and play often. Lu Huanxue reluctantly waved to Ji Yao not knowing when she would come back after leaving. Okay, Senior Lu, let's leave first. Jio responded with a smile. But she didn't take it to heart. She would have no chance to come back in the future. Jio and the others were about to leave after saying goodbye. Lu Huanxiu had quickly touched Nandong Yu's arm. Hurry up and say goodbye. Unfortunately, Nandong Yu just stood quietly without any reaction. Until Jiao and others left. Nandong Yu didn't say a word. Lu Huanxiu glared at Nangong Yu angrily and went back. This year is indeed similar to his father. If he hadn't been more enthusiastic back then, where would Yu and Xiao Che be now? This is so stupid. And it makes her so worried. After all, Yao Yao is beautiful, has a good character, and is extremely talented. So there will be a long queue of suitors. It's just this kid and her family who doesn't understand the style. When Nangong Yu saw Lu Huanxiu leaving, he also left in a flash. Nangong Ryue was left standing alone at the door. She said three words to Venerable Jian Song today. Shi Ya, are you planning to go back to Yejia? Or come with us to the Five Seas region to take a look? Shi Yu asked Xiang Jiao. She must go back so that she can increase her strength. But in her heart, she hoped Shi could follow them. I won't go now. Jia shook her head. She wanted to go home and stay with her parents for a while. This was her decision when she was going through the tribulation. If she could survive, she must stay with her parents for a while. Zhao Qianyu listened to Jiu's answer, smiled tenderly, and helped her arrange her hair. Yeah. Xia Qiyue was a little disappointed. But she also understood the importance of relatives to Jiu. In July, you and Chiu Li can come to Ye's house to play together. I'll entertain you. Jiu invited them with a smile. Yes. You should come and walk around more. Zhao Qianyu also likes Jiu very much and knows that she and her 17th are good friends. Definitely come. Luo Chioli smiled softly. She also interacted with Zia for a while today and found that she was a very simple and cute girl. She finally understood why everyone loved and doted on her. Xia Chiyu also smiled and nodded. And then they and Yi Jiro and Yi Qingsheng set foot on the spirit boat again. 17. I'm leaving. Wait until I come back. Yi Jiro waved her hands and shouted towards Zia. Okay. I'll wait for you to come back. Zia smiled and waved goodbye to several people. Let's go! Xia Qiyue glanced at Ji Yao, and then drove the spirit boat to the Five Seas area. Chapter 585 Conversation Then let's go too! Jian Song said, as he also took out a spirit boat, and flew towards the North Territory with a few people. It would have been faster to tear apart the space. 
but there was also Zhi Yao. So it was more appropriate to take the spirit boat. During the few months on the spirit boat, Zhi Yao experienced a mixture of joy and sorrow. Several elders took turns to guide her in her cultivation, including formations and drawing talismans, while they all watched her eagerly. In fact, everyone was scared this time and wanted Jia to improve her strength as much as possible so that she could turn danger into danger. Especially senior brother. Jio had a headache just thinking about it. Today's senior brother is too clingy. Even if other seniors are around, he will never leave and just stay aside. Jia knew that she had scared her senior brother this time, but he still made her feel uncomfortable. Therefore, Jia planned to have a good chat with her senior brother. Brother, do you have time to chat? Ji Yao invited Luo Chuan to the deck of the spirit boat and looked at the scenery passing by. Luo Chuan followed Ji Yao to the deck and stood beside her quietly without saying a word. Ji Shuzi watched the two go out and smiled. If Luo Chuan wanted to survive the love crisis, he might have to rely on this girl. Ji Shuzi, my eldest disciples Qin Jia. Jian Song is a big boss. But now he understands that Luo Chuan's Qin Jia is really his little disciple. But Qin Chen saw it when Yao Yao's soul lamp went out. If it was Yao Yao, it would be normal for Luo Chuan to have Qing Jie. After all, Yao Yao is so good. If he were a young man, he would still pursue her. Whether he can get through it depends on whether he can understand it himself. Ji Shuzi smiled and shook his head. He had misunderstood before. But he didn't expect that. Love but not getting. And love but not getting. Are also different. But he had taken it for granted before. Jian Song sighed after hearing this and stopped talking. Senior brother. Xiao did not look at Luo Chuan, but just looked outside the spirit boat. Yes, I'm here. Luo Chuan reached out and touched Xi Yao's hair, feeling soft in his heart. His junior sister is living well and staying with him. Ever since I knew that I was going to die, even though I practiced harder, I was still afraid in my heart. Xiao thought about how she had always been afraid in the past 20 years. Luo Chuan paused and clenched his left hand tightly into a fist. His senior brother was really unqualified. But, I'm not afraid of death. But I'm afraid of leaving you, Jia said, turning back to look at Luo Chuan. Ever since she found out that she was wearing a book, she was afraid of leaving them and losing the happiness of this life. Life is already the second life. If she really wants to die, she will die. But she is very greedy. She doesn't want to lose the happiness that she finally got in this life. She doesn't want to live the life she had in her previous life. Every time she recalled her time travel, she felt extremely lucky. Even though she had transformed into a vicious female supporting character and a mortal person, she still feels so lucky. No! Luo Chuan put Ji Yao's hair behind her ears and promised gently. He will protect his junior sister well. He will definitely do so. And they will not be separated. Never. Ji Yu smiled sweetly. Her senior brother had always pampered and protected her like an older brother. And was her relative. They will be relatives forever. But now I'm not afraid. Not at all. Jia looked into Luo Chuan's eyes and spoke very seriously. Chapter 586 Love Tribulation Passed It's not because I've passed the tribulation of death, but I feel that I have really made a lot of money in this life. With you caring about me so much, I feel that it is enough for us to come to this world. Jia's eyes turned red. Tears instantly fell down his cheeks. Luo Chuan stretched out his hand to wipe away Jia's tears and said distressly, don't cry. Brother, I have the courage to face all difficulties. And I will work hard to be with you for a long time. Ji rubbed Luo Chuan's palm. She worked really hard. And she will work harder in the future. Senior brother, don't be afraid. Your junior sister is not a fragile person. I can face all difficulties fearlessly. And I hope you can trust me. Ji said extremely seriously. Luo Chuan paused. Junior sister's words really touched his worries. He was afraid. Afraid that his junior sister would leave again. Forever. He didn't dare to recall how he felt at that time. He just thought that he would go crazy. Senior brother. Can you trust me? Junior sister? I am not weaker than anyone else. Gio has experienced more and has a better understanding of herself. No matter how good others are. As long as you work hard enough. You are not weaker than anyone else. People who work hard are the cutest. There are not so many steps to reach the sky in one step. And there are not so many shortcuts to take. All you need to do is to keep your feet on the ground. And one day, you will be able to stand out. One day, she can protect them. Luo Chuan looked at Jiao intently, and could only see the seriousness in her eyes. 
but senior brother wants to protect you. Luo Chuan became a disciple of Zhu Feng very early. Apart from his parents, the closest people to him are his master and junior sister. I know. But monks are destined to grow up through ups and downs alone. No one can always accompany someone. This is also Jia's biggest feeling when she came to this world. Even in this world, no one can really stay with anyone at all times. Let alone this world of cultivation. Sometimes the retreat lasts for decades or hundreds of years. And the time to enter a secret realm lasts for several years. Even you and I can't. We are destined to be separated. Jia looked at Luo Chuan intently. In fact, all the senior brothers understood this truth. But this time's death disaster really scared him. Senior brother, we are destined not to be together forever. I have my own wings. You can rest assured and let me fly by myself. When Luo Chuan heard this, he took back his hand and kept looking at Ji Yao intently. In his mind, he remembered the scene when he met his junior sister for the first time. And then how the junior sister worshipped at Zoo Peak and slowly grew up. On this journey, she went better than she imagined. Maybe she could do better on her own. After thinking about everything, Luo Chuan suddenly felt his heart lighten, and all the spiritual energy around him surged towards him. Jia was shocked. Is senior brother going to advance? More and more spiritual power gathered, completely covering Luo Chuan. And Ji Yao immediately moved away. Such a loud movement also alerted several other people. And they all came out of the room. Jian Song stood aside with a serious expression, protecting Luo Chuan so that his enlightenment would not be interrupted. Ji Shuzi counted with his fingers, nodded with satisfaction, then looked at Jian Song and said, The love disaster has passed. Jian Song was overjoyed when he heard this, and he finally breathed a sigh of relief. The disaster for the two young apprentices was over, and everyone would be fine in the future. Zhao Qianyu hugged Ji Yao, looked at Luo Chuan who had an epiphany, and sighed in her heart. They are all relatives of Shi. Chapter 587 The Transformation of the Purity Bead Luo Chuan's epiphany lasted for three full days. When the epiphany was over, his spiritual power also dissipated. Luo Chuan also officially advanced to the late nascent soul stage. Once a monk advances to nascent soul, his cultivation speed will be extremely slow, and some may take one or two hundred years to advance. Therefore, Nandong Yu was called a peerless genius only after he advanced to the stage of becoming a god at the age of two hundred, and Luo Chuan is now more than one hundred and twenty years old and has also entered the late nascent soul stage. It's just that I don't know how long it will take for the next advancement. Congratulations! Senior brother! Jia stepped forward with a smile and congratulated her. Well, it's thanks to junior sister. Luo Chuan smiled when he heard this and teased Ji Yao. Ji Yao raised her eyebrows when she heard this, which she had never done before. Okay! Okay! As long as you advance, go and stabilize your cultivation! Jian Song looked at his eldest disciple with satisfaction. He really made himself proud. Yes! Luo Chuan nodded in agreement and returned to the room to stabilize his cultivation. And you, hurry up and continue studying. Jian Song lightly tapped Ji Yao's head. I know. Ji Yao pouted and returned to the room resignedly, continuing to study her formation. Nandong Yu's classic book is still in her hands. And now she can finally carve the fifth grade formation. Zhao Qian Yu leaned against the night breeze and shook her head helplessly. It was rare to see Shi Qi want to have fun. In this way, Ji Ye spent the few months back in the Northern Territory studying. Besides studying, the White Fox and the Little White Group have also woken up and have returned to their usual liveliness. It was time to return to Ye's house soon, and Ji Ye took a rare break for herself. At this time, she released the Chaos Sky Fire and was playing with it. This Sky Fire has a cheerful and lively character and it runs around as soon as it comes out. Fortunately, it knows how to control its own flames. Otherwise the spirit boat would have been burned by it. Jiyo was a little helpless, and took out a spiritual mirror at the same time, wanting to see if the red lotus mark on her forehead was still there. But unexpectedly, Jiyo found that the mark was still on her forehead and had not disappeared. Jiyo frowned in confusion. Hadn't she already released the strange fire? Taking a closer look at the lotus, Jia suddenly discovered that the shape of this lotus was the same as the nine-petal lotus on the Jingyuan pearl. It's just that the color of the lotus is different from this red. When Jia woke up, she found that the Jingyuan pearl was gone. She always thought that it had been destroyed by lightning. But now it seems that may not be the case. Jia concentrated her consciousness and reached towards her forehead. Sure enough, she saw a red nine-petal lotus there. And in the middle of the lotus, 
There were holes containing lotus pods. The beads in those holes happened to be the beads of the pure margin pearl. Jia was stunned for a moment. And she suddenly understood how the Jingyuan pearl was produced. After finding out that there was nothing wrong with Jingyuan pearl, Jia felt relieved and retreated. 17. Come out quickly. We're here. Zhao Qianyu called outside the door. Here we come. Jiyu put away the chaos sky fire and went out with the two little guys. Master, senior brother, senior uncle Qin, junior uncle Jishuzi. I will go back first. Jiyu smiled and said goodbye to several people. They had already arrived above Yijia. You girl, we have given you so many life-saving things. So you have to let me worry less in the future. Jian Song tapped Ji Yao's forehead. This girl couldn't fight any longer. I understand. Ji Yao nodded. All her things were destroyed before. And Master and the others gave her new things. The most numerous of them are life saving and life escape things. Chapter 588 Returning to Ye's Home. Come back soon. Luo Chuan looked at Ji Yao with a smile. Okay. Ji Yu smiled back. And then followed Ancestor Yuan and the others out of the spirit boat. Jian Song and the others also left. Yilan came to the sky above Yejia and hesitated for a moment. He hasn't set foot in Yejia for hundreds of years. Here are his sweetest past and his most desperate memories. Ancestor! Jia took Yilan's arm and looked at him with wide eyes. Let's go! Yilan smiled and stepped down with Ji Yao. Yi Feng and Zhao Qian Yu looked at each other and sighed helplessly. Ancestor Luo Tsen sacrificed his life for the Yi family back then. This was something that the Yi family had always felt guilty about. Seventeen looked somewhat similar to Ancestor Luo Tsen, especially in terms of personality. No wonder Ancestor Yi Lan likes her chi so much. As soon as Xiao and the others landed, they alerted Uncle Yi's family. Everyone was very surprised when they saw Xia at first sight. Just come back. Uncle Ye's uncle wiped the corners of his eyes and looked at Jiyo happily. It was also at this time that everyone noticed Ancestor Yilan next to them. I've seen Ancestor Yilan! Several people hurriedly saluted to Yilan. And they were all very surprised. They knew what happened in the past. But they didn't expect that Ancestor Yilan would come back. Yeah! Yilan nodded coldly. I'll come back to see Lu Yuan! Yilan said and left. The uncle of the Yi family also fell silent. Lu Garden has been well preserved. It was the place where Ancestor Luo Tsen once lived. Xia didn't know what happened. But she was sensitive to the fact that there seemed to be some kind of conflict between the Ancestor and the Yi family. But it's not easy for her to ask about this matter. 17. Let's go back first. Zhao Qianyu waved to Xia. Xia and the uncles of the Yi family bowed and then followed them back to their courtyard. She wants to spend time with her parents at Yijia. Three months later, Jia was basking in the sun in the courtyard while reading ancient books on formations. In the past few months, she often had meals with her parents, went out for walks, and even learned alchemy from her mother. After all, she now has chaos skyfire. But it turns out that not everyone with strange fire and power can make elixirs. How many times she refines the elixir? She will explode the furnace several times. After blowing up the furnace a hundred times, Jio finally accepted the reality that she did not have this talent. Zhao Qianyu also had a headache. She didn't understand why Shichi didn't have any talent at all. Even ordinary people should not be able to explode after practicing for so long. But Jia didn't mind. She didn't like alchemy in the first place. It was just a novelty, and she wanted to try it. Jia looked at the ancient books. But her mind was full of imagination. At this moment, a person suddenly came into the yard. Jia looked up and saw a monk in the early stages of foundation building standing there looking at her. This man looks familiar. Jia frowned and thought for a while. And suddenly remembered who he was. This is Yi Tian Jun when he grows up. It is the Yi Tian Jun who was bullied by the disciples of the Yi family in the original work because his father was a traitor to the Yi family. And later helped Chi Yue Liying Wai to destroy the Yi family. Jia frowned. Not knowing what he was doing. Chi Chi is destined not to harm the Yi family. I wonder if Yi Tian Jun's fate can be changed. Yi Tian Jun looked at Jiu intently. Unable to open his mouth for a moment. My name is Yi Tian Jun. Yi Tian Jun introduced himself awkwardly. Chapter 589 Yi Tian Jun. I know you. My name is Yi Jia. You can just call me Shir Chi. Yi Tian Jun is a side disciple. But he is still older than her. He is her brother. Someone from the Chi family came to me recently. Trying to bribe me to cooperate with him inside and outside. And destroy the Yi family. Yi Tian Jun was suddenly stopped by someone from the Qi family some time ago. 
saying that they wanted him to cooperate in destroying the Yi family. And they could give him a lot. Remuneration? If it had been a child, he would have agreed without hesitation. But it was the man in front of him who changed his destiny. When he was a child, he was always bullied by other disciples of the Yi family because of his father. And his elixirs and spiritual stones were always taken away. I met her once when I was being bullied. At that time, no one knew her. But she directly shocked others with her strength. Let them go. And she also gave herself the elixir, telling herself that all she could rely on was her strength. At that time, his mind was full of reluctance, blaming others for treating him like this. Until then, he longed for strength. With strength, he would no longer be bullied. Since then, he has become a cultivator. Because he is poor, he always goes to those mountains and always gains something. Although he had passed death time and time again, he felt at ease as never before. In this way, his strength gradually increased. But it was only limited to his spiritual roots. And his cultivation grew extremely slowly. It wasn't until later that the disciples of the Yi family competed. And the rewards for the top three were all spiritual cleansing pills. He tried his best to finally win a spiritual cleansing pill. Successfully cleansed his spiritual roots. And became a dual spiritual root monk. He officially established the foundation not long ago. And the spirit cleansing pill was refined from the spirit cleansing grass brought back by the man in front of him. What? Ji Yu stood up in shock. And for a moment, she suspected that she had heard wrongly. Even in the original work, the Yi family was destroyed after the Yuaning in July. Not now. Why is the Qi family suddenly going to take action against the Yi family now? It's absolutely true. And as far as I know, I'm not the only one they bribed. Many of the disciples from outside dependent families were also bribed. Yi Tianjun has been paying close attention to this matter. His father did something wrong. He didn't want to go back to his old ways. Even if no one believes in him, he still wants to do his part for the Yi family. Let's go find my father. Ji Yu put away the ancient books and immediately rushed towards the Yi family meeting hall. This matter is no small matter. Yi Tianjun immediately followed and walked beside Ji Yu. Thank you. Yi Tianjun thanked him awkwardly and turned away as if nothing had happened. Jia was stunned when she heard this, but later realized that he might be referring to the fact that she had helped him when he was bullied. We are all from the Yi family. Thank you for telling me this. Jiyu smiled at Yi Tianjun. She was very happy that he did not choose to betray the Yi family this time. The people in the Yi family are a whole, and she hopes that everyone can unite. Yi Tianjun's eyes turned red when he heard this, and he kept turning his head away from Jiyo. Jiyo was anxious and didn't care much. It didn't take long for the two of them to arrive at the meeting hall. As soon as the two entered, they found that several elders were actually there. Dad, I have something to report. Ji Yu didn't care about etiquette and spoke directly. What's wrong? Yi Feng was a little nervous. It's rare to see Shi Chi so anxious. I'm afraid something big has happened. The Qi family is going to take action against our Yi family. Chapter 598 Families Well, we also got a little bit of news about this matter not long ago. Yi Feng nodded. Before the Jia Soul lamp went out, he came to the meeting hall for this matter. Some time ago, we found that people from other families frequently come to contact my disciples of the Yi family. And among them, the disciples of the dependent family are the most numerous. Yi Feng said and looked at Yi Tianjun behind Ji Yao. In fact, people from the Qi family contacted Yi Tianjun. And they knew about it. And they just wanted to see what his final choice was. In the end, his choice made him very happy. At least, he didn't choose to betray the Yi family for a little benefit like his father. Just in time. It's time for the Northern Territory to reshuffle. And our Yi family is also just in time to clear out those people who are cheating on others. The uncle of the Yi family snorted coldly, with quite annoyance in his voice. How much did those dependent disciples who were bribed gain from the Yi family? Benefits. But now I want to be a betrayer. She breathed a sigh of relief when she heard this. At least the Yi family was completely aware of the matter and should have already taken measures. Tian Jun, please tell me in detail the process of your contact. Yi Feng sighed. This time it was not just the Qi family. Some time ago, when the disciple was out on a mission, someone came to strike up a conversation. Later, after we got to know him a little better, he started to say bad things about the Yi family, both openly and secretly, and how to treat us disciples. Yi Tianjun after a pause. He continued. Then he told me how good the Qi family was to their disciples. And how much benefit it would bring if I went there. 
In the end, he said that the Chi family wanted to reshuffle the Northern Territory, and they needed me to cooperate with them internally and externally, Yi Tianjun said, raising his head and looking straight at Yi Feng, and said seriously, I pretended to agree to his proposal and can help the Yi family to find out the news. Yi Feng frowned when he heard this. No, it's too dangerous for you. If you are discovered doing this, your life will be in danger. I want to atone for my father's sins. Yi Tianjun pursed his lips, but still expressed his inner thoughts. His father was a traitor, and this was like a label that stuck to him from childhood to adulthood. This time, he wanted to rip him off. This, Yi Feng was a little hesitant. After all, they were all disciples of the Yi family, and he didn't want them to take this risk. Dad, just let him go. As long as he is careful, he won't be discovered. At this time, Jiu stood up. She understood that Yi Tian Jun really needed this opportunity at this time to throw away the shackles on his soul. Well, the news is secondary. Your own safety is the most important. Yi Feng finally nodded and agreed to Yi Tian Jun's request. Seeing Yi Feng nodding, Yi Tian Jun finally breathed a sigh of relief. As long as he was willing to give him a chance. That disciple will go down first. Recently, the Qi family has been going around to bribe other disciples. Yi Tian Jun cupped his fists and saluted. Go down! Yi Feng waved his hand. And Yi Tian Jun left. Dad, I'm afraid it's not just the Qi family. Right. Jia asked directly as soon as Yi Tian Jun left. In the original work, it is true that all four families took action against the Yi family. So the Yi family was completely destroyed. The only ones who helped the Yi family were the Jin family and the Zhao family. While the Luo family remained neutral, Ji Yu doesn't understand why the Luo family has this attitude. For now, the relationship between the two families is a bit subtle. Chapter 591 Ling Shir Mine Led by the Qi family and the Shangwan family. The Lin family and the Si family all took action against the Yi family. The result was obvious. And the Yi family lost completely. The Zhao family and the Jin family were also completely destroyed. From then on, there were only four major families left in the Northern Territory. I just don't know if there will be any changes in this life. Well, this time in addition to the Qi family, there are also the Lin family, the Si family, and the Jin family's attitude is still a bit ambiguous. I don't know which side they're on. Yi Feng frowned. Because of you, the Yi family and the Zhao family, he will definitely be on Ye Jia's side. But he was unsure about the attitudes of the Shangguan family and the Luo family. After all, although they usually have a good relationship, many things will be abandoned in the face of real interests. After all, Ye Jia is also a big piece of fat, and many people want to get in and take a bite. There should be middle class families. Right. Xiao recalled that in the original work. Several middle class families also intervened. Just to squeeze in. Unfortunately, the Northern Territory was finally controlled by the four major families. Moreover, in the original work, the Shangwan family took action against the Yi family because Shangwan Nanxian wanted to seek justice for his apprentice Ji Yue. In this life, the attitude of the Shangwan family may change. Yes, there are indeed several small families involved in it. But we will arrange this matter well. Just practice well. Yi Feng didn't want Shi to worry about these things. Leave anything to them. Just fine. I am also a member of the Yi family. So I naturally have to contribute. Ji Yu frowned. Thinking about how to solve the problem. With so many families taking action against the Yi family. If the Yi family did not cooperate with other families. There would be no possibility of victory. Okay. I know you have this heart. But this matter has just emerged. They won't be able to attack in a short time. We can make good preparations. Yi Feng waved his hand towards Ji Yao. Motioning her to go back first. Yes. 17. This matter is a big deal. I'm afraid we will have to call your brothers and sisters back by then. The uncle of the Yi family also spoke. They will first talk to several other families. If they can be persuaded without them. I'm afraid in the end. Shi Chi and the others will have to leave first. After all, no matter what happens to the Yi family in the future, as long as they are doing well in this generation, the Yi family will still have hope. Then I'll go down first. Ji Yo had no choice but to nod helplessly and exited the meeting hall. She really can't interfere in this matter at the moment. All she can do is work hard to improve her strength. When the fight really breaks out, she can also help. As soon as Shi Chi left, Yi Feng sighed. I'm afraid the Chi family heard some rumors this time 
and knew that our Yi family had found a top quality spiritual vein. So they rushed to take action against us. Yi Feng could only think of this reason to explain why things have been peaceful for so many years. Now, the Yi family is suddenly about to be destroyed. I am afraid that the Qi family is afraid that the best spiritual veins will cultivate more outstanding disciples for the Yi family and lead the Yi family to develop better, thus leaving the Qi family far behind. That's right. After all, with such a large spirit stone mine, it's impossible to avoid leaks at all. The uncle of the Yi family sighed. They had been extremely careful, but they still couldn't avoid it. Every family has spies from other families. This is actually something that everyone knows very well. But for some important matters, the family will use people they can absolutely trust. Chapter 592 Persuasion But unexpectedly, something went wrong. It seemed that there might be something wrong with one of them. Investigate! This matter must be thoroughly investigated. I want to see who is so deceitful and unites with outsiders to harm my Yi family. Yi Feng was so angry that he slapped his palm on the armrest of the table and chair. Forget it if outsiders betrayed him. If it really happened what's more. The Yi family they trusted did this. And he must kill him with his own hands. What should we do with the Jin family? The Luo family? And the Shangwan family? The uncle of the Yi family also had a headache for a while. If the Qi family spread the news about the Lingshir mine, the outcome would be hard to predict. And even if several other companies sided with the Yi family, they would probably have to take a share of the pie. I'll go talk to the heads of the Jin family and Shangwan family. It's just the Luo family. Yi Feng sighed when he thought of the Luo family. Ever since the ancestor Luo Tsun died for the Yi family, the Luo family has completely separated from the Yi family. Rusty. The reason why they didn't completely break up with the Yi family was because Patriarch Luo Tsun didn't let them embarrass the Yi family before he died. The other people fell silent after hearing this. It was because the Yi family was sorry for Patriarch Luo Tsun about what happened in the first place. Can't blame others. Well, please take the trouble. And we have to start making preparations. You can just leave these traitors and the family to me. The uncle of the Yi family looked at Yi Feng. Okay. Yi Feng nodded and agreed. The Lin family in the Qin Ling Mountains of the Northern Territory. At this time, in the hall of the Lin family, there were several nascent soul monks sitting, who were the heads of the Qi family, the Lin family, the Si family, and the Jin family. Master of the Jin family, you must have understood what is best for your Jin family. Right? Chi Chung looked at the head of the Jin family with determination. This time, he must destroy the Yi family. This, the head of the Jin family has always been hesitant. After all, the Jin family has always been on good terms with the Yi family. Now it would be really not good to side with the Qi family. However, the temptation of the top quality spirit stone mine proposed by the Qi family is too great. If they can get a part of it, the Jin family's strength can indeed be improved to a higher level. If he refuses and other families make progress, but the Jin family remains stagnant, it will be a matter of time before they are eliminated. Chi Chung saw the hesitation of the head of the Jin family and sneered in his heart. Friendship? What's the use of friendship? Isn't it inferior to the benefits? The head of the Jin family is just showing off. Master Jin, you have to think clearly about this opportunity. The Liu family is destined not to help the Yi family. And the Shangwan family is also very worried. After all, the two families are not very close. If there is a fight, even if you stand on the Yi family's side, that side may not be able to win. The head of the Lin family said arrogantly as he stroked his beard. But if you join us, then we will win 100%. Isn't this something everyone will be happy about? Besides, even if you help the Yi family win, do you think he will give you so much? The head of the Lin family sneered. After all, the Yi family kept this new secret. If it hadn't been for an elder of the Qi family who accidentally discovered that a disciple of the Yi family was somewhat mysterious, and later found out that the Yi family had discovered an extremely rich vein of top-grade spiritual stones, they would still have been kept in the dark. This. The head of the Jin family has actually been shaken. What the head of the Lin family said makes sense. And he really has no reason to refuse. It's just that such a blatant betrayal always made him feel a little uncomfortable. And his face was a little uneasy. Chapter 593 The Jin Family Rebels Head of the Jin family, I know that you value affection the most. But for the sake of the Jin family, you have to make this decision. The head of the C family pretended to persuade. But he was a little disdainful of the reality. The head of the Jean family is both worthy and established. Well, in that case, Jean has no choice but to accept it. 
For the sake of the Jean family, I will admit it even if fellow Taoist Yefing blames me. But the head of the Qi family must keep his word. The head of the Jean family responded pretending to be distressed. After accepting the invitation from the Qi family, I have already begun to plan the future of the Jean family. The Jean family is about to flourish in his hands. Ha uh ha. -huh. Master Jean is really wise. We will definitely cooperate happily. Chi Chun laughed happily, with a murderous intention flashing in his heart. Yejia, wait patiently. Then let's discuss in detail what to do next. The head of the Lin family smiled and said proactively. In this way, the four of them began to plot how to attack the Yi family next. On the other side, Yi Fong was at the door of the Jin family. When he heard them reporting that the head of the Jin family was not here, his heart sank. It seems that the Jean family has made a choice to stand on the opposite side of the Yi family. Yi Fong sighed helplessly and left. The Yi family and the Jean family have been friends for thousands of years. But they didn't expect that they would end here. Since they chose to attack the Yi family, only one party could survive. After leaving the Jean family, Yi Fong tore through the space and rushed towards the Shangguan family. As soon as Yi Fong arrived at the door of Shangguan's house, the head of Shangguan's family had already come out to greet him. As soon as Yi Feng entered the city, someone had already discovered him. Master Yi, you're a rare visitor. Shang Wan's master teased Yi Feng with a smile. This was Yi Feng's first time visiting the Shang Wan family. Master of the Shang Wan family, I haven't seen you for a long time, but you are getting more and more handsome. Ha ha ha. Yi Feng also laughed. Although the Yi family and the Shang Wan family are not very close, they usually have the least friction, so the relationship is not bad. No one can compare with Master Yi. Come on. Come in and sit down. The head of Shangguan family invited Yi Feng into the house while saying compliments. The two came to the study. The head of the Shangguan family made some spiritual tea and invited Yi Feng to sit down. Presumably the head of the Shangguan family already knows the purpose of Ye's trip. Yi Feng took a sip of the spiritual tea and asked straight to the point. The head of the Shangguan family paused while serving the tea and laughed. But you are here because of the Qi family's affairs? Yes, now the Chi family, Lin family, and C family have got together and plan to take action against the Yi family. And the Jean family should be close to them now. Yi Feng directly stated the current situation. Did the Jean family join the Chi family? The head of the Shangguan family asked in surprise. He really didn't expect that the Jean family would make such a choice. You know, the Yi family and the Jean family have been friends for thousands of years. They usually follow the Yi family's lead in everything. Why did they choose the Qi family this time? He didn't understand. Yes, I went to the Jean family today and was told that the head of the Jean family was not at home. Yi Feng nodded. At this time, it was unusual for the Jean family to not take the initiative to express their attitude. What's more, the head of the Jean family has left the family at this juncture. And you can use your toes to imagine what happened. Then the head of the Yi family is coming here? The head of the Shangwan family already understood what Yi Feng meant but he still pretended to be confused. Chapter 594 Shangwan Family Yi came here to sincerely invite the Shangwan family to cooperate with my Yi family. Maybe we will be the only four major families left in the northern region in the future. Yi Feng took advantage of the situation and raised his purpose. If he could get the support of the Shangwan family, Yi home can be much more relaxed. Otherwise, this battle is really uncertain. Each of the eight major families has two ancestors of the God Transformation Monks and the number of nascent soul monks and golden core monks is not far apart. Therefore, if the four families attack together, the result for the Yi family may not be good. I understand what Master Yi means. It's just that I can't make the decision on this matter alone. We have to discuss it before I can give an answer to Master Yi. The master of Shangwan family couldn't make a decision for a while. After all, if he were to side with the Yi family, there were three families in total, so I would probably have a hard time facing them. But Master Yi, it's best to persuade the Luo family, so you can be more sure. The master of the Shangguan family hesitated for a while, but still brought it up. If the Luo family agreed to help the Yi family, he and the Shangguan family would also get involved. After all, the Qi family and the other four families would still make considerable profits for themselves. He knows this. I will go to Luo's house later to have a look. Yi Feng replied with a smile. But he was not sure at all. This is the best. The head of the Shangguan family also laughed. Not long after, Yi Feng left Shangguan's house, tore through space, and rushed towards Luo's house. But when he arrived at Luo's house, he was turned away without even a chance to meet him. 
Yi Feng sighed helplessly and left. He was really shameless and insisted on the Luo family's help. But Ji Yao, who was in Ye's house, couldn't read the ancient book at all. She has never been at peace in her heart. She is afraid that the Yi family will follow the same path as in the original work. But her current cultivation level is still too low. With all the means combined, she doesn't know if she can compete with the early nascent soul. The battle between this family is mainly a competition between high-level monks. Only when the high-level monks win can they win. And his low strength will not be of much help to the battle situation. Ji Yu sighed, feeling weak in her heart. What's wrong? I'm still sighing while reading. Zhao Qianyu came to Ji Yu's side and tapped Ji Yu's forehead. Brother Feng has been sighing lately. And now this girl is here too. I'm thinking about the Qi family and the others. Mother, do you think we can win? Ji Yu took Zhao Qianyu's arm and leaned her head on her. This, Zhao Qianyu paused. In fact, she was also very worried. Although Brother Feng told her not to worry, she felt that the situation might not be optimistic. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to sigh all the time. Seeing that her mother was not sure, Ji Yu became even more worried. She had to do something. Otherwise, if the Yi family was really destroyed, she wouldn't be able to live alone. In the original work, the Yi family was destroyed for Yi Jia. In this life, she hopes to keep the Yi family. Don't think so much. After a while, you can go back to Wan Jin's sect. Zhao Qianyu doesn't want your Qi to be harmed in this crisis. In Wan Jin's sect, Venerable Jian Song protects Qi Qi. And she also rest assured. Xi Ya did not agree. There was no way she could escape from the battlefield. She wants to advance and retreat with the Yi family. Even if she really falls, it will still be worth it. Zhao Qianyu also knew Xi Qi's temperament, sighed in her heart, and held her in her arms distressly. Sometimes, she wishes Xi Qi could be more selfish. Chapter 595 Return in July When Jia was thinking about a sect protecting formation left by her master in the courtyard, a messenger talisman suddenly flew over. Chi Yao, we are on the way back. As soon as it was crushed, Chi Yu's voice came from inside. Chi Yao's eyes lit up. She didn't expect that Chi Chi would be back. But in the blink of an eye, thinking of the current situation in the Yi family, Chi Yu's good mood faded again. Sister 16 and brother 11 must have come back together. When a fight breaks out, they will be involved. Chi Yu returned the communication talisman to Chi Yu and then immersed herself in studying the formation again. This sect protecting formation integrates offense and defense, mainly relying on the power of stars and the space to maintain it. If you can study it yourself and arrange it for the Yi family, you can at least buy more time for the low-level monks. At the same time, with the blessing of the formation, the disciples of the Yi family can also reduce their losses. On the other side, Xia Chiyue, who received Yi's reply, frowned. Not long ago, Master sent her a communication talisman and told her about the problems that the Yi family is currently facing. The master wants OG a favor. So he also planned to return to the Shangwan family to see if he could persuade them to help the Yi family. However, he was not very sure. After all, this was their personal grudge and had nothing to do with the family. At this time, Yi Jiro was not in the mood to play around at all. They had all heard the communication talisman sent by Shangwan Jinjuan before, and they were very worried. Yi Qingsheng stood on the deck of the spirit boat, feeling very heavy. At this time, he hated his low strength. How great would it be if I were a nascent soul cultivator? Luo Chioli understood their worries, but she couldn't say anything more. She has known since she was a child that the relationship between the Yi family and the Luo family is not very good. And the reason is Aunt Luo Tsun of the Luo family. Aunt Luo Tsun is the precious daughter of the Luoyang ancestor of the Luo family. She has been gifted since she was a child. She is a beautiful person with a kind heart and has countless suitors. Later, she got together with the Yi Lan ancestor of the Yi family and married into the Yi family. Later, when she was only over 500 years old, she advanced to become a god and became a famous genius in the Northern Territory. Unfortunately, someone from the Yi family later provoked a big family in the Southern region. Later, when someone came to make trouble, Aunt Luotsen died in order to save the Yi family. At that time, Ancestor Yilan was in a secret realm. When he came out, Aunt Luotsen had already died. The ancestor of Luoyang almost went crazy after learning about Aunt Luotsen's death. But he could not take action against the Yi family because of his daughter's request. The close relationship between the two families completely collapsed because of this. The two families no longer have any in-laws. Not even business contacts. This was also the reason why she didn't like Yijia very much at the beginning. 
because the entire Luo family has a bad feeling towards the He family. The four of them were silent and flew towards the North Territory. You brat! Did you know that the Yi family is in trouble? Jian Song sat in the lobby and looked at Luo Chuan below. I know. Luo Chuan frowned. He had just learned the news from his father because he knew that his junior sister was from the Yi family. He specifically mentioned it to himself. Then do you have any plans? Jian Song also knew about the grudges between the Luo family and the Yi family. So he could only ask Luo Chuan about his plans. Jian Song felt very regretful that he was an ordinary disciple and had no family. So he could not use the whole family's strength to help the little girl. He has practiced all by himself until now. And the only thing he can do is to call his two friends to help the Yi family. Chapter 596 Ancestor Luo Tsun. I plan to go back to the Luo family. Luo Chuan could only try his best. If the Luo family was unwilling, he could only help his junior sister from his own personal standpoint. Well, then go ahead. Jian Song waved his hand and asked Luo Chuan to leave. After thinking for a while, Jian Song sent a communication talisman to his two friends. The situation in the Yi family was not very optimistic now. He would never allow anyone to touch his little apprentice. As soon as Luo Chuan returned to the Luo family, he went directly to the master's study. Uncle! As soon as Luo Chuan entered, he saw that the uncle of the Luo family was looking at a painting. And the person in the portrait is none other than Aunt Luo Tsun. You're here! The head of the Luo family glanced at Luo Chuan indifferently. He naturally knew why Luo Chuan came. After all, he had heard about how protective Zhu Feng's people were. Uncle! You should know why Luo Chuan is here! Luo Chuan went straight to the point without being verbose. You juniors don't even know third sister. The head of the Luo family didn't answer, but talked about the past. She and I are about the same age. We grew up together and have the best relationship. My talent is not as good as hers. In fact, I trained her as the next head of the Luo family. Unfortunately, she fell in love with that person in the end. Uncle Luo's teeth itch with hatred when he thinks of Yulan. Their Luo family's treasure. He had once sworn to them that he would protect her for the rest of his life. But, in the end, his precious sister died for the Yi family. Thinking about it now, he felt his heart aching. He couldn't forgive Yi Lan or Yi Jia. She was originally a monk who transformed into gods. As expected, she is still alive and well. Luo Chuan was silent when he heard this. He naturally knew how important Aunt Luo Tsun was to the Luo family. Si Chuan, there is nothing I can do and neither can the ancestors. We have no way to ignore the past grievances and help the Yi family. Even if I know that the third sister will hope that we help the Yi family as she is alive. The head of the Luo family was a little excited. And now he is very excited. There were few things that could make him lose control of his emotions. However, if you want to help your junior sister, I have no problem with it. The head of the Luo family sighed. He could understand Luo Chuan's feelings and his choice. I understand. Luo Chuan nodded, indicating that he understood. Let's go! The head of the Luo family waved his hand and stopped looking at him. Luo Chuan looked at the portrait and turned around to leave. He understood his uncle's choice. After all, he would never forgive his junior sister if she had experienced something like this. Central Region Wanshan sect. Qin Chen was playing chess with Nan Dong Yu when he received a messenger from Jian Song. The four major families in the Northern Territory are going to take action against the Yi family. I need your help. Qin Chen's heart sank when he heard this. He had just met Yao Yao's parents not long ago. They were both very good people. Unexpectedly, someone thoughtless and wanted to take action against the Yi family. You're... Someone is going to take action against your junior sister Yao Yao. Qin Chen laid the last piece and said to Nan Dong Yu. Yeah. Nan Dong Yu nodded lightly. Qin Chen glared at Nan Dong Yu and left to prepare things. Nan Dong Yu put away the chessboard, tore apart the space and left. As soon as he returned to Nangong's house, he went to Nangong Kuming's study. As soon as he entered, he found Xiao Che inside. Brother, are you back? As soon as Nangong Che saw Nangong you coming in, he stood up happily. Chapter 597 I need someone. But you're okay? Nangong you glanced at Nangong Che lightly and looked away when he found that he was not injured. What can happen to me? Nangong Che patted his chest sternly. He had advanced in this trip to the secret realm. I need someone. Nan Ong Yu ignored Nan Ong Che and spoke directly to Nan Gong Kuming. But for Yao Yao? Nan Ong Kuming also received information from the Northern Territory a few days ago and also knew about the current crisis in the Yi family. Nan Dong Yu nodded and said nothing. Yao Yao? 
What Yao Yao? Nandong Che immediately smelled the gossip. Could it be that during his absence, his eldest brother found a sister-in-law for him? A little girl you brought back before. Nandong Kuming looked at Nandong Che with a smile. Really? Oh, brother, you really hide everything. Nandong Che yelled exaggeratedly, winking at Nandong Yu. It's a pity that Nandong Yu didn't even look at him. He just looked straight at Nandong Kuming. How much? Nandong Kuming asked directly. For the Nandong family, you are his absolute authority. And the Nandong family will also serve him in the future. At the same time, the better year develops, the better their Nandong family will develop. Ten nascent souls. Nandong Yu didn't intend to hire a god transformation monk. After all, the Nandong family still needed a god transformation monk to be in charge. Okay. It just so happens that Xiao Che can be one of them. Nandong Kuming agreed directly. Yes. Nandong Yu nodded. Things had been arranged. And he planned to leave. Hey. Brother. Wait for me. Nandong Che followed noisily. Nandong Kuming shook his head in amusement. Xiao Che's character and his sibling's temperament were really carved out of the same mold. Just thinking about Yu made him feel a little uncomfortable. If he hadn't practiced the seven emotions Jew, Yu might have had this kind of extravagant personality. Brother, who is that Yao Yao? Why did you bring someone home? Nandong Che was so curious. He really didn't expect that his eldest brother would bring a woman home. Growing up, his eldest brother had always kept a distance from any woman. Even sister Lu Lianxue. He didn't feel cold at all. Shut up! Nandong Yu just glanced at Nandong Che and successfully shut him up. Nandong Che curled his lips and snorted coldly in his heart. He was going to follow anyway. So he didn't believe how long his elder brother could keep it secret. Mom! As soon as Nandong Che saw Lu Huanxue standing outside the yard, he ran over excitedly. Xiao Che is back! Lu Huanxue stepped forward with a smile, took Nandong Che's hand, and began to check whether he was injured. I'm fine! Nandong Che smiled, then rolled his eyes, and asked Lu Huanxue mysteriously. Mom, I heard that eldest brother brought a woman back? Isn't that right? Mother was so happy at that time. This fool finally got the idea. Mother can't wait to hold a double cultivation ceremony for them right away. Lu Huanxue was happy when she thought of Ji Yao. She liked this daughter-in-law very much. Oh, but something seems to have happened to Yao Yao recently. The eldest brother asked his uncle for help. Nandong Che also saw that his mother liked Yao Yao. What? Lu Huanxue was shocked. And the decibel level increased. you What happened to Yao Yao? Lu Huanxue hurriedly walked to Nandong Yu and asked nervously. She must not have anything happen to the daughter-in-law she finally got. Chapter 598 Nandong Family Someone wants to disturb the Yi family. Nandong Yu gently opened Lu Huanxue's hand. Lu Huanxue's face darkened when she heard this. Someone actually wanted to attack the Yi family directly. Heh. Who doesn't have the foresight to touch the Yi family? Don't even ask me if the Nandong family agrees. Lu Huanxue sneered. I want to go to the Northern Territory too. Lu Huanxue looked directly at Nandong Yu. Wondering who had this idea. Yes. Nandong Yu nodded lightly and agreed. Yi family? Bei Yu? Yao Yao? Nandong Che was a little confused. And then asked Lu Huanxue in disbelief. Mom. That Yao Yao. Shouldn't her name be Yi Yao? Hey. Xiao Che. How you know? Lu Huanxue looked back at Nangong Che in surprise. Obviously not expecting him to know. It's really that little girl. Nangong Che smacked his lips and circled Nangong Yu as if he was sizing her up. TSK. Brother. You can do it. But the old cow eats the young grass. The little girl is only in her thirties now. Right. Nangong Che touched his chin and teased. You bastard. How can you talk? Have you ever said that about your elder brother? Lu Huanxue directly grabbed Nangong Che's ears. Ouch. Ouch. Please be gentle. Am I wrong? They are the best match. Nandong Che bent down to try to relieve the pain. And then hurriedly begged for mercy. Humph. Let me hear you say that they are not worthy again, and see if I don't break your legs. Lu Huanxue snorted coldly, and let go of Nandong Che. Nandong Che curled his lips. His mother would definitely be reluctant to part with it. By the way, you're... How many people did you ask for from Big Brother? Lu Huanxue frowned. A little worried that there weren't enough people. After all, if you want to support your in-laws, you must let them know how much the Nandong family values Yao Yao. Ten nascent souls. Nandong Yu replied expressionlessly. TSK. Ten nascent souls are not enough. 
Why don't we ask two elders to come over? Lu Huanxue was a little angry at this time. And her Yuezha family was not there. Master and the others will go. Nandong Yu shook his head. The Yi family itself was not weak. And with the addition of Master, them and himself, it was enough. That's it. Lu Huanxue was a little discouraged after hearing this. His elder brother would definitely listen to his Jia Yu's decision. Okay then. Let's wait until everyone is gathered and then set off. Remember to prepare more supplies to minimize the loss of the Yi family. After Lu Huanxue said that, she went back to the room to collect her pills. Will definitely come in handy. After all, in every family war, many low-level monks would die. Those would be the backbone of the Yi family in the future. So it would be best to reduce some losses. Yeah. Nan Dong Yu nodded and left to prepare things. Nan Dong Che was left standing alone in the yard, speechless and choked. After all, he had just come back from the secret realm. And he had forgotten him just like that. But as for the problem of the Yi family, he is not worried at all. Not to mention so many people going. Even if it is just the eldest brother, it is enough. What are you afraid of? But he didn't know how long he had been away for. Why did the little girl get involved with his elder brother? He! Thinking that he could watch the fun. Nandong Che laughed slightly obscenely. This life has finally become interesting. Lu family in the central region. Lu Lianxue was in the yard when Nandong Che suddenly ran in. What's wrong? Are you in such a hurry? Lu Lianxue raised her head and glanced at her lightly. Chapter 599 Lu Lianxue As soon as I got home, I heard that the seventh brother had brought a woman home before. Nandong Chi was very angry when she thought of this. She had already decided that Lu Lianxue was her seventh sister-in-law. But she didn't expect that a woman suddenly appeared. Lu Lianxue's hand holding the book paused. Her heart sank. And then she raised her head and looked at Nandong Chi. Is what you said true? It's absolutely true. And I heard that Brother Seventh has been taking people to the girl's house recently. It seems like something happened to the family. Nandong she became even more angry when she thought of this. She had indeed approached Seventh Brother with a purpose. Just thinking about it, I knew it was a small and broken family. As soon as they got on the bus, their Seventh Brother came to take advantage of the Nandong family. What did Jiogu say? Lu Lianxue asked with her eyebrows lowered. She wanted to know what Jiogu's attitude was. Don't say it. My aunt likes that woman. And I want to go to the Northern Territory in person this time. However, a shabby monk from the Northern Territory didn't know what my aunt thought. Lu Lianxue felt sad when she heard this. But she didn't say anything. Jiogu has always loved herself very much. Because Jiogu was married to Nangong Yueza. She often went to Nangong's house to play when she was a child. And she grew up with Brother Yu. Until now, I had never heard of any woman appearing next to Brother Yu. She always thought that she was special. But the reality gave her a slap in the face. Sister Lianxue, don't worry. Our Nandong family only recognizes you as the seventh sister-in-law. Nandong, she saw Lu Lianxue's expression looking a little bad. And hurriedly comforted her. Lu Lianxue just smiled reluctantly. Feeling depressed in her heart. But she has her own pride. And she will never be allowed to compete with others. In the past, always following brother you was the most humble thing she had ever done. And she also believed that she must be no worse than that woman. Sister Lianxue, are you going to ask about this? Nandong she asked with some uncertainty. She also knows that Sister Lianxue is an extremely arrogant person. She has countless suitors. And she has never spoken softly to anyone. The only seventh brother she likes completely treats her like nothing. Thinking of this, she complained for Sister Lianxue. She is so good. How can she not be worthy of Brother Seven? Regardless of appearance, talent, or family background. No one is a better match for her and seventh brother. No! Lu Lianxue tightened her grip on the book and replied calmly. What she wants to do is to make herself better and compare with that woman. Instead of asking others why they didn't choose her like a resentful woman. Besides, she didn't even have the qualifications to question. Bei Yu Ye Jia. Yi Feng was in Dia's courtyard. Telling her about the Qi family's recent actions and the Yi family's plans. Jio frowned tightly after hearing this. She really didn't expect that the Jean family would stand on the opposite side of the Yi family. In the original work, he advanced and retreated together with the Yi family. And eventually perished. Is it my own butterfly effect? Jiyo was a little helpless. But she didn't expect to be in this situation now. The other four families have joined forces. But only the Zhao family is on our side. This gap is quite big. Don't worry too much. We will find a solution for this matter. 
it's not a big problem. If the E family really can't resist it in the end, you can follow your brothers and sisters and leave. You know? Yi Feng rubbed her heart distressly, rubbing Jiu's head. His baby daughter shouldn't have to go through this. He couldn't bear it. Chapter 600 Sheng Wan Nanxian Nothing will happen. Our Yi family will definitely get better and better. Jiu smiled. In this life, she will never abandon the Yi family. This is her home. The home she wants to protect with her life. Yi Feng smiled happily. His family, Shi Chi, had been obedient since he was a child and had never let him worry about anything. He was so lucky to have Yur and Shi Chi in his life. Don't worry. Dad will think of a way soon. Yi Feng frowned. He had to find a way to keep the Yi family. Well, I will also think of a way. Ji Yun nodded. Now that she has almost studied the formation, she can take some time to try to arrange it. Yi Feng patted Chi Chi on the head and left. He wanted to test the Shangwan family's attitude. On the other side of the Shangwan family, Shangwan Nan Xian is sitting in the room of the head of the Shangwan family. You must have come back because of the Yi family. Right. The head of the Shangwan family raised an eyebrow. His nephew rarely went home. Yes. I want to ask about third uncle's decision. Shangwan Nan Xian himself owed Ziyu karma. And his apprentice also had a very good relationship with Yi Jiu. No matter what position he stood on. He hoped that the Shangwan family could stand on Yijia's side. Have you fallen in love with his little girl? The head of the Shangwan family looked at Shangwan Nanxian teasingly. Although he had never met Yijia, he had heard of her name. A young genius from the Wanjin sect. The number one beauty in the Northern Territory. It matches his nephew quite well. No! Shangwan Nanxian frowned and shook his head. Oh! If it's not the case, then why are you interfering? If she is the future daughter-in-law of my Shangwan family, then our Shangwan family will help immediately without saying anything. The head of the Shangwan family laughed. Yi Jiu once saved me. We have some friendship. And she and my disciple are good friends. Shangwan Nan Xian ignored Sanwa's teasing and replied seriously. That's it. It's such a pity. I quite like that little girl. A trace of pity flashed in Shangwan's head. Shangwan Nan Xian ignored him. This was something beyond his control and he didn't know what he was thinking. Then just because she saved you, she has to help the Yi family. This is really unconvincing. The head of the Shangwan family shook his head. After all, the risk is too great. If you are not careful, the Shangwan family will be destroyed. You must consider it. Just be clear. I know. But once you help the Yi family, it's a win-win situation. Our Shangwan family is originally neutral, and our relationship with the Qi family is not very good. If the Yi family and the Zhao family are destroyed in the future, and the Qi family become stronger, do you think they will will you let our Shangwan family go? Shangwan Nanxian rarely said so many words, and analyzed it for the head of the Shangwan family. You have grown up. The head of the Shangwan family looked at Shangwan Nanxian with joy. His nephew had only been interested in cultivation since he was a child, and was not interested in these things at all. Unexpectedly, he is now sensible. Shangwan Nanxian fell silent. Indeed, since he started practicing, he has rarely cared about his family's affairs. This is what he did wrong. Patriarch! The Patriarch of the Yi family is here! At this moment, the disciple's voice suddenly came from the door. Please come in quickly! The head of the Shangwan family immediately stood up and opened the door. Ha ha! Master Shangwan! Yi is here to disturb me again! Yi Feng laughed and clasped his fists at the Master Shangwan. If you are there, Master Yi! Please come in. Master Shangwan welcomed Yi Feng in. Chapter 601 The Shangwan family takes sides. Master Yi. Shangwan Nanxian also stood up and greeted Yi Feng. Fellow Daoist Shangwan. Yi Feng responded with a smile. Come. Let's all sit down and talk. The head of the Shangwan family asked them all to sit down and poured tea for Yi Feng. Let's not hide it from the head of the Shangwan family. When he comes this time, he still wants to invite the Shangwan family to stand with our Yi family. He believes that even if there are only three of us, the Qi family can't do anything to us. Yi Feng said sincerely. He needs help from the Shangwan family. The Luo family is still unwilling? The head of the Shangwan family sighed, having already guessed the outcome. I sent the communication talisman to the head of the Luo family, but he directly rejected it. Yi Feng also sighed. The other party didn't want to see him at all so he could only send the communication talisman. The head of the Shangwan family had long expected the outcome. Once the family in the southern region destroyed Luotsen, 
it would be impossible for the two families to reconcile, even though the Yi family later gathered strength to destroy that family. Luotsen could never come back. Luotsen has a different meaning to the Luo family, which also makes it impossible for the Luo family to forgive the Yi family. Shang Wan Nanxian sat aside and said nothing. He had already spoken before he could speak. And the final decision had to be made by his third uncle. The head of the Shang Wan family frowned tightly. He actually knew that what his nephew said was right. At least Ye Jia's reputation is much better than Qi Jia's. If there are only three families on our side, although the fight will be harder, it may not be impossible to win. After all, the Yi family and the Shang Wan family are both powerful among the eight major families. There are still some gaps between the several major families. Well, just like Nan Xian said, it is a win-win situation to be on the Yi family's side. Therefore, I, the Shang Wan family, will play a bet with the Yi family. The head of the Shang Wan family finally agreed. Yi Feng was delighted when he heard this. He had already planned to fight a protracted battle to convince him. But he didn't expect it to be so straightforward. Thank you so much, Master Shang Wan, fellow Taoist Shang Wan. Yi Feng accepted the relationship between the two and firmly remembered the kindness in his heart. At this time, the other party did not add insult to injury, but was able to provide help in times of need, which is really rare. Ha ha! Master Yi is too polite. When will the three of us discuss it together next time? The Qi family has been making some big moves recently. I'm afraid they won't be able to wait long before they take action. We need to make plans in advance. The master of the Shangguan family laughed. Said, now that you have decided to take a gamble, you must win. Okay. Yi Feng nodded, feeling relieved. Now at least he had some confidence. Shang Wan Nan Xian was relieved when his third uncle agreed. Xi Ya, we are back. As soon as Xia Chi Yu's messenger arrived, Yi Jiro had already entered Ji Yu's yard. 17. Yi Jiro ran towards Ji Yu's yard as soon as she came back. Sister 16, what's wrong with you? Ji Yu put down the ancient book and looked at Yi Jiro worriedly. I've heard that the Yi family is in big trouble. Right. I asked my dad just now, and he lied to me and said it wasn't a big problem. Yi Jiro's eyes were red, and she was very worried. Well, we are indeed in trouble, but our Yi family can definitely handle it. Jia took Sister Sixteen's hand and comforted her. But, it seems to be very serious this time. Yi Jiro also heard the news. The current situation is not very good which really makes her uneasy. Chapter 602 Arrangement Okay, now that you're back, you should go and have a good rest. My father and the others are still involved in this matter. So don't worry about it. Jia patted Sister 16 on the shoulder. Sister 16 was anxious about this matter. It's no use either. Yi Jiro curled her lips when she heard this and almost shed tears. As expected, she was so useless. When the Yi family was in trouble, she couldn't do anything to help. Okay. Okay. I still expect you to kill foreign enemies when the time comes. So you have to go back and adjust your condition. Jia had no choice but to coax her. Okay. Yi Jiro nodded. She wanted to go back and prepare well, so that it would look good to the Qi family. Go. Jia sent Sister Sixteen away with a smile. After thinking about it, she returned the messenger talisman to Qi Yue. Then she left Ye Jia, came to the door of Ye Jia, and looked back at the entire Ye Jia. The guard didn't know what Jia was going to do. But he didn't interfere and guarded the door dutifully. The entire Yi family has been under martial law recently. So they must be more careful. Xia observed the layout of the Yi family. Then took out Li Yuan and flew over the Yi family. Now she can fly in the air. But that requires more spiritual energy. She needs abundant spiritual energy to set up the formation now. So it is not suitable. Xia closed her eyes and began to recall the method of setting up the sect protecting formation. This formation relies on the power of stars. As long as the stars of this side of heaven are not destroyed, this formation can continue to operate, unless the person setting up the formation dies. After filtering the formation in her mind, Jiyu opened her eyes. She stretched out her hand and began to draw along the lines in midair. There were many spies from other families near the Yi family at this time, and they were all a bit puzzled when they saw Yao's actions. What is this man doing drawing back and forth in midair? After all, the formation sect has been lost for a long time. And most people have never heard of it. Let alone understand what she is doing. Shio was carving without any distractions. And it was not until two hours later that she put the last stroke. Suddenly, a burst of white light suddenly lit up around Yejia. And then disappeared in an instant. 
as if nothing had happened. Shia breathed a sigh of relief when she saw this, and her whole body felt weak. She immediately lowered her flying sword and entered the gate of Ye's house. At this time, her spirit was sluggish. This formation was really too advanced. If her soul hadn't been refined by the phoenix's rebirth, she wouldn't have been able to persevere. But now she couldn't help but feel happy. First, she finally succeeded in setting up the formation. And second, she discovered that her spiritual power seemed to be able to regenerate all the time. She discovered it just now, when she was setting up the formation. It was clear that her spiritual power was about to be exhausted. But the white gas suddenly poured into her limbs and bones. Suddenly, her dantian was filled with spiritual power again. This discovery really made Jiu a little overjoyed. When fighting with someone, how terrible would it be to find that the other person's spiritual power has always been abundant and has not changed at all? But whether it can be regenerated infinitely still needs to be verified by Jiu later. However, for now, she was content. She happily returned to the room and fell asleep. Her soul was too tired and needed a good rest. Ji Yo's strange behavior today quickly reached the ears of Chi Chung, the head of the Chi family. Dad, what do you think that bitch Yi Yu wants to do? Chi Lan Chi hurried back after getting the news that the Chi family was going to attack the Yi family. Chapter 603 Chi Family Chi Chung frowned. He couldn't figure out what the other party was doing for a while. But there is definitely a problem. Everyone is well aware of the current situation. And they are just about to break up in the end. But when he thought of that dead girl, he became angry. If it hadn't been for her, how could his daughter have been imprisoned in the forbidden area for three years? And now she was only in the early stage of foundation building? And that dead girl has actually achieved golden elixir now. This speed was beyond his expectation. I went to Shinkei Tower and spent so much money, but still couldn't get rid of her. It was really a disaster for thousands of years. No matter what she does, she won't be able to stay up for a few days. Chi Chung snorted coldly. He wanted to destroy the entire Yi family this time. He wanted to see how the Yi family could make a comeback. No, if it weren't for that bitch, how could I be in the early stages of foundation building now? Chi Lan Chi said bitterly. Although her spiritual roots are not very good, she is very talented in swordsmanship. If it weren't for that Yi Jia, how could she have been in such a miserable state? Fortunately for her, she has now advanced to the golden elixir level. Every time she thought of this, she felt itching with hatred. Good daughter, daddy will seek justice for you. Just watch. Chi Lan Chi is the only daughter in Qiqing who has been pampered since she was a child. She can be bullied even by a mean girl. I believe daddy. Chi Lan Chi smiled happily. This time, she wanted to see how Yi Zio turned over her cards. A certain courtyard of the Qi family. Dad, is the Qi family really going to take action against the Yi family? Chi Sheng frowned and looked at his father. Chi Xiu, uneasily. Yun Yang and Chi Chi were also on the side, all looking at Chi Xiu nervously. Today, Chi Sheng has grown up and has become a young talent in the early stages of foundation building. Oh, this matter has been finalized. Chi Xiu sighed. He also knew the kindness that the little girl from the Yi family had towards him. However, this was the family's decision, and he had no choice but to comply. Why did he do this? Grandfather also agreed? Chi Sheng's face turned red with anger. It was clear that the eight major families were in peace. So why did that person insist on doing such a thing? Yes, dad has agreed. Chi Xiu nodded. He had always known that his dad was unwilling to accept the status quo and had long wanted to take action against the Yi family. Therefore, when Chi Chung brought it up this time, he agreed. Why is grandfather so old and confused? Chi Sheng clenched his fists. He had always received a lot of favor from his sister. And he had long regarded her as his biological sister. As for the Chi family, except for his grandfather, no one else regarded them as a family at all. And he never considered himself to be the Chi family. What are you talking about? He is your grandfather. Does he usually spoil you so much that you forget the rules? Chi Xiu scolded him with a low face. If these words reached his father's ears, he would not know. What will happen? Chi Sheng closed his mouth but held his neck, thinking that he was not wrong. Oh, you brat. Chi Xiu shook his head and sighed. This is the decision of the entire Chi family. We can only obey it. Otherwise, we will be traitors to the family and will not be welcome wherever we go. Chi Xiu patted Chi Shun on the shoulder. In his opinion, this was not a wise move either. There are indeed more four families on the Chi family side. But in addition to the family, the other party also has venerable Jin Song. 
who is not a vegetarian. He is the most protective of others. So there is no way he would not intervene in this matter. The outcome is really uncertain. Chapter 604 Liu Family Qi Xing's face darkened, and he bit his lips tightly. Think about it for yourself. If you become a betrayer, there will be no place for our family of four in the future. Qi Xiu sighed and left. Brother! Qi Qi called Qi Sheng worriedly. Shunger! Yun Yang wanted to say something to Qi Sheng. But she didn't know how to say it. They all once accepted Ji Yu's love. But now this situation is really embarrassing. Let me calm down first. Qi Sheng said the next word and ran out of Qi's house. He felt suffocated here. It was like a cage to him. If it weren't for this incident, he wouldn't have wanted to return to the Qi family. Wan Jian's sect was his home. Ji Yu slept for two full days before she fully recovered. She stretched and got up contentedly. She hadn't slept for a long time. Shi Ya, Junior Sister Luo invited us to play at Luo's house. Do you want to go? The communication talisman came again in July. Ji Ya raised her eyebrows. Although her relationship with Luo Chioli had improved a lot, it was still not to the point where she would go to her house to play. Right? Moreover, the Luo family rejected the Yi family's proposal this time. So I might be a little sensitive here. However, this might also be an opportunity. And you have to try it yourself. Okay. Wait for me at Luo's house. Shi Yao directly replied to the messenger. Then went to inform Yi Feng. And then went out and rushed to Luo's house. The Luo family is in another city. And it will take some time for him to get there. As soon as Shi Yao left the city. She released Yun Ling and rushed towards the Luo family quickly. Yi Feng has always been hesitant. Wanting Chi Chi not to go to Luo's house. Fearing that she would be wronged but she is not willing to force her chi. No matter what she does, she just needs support and it's okay. She's on her way here. Chi Yu had turned to look at Luo Chioli, feeling very surprised. But she knew that the Luo family had rejected the Yi family this time. And their attitude was extremely firm. Maybe Chiyo can. Luo Chioli smiled gently. She had seen Aunt Luo Tsun's portrait in her uncle's study. Aunt Luo Tsun looked a lot like Chi Yao. Maybe she could convince her uncle that they may be. She did this not entirely for Ji Yao, but also partly for her own selfish reasons. As long as the Luo family helps the Yi family, she has an 80% chance of winning this family war. The Luo family also needs to take a step further. Xia Chi Yu was a little puzzled, but she didn't ask any more questions. She believed that junior sister Luo wouldn't do such a thing in her spare time. There must be a reason for her. The Shangwan family has already promised the Yi family. And now it's up to you. The Luo family. Xia Chiyue was a little confused. Why did the Luo family remain neutral at this time? Alas! It was actually the Yi family and the Luo family who had a dispute. Luo Chiyue sighed and began to tell Xia Chiyue about the past. Three days later, Chiyue finally arrived at Luo's house. July! Chiyue Li! Chiyue waved happily as soon as she saw them. Xia Chiyue and Luo Chiyue smiled when they saw this. Among the three of them, Chiyue was a little more lively. Let's go! Let's talk after we go in. Luo Chioli brought Jiyo and Xia Chiyue into Luo's house. This was Jiyo's first visit to the Luo family. She briefly observed the Luo family and found that the pavilions and pavilions were similar to those of the Yi family. I'll take you to visit the Luo family. Luo Chioli smiled gently at Jiyo. The visit was a lie. The most important thing was to take Jiyo to meet his uncle. Chapter 605 The Head of the Luo Family Jiyo nodded and was not in a hurry. She came here to try her luck. It was still unknown whether she could achieve her goal. In this way, Luo Chili took the two of them to visit some places in the Luo family. Shi Ya, look at it. Our disciples of the Luo family are almost going to fly away when they see you. Luo Chili made a rare joke and covered her mouth and laughed. Ji Ya and Chi Yue were both great beauties. But Chi Yue looked cold and cold, making people afraid to approach them. Shi Yao, on the other hand, looked beautiful and charming, but also very kind, which made these disciples blush. I haven't seen them walking around. Are there always young disciples hanging around? When Jia heard this, she blushed and was speechless for a while. In fact, she rarely thinks about her appearance. Since she came to this world, what she has been thinking about is strength. Therefore, she always subconsciously ignores her appearance and thinks that she is an ordinary girl with no good appearance in the world. Seeing Ji Yao's embarrassed look, Xia Chiyue raised her lips and smiled. Ahem. Let's leave quickly. There are still many places we haven't seen yet. Jiyu smiled awkwardly, then turned around and walked away quickly. 
Luo Chili and Xia Qiyue looked at each other with a smile and followed. Li Yatu. While the three of them were strolling around, the head of the Luo family appeared. As soon as he came back, he heard that Luo Chili had brought two little girls back to play. Uncle! Luo Chili was delighted, but she didn't expect to actually bump into his uncle. I've met Senior. Jiao and Xia Qiyue both saluted quickly. No need to be polite. The head of the Luo family waved his hand and gently lifted them up. Jia raised her head, looked at the head of the Luo family, and smiled slightly. The head of the Luo family planned to say H, low and leave. But unexpectedly, he suddenly saw Ji Yao's face. The head of the Luo family was stunned and froze on the spot. He seemed to see Tsuna raising her head and smiling at him. Jiyo didn't expect that this senior would actually look at her in a trance. And she felt a little embarrassed for a moment. Should she say something to remind him to come to his senses? Luo Chioli smiled when she saw this. Things were indeed not much different from what she expected. The head of the Luo family finally came to his senses and looked at Ji Yao with a much more friendly look. He didn't expect that someone could be so similar to Sinner. Little girl. What's your name? The head of the Luo family tried to make his tone gentler. But he only managed to scare her. Junior Yi Jia. Jia asked honestly. The head of the Luo family was stunned again. He also knew about Yi Jia. Her reputation spread after the last set competition. It turned out to be Yi Feng's daughter. The head of the Luo family sighed in his heart. She was Sinner's descendant. Let's go. Uncle will treat you to a good meal. The head of the Luo family smiled at Jiyo and took them to the banquet hall. Jiyo felt the kindness of the head of the Luo family. Although she didn't understand why, she was still very happy. Maybe I have a chance. Girl Yao Yao, here is some high-level monster meat. Eating it is good for your cultivation. You should eat more. The head of the Luo family was happy when he saw Jiyo and specially asked someone to go to him some time ago. The ninth-level monster he went out to hunt. Thank you, senior. Jiyu nodded with a smile and ate a piece of monster meat. Sure enough, a strong spiritual power emanated from the monster's flesh. And Ji Yao immediately absorbed it. Chapter 606 Woyang Ancestor What do you mean? Senior? So outspoken. Just call me uncle like Chou Li. The head of the Luo family pretended to be annoyed and glared at Ji Yao. Uncle! Ji Yao shouted sweetly. Hey! Yao Yao! Please eat more quickly! And I will give you some of the unprocessed monster meat when the time comes. When the head of the Luo family heard this uncle, he felt sweet to the core. He looked at Jia sitting below, eating seriously, and felt a little sour in his heart. If Sinner were still alive, would she have a daughter like this? This girl not only looks like Sinner, but her personality is also so similar. Moreover, she is only 31 years old now, and she is already a golden elixir. She is really a genius. A feeling of pride welled up in his heart seeing that her uncle had completely forgotten about her and Chiyue. Luo Chioli could only smile helplessly. Only the matter about Aunt Luo Tsun made the uncle and the Luoyang patriarch confused. After drinking and eating, the head of the Luo family called Ji Yao to him, took out a storage ring, and handed it to Ji Yao. Uncle! This can't be done! Ji Yu quickly pushed him back. Although she called him uncle, in fact, she was not related to him. This is a meeting gift from my uncle! Just accept it with peace of mind. The head of the Luo family rubbed Ji Yao's head and said with a smile. After the previous contact, he really liked this little girl. And it wasn't just because she looked similar to Sinner. If you don't accept it, you are looking down on your uncle. The head of the Luo family deliberately made a serious face and glared at Ji Yao. Thank you, uncle. A warm current flowed through Ji Yu's heart. The seniors she met were all very kind to her. You should play in the Luo family for a while before going back. The head of the Luo family didn't want Jia to leave so early. Okay. Jia nodded. She also wanted to find a chance to talk to him about the Yi family. Xiao Li. Entertain them well. The head of the Luo family ordered and left in a flash. He is going to find the Luoyang ancestor. Let's go to my yard. Luo Chioli smiled and took Jia and Chi Yue back to the yard. Ancestor. The head of the Luo family stood outside a wooden house. Which was the cave of the Luoyang ancestor. Since the death of Sinner, the ancestor has not paid much attention to worldly affairs. The ancestor's Taoist companion had also died long ago. But Sinner was the one he raised with his own hands. And he had a deep affection for her. Come in. A vicissitude's a voice came. The head of the Luo family opened the door and walked in. What's the matter? Patriarch Luoyang glanced at the head of the Luo family indifferently. 
She only brought back a girl today named Yijia. The head of the Luo family said respectfully. The ancestor of Luo Yang stopped drinking tea. And his face suddenly became extremely ugly. I don't want to hear anything about the Yi family. That girl looks so much like Tsun. And her personality is just as delicate and soft. I think my ancestor might want to meet her. The head of the Luo family hesitated for a moment. But finally said it. Get out! Luoyang Patriarch swung the teacup. And all the spiritual tea suddenly spilled out. The teacup rolled on the ground several times before stopping. Yes! I will take my leave. Junior! The head of the Luo family sighed in his heart and left. Luoyang sat on the futon, with a gloomy expression, and poured another cup of tea. Just when he was about to drink it, he suddenly put down the teacup, then tore apart the space and stepped in. When he came out of the space crack again, he was already above Luo Chili's yard. Chapter 607 Go. Shio and the others below were completely unaware and were still chatting. Hey, Shia, don't worry. Now that the Shangwan family has sided with the Yi family, there shouldn't be much of a problem. Luo Chili whispered to Jiao. After all, there are still venerable Jin Song and the others. Well, I'm not afraid. It's just that it feels a little uncomfortable to see Dad and the others worry so much all day. She Yu sighed. Her dad was really under a lot of pressure, but she couldn't do much to help him. It will be fine. Xia Chiyu also comforted Ji Yao. Although he has only reached the peak of foundation building now, he still has to do his part. No matter what the outcome is, I will advance and retreat together with the Yi family. Even if it falls, it is still worth it. This is my home. Ji Yu said with a smile. Being able to become a member of the Yi family is her greatest luck in this life. The Luoyang ancestor above was in a trance. He remembered that when he got the news and rushed to Yejia, Sinner was no longer good. In the end, she died in her arms. The last words she said were, This is my home. Luoyang patriarch's eyes turned red. And there was a dull pain in his heart. This pain of losing a daughter has not faded away even after hundreds of years. The Luoyang ancestor suppressed his inner emotions and fell directly towards the courtyard. Looking straight at Ji Yao. Ancestor Luoyang. Luo Chioli stood up in surprise. She really didn't expect that the ancestor Luoyang who ignored the world would come over. I've met the reverend. Ji Yao and Chi Yua also stood up quickly and saluted respectfully. Your name is Yi Ji Yu? The Luoyang ancestor completely ignored them and just looked at Ji Yu steadily. Yes, Junior Yi Ji Yao. Ji Yu raised her head and replied nervously. She didn't know how the other party, a dot forming venerable, knew her name. Luoyang looked at Jiyo carefully and found that she really looked like Tsunur. Especially her clean eyes. Are you Yi Feng's daughter? Luoyang Patriarch recovered his thoughts and sat down. Yes. Jiyo nodded honestly. Very restrained. You all should sit down. Luoyang Patriarch motioned for several people to sit down. The three of them immediately sat down in a restrained manner. Not daring to speak for a while. Golden elixir. Not bad. Luoyang looked at Jiyo's cultivation and nodded with satisfaction. This girl's talent is much better than Sinner. Luckily, Jiyu smiled modestly, feeling very uncomfortable. This venerable aura was so powerful that it made her feel a little depressed. Can you play chess? Luoyang took out the Go chess piece from the storage ring and placed it on the stone table. I don't know how, Jiyu replied awkwardly. She didn't know how to play Go in her last life. And she won't know how to play Go in this life either. I'll teach you. Luoyang glanced at Jiyu lightly, and took the lead. Jiyu choked when she heard this. But she could only accept her fate and start playing chess. Luo Chili and Xia Chiyue could only watch from the sidelines. Little girl is good at everything. But her brain is not very bright. Luo Yang and Jiyu played a few games of Go. And finally couldn't help teasing her. He is so talented. But he has no talent in Go. My head is very smart. I'll leave it to you. After getting along just now, Jiyu discovered that this venerable man was actually very gentle and had the courage to joke. You are not ashamed of your words. Wu Yang couldn't help but stretched out his hand to rub Jiyu's head and laughed for the first time in hundreds of years. Jiyu just smiled happily. She felt that she was quite talented. Chapter 608 The Luo Family Takes Sides What did you cultivate? Little girl. Patriarch Wu Yang looked at the red lotus on Ji Yao's forehead. If his prediction was correct, the red lotus mark should be something cultivated by Buddhism. Jiyo didn't understand what Patriarch Luoyang meant for a while. After a moment of reaction, she realized that he was asking about what she practiced. This junior is a sword cultivator. Jiyo replied with a smile. The ancestor of Luoyang was stunned. 
and his sinner was also a swordsman. A disciple of Wan Jin's sect? Luoyang raised his head and looked at Ji Yu intently. Yes, this junior learned from Master Jian Song. Ji Ya replied seriously. It turns out he is Jian Song's apprentice. Luoyang Patriarch thought of Jian Song. That guy was also a very protective person. He would definitely get involved in the Yi family's affairs this time. Do you want to protect the Yi family? Luoyang put down the chess pieces and looked at Jia seriously. I think this junior wants to protect the Yi family. Jia sat up straight and looked back at the Luoyang ancestor with a sincere face. This was also the real purpose of her trip. You are very good. Luoyang Patriarch smiled again. I think Sinner, the younger generation, will also like this very much. This time, our Luo family will stand on the Yi family's side. Luoyang reached out and rubbed Jiyu's head again, feeling tender in his heart. When Jia heard this, she looked at Luoyang's ancestor in disbelief. She hadn't even opened her mouth to convince him. So she agreed? Just leave this family war to us. You just need to watch it carefully and be safe. Luoyang said and took out a storage bracelet. He gently touched the bracelet. This was the storage bracelet that Sinner used during his lifetime. It was his only spiritual sustenance for so many years. He grabbed Jia's hand and put it in for her. Jia was startled and was about to take off her bracelet. But Patriarch Luoyang suddenly laughed. This is my daughter's bracelet. But she has been dead for hundreds of years. When I see you, I seem to see her when she was a child. I hope you can always have such clean eyes. No matter what you experience in the future, you can be happy. Luoyang Patriarch looked at Jiyao. His eyes slightly red. He doesn't want Jia to experience bad things. He hopes that she can always remain her truest self. As for the rest, they will take care of it. Jia could feel the Luoyang ancestor's affection for his daughter, and her heart ached when she learned that his daughter had died. If she had died, her parents must have been like this too. She simply couldn't imagine what she would do if any of her relatives or friends died. Thank you, senior. Jia felt moved and felt a little uncomfortable. Call me ancestor. If Sinner is still alive, she should have a daughter as lovely as you. Luoyang's whole face softened, and he wanted to give her everything he had no chance to give to Sinner. Old ancestor, Ji Ya called out in a good-natured voice, which was an old man's love for his daughter. Yes, Patriarch Luoyang nodded and put away the chessboard. When the family war is over, I will teach you how to play chess. After saying this, Patriarch Luoyang tore up the space and left. He wanted to find the head of the Luo family to explain the matter. It's okay now. You don't have to worry anymore. Luo Chioli looked at Ji Yao and became sincerely happy. This is a win-win situation. Both the Yi family and the Luo family will get better and better. Thank you, Chioli. Ji Yao looked at Luo Chioli with a smile and thanked her sincerely. Chapter 609 Meeting Chi Lanchi. Ji Yao knew that Luo Chioli would not invite her to the Luo family for no reason. It was obviously to give herself a chance to convince the Luo family. She remembered this kindness. We don't talk about this between us. Luo Chioli smiled softly, seeing that things had finally turned around. Xia Chiyu had finally breathed a sigh of relief. In the current situation, Ye Jia is more certain of winning. Ye Jia meeting hall. Yi Feng was discussing the layout with several people when he suddenly received a communication talisman from the head of the Luo family. As soon as Yi Feng opened it, he heard the head of the Luo family saying that the Luo family would stand by the Yi family and deal with the Qi family together. Great! The Luo family is actually willing to help. The uncle of the Yi family was the first to stand up excitedly. Now they are more confident. Yi Feng was a little stunned. The head of the Luo family had clearly refused very thoroughly before. How could he suddenly change his attitude? Could it be that something happened? This is a good thing. See how arrogant the Qi family is. They will cry when the time comes. The seventh child of the Yi family snorted coldly and said angrily, The Qi family didn't hide the news that they were going to take action against the Yi family before, but they just felt that the Luo family would not intervene this time. In this way, let's ask the Luo family not to leak the news that they are going to intervene, and let the Qi family relax their vigilance first, so that when they see the Luo family, their expressions will be wonderful. Yi Feng finally came to his senses at this time, since Luo, the head of the family, has agreed so there will be no more changes. He is bound to win this victory. Okay, let's see how arrogant he is when the time comes. He dares to search for the souls of my disciples of the Yi family. I will keep this account in mind for them. The uncle of the Yi family felt itching with hatred when he thought of the results of the previous investigation. The disciples of the Yi family are their future. 
It is really an unforgivable crime for a high-level monk to search for the souls of low-level disciples at will. When Yi Feng and others heard this, their faces darkened, and they all thought of the disciple who died innocently and tragically. Two days later, Ji prepared to leave with the high-level monster meat prepared by the head of the Luo family. We will come find you after a while. Xia Chiyua raised the corner of her mouth and smiled. Soon, they will meet again. Okay, I'll wait for you at Yijia. Chiyua felt a little excited, and her heart was filled with passion. Her chance to contribute to Yijia was finally coming. After saying goodbye to Xia Chiyua and the others, Xiao embarked on her way home. But as soon as she returned to the Yi family's territory, several people walked towards her. And it was Chi Lanchi who was about to leave. She was always a little worried after hearing reports from her subordinates about Ji Yao's movements. So she went there herself. After finally confirming that there was nothing wrong, she felt relieved and prepared to go back. However, this city will soon become their Chi families. Hey, isn't this Uncle Yi? Chi Lanchi looked at Ji Yao's appearance and a flash of resentment flashed in her heart. Why would God give such a person such a perfect face to her? Do you want to give her such a good talent? Sensing the pressure of the golden elixir emanating from Ji Yao's body, Chi Lanchi's face twisted. Ji Yao glanced at Chi Lanchi lightly and planned to leave her body. Now is not the time to alert the enemy. When the family war comes, she must kill her with her own hands. If the tiger didn't show off his power, he would really treat her as a sick cat. Hey, I'm talking about you. Chi Lanchi suddenly became angry when she saw that Ji Yao was completely ignoring her. Chapter 610 Gathering Strength Now that the Qi family has completely replaced the Yi family, she no longer has to worry about so much and give her no face. Qi Lanchi winked at the housekeeper next to her, signaling him to take action against Jiyo. But the housekeeper didn't move. It was a critical moment now, and he couldn't do anything to alarm the enemy. Butler, you don't listen to me. Right. Qi Lanchi didn't expect that the butler didn't listen to her instructions at all, and she suddenly became even more angry. But even a bad housekeeper dared to show his face to her. Ha ha. Miss, you are worrying too much. Now is the critical moment. We should not take action casually. Otherwise it will be bad if it disrupts the plan of the head of the family. The housekeeper was impatient. But he could only patiently explain. Who let she is the head of the family's precious daughter. Besides, there will be plenty of opportunities to humiliate the other party when the time comes. So there is no need to rush. Chi Lanchi was a little unwilling. But she could only give up watching Ji Yao walk away. After all, she would definitely not be able to defeat the opponent at the early stage of foundation building. Chi Lanchi hated her even more when she thought of her cultivation. She wanted to let her experience the feeling of falling from heaven to H, L, which was worse than death. Ji Yao did not expect that Chi Lanchi had not made any progress after so many years. The three years of confinement did not seem to have any warning effect on her. Now that someone is trying to break her happy life, she will never show mercy. After all, it's quite annoying to have a clown like this jumping around all the time. Gio lowered her eyes and had made up her mind. When she returned to the city, she went to buy a lot of formation discs and talisman papers. Now she has made great progress in both aspects. During this time, she will try to make more and distribute them to the lower level members of the Yi family. Disciple, she hopes to reduce the casualties of low level disciples, who are all her relatives. As soon as she returned to Yejia, she plunged into making talismans and array discs. Nangong family in the central region. All the monks have been assembled. In addition to Lu Huanxue, there are a total of 10 nascent soul monks. And Nangong Che is one of them. We can't travel through space. How about you go there first? You are? Xiao Che will stay and take care of us. Lu Huanxue was a little anxious. She didn't know when the Qi family would take action against the Yi family. If your passes, she can feel more relieved. After all, she still has great confidence in her son. As long as he is here, there will be no problems in the Yi family. Why? I want to go there first too. Nandong Che curled his lips. He also wanted to go there early to have a look. After all, that little girl is also his sister. Shut up. What? I don't want you anymore. If you can defeat your elder brother, I will let you go first. Lu Huanxue glared at Nandong Che angrily. What trouble did he make all day? Now is the chance for Yu to show off. Won't he cause trouble if he leaves? Nandong Che stopped talking. And fighting with his perverted big brother was just looking for abuse. Okay. Nandong Yu saw that there was no dispute. And immediately tore open the space and left. Lu Huanxue nodded with satisfaction. 
took out a spirit boat, and after everyone got on it, they flew towards the North Territory. Ji Shuzi and Qin Chen on the other side were also ready, tearing apart the space together and rushing towards the Yi family. The people of the Yi family were still unaware of this and were making preparations before the war and planning how to take over the territory after the war. The Qi family was also gathering strength at this time and began to recall the disciples who were outside. This battle can only be won, but not lost. Chapter 611 is on the verge of breaking out. A month later, Nandong Yu arrived at Ye's house. And Ji Shuzi and Qin Chen also arrived. Ji Ye was called out of the room by Zhao Qian Yu and saw the three people who appeared in the yard. Ji Ye was stunned for a moment. And then she was overjoyed. I have met two senior uncles. Senior brother Nandong. Ji Ye happily saluted the three of them. Ha ha. Yao Yao. Can you welcome us? Qin Chen asked Xiang Ji Ye with a faint smile. This junior is asking for more. Ji Ye really didn't expect them to come and there was no longer any suspense about whether they would win or lose this battle. Let's not talk about other people. Let's talk about Nandong Yu, who was the one who singled out several god transformation monks in the original work. The Qi family must be about to take action. And your master and senior brother should be here soon, Ji Shuzi said, stroking his beard. They had already sent a communication talisman to Jian Song before. Uncle, please go and have a rest first. I'll worry about it later. Jia smiled so hard that her eyes almost narrowed into slits. The big stone in her heart had been completely removed at this time. Okay. Qin Chen nodded and planned to take them to the guest house prepared by the Yi family first. Nandong Yu, on the other hand, walked towards Ji Yao. He had just heard his aunt say that Ji Yao was carving formation plates and drawing talismans. I'll teach you. Nandong Yu stopped in front of Ji Yao and said calmly. Ji Yao was confused and didn't understand what Nandong Yu meant at all. And Nandong Yu completely ignored Jiyo's reaction and entered her house directly. Jiyo had no choice but to follow after she regained consciousness. Qin Chen raised his eyebrows slightly when he saw this. It seemed that his apprentice still admired Yao Yao very much. Otherwise, he would not have taken the initiative to teach her anything. When Zhao Qian Yu saw Nandong Yu entering, her heart skipped a beat and she wanted to go in together. After all, her family was still young. So don't be fooled by these stinky men. Qin Chen stopped her. You are as extremely accomplished in this area. And this is an opportunity for Yao Yao. Moreover, yours technique can break up love. So you don't have to worry about his love for Yao Yao. What's the intention? Qin Chen also understood what Zhao Qian Yu was worried about. But this worry was completely unnecessary. Zhao Qian Yu didn't expect that her thoughts would be seen through. And her face turned red for a moment. After all, Venerable Qin Chen was Nandong Yu's master. However, Zhao Qian Yu breathed a sigh of relief when she heard that he was learning the art of breaking up love. As long as she doesn't take advantage of her daughter. Everything else is easy to talk about. Let's go. Ji Shuzi smiled and shook his head and said. And the three of them left together. As soon as he entered the house, Nan Dong Yu directly picked up the talisman and array plate made by Ji Yao and began to observe them carefully. After discovering the problem, he pointed it out directly. Sometimes, as long as the details are slightly changed, the grade will change accordingly. Jiyo was embarrassed at the beginning and slowly devoted herself to studying. The two of them wouldn't say a word except for things related to study. Luo Chuan also received a summons from the head of the Luo family. He was finally relieved to learn that the Luo family had decided to support the Yi family. Okay, let's go to Ye's family too. Jian Song stood up with a smile. Now that Ye's family has won the situation, he heard what Qin Chen said, and Ye also came with him. After all, even he can't beat Yir now. With him here, the Qi family will cry when the time comes. Okay. Luo Chuan nodded. He hadn't seen his junior sister for a long time. And she must have been anxious during this period. After the two of them finished speaking, they immediately tore apart the space and rushed towards the Yi family. Chapter 612 is coming. Just when Jia was able to make the sixth grade talisman, Zhao Qianyu came again. 17. They are here. Zhao Qianyu's face was gloomy. They had received news that the other four families had entered the city and were rushing towards the Yi family in a siege. Yet Zhao didn't stop them all the way, just waiting for them to come and catch them all. Ji Yao's heart sank. She nodded, put away the talisman and array disc, stood up, and rushed to the meeting hall. Nandong Yu also stood up and walked outside. Arriving at the meeting hall, Ji Yao found many familiar faces. 
What surprised her was that Lu Huanxue and Nandong Che also came. Yi Feng was also a little confused at this time. He did not expect that the Nandong family would send ten nascent soul monks to help. Which really touched him. After all, we are just friends. Jia stepped forward to greet him, and then stood aside obediently, waiting for instructions. This time, Jiao and Yi Jiro, the younger generation of the Yi family, and Yi Qin Shun were at home. Originally, Yi Feng planned to summon all the direct disciples of the Yi family. But after the Luo family agreed to help, he felt it was unnecessary. Furthermore, if something happened to the Yi family, they would still be able to survive and continue the Yi family. They have already entered the city, and they will surely come soon. The people here are the ones who want to fight them head on. And because of the help of the Nandong family, each of our families can send several nascent soul monks to support the disciples who attack their lair. Yi Feng said with a serious look. This time, the four major families were all out in force, feeling that they had a chance to win. So there was not much strength left in his lair. It was really a wise decision for me to send people to attack their lair from the rear at this time. The heads of the Zhao family, the Luo family, and the Shangwan family all gave their orders. This time it happened that one of their families took over another family. The nascent soul monks would be more confident and the casualties could be minimized. Next. It's time for us to take the stage. I'll leave it to you all. He phone clasped his fists at everyone. This time, he could only win but not fail. After everyone discussed it, they walked out together. All the high-level monks came to the door of Yijia, while all the low-level disciples stayed at Yijia, ready for the battle. The Yi family has the assistance of formations, so low-level disciples can feel more relaxed. Xi Yao and others distributed the supplies they prepared to the low-level disciples, which could save their lives at critical moments. Not long after, Qi Qiu and the others arrived, as did Jian Song and Luo Chuan. Yi Feng and several masters stepped into the air. Yi Feng concentrated his spiritual power and roared loudly. Today, the four major families headed by the Qi family took the initiative to provoke a family war in an attempt to change the structure of the Northern Territory. And today we will let them see what kind of insignificant they are. And they want to destroy my Yi family. In this battle, we can only win, not lose. We must protect our family and our family. Yi Feng's voice reached everyone's ears. Protect the family. Protect the family. Protect the family. Protect the family. The lower level disciples all yelled excitedly. Someone wanted to destroy their home. This was absolutely unforgivable. Yi Tianjuan's eyes were slightly red among the disciples. It was the first time he experienced the feeling of being integrated into the family. He does what his father failed to do. Chapter 613 Family War 1 Ha ha! Fellow Taoist Yi! Long time no see! Qi Cheng's voice came from the distance, immediately attracting everyone's attention. Qi Cheng appeared together with three other family heads, bringing their family's disciples with them, and finally approached the Yi family. But as soon as the Qi Cheng people stood still, the smiles on their faces stiffened. Why are people from the Luo family here? How come he didn't receive the message at all? How could the Luo family be involved? Moreover, several families on the other side have inexplicably gained three more god transformation monks and eleven nascent soul monks. He had long expected that Venerable Jian Song would intervene. So he deliberately spent a lot of money to hire foreign aid from the southern territory. Who can tell him where these people come from? At this moment, a foot suddenly stepped out from the sky above Yejia. Everyone was startled and looked up and found that it was the Luoyang Patriarch. Ancestor Yilan was stunned, not expecting Ancestor Luoyang to come over. Yi Feng was also very surprised. He thought it would be good if the Luo family agreed to help. But he didn't expect that the Luoyang ancestors would intervene. The Luoyang Patriarch didn't even look at them and fell directly beside Ji Yao. Girl Yao too. Just stay well and protect yourself later. Luoyang Patriarch was worried about Ji Yao's safety and came here specially. This time, he won't be late again. Ancestor! Ji Yao smiled happily. The feeling of so many people standing up together made her heart feel full. Yi Lan and Yi Feng watched the two of them get along. They were a little surprised at first. But then, they figured it out and fell silent. Why is the head of the Luo family here too? Chi Chung smiled reluctantly, assessing the strength of the two parties in his mind. There are a total of 41 nascent soul cultivators and 9 divine transformation cultivators on my side. There are 45 nascent soul cultivators on the other side. And even more 11 divine transformation cultivators. A bad premonition came over him. And Chi Chung felt a little heavy in his heart. 
The other three people did not expect the situation in front of them. And they were hesitant for a moment. In the current situation, I'm afraid I might be at a disadvantage. But if they just go back like this, it's impossible for the Yi family to let them go back. Venerable Fong. Can you deal with the extra god transformation monks on the other side? Chi Chung worriedly sent a message to Feng Hai. The god transformation monk, he had spent a lot of money to invite from the southern territory. Feng Hai lightly raised his eyelids, glanced at the other party's god transforming monk, curled his lips, and smiled disdainfully. Small problem. Feng Hai sent a message directly to Chi Chung and snorted in his heart. It was just a few god transforming monks. In his hands, he would not be able to see the sun tomorrow. Chi Chung felt relieved when he heard what Feng Hai said. This Feng Hai is very famous in the southern region. Because he is both good and evil. And is always unpredictable. So he is quite mysterious. It's just that he had heard that Feng Hai once fought against three god transformation monks alone. And he was never at a disadvantage. Now it seems that inviting him here was the right decision. Chi Ya felt a little nervous as she watched people on both sides become silent at this time. This is the calm before the storm. It's just that she didn't like the god transformation monk wearing a black cloak. There seemed to be something about him that made her repulsive. Perhaps because Ji Yao's gaze was too intense. Feng Hai raised his head and suddenly looked at Ji Yao. And then suddenly launched a soul attack towards Ji Yao's sea of consciousness. But as soon as his soul got close, he was suddenly burned by the lotus on her forehead. Which made him pull back immediately in pain. Chapter 6 14 Family War 2 Feng Hai groaned and a murderous intention flashed in his heart. If he hadn't run so fast just now, his soul would have been destroyed. Feng Hai glanced at Ji Yao coldly again, and his murderous aura radiated away without concealment. But as soon as his murderous intention was released, he found himself locked by several auras. He looked over and found that several god transformation monks were looking at him, with murderous aura exuding from their bodies. And this murderous aura was obviously directed at him. His eyes swept over one by one, and he recognized the famous Jin Song. In the end, his eyes rested on one person. It was actually a 200-year-old god transformation monk. Feng Hai felt jealous in his heart. It was because he was not talented enough that he learned some evil cultivation methods during his cultivation. He has suffered too much along the way. And what he despises most in his life is this kind of greenhouse flower that is said to be a genius. Nan Gong Yu looked at him indifferently, already locking his aura firmly and he would take action directly when it broke out. Jiyo didn't expect that the god transformation monk would sneak attack a low-level monk like her, and she felt a little shameful. Jiyo looked at Feng Hai and deliberately pouted at him, as if she was laughing at him for not being able to hurt even a junior. Sure enough, Feng Hai noticed Ji Yao's ridicule, became angry and launched an attack. Just like that, before the Yi family said a word, the entire family war broke out. Nan Gong Yi directly faced Feng Hai, and all the god transformation monks flew into the sky, and then flew to a place slightly further away. After all, the fighting damage caused by the monks transforming into gods is too great, and they cannot hurt innocent people. Yi Feng, Nan Dong Che, Luo Chuan, Shang Guan Nan Xian, and others each chose the nascent soul cultivator and fought directly. Ji Yao and Xia Qi Yue are in the team of Jin Den monks. Although Xia Qi Yue is only at the peak of foundation building now, he is fully capable of fighting against the Jin Den monks. Luo Chioli, Yi Jiro and others led the foundation building disciples and Qi training stage disciples to fight against the low-level disciples who tried to invade the Yi family. Low-level disciples from all directions all poured in towards Yejia. When everyone ran in, Jia raised her hand gently and the formations around Yejia suddenly lit up, protecting the entire Yejia firmly. The people who attacked Yejia suddenly found that the surrounding environment turned into a fog. And then suddenly a sword appeared from somewhere and pierced some people's chests. During the Qi training period, disciples hold various talismans in their hands and smash them hard when they encounter those who cannot defeat them. Qi Ya's formation was only aimed at the attacking disciples. She had previously recorded the auras of the disciples standing on the Yi family's side, so they would not be affected in any way. But the enemy is not so lucky. Not only will his vision be limited and he will be attacked by the disciples, but the formation itself has its own attacks. Therefore, the enemy who had just entered suffered some casualties at first. After a while, everyone gradually figured out the cause, and then gradually stabilized and started to counterattack. At this time, Jiyo had no time to take care of the formation below. In front of her was a late-stage Jean Dan cultivator. The other party held a disc in his hand. 
He tapped the disc gently. And suddenly the disc emitted a strong light and attacked Jiao. Jiao dodged and swung out with a lightning attributed swordsmanship. The artistic conception of swordsmanship directly destroyed the opponent's attack and struck him, immediately surrounding him with a strong thunder attribute. Chapter 615 Family War 3 The monk spit out a large mouthful of blood, and the place where it leaked was torn open by the thunder attribute blast. He raised his head and looked at Ji Yao in horror. How could this person, who was in the early stage of the golden elixir, comprehend the artistic conception? And it's still the artistic conception of swordsmanship. This is obviously something that can only be understood at the nascent soul stage. The monk felt a little uneasy. He originally thought he had picked a soft persimmon but he didn't expect that he was actually a person pretending to be a pig and eating the tiger. Jiyo nodded with satisfaction. She only used half of her skills to cause such harm to him. The monk was very angry and lit the disc again. This time, dozens of white lights suddenly appeared and hit Jiyo. Jiyo took a closer look and discovered that there was something in the dozens of white lights, which was emitting dazzling light under the refraction of the sun. Has a problem. Jiyo was startled and hurriedly teleported away. But this time the white lights seemed to have eyes following her. And there were even white lights that ran in other directions to chase and intercept her. The monk sneered. With that little ability, do you really think you can defeat him? Jiyu realized that she couldn't run away. So she turned back and threw out a divine thunder net, intercepting all the white light. As soon as the white light touched the divine thunder, it actually made a hissing sound and finally melted together, leaving nothing behind. Jiyu's heart sank when she saw this. What on earth is this? Can it actually corrode divine thunder? The monk didn't expect Jiyo to be able to destroy the white light. And his heart suddenly hurt. In the white light was the melted corpse he bought with a lot of money. Which he smeared on some daggers. Mixed in this white light. It is impossible to see it. As soon as this dagger touches her body. It can instantly melt her body. Leaving a pile of bones. He had bought this from a corpse control month before. It cost him a lot of money. But now it was destroyed. When Jia saw how vicious the opponent's attack methods were, her face darkened, and she directly gathered ten stamina to slash at him with a kindo spirit. This is the artistic conception of the sword of life and death that she understood during the previous death calamity. She gave it a name, reincarnation. Life and death are reincarnations. As soon as reincarnation was used, the monk's eyelids twitched instantly, feeling like he was locked by death. He was shocked and immediately released all the remaining attacks on the disc at once. Reincarnation swept directly past, and all the white light was sucked into the artistic conception. The whole artistic conception is a huge black and white gossip, spinning constantly. The white light fell into the artistic conception and was swallowed up by the black and white gas without even taking a bubble. The monk was startled and quickly ran away. He didn't expect that something could restrain the melted corpse from dispersing. Reincarnation chased the monk, but within a moment it actually sucked the monk into it. Ah! The monk roared but without any struggle. He was instantly swallowed up by the black and white gas and fell completely. But at this time, a door suddenly opened next to reincarnation, which startled Jiao, thinking that there was an enemy attack. But after a while, she actually saw the monk's soul running out of reincarnation and entering the door. In an instant, the door closed again, and the reincarnation finally dissipated. Jiao was a little confused by the situation before her. The Jean Dan monk fell when he fell. How could the soul survive alone? And when the door opened just now, it was completely dark inside. And Jiyo even felt a strong sense of resentment. Chapter 616 Family War 4 Nine Hells Venerable Jiyo Ming was looking through the recent past lives when three people suddenly broke in at the door. They were his two-digit subordinates. And the other one was in a state of soul. What's going on? Lord Jiyo Ming stood up in surprise. He had just carefully examined the soul and found that it was actually the soul of the monk after his death. Sir, we don't know what happened. He was not brought back by his eldest and second brothers. But he suddenly came to the boundary by himself, and then passed the Sanshing Stone Bridge by himself. Now he has completely lost his memory. I am also very puzzled that now, they are the only ghost cultivators who can freely enter the Nine Nether Hell. And the other monks cannot enter at all now. Even a mortal soul needs a ghost to come in. And this person is obviously not a ghost cultivator. But now his memory has completely disappeared. And they can't even ask why. Perhaps you can calculate where he came in from? Venerable Jiu Ming asked while doing the calculation himself. No. There is no trace at all. He just appeared out of thin air. His subordinates had already tried it. 
and they were all frightened when they saw this person. Venerable Jiu Ming calculated several times, but could not figure out where he came from. So he had to give up in the end. But his brows were frowning tightly, because it was unheard of for a monk to be reincarnated. Let's take him to the pool of rebirth, and try to see if we can send him to be reincarnated. Venerable Jiu Ming also became curious. He wanted to see if it was an accident, or if he was really said to be reincarnated. Yes! The two men led the monk's soul towards the pond of rebirth, with Lord Jiu Ming following closely behind. The road leading to the pond of life is full of crying and struggling ghosts. These are ghosts with desires and hidden obsessions in their hearts. Even though he is dead and has lost his memory, he still can't let go of his obsession and struggles not to be reincarnated. And they will not force them. So these ghosts cry like this year after year, day after day. Venerable Jiu Ming and the others came to the pond of rebirth. The entire pond of rebirth was divided into several sections. And each section led to a different channel for reincarnation. Put him into the human realm. Dot. Lord Jiu Ming glanced at the monk's soul. After all, this man's life and death have not been recorded. Since he is here, it is destined to be fate. Yes! The two men agreed and pushed the monk's soul into the pool of rebirth. As soon as the soul fell, it was sucked into the pool of rebirth. Lord Jiu Ming had been observing his situation. After a while, he deduced that this person had been reincarnated into an ordinary family. He was shocked, and his two men were also a little confused. There were actually monks who could be reincarnated after falling. This is really unheard of and shocking. If the big guys in the cultivation world knew about it, there would probably be a storm. After all, if you know the method, if one of you accidentally dies, you can at least reincarnate him. If there is still a chance to become a monk after reincarnation, it is simply unimaginable. And it will definitely cause a bloody storm. This matter must be kept secret. Otherwise I, Jiyo, will have no peace for a while. Venerable Jiyo Ming warned his two subordinates with a serious expression. The two men agreed, knowing the seriousness of the matter. Lord Jiyo Ming glanced at the pond of rebirth again and left. He had to find a way to figure this out. Chapter 617 Family War 5 On the ground, the family war is also in full swing. Nandong you face three god transformation monks alone one of whom was Feng Hai. At this time, Feng Hai stared at Nandong Yu, but he didn't expect that he had hit a nail. At such a young age, this man could actually resist the three of them, and he looked very relaxed. He didn't even frown from the beginning to the end, and that indifferent look obviously didn't take him seriously. Feng Hai was furious and struck with his sword again. Suddenly, the entire space was filled with the sound of tearing, and a golden light flashed towards Nandong Yu. At the same time, he released his own group of gold-loving flying ants, driving them to surround Nangong Yu tightly, while the other two god transformation monks also showed their magical powers and attacked Nangong Yu. Nangong Yu just glanced at a few people indifferently and slashed at them with a light sword. At the same time, he stretched out his hand and shook it hard in the direction of the flying ants. Suddenly, a huge palm appeared, killing all the flying ants. Hold it in the palm of your hand. Suddenly, all the flying ants were reduced to ashes. And the sword attack also split into several sword lights after encountering the first attack. And counterattacked in the direction of the attacks. All attacks were destroyed with devastating force after coming into contact with the sword light. Poof! Feng Hai and the other three were injured by the sword light. And they all took a few steps back and spit out a mouthful of blood. Especially Feng Hai. His previous sneak attack on Ji Yao had already caused his soul to be somewhat injured but the destruction of his gold-loving flying ants just now had a slight backlash on him. Feng Hai looked gloomy and looked at Nandong Yu bitterly. It seemed that he couldn't do it without using his trump card. He watched Nandong Yu twisting the corner of his mouth and smiled gloomily. He would not make it easy for anyone who offended him. With this thought in mind, he made a gesture. Suddenly, a blood-red mass appeared behind him. And there were actually many ferocious faces in it. As soon as the blood-red color appeared, the entire air suddenly became turbid and sticky, and even Jin Song and the others who were some distance away were affected. Everyone's movements slowed down a bit, as if they were stuck in the thick air. Nandong Yu didn't pause, and struck with his sword again. At the same time, he stretched out his left hand and lightly touched the blood behind Feng Hai. Feng Hai looked at that finger. His heart skipped a beat, and he quickly jumped away. The sword light caused damage to the other two people again, causing them to feel a little helpless when they looked at Nandong Yu. As soon as Feng Hai escaped, he discovered that a space crack appeared out of thin air where he was just now. And there was a space storm inside. 
Feng Hai looked at Nan Gongyu in disbelief. This man actually understood the attributes of space, and could also calculate the location of space storms. If he hadn't run fast, he would have been shattered by the space storm. This guy must be eliminated. Feng Hai became cruel and pushed forward, and the whole body of blood rushed towards Nan Gongyu. This was his killing and cause and effect. Ji Yao and others who were fighting below also felt the influence of blood red at this time. Except for Ji Yao and Xia Qi Yue. Everyone else slowed down. Ji Yao and Xia Qi Yue looked into the distance at the same time and saw the large moving blood red. Ji Yao's heart sank. It turned out that this was what made her feel uncomfortable. Xilian, it's time for you to show off. Ji Yao released Xilian directly. Chapter 618 Family War 6 Sister, leave it all to me. As soon as Xilian was released, she became a little excited and flew towards Nangongyu. Xia Qi Yue also released her nine netherworld fire. This strange fire was born to gather resentment, and this blood red color was a great tonic for it. Xilian and Jiu Yu Mingwa flew in front of Nangongyu, absorbing one and melting the other. When Feng Hai saw that his murderous resentment was gradually diminishing, he panicked and immediately wanted to take it back. This resentment can inspire the darkest thoughts in a person's heart, causing him to lose his mind. At the same time, the resentment can invade the monk's body and soul, thereby destroying him. But unexpectedly, two things suddenly appeared. He recognized the nine netherworld fire. But what was that lotus? Xiaoyan and Jiu Yu Minghua were unwilling to let go of their grievances, and also approached Feng Hai. As soon as the nine netherworld fire approached, he felt that his soul was about to freeze. Today's nine netherworld fire is no longer the original strange fire. It has already advanced and even high-level monks will be affected by it. When Nan Gongyu saw that Feng Hai was temporarily restrained, he stopped caring about him and took action against the other two people. He found the right moment and pointed a finger behind one of the god-transforming monks. And suddenly the space crack appeared again. The monk was startled and immediately wanted to move away. But Nan Gongyu suddenly struck down with his sword. This sword seemed to cut the sky in half. But when it was about to approach the monk, it suddenly transformed into countless golden swords densely surrounding him. The god-transforming monk was shocked. No matter how he hid, it was still a golden sword. He slashed it down with his sword, and at the same time took out a jade fan and fanned it around him. Suddenly, all the golden swords were firmly blocked and could not go any further. Another god-transformation monk also slapped those golden swords hard with his palm, and finally knocked all the golden swords down. Nandong Yu just glanced at them indifferently, and at the same time struck with his sword again and then the whole person suddenly disappeared from the place. The god transformation monk noticed something was wrong and immediately moved away. But countless golden swords appeared around him again. At the same time, a sea of fire suddenly ignited around him, making it impossible for him to avoid it. The monk was shocked. At this time, his heart was pounding and his eyelids were twitching. Another monk performed a spell, and suddenly it started pouring rain around the monk. But the heavy rain had no effect on the sea of fire. On the contrary, the sea of fire became more and more intense. The monk was helpless. The strange fire was already approaching him. He could only tear apart the space and prepare to dodge. How is it possible? The monk asked in surprise. Because he found that he could not tear apart the space. He began to explore the surroundings anxiously. When Nangong Yu suddenly appeared in front of him and slapped him with a palm. This palm, which had already surpassed the level of spiritual transformation struck with a strong aura of destruction. The monk hurriedly slapped him back, but was slapped hard and pushed back. He was anxious and tore apart the space casually. Suddenly his eyes lit up, and he realized that he could actually tear apart the space. At that moment, he tore apart the space and stepped in. Ah! As soon as he stepped in, he suddenly let out a scream, and there was actually a space storm inside. The cultivator of the god transformation was like a child in front of the space storm. He had no resistance and was torn to pieces without any nascent soul left. Chapter 6 19 Family War 7 Nandong Yu looked at the closed space crack indifferently and then attacked another god-transforming monk. The purpose of the series of operations just now was to allow him to tear apart that space node and encounter a space storm. Another monk who transformed into gods did not expect that his companion would die like this. He couldn't believe it. You must know that at the level of the god-transformation monk, it is very difficult to determine a specific outcome, let alone directly kill the opponent. Therefore, he has always been very confident in the three of them. The other party, a god-transforming monk, is not their opponent at all, who knew that he was actually a pervert. 
Jian Song and Qin Chen knew what Yi'er was capable of. They just glanced in their direction and then went back to the battle. Ancestor Yi Lan and Patriarch Luoyang were shocked by Nan Gong Yu's fighting power. But when they reacted, they felt relieved. Fortunately, they were on their side. After all, everyone was currently hurting each other. So he had already killed one person with one move, which still surprised them. Feng Hai also didn't expect that in just a dozen breaths, he would lose one person on his side. But currently, both the Nine Nether Fire and the Lotus are coveting his resentment, making it impossible for him to use his unique skills. As for the other moves, it was obvious that they couldn't beat the person on the opposite side. Feng Hai started to have a headache. This strange fire was really difficult to deal with. And the person opposite obviously also had a strange fire. Now this strange fire was like cabbage. Everywhere? Then why didn't he meet him? Nan Dong Yu did not withdraw the strange fire, but just let it burn, and then took action again to deal with the two of them at the same time. Jia on the other side was facing a golden elixir monk who knew how to control beasts. His own strength was not very high, but he controlled a wide variety of monsters, killing one after another, which annoyed her. And now she doesn't dare to use reincarnation easily because she hasn't figured out what that door is yet. She was afraid that something uncontrollable would happen. But this time, the golden elixir monk actually released a group of blood bats and a group of flying scorpions. The tails of the group of scorpions even glowed under the sunlight. But there was a black spot on the spikes, which looked extremely poisonous. Flying scorpions and blood bats rushed towards Jia in groups. The monks not far from her were startled and stayed away from them. Jia took a serious look and then mobilized the chaos sky fire. She stepped forward and countless red lotus flowers suddenly rose under her feet and gradually spread to other places. And that lotus flower was integrated into the chaotic sky fire. And as soon as it came into contact with the flying scorpions and bats, it completely burned them. Jia took another step forward, and more and more lotus flowers rose from her feet. Together with the red lotus on her forehead and her focused look, she felt as if she had seen a real fairy. Even the opponent, the golden core cultivator, was stunned. He had never seen any move that was so good looking. But as Ji Yao stepped forward a certain distance, the flying scorpion and the blood bat had been completely destroyed. The golden elixir cultivator panicked. His own strength was at the early stage of the golden elixir. He was definitely not as good as the sword cultivator. He relied on these monsters. But now all his monsters have been destroyed by the other party. A bad premonition came over him. And the golden elixir monk panicked and subconsciously wanted to retreat. Shiyo also saw that his monsters must have been exhausted, and without giving him any time to breathe, she directly slashed out with a 10 power thunder attribute swordsmanship. This sword directly kills the opponent instantly. Chapter 620 Family War 8 Shiyo nodded with satisfaction in her heart, because she had understood the artistic conception of swordsmanship in advance, and it hardly took much time for ordinary monks of the same level as herself. But this was the first time she met a monk who could control beasts. In the Northern Territory, there is no beast controlling sect. So there are very few monks in this field. However, there is a beast controlling sect in the southern territory. Most of the monks who learn to control beasts are not very strong themselves. Without the help of monster beasts, they may not even be able to defeat ordinary magic cultivators, let alone sword cultivators. After solving one of them, Jiyu joined a new battle situation again, and together with a golden elixir monk on her side, she met another chi family's golden elixir peak. At this time, Luo Chuan and Shang Wan Nanxian were extremely fierce, and they had already killed a nascent soul cultivator. The cultivation level of the nascent soul monks, who came this time was not very low. So the fight wasted a little time, because there are more high-level monks in the Yi family. There are also several early Yuanyings, who are surrounding a peak Yuanying. The same is true in the God Transformation stage. Previously, Nandong Yu had fought one against three with the purpose of allowing several early-stage God Transformation monks to jointly fight against a peak God Transformation monk. Otherwise, there will be a big gap in cultivation, and you may suffer a loss if you fight alone. And now Xia Chiyue was facing an early Jin Den monk. At this time, she had already advanced to the peak of foundation building in the secret realm of the Five Seas, and was only a little short of being able to successfully form a core, and her body refining skills have already broken through the late stage of Jin Dan and she can still deal with an early stage Jean Dan. The Golden Elixir Monk didn't expect Xia Chiyue to be so swollen in the late stage of foundation building, and he dared to challenge him alone. Little girl, why are you seeking death? Why don't you follow me? 
The Jin Den monk was moved when he saw Xia Qiyue's beauty. The first look of this woman made him have a desire to conquer. And he wanted to see her, he looked fascinated by himself. Xia Qiyue glanced at him steadily, with a murderous intent flashing in her eyes. No matter in the past life or in this life, everyone who had teased her. All dead? The golden elixir monk noticed the murderous intention and didn't take it seriously at all. Instead, he burst out laughing. It is for people like this who don't know the heights of the world to become interesting only after they recognize the reality. His nail magic weapon is a blue umbrella. And magic weapons of this shape are very uncommon. He made a gentle stroke towards Xia Qiyue. And suddenly several water arrows flashed from the tip of the umbrella and attacked her. At the same time, he threw out a spiritual tree vine, trying to control Xia Qiyue, and then hugged her into his arms. Although Xia Qiyue currently does not have a natal magic weapon, the magic weapon she uses is an innate spiritual treasure. Although the innate spirit treasure consumes a lot of spiritual power, she has endless spiritual spring water and can instantly restore her energy infinitely. So she doesn't have to worry about this problem at all. She just glanced at the menacing water arrows and struck them with a sword. Suddenly, a red light flashed and swallowed up the water arrow in an instant. As soon as the tree vine came close, Siachiyu had grabbed it and squeezed it hard. Crack! The pinched part of the tree vine shattered directly. The golden elixir monk was shocked. Water should obviously defeat fire. So why could the opponent's fire attribute be able to swallow his water arrows? But before he had time to think clearly, the red light was already heading towards him. He immediately opened the umbrella, and all the red light was blocked out. He didn't put away his umbrella until the red light completely dissipated. This is a magic weapon that he specially designed to be able to combine offense and defense. Chapter 621 Family War 9 Siachiyue had just glanced at it lightly, and then quickly swung her sword several times in succession. Then she made a gesture, and a small transparent blister suddenly appeared on her fingertips. She threw it forward, and the bubble suddenly exploded when it got close to the Golden Elixir Monk. The Golden Elixir Monk was also fighting back against Siachiyue at this time. When he noticed the attack of blisters, he immediately held the umbrella over his head. But this time, the water droplets turned into bubbles were actually corrosive. And as soon as they came into contact with his umbrella, it began to melt. The Golden Elixir Monk was startled and hurried away, his heart bleeding with pain. And Siachiyue took advantage of him being in a hurry, ran behind him, and stabbed his sword into his dantian. The golden elixir monk noticed something was wrong and was about to avoid it, but was suddenly frozen. It was Siachiyue who put a fixing charm on him. This sword directly destroyed his dantian. Siachiyue pulled out the sword and then slashed towards his neck, killing him directly. And Siachiyue didn't look at him again. Turn around and join the new battle. In the Yi family's courtyard, countless low-level disciples had fallen. Most of them were incoming enemies. But several families standing on the Yi family's side also suffered casualties. This is a training. Only monks who have experienced life and death can go far in the future. But after all, these casualties will still be uncomfortable. These are soldiers fighting for their families. Yi Jiro's current strength has improved a lot compared to before. There is really a pervert like Shichi standing in front of her. She can't do anything without working hard. Seeing people around her die one after another, Yi Jiro's eyes turned red. These were her family members. Even with the blessing of formations, this ending cannot be avoided. At this time, there were eyes everywhere in the sky above the Yi family. Many middle-level families or small families were watching all this nervously. And some were even eyeliners from other domains. Everyone wants to know what kind of pattern the Northern Territory will eventually form. Chi Chung was crying while fighting at this time. He suffered heavy casualties on his side. Luo Chuan and Shang Wan Nan Xian were truly worthy of being called the geniuses of the Northern Territory. The two of them had already eliminated the four nascent soul cultivators. And now they were almost unable to resist. All his hopes now rest on Feng Hai. As long as the cultivator of the transformation of gods wins, it will be useless no matter how powerful the others are. Unfortunately, his good wishes are now unlikely to come true. At this time, Jian Song had already dealt with a god transformation monk. And Nan Gong Yu had once again dealt with a god transformation monk. Opposite him was only the embarrassed Feng Hai. Qin Chen and Ji Shuzi also teamed up to kill a god transformation monk. This was because Ji Shuzi was good at fortune telling but not good at fighting. Otherwise, he would have been solved long ago. Feng Hai's eyes were blood red at this time. And he was going crazy. His hair had completely fallen down and a large section had been chopped off. He really didn't expect that this person would be so difficult to deal with. And he was no match for him. 
and the nine netherworld fire and lotus had been making trouble nearby. Which really made him panic. At this time, he finally knew who the other party was. The only one who could advance to the peak of divine transformation at the age of more than 200 years was the genius of the central region. Nandong Yu. But he always thought that this so-called genius was just something that was touted and relied on the accumulation of various spiritual things from heaven and earth. He didn't expect that this time he was actually blind. And when did the Nandong family have contact with the Yi family? Chapter 6 22 Family War 10 Nandong Yu moved forward again. And suddenly three space cracks appeared around Feng Hai at the same time. Moreover, these three cracks will move and chase Feng Hai. Feng Hai was shocked. And he didn't care about his heartache at the moment. He released all his resentment and surrounded Nandong Yu. The purpose is simple. Only by preventing him from controlling space can he have a chance to avoid the space cracks. After all, the bloody lesson just now was right in front of him. And now, he didn't dare to tear apart the space and run at will, for fear of falling into Nandong Yu's trap. Therefore, he could only keep flashing to avoid the pursuit of space cracks. At the same time, he struck Nandong Yu with sword after sword, causing him trouble. However, all attacks were easily resolved by Nandong Yu. So far, he has not suffered any injuries, and even his cassock has no wrinkles. He, on the other hand, was jumping up and down like a madman. And those who didn't know thought it was three people surrounding him. Thinking of this, Feng Hai felt a little regretful. I shouldn't have taken this business. I originally thought that the Northern Territory was full of weaklings, and that I could easily complete the mission during this trip. But now that he was stuck, if he could escape, he couldn't do it. But as the fight continued, it became clear to him that he was seeking death. For a moment, he began to get entangled which was more important. Face or life? There are many monks in the southern territory who can't stand it. They all know that they have accepted this task. If they let the deserters go, they might be laughed at when they return. Phone High's heart sank. Now he has no other choice but to fight. With this thought in mind, he took out a talisman, activated it, and threw it towards Nandong Yu. Suddenly, a huge impact hit, and even Ji Yao, who was far away, was affected by the impact. Everyone looked up and saw a huge beam of white light shining in midair, forming a huge vortex of air and heading towards Nandong Yu. Feng Hai smiled coldly. This talisman was an ancient high-level talisman he obtained in the secret realm. He once used it to deal with a god transformation monk and strangled him completely. The power of this talisman is unparalleled. And it is his life-saving thing. Now it is the last one left. Unexpectedly, it was used on Nandong Yu. But being able to destroy a peerless genius is a waste of money. He seemed to have seen the scene of Nandong Yu being strangled. But Nandong Yu didn't panic at all. He didn't even hide. He stretched out his left hand and circled it, grabbing a handful of air. Suddenly, a huge space crack appeared in front of him, swallowing up all the power of the talisman. The talisman exploded as soon as it entered the space crack. Feng Hai didn't expect such an ending. Not even a hair of the other party was hurt. He bit his lower lip, and his eyes were bloodshot. Why can the other party understand the attributes of space? The highest attribute ranking is life and death. Space ranks second, and time ranks third. The artistic conception of life and death is something in legend, and I have never heard of anyone understanding it. But the attributes of space are also difficult. And this is the first time he has heard that someone has understood it. He can even control space cracks at will, which is really scary. Once he confines the space, he can't escape at all. Feng Hai closed his eyes. He also understood at this time that the other party obviously deliberately did not kill him directly because their side was now confident of winning and he didn't care at all. Chapter 623 Family War 11 Nandong Yu is really not in a hurry. He already has an absolute advantage. The other party's god transformation monks only have five left. It is extremely difficult for everyone because they are all under siege. He lowered his head and glanced in the direction of Ji Yao and saw that she was fighting vigorously, using her sword intention and fists at the same time. And she had actually understood the artistic conception of the sword. In his opinion, Uncle Jian Song's young apprentice is a very down-to-earth person, and he won't be like other women who like to hang around him for no reason. He admired this kind of person who practiced seriously, so he wanted to teach her something. And her understanding is not bad. She is also very serious when studying, and she is very comfortable and relaxed when getting along with her. Nandong Yu glanced at Ji Yao indifferently, then put his gaze away and struck Feng Hai with a sword. This sword contained 10% of his power. Now he wanted to end the battle. 
if it lasts longer, she may be injured due to lack of spiritual power. Fong Hai's heart skipped a beat, and an ominous premonition appeared. He hurriedly took out all the defensive magic weapons, and threw out all the talismans at the same time, trying to offset the power of the sword. Unfortunately, the power of this sword was too different from before, and it swept away with a devastating force. Fong Hai felt that death was approaching, and at this time, he could not care less about losing face and planned to run away. But the surrounding space has long been imprisoned by Nangong Yu. He has no way to tear the space apart and can only fly in the air. But Nangong Yu's sword followed him closely, and when it was about to get close to him, it suddenly accelerated and struck him hard. Poof! Fong Hai was hit by the sword light and fell straight to the ground. But the power of that sword had not disappeared, and it eventually leveled a mountain range in the distance to the ground. A crack was cut out in the entire space it passed, and then it slowly closed. Countless consciousnesses above Yejiao were injured by this sword, and they all took it back, never daring to explore the news again. This sword has already caused damage to their souls, and it will take some time for them to recover. Fong Hai was hit to the ground, and a hole was made in the ground. He fell in the hole and kept vomiting blood. His soul was already unconscious. This sword actually attacked with his soul. Now both his body and soul have been severely damaged. Such a big movement also alarmed everyone who was fighting. Chi Chung did not expect that the person who fell down would be Feng Hai. Chi Chung panicked. If even Feng Hai was defeated, what would he do? He began to regret in his heart. He shouldn't have been so impulsive and advanced his plan for a spiritual stone mine. The other family heads regretted it even more. When they looked around, they saw that most of the people on their side had fallen down, and everyone was starting to get tired, especially the head of the Jean family. His intestines were filled with regret at this moment. If he had stood by the Yi family this time, this situation would not have happened. The Northern Territory will be the domain of their five major families. When Nangong Yu saw Feng Hai falling into the pit, he also fell down, looking at Feng Hai whose life was rapidly draining away. He threw a bunch of strange fire in with a flick of his fingertips. His strange fire is not even recorded on the rankings, and even he doesn't know its name. But the power is not small at all. Sure enough, the strange fire swallowed Feng Hai directly and in just a few breaths, it completely dissipated in the air, leaving no ashes behind. Yuaning had no chance to escape, and Fong Hai completely fell. Chapter 624 Family War 12 When Chi Chung saw Fong Hai's death, he couldn't accept it for a while, and was distracted. Yi Fong, who was fighting Chi Chung, saw this and slapped Chi Chung with his palm, and slashed at Chi Chung with his sword at the same time. Chi Chung dodged the palm, but was still injured by the sword light. His entire cassock was torn with a large gash, and his body was left with a scar of flesh and blood. Chi Chung spat out a mouthful of blood and backed away quickly. He regretted it and wanted to escape. Yi Feng had also dealt with him countless times and knew very well who he was, and could see his plan at a glance. He dodged a few times and chased Chi Chung. How could a seriously injured Chi Chung compare to Yi Feng who was going all out? Yi Feng quickly caught up with Chi Chung and slapped him with several palms one after another. Poof! Chi Chung fell forward violently. His strength was already weaker than Yi Feng's. And now he was at the end of his strength. When Yi Feng thought that this man almost destroyed his home, murderous intent rose in his heart. If everyone hadn't come to help, the entire Yi family might have been destroyed this time. With a sharp look, he struck with his sword again, and at the same time took out an attack magic weapon. A soul hunting shuttle. This thing mainly attacks the souls of monks and is very effective against the extremely fragile Chichen. Night Breeze activated the Soul Hunting Shuttle and threw it towards Chi Chung, who fell. The Soul Hunting Shuttle immediately chased after him and finally plunged straight into Chi Cheng's head. Bang! Chi Chung hit the ground hard. His eyes widened and blood flowed from the corners of his mouth, and his soul has been destroyed by the Soul Hunting Shuttle, and the instigator of this family war has just died. When the head of the Jean family saw that Chi Chung had fallen, he panicked and said hurriedly, Brother Yi, our families have been friends for thousands of years. This is all a misunderstanding. I also fell into Chi Cheng's trap. If he knew it would end like this, he would never betray the Yi family no matter what. All the beautiful ideas at the beginning were shattered, and now the Jin family is about to be destroyed in his hands. Yi Feng sneered when he heard this. At first, he thought that the Jin family would definitely side with the Yi family after the two families had been friends for such a long time. However, the facts slapped him hard in the face, in the face of interests, 
What does their friendship mean? Since he is a traitor, the Yi family will never let him go. Brother Yi, our Jin family is willing to respect the Yi family and pay tribute every year. We only ask Brother Yi to give our Jin family a way to survive. The head of the Jin family does not care about face at this time. As long as he can survive and keep the Jin family, nothing else matters. Yi Feng felt ridiculed in his heart. And just as he was about to speak, the head of the Si family also spoke. Head of the Yi family, our Si family is also willing to respect the Yi family. The head of the Si family shouted at the top of his voice while fighting. He still has a good life. And he doesn't want to die yet. The head of the Lin family saw the two people changing their faces. And he also had this idea in his mind. After all, nothing is better than dying. As long as he lives, one day he can leave the Lin family and crush the Yi family under his feet again. But before he could speak, Yi Feng spoke first. Oh, why didn't you talk about our friendship when you wanted to destroy my Yi family? Yi Feng was so disappointed in the Jin family. If it were other families, he would have thought it was normal. But he didn't expect the Jin family to be like this. Today, none of you can escape. From now on, the Northern Territory will only be ruled by the four major families. Chapter 625 Family War 13 The head of the Jin family didn't expect Yi Feng to be merciless at all. He suddenly felt cruel and struck harder during the fight. The Si family and the Lin family also saw that the Yi family wanted to completely destroy them. If they wanted to survive, they could only fight hard and win a glimmer of hope. At this moment, everyone took out their trump cards, no longer held back, and fought hard. However, the number of high-level monks on the Yi family's side already had an advantage. And now their advantage was even more obvious. A few of them besieged an enemy. And Su, one enemy after another fell. At this time, Yi Feng also faced off against the head of the Jin family, beating him seriously and leaving him in an extremely embarrassed state. Feeling that he was about to die soon, the head of the Jin family looked desperate. This time, he could not turn over. But he hated Yi Feng for not showing any mercy and forcing him to die. He hated the Luo family. But he didn't expect that he would side with the Yi family, causing the failure of their operation. Since he only has one way to die, he will also make life difficult for others. A flash of madness flashed in the eyes of the head of the Jin family. And he actually chose to self-destruct. Seeing him gradually swelling, Yi Feng panicked. If he really blew himself up, then most of the disciples here would definitely be killed or injured. The self-destruction of the nascent soul cultivator is so powerful that it will level hundreds of kilometers around it. Just when the head of the Jin family was about to self-destruct, a flash of sword light flashed and split his whole body into two halves. Even Yuan Ying died before he had a chance to escape. Yi Feng was startled and turned around to see Nan Gong Yu who was sheathing his sword. His expression was as cold as ever. As if he was not the one who killed a nascent soul just now. Seeing that the head of the Jin family was no longer a threat, Nan Gong Yu returned to the air and went to deal with the god-transforming monks. The head of the Si family and the head of the Lin family swallowed nervously when they saw that the head of the Jin family was instantly killed by a sword and could not even self-destruct. When a monk chooses to self-destruct, his defense capabilities will be enhanced. Usually attacks are useless and cannot prevent self-destruction. Unexpectedly, the man just now was killed with one sword. They already had the idea of escape in their minds. They can no longer take care of these disciples. So they can run away first. Thinking of this, they retreated while fighting, planning to run away when they found the right opportunity. At this time, Jiyo had already begun to cooperate with Xia Chiyue. The two of them would use swords and fists teleport and flash. Occasionally, there would be a strange fire, which would make the golden elixir peak cultivators on the opposite side have big heads. He also didn't expect that these two monks were so far apart from him in cultivation. Yet they could fight so well. Jia felt that today's fight was very enjoyable. Because she was finally convinced that her spiritual power would be infinitely reborn. As long as it reaches a critical point, the black and white gas in her body will refill her with spiritual power. Siachiyu also had spiritual spring water, and the two of them fought passionately, as if they were not tired at all. Siachiyu hadn't had such a happy fight for a long time. It was really a happy thing to be able to be with Zio, and hand over his back to her without any doubt. Her Suzaku was also spitting fire at the Golden Core Cultivator from time to time. Coupled with the Nine Netherworld Fire and Chaos Sky Fire, his hair was burnt a little. The Golden Elixir Monk felt that he was being teased, and felt depressed in his heart. He mobilized the ten powers in his body and raised countless earth thorns under the two people's feet. Those soil thorns rose infinitely, 
leaving no gaps. And stabbed towards Jiyo and the others. Chapter 626 Family War 14 At the same time, he held a knife and slashed at Jiyo. In his opinion, he had to deal with the one with a higher level of cultivation first. And the remaining one would be easy. Jiyo felt the opponent's full blow. And her heart sank. After all, the opponent was at the peak of the golden core. And his cultivation level was too different from her own. If it were just an ordinary move, it would probably be useless. Thinking like this, she gathered all her spiritual power again and slashed out with a reincarnation. As soon as reincarnation appeared, a sense of destructive oppression suddenly rushed towards the golden elixir monk. At the same time, reincarnation directly swallowed up his attack, leaving no trace behind. And the rest attacked him. The monk was startled and quickly wanted to hide away. But reincarnation came fiercely and swallowed him up quickly. Ah! As soon as the golden elixir peak cultivator was devoured, he began to roar in pain, shocking everyone near him to tremble. The black and white gas began to melt the monk's body. Gradually, his voice became smaller and smaller until he finally disappeared completely. As soon as his voice disappeared, a black door appeared again, sucked the monk's soul away, and then disappeared. This time, everyone saw the black door and looked at Ji in surprise. Even Jin Song and the others were a little surprised and didn't understand what kind of attack method this was. Nan Gong Yu glanced at the disappearing door indifferently. He counted on his fingers and calculated that the space node that the door led to was actually the Nine Nether Hell. No wonder the Yin energy of H. L leaked out just now. Xiao looked at the black door. It was clear that there was a lot of Yin energy inside. But strangely, she did not feel uncomfortable. The black and white gas in her body even seemed to be a bit pleasant. And even the speed of rotation was faster. Quite a few. Nine hells. Lord Jiu Ming was studying what happened today at the Boundary Monument. When suddenly a soul suddenly appeared in front of him. His reflexes almost sent him away. Taking a closer look, he discovered that it was the soul of another monk. Moreover, this soul has become dull and stupid. And its memory has obviously completely disappeared. Even Ming Pasup has been omitted. Venerable Jiu Ming's heart sank. It seemed that something had happened now. And even the rules of heaven had changed. I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Now, he just wants to understand why monks can be reincarnated after death. The battle in Yejia is coming to an end. A large number of monks have died. And now there are only a few high-level enemies left. The high-level monks in the Yi family all adopted siege tactics and tried to end it as soon as possible so that the lower-level disciples could suffer less losses. Soon, the god transformation monks were completely eliminated. The heads of the Si family and the Lin family couldn't bear the pressure anymore. So they turned around and fled. Jiyo had stopped fighting at this time and stretched out her right hand to draw in the air. Luo Chuan and Shang Wan Nan Xin both chased after him. When the heads of the Si family and the Lin family noticed the two men chasing after them, they felt anxious and mobilized all their spiritual energy to run away. However, when the two of them were about to leave the sky above Yejia, they suddenly hit something and were bounced back. When they looked up, they saw that a fifth grade formation appeared in the sky and stopped them. In just a short period of time, the two of them were caught up by Luo Chuan. And they, who were already injured, were finally dealt with. Chapter 627 Family War in All the God Transformation Monks Have Fallen And now even several family heads have fallen. So the fighting has naturally stopped. Everyone on the Qi family's side was a little confused. They originally came to destroy the Yi family in a fierce manner. But why did it end like this? Now that the family is also destroyed, what are they going to do? All the disciples who voluntarily surrendered will have their cultivation level revoked and one life left. Those who insist on not surrendering will be killed without mercy. Yi Feng used enough spiritual power to say to the disciples below. These disciples can only have these two endings. If the loser is a member of his Yi family, the ending will be the same. Soon, those disciples all threw down their magic weapons in despair. They were originally foundation-building monks and chi-training monks. They did not play much role in this battle. But they could not avoid this fate. Seeing that these disciples were so understanding, Yi Feng nodded and had people kill them one by one and throw them out of the city. Leaving them alive is already considered a mercy. As for whether they live or die afterwards, it has nothing to do with them. Jia looked at the corpses scattered everywhere on the ground. Many of them from their side. She felt very sad in her heart. Although she knew that these life and death experiences were essential for the growth of a monk, she still felt uncomfortable in her heart. Before the battle began, they were still alive. 
fortunately. This time, none of the high-level monks died. At most, they were injured. After all, they have the advantage in numbers. If someone else dies, it will be unjustifiable. All disciples, listen to the order. You will accept all the gains from this battle. The Yi family will not interfere. At the same time, someone will come to tally everyone's results later to calculate points and exchange them for supplies. Yi Feng, after speaking here, he paused, endured the discomfort in his heart, and continued to speak. As for the fallen disciple, the Yi family will do a good job in dealing with the aftermath, and his family will be taken care of by the Yi family. Many of these disciples are collateral disciples, and everyone's life is not easy. The future power of the family had fallen for the Yi family, so they had to take responsibility no matter what. Disciples from the four families have died, and everyone is not in high spirits. The treatment must be the same for the four major families. But no one was happy because their relatives and friends left forever like this. After everyone has plundered the supplies here, bury these disciples properly. Yi Feng ordered the housekeeper and invited all the high-level monks into Ye's house. Shi Yao, Xia Chiyue and Luo Chili did not follow, but stayed outside to help deal with these fallen disciples. During this battle, the area around Ye's house was in a mess, and many houses were razed to the ground. However, the Yi family had already evacuated the surrounding people, so no innocent people were harmed. The Yi family had its own defensive formations, and coupled with the formations deployed by Jia later, there was no damage. However, there were also many corpses in the Yi family compound. Yi Jiro also came to Jiu's side. At this time, there were a lot of blood on her face, including her own, her enemies, and even the Yi families. Her eyes were red, but her expression was much more determined, and her whole person seemed to have grown up suddenly. Sister 16. Jia hugged Yi Jiro gently. The price of growth is always so cruel. Yi Jiro hugged Jiu tightly, and the scene of Yi family disciples dying in front of her flashed before her eyes. But she was helpless. She wants to practice hard, and she wants to protect the people around her. Chapter 628 Chi Lanchi. It wasn't until Yi Jiro completely calmed down that she let go of Jiu. Jia looked at Sister 16, who seemed to have matured and sighed in her heart. Sister 16 has been living under the protection of her family since she was a child. Even if she joins the Qingwu sect, she is still protected by many elders of the Yi family. This growth is also a good thing for her. After all, as her cultivation grows, she is destined to practice everywhere. Let's go help! Jia squeezed Yi Jiro's hand and took her to deal with the aftermath. Xia Chiyua looked at the corpses on the ground and was very touched. This reminded her of her previous life. At that time, the brothers and sisters in their organization also treated each other as family members. They are willing to lay down their lives for each other. But she didn't expect that in the end. When she was abandoned by the organization, she would not be able to see them. At that time, she understood that not only had the organization abandoned her, but her brothers and sisters had also abandoned her. And the reason is for the bead in the hidden space. She looked up at Gio, who was dealing with the aftermath, smiled slightly, and hoped that someone would never abandon her in this life. She has regarded Gio as her own relative and her biological sister. They will all walk on this immortal path for a long time. Luo Chioli's eyes were slightly red. And she felt very uncomfortable looking at the Luo family disciples on the ground. The future of the Luo family is the result of the hard work of the disciples. Ten hours later, the large force that went to attack the Qi family's lair also came back. After they took over, they also destroyed the cultivation of those disciples and drove them away. Then he left someone to guard him and hurried back. Jiyo and the others finally cleaned up the outside completely and returned to Ye's house together. Not long after she entered, someone came looking for her. Miss 17. When we went to Chi's house, we met a woman who wanted to run away. After we caught her, she said that she was your junior sister from the same sect and we couldn't touch her. So, we specially brought two of them back and we plan to let you handle it. A late-stage foundation establishment disciple looked at Jiyu with admiration. He had heard about it when he came back just now. Miss Seventeen killed seven golden core cultivators by herself. The Jean Dan monk in his thirties was already an extremely talented person. But he didn't expect to be so powerful in combat. Today Ji is already the idol of the younger generation of the Yi family. Then let me go and have a look. Ji frowned when she heard this. She had already guessed who it would be. Xia Chiyue and Luo Chioli saw that her expression was not good. So they looked at each other and followed her. Xi came to the front yard and saw Chi Lanchi, who was bound by the immortal rope. 
At this time, her face was crazy, her hair was disheveled, and there were blood stains everywhere on her robe. Appearance. Chi Lanchi heard the footsteps and suddenly looked up at Ji Yao. Seeing her unharmed appearance, Chi Lanchi was filled with hatred. Obviously, the person who got this kind of fate should be that bitch Yi Zio. It was obvious that their Chi family was going to be prosperous from now on. But now they ended up with a broken family. She had disliked Yi Zio since she was a child. She was obviously a celestial spiritual root. But instead of becoming a cultivator, she came to the Wan Jin sect to find a sense of existence. Obviously, everyone is a disciple of the eight major families. But Yi Zio is independent and does not interact with people from the sect at all. She has been in her shadow since she was a child, ranking first in the outer sect competition, and building her foundation in her teens to understand the meaning of the sword. Chapter 629 Abandoned Under her cover, no one could see her at all. She is also the daughter of the head of a big family, and she looks like a loser compared to her. Even if he worshipped his master, he could not compare with her, and he was even warned by his master not to provoke her. In the end, he was imprisoned for three years for a trivial matter. He obviously didn't cause any harm to Yi Jiyo. So why should he be imprisoned? Jia felt helpless when she saw Chi Lanchi staring at her with a gloomy face. He has never provoked her. But she always dislikes him and is full of hostility towards him for no reason. Yi Jia, ask them to let me go! Chi Lanchi sneered and said to Jia. Seeing her like this, Jia raised her eyebrows in surprise. Could it be that Chi Lanchi hadn't figured out her situation yet? Seeing Jia not speaking, Chi Lanchi became anxious. She didn't want to be scrapped like the disciples of the Chi family. She still had a bright future. I am a true disciple of Wan Jin sect. You have no right to deal with me. Chi Lanchi tried his best to look confident and puffed out his chest. The four major sects have already acquiesced in this family war. Otherwise, why do you think that no sects intervened in such a big thing? Chi Yu just looked at her indifferently. The winner is the king and the loser is always like this. Impossible. My master will never give up on me. If you hurt me, he will definitely ask you to avenge me. Chi Lanchi panicked. If the sect didn't intervene, what would she do? Oh, you know very well that your master would never offend my master for you. Jia shook her head. When Chi Lanchi was put into confinement, her master came to apologize. Jia could tell at that time that the senior would not offend the master for Chi Lanchi. What's more, that senior had several disciples, and Chi Lanchi was just one of them. What are you talking nonsense about? Chi Lanchi denied loudly, as if she possessed the truth, but she knew in her heart that her master really did not dare to offend Jian Song. All of this is just an excuse for myself. Uncle Yi, I was wrong. Can you please let me go? I will never provoke you in the future, and I will run far away. Seeing that the threat was useless, Chi Lanchi began to beg for mercy. She looked remorseful, tears streaming down her face, and she begged bitterly. But Jia looked at Chi Lanchi's appearance. But her heart was not touched at all. If the other person always looked so strong-willed, she would still look up to him. Moreover, if the Yi family loses this time, she will never let herself go. I am no longer the person who doesn't understand anything and is always soft-hearted. She must be responsible for herself, the Yi family, and her dead disciples. Let's do it! Jia glanced at Chi Lanchi lightly and then ordered the disciples on the side. Yes! Several disciples agreed and took action. They feel extremely sad when they think of their fallen relatives and friends. It is these people who have harmed them and they must pay the price. Ah! Yi Jia! You bitch! How dare you do it! I curse you! Curse you not to survive tomorrow! Curse you to never make any progress in your cultivation! Ah! Chi Lanchi kept cursing. And in the end, like a rag, he was throw it on the ground. She hugged her painful lower abdomen tightly and rolled on the ground. Her dantion was destroyed. Her cultivation was gone. And her future was gone. Chapter 630 Collapse She had just looked at her indifferently. But what came to her mind was the corpse of the disciple she saw during the aftermath. Siachi Yue was originally worried that Jia would be soft-hearted. But seeing her looking so calm, she felt a little sad instead. She should be carefree. Innocent and cute. Everyone is growing. Throw her out of the city. Chi Yu ordered several disciples, then turned and left. Xia Chi Yue and Luo Chioli looked at each other, with a flash of worry in their eyes, and followed them. You did the right thing. Xia Chi Yue gently rubbed Ji Yu's head, fearing that she would blame herself for being too cruel. I just feel sorry for the fallen disciple. 
Shi Yu's eyebrows were downcast, and her whole body exuded an aura of grief. Those people all had their own relatives, and she didn't dare to think about how the living people would accept this reality. Xia Chi Yue paused her hands and sighed in her heart, but didn't say anything else. At the very least, it was enough that the people she cared about were still alive. Chi Lan Chi was thrown outside the city gate and fell to the ground with his eyes empty. From then on, she was a useless person. But at this time, Li Yanran, who had not been seen for a long time, suddenly appeared. She had been paying attention to the outcome of this battle. She originally wanted to take the opportunity to increase her presence and gain some benefits. But she was a little late. But at this time, she was very lucky. Fortunately, she didn't catch up. Otherwise, she would be the one who was abolished now. She came to Chi Lanchi's side and looked at her condescendingly, with a smile on her face. Unexpectedly, the other party would also have this day. Chi Lanchi noticed someone approaching, looked up hard, and saw Li Yanran. Yanran! Hurry up! Take me out of here! Chi Lanchi stretched out her hand to grab the hem of Li Yanran's skirt. Feeling relieved, he was saved. Take you away? Where to go? Li Yanran suppressed her smile and asked seriously. Go! Chi Lanchi was stunned. She didn't know where else to go now. Yen Ran, take me to see my Dantian first. And we'll talk about the rest later. Chi Lanchi was still lucky. Maybe she could be saved now. Huh? Chi Lanchi, you are as innocent as ever. Li Yen Ran pulled the hem of her skirt out of her hands and looked at her with a mocking look on her lips. Does this person really think she is still the eldest lady of the Chi family? Do you still want to hold her back? What do you mean? Chi Lanchi stretched out his hand in disbelief and pointed at Li Yanran tremblingly. You are already a waste. And you still expect me to help you? Li Yanran curled her lips. Now she has no use value to him. If he had known that she was so useless, he should have followed Yi Jia all the time. There is no telling how well he is doing now. Chi Lanchi thought of Li Yanran, who used to follow him like a dog and do whatever he said. Unexpectedly, he turned against her now and refused to recognize anyone. I had given her a lot of things. Give me back everything I gave you. Chi Lanchi grabbed her leg angrily. Li Yanran hurriedly backed away and looked at Chi Lanchi with a look of disgust. Those rags of yours are just like sending away beggars. How dare you go back? Li Yanran sneered. Really shameless. You? You? Chi Lanchi's chest heaved with anger. And the wound that was already bleeding was now bleeding faster. Chapter 631 Chi Lanchi's Death TSK! 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 It's really pitiful! You used to look down on me! A mortal princess! But you didn't expect that you would end up like this! Li Yanran said and laughed happily. And she felt extremely happy at this time. Chi Lanchi's eyes were red and bloodshot. She stared at Li Yanran. She shouldn't have kept this dog. She should have dealt with her a long time ago. Li Yanran looked at Chi Lanchi's appearance. Feeling happy but also a little scared. It was actually the other party's eyes that were a little scary. Since you are in so much pain, I will help you out. Li Yanran couldn't stand the look in her eyes. So she took out her spiritual sword and stabbed Chi Lanchi with her sword. Chi Lanchi was startled and tried to dodge but was unable to do anything. In the end, he was stabbed through the heart by a sword. She stared at the sky with her eyes wide open. And until her death, she did not understand why she, the daughter of the head of the Chi family, ended up like this. Li Yanran just looked at Chi Lanchi until her breath gradually disappeared and she completely fell. Then she took out the spiritual sword, took out the talisman and cleaned the spiritual sword in disgust. She squatted down and searched Chi Lanchi's body, but found nothing in the end. She was angry that her trip was in vain. Humph! Li Yanran kicked Chi Lanchi's body hard, and she became angry when she remembered how Chi Lanchi had cursed her. In the end, she left without even disposing of Chi Lanchi's body. On her, he was not willing to waste even one flame talisman. Now, she is looking for a new supporter. Shi Yao, who was at Ye's house, was silent for a moment when she heard the news of Chi Lanchi's death reported by her disciples. She had already guessed this outcome. After all, Chi Lanchi had offended many people based on her status. Now that she is in despair, how can others let her go? 17. Tonight is our celebration banquet. Let's thank them properly then. Yi Feng came to Zhi Yao's yard and saw the three girls learning formations together. He was very pleased that no matter how talented his 17 was, he always worked so hard. Okay, Dad. Zhi Yao nodded and agreed with a smile. This time I really want to thank all the seniors who came to help. Well, 
We have prepared some thank you gifts this time to ask for your opinion. Yi Feng smiled. And it was thanks to Shi Chi that this time it went so smoothly. Many people came here because of Chi Chi's reputation. Shi Ya nodded when she heard this. Stood up. And followed Yi Feng to her mother's yard. Mother! Ji Ya walked straight to Zhao Qian Yu. And there were several jade boxes on the table. 17. My parents want to ask for your consent. Zhao Qian Yu said and opened a jade box with a pill inside. This is the longevity elixir that my mother made using the elixir recipe you gave me before. And the main ingredient is the immortal grass you brought home before. Zhao Qian Yu has been studying the elixir recipe since she got it. And she didn't expect it to be the same. It really made her successful. Now this life-extending pill can extend your life for a thousand years. Ji Ya's eyes lit up when she heard this. After she obtained the alchemy technique from Yi Han Wei before, she gave one copy to her mother and Chi Yue respectively. Unexpectedly, it will bear fruit now. Mother, since 17 is given to you, then these belong to the Yi family, and 17 also belongs to the Yi family. Ji Yo hugged her mother's arm and looked at her with admiration. Chapter 6 32 Celebration Banquet You? Zhao Qian Yu gently tapped Jiyo's forehead, feeling full of pride and heartache at the same time. This girl has never been a selfish person. Girls Chi Chi and Chioli, we have prepared other things. You can hand them over to them when the time comes. They are both good children, as long as they are good friends of us. Chi Chi both parents will like them. Zhao Qian Yu said softly, following Jiyo's hair. Her heart felt tender. Okay. Jiyo smiled and nodded. These are the wishes of her parents. Yi Feng stood aside and looked at their mother and daughter. Her heart filled with happiness. Fortunately, he protected Ye Jia and his own happiness. At night, the entire Ye Jia was in a lively mood. Many low-level disciples were drinking and eating in the Yi family's courtyard, noisily exchanging cups and cups with great joy. The high-ranking monks were all in the banquet hall. Seniors and fellow Taoists, the Yi family was able to escape disaster this time only because of everyone's help. We the Yi family, have recorded this sentiment. If you need it in the future, just give us your order. Night Breeze picked up the wine glass, looking at everyone gratefully. This cup, on behalf of the entire Yi family, I would like to toast everyone. Yi Feng pushed forward gently, then raised his head and drank the whole cup. Everyone smiled slightly and drank a drink. Next, don't be polite. Everyone, eat and drink well. We won't go home until we're drunk. Yi Feng rarely had this kind of time to let himself go. And he felt a little excited for a while. As soon as he finished speaking, he sat down by himself. And everyone began to communicate in twos and threes. Zhao Qian Yu and Lu Huan Yu sat together affectionately. After this battle, their relationship became even better. When Zhao Qian Yu saw Lu Huan Yu bringing people to help, let alone how touched she was, Zhi Yao was surrounded by her acquaintances, including Chi Yue, Luo Chioli, Luo Chuan. Nandong Che, Nandong Yu, and Shang Wan Nanxian. Together, these young people also had something to say. Nandong Che held his head with one hand and looked at Ji Yao, who was sipping wine. A little funny. This spirit wine is relatively strong, and its power cannot be reduced. This girl really dares to drink it. It will give her a headache tomorrow if she doesn't see it. But he really didn't expect that this girl would meet his eldest brother. My mother also likes her so much. And even the uncle of the family is very optimistic about her. Chiyo was whispering to Chiyue while sipping the wine. The wine tasted very hot. And she had to open her mouth and stick out her tongue after taking a sip. She also reached out to fan herself. As if this would keep the wine away. Spicy. Chi Chi drank the wine calmly. This level of alcohol was nothing to her. But looking at Chi Yao's little movements. She still couldn't help but raise the corners of her mouth. Luo Chuan frowned as he looked on. Junior sister. This wine is too strong. Drink less. Luo Chuan couldn't help but remind him. It seems that he will have to make hangover soup again tomorrow morning. Otherwise, Junior's sister will suffer. I'll just drink a little bit. Shi Yu smiled, stretched out her left hand to make a gesture, and looked at Luo Chuan coquettishly. Seeing this, Luo Chuan instantly softened his heart, stretched out his hand to touch her head, and said helplessly, You can only drink so much. Shi Yu nodded obediently. This happy atmosphere made her want to drink. It feels so happy to have so many relatives and friends gathered together. This was something she had never experienced in her previous life. She wanted to cherish this rare and beautiful time. Chapter 6 33 Drink This Nandong Yu was drinking quietly. But seeing Ji Yao wanting to drink so much, 
he directly took out a bottle of spiritual wine from the storage ring, sent it over with spiritual power, and placed it in front of her. Drink this. He didn't explain. Just looked at her lightly. His move made several people look at him in unison. Nandong Che was really surprised. He thought his mother was joking before. After all, he knew his eldest brother's character best. But now this development made him a little confused. Luo Chuan looked at Nandong Yu defensively. This man was so attentive for no reason. Could it be that he fell in love with his junior sister? Our little cabbage cannot be taken away by these random people. It seemed that I wanted to have a good chat with my junior sister some other time. And I couldn't let her be deceived. From now on, junior sister's Taoist companion must be seen by him and master together. After all, junior sister is so simple. What if she is deceived? Xia Yua slightly raised her eyebrows and looked at Nandong Yu. She had seen this man before, but had not had any contact with him. However, this man has stunning appearance and amazing talent in cultivation. He is actually a rare and peerless genius. But no matter how talented he is, he is not worthy of his own jia. In this life, Nandong Yu did not save Xia Yue, And Xia Yue never had any thoughts about Nandong Yu. What's more, now she still thinks that Nandong Yu has thoughts about Ji Yao and has been silently examining him in her heart. Only Luo Chioli and Shang Wan Nanxian didn't react much. They didn't understand Nandong Yu or his way of getting along with Zia. Only Jia was the most generous. She was a little dazed after drinking. At this time, her face was red. She took the spirit wine and opened it. Suddenly, a sweet smell came. Jiu swallowed immediately. The smell was so good that she wanted to drink it all in one gulp. She looked back at Nandong Yu. Her eyes widened. With some unconscious coquettishness. Wanting to ask for Nandong Yu's consent. Nandong Yu nodded lightly. The wine tasted sweet and could not be transformed by spiritual power. But it would not leave any sequelae. When he woke up tomorrow morning, he would not have a headache. Moreover, this wine contains the spiritual things from heaven and earth that he added. And drinking it will be good for her cultivation. After getting permission, Chiyo picked up the spirit wine and poured a glass for Chiyue and Luo Chioli first. And then filled it for herself. She took a gentle sip. And a sweet taste hit her taste buds. Drink it well. Chi Yu's eyes lit up, and she took another sip. After two sips of wine, a strong spiritual power suddenly appeared in her body, which shocked Ji Yao. She absorbed it immediately, her eyes brightening as she looked at the wine in her hand. Chi Chi patted Ji Yao's head helplessly. This girl really looked like she had never seen the world. She and Luo Chioli also took a sip. Their eyes suddenly lit up, and then they took another sip. This wine is indeed very good. Brother, I want to drink too. Nandong Che curled his lips and looked at Nandong Yu. But Nandong Yu just glanced at him lightly and ignored him. Hey, if I didn't take you like this, I wouldn't be your wife. So why would you put more emphasis on sex than your younger brother? Nandong Che refused to accept it and yelled. Everyone around him looked at him. Lu Huanchiu had gritted her teeth and glared at Nandong Che. This little Che was always here to hinder him. Let's see how she deals with him when she goes back. Nandong Che felt his mother's gaze and shrank his neck. He made a mistake again. Chapter 634 It's over. Ha ha. Let's continue. Yi Feng smiled to liven up the atmosphere, but still looked in the direction of Ji Yao. He saw that Ji Yao was talking happily to Chi Yue and the others, and did not talk much to the men. Relieved? Zhao Qian was relieved. She had already known Nandong Yu's skills before, and it was impossible to like Chi Chi. Luo Chuan's feelings for Chi Chi were brother and sister. And the same was true for Nandong Che. Everyone is just good friends. Ji Shuzi looked at Ji Yao. Very curious in his heart. This girl has already passed her death. But he still can't figure out her future. And what surprised him the most was that when they first met, this girl had karma with other people. Now when I look at it, I can see that she is actually clean. Even with her parents. There is no cause and effect. This is really surprising. I have never heard of anyone being able to have no causal relationship with anyone. As long as a person is alive. He is destined to be entangled in cause and effect. Nowadays, he can't understand it more and more. However, in their line of work, one cannot reveal too much secrets. Otherwise one's life will be shortened. This is also the reason why their Tianji sex talents are withering. Once people know something, they can't help but share it. Everyone continued to communicate, and the night was spent in this harmonious and happy atmosphere. When Jia and the others returned to the courtyard, they saw that many disciples were drunk and staggering along the way and they were all sleeping in the courtyard. There are also people holding wine jars 
and talking nonsense there. Chi Yu was completely drunk. She was helped back to the room by Chi Chiyo and Luo Chioli and fell asleep. Chi Chiyo and Luo Chioli covered her with quilts and then went back to the guest room to rest. Early the next morning, Chi Yu woke up. She originally thought she would have a headache, but she was surprised to find that she was fine and didn't feel any discomfort at all. She stretched out contentedly and finally let go of the stone in her heart. She felt extremely relaxed at this moment. Chi Yu stood up, waved her hand, and a spiritual mirror appeared in front of her eyes. At this time, the person in the mirror was wearing a golden robe, with a smile on his face, and his whole body exuded an aura of happiness. Ji Yu spread her hair down, took out her spiritual comb, and combed it over and over again. Since she began to practice, she has rarely had the opportunity to comb her hair. Her life seems to be always busy, and she is facing life and death crises at any time. Now, she can finally feel her new life. After combing her hair, Ji Yu took out a spiritual hairpin and inserted it into her head. She nodded with satisfaction. With her current appearance, even she couldn't help but fall in love with herself. This face looks so good. Gio held her cheeks narcissistically, put away the spiritual mirror, and went out. As soon as they went out, they found that Chi Chio and Luo Chioli were already awake and sitting in the yard meditating. Gio gently came to the side and sat down, raised her head, and looked into the distance. There, the sun is about to rise. She looked back at the two of them and smiled slightly. This kind of comfortable life was really happy and made her feel very satisfied. Not long after, Shia watched the sunrise and Jian Song and others came. Girl, this matter is over. I will go back to Wan Jian sect as my master. Jian Song smiled. His disciples were all fine. Yao Yao, let's go and have fun with your master. Qin Chen also smiled and planned to play with Jian Song for a while before returning to the central region. Thank you, Master, Uncle. Ji Yu bowed politely and expressed her sincere thanks. Chapter 635 Farewell Why are you so polite? We are all family members. Let's go! Jian Song waved his hand indifferently and left in a flash. Qin Chen and the other two smiled and left. Ji Yu smiled helplessly. This master is really a bit cute. This movement also woke up Chi Chio and Luo Chioli and they stopped meditating. Chi Yue took out the spiritual porridge from the space and gave a bowl to Jiyo and the others. She still retains the habits of her previous life and likes to eat staple food. Fortunately, she has space as a natural fresh keeping room. The three of them finished breakfast together, and then someone came again. This time it was the Luo family who came. The head of the Luo family nodded with satisfaction when he saw that Luo Chioli and Ji Yao had such a good relationship. They were both good children of the Luo family. Yao girl. The Luoyang ancestor called Ji Yao with a smile. Ancestor. Uncle. Ji Yao stood up with a sweet smile. This time, thanks to the help of the Luo family, the Yi family was able to win. What happened here is over. We should go back. Remember to come and see the ancestor more in the future. You know? Luoyang ancestor looked at Ji Yao with some reluctance in his heart. Even though they had known each other for a short time. He really liked this little girl. I will definitely do it. Jiyun nodded seriously. Although she has been wandering away for a long time, she will go to Luo's house if she has the opportunity. Well, the thing I gave you before also contains our communication talisman. If you need anything, remember to come to us and don't carry it alone. The ancestor of Luoyang also watched Jiyun fighting yesterday. Like a desperate Sanyang. Okay. Jiyun nodded, her heart filled with their concern. The patriarch of Luoyang and the head of the Luo family saw that she had listened and left. It was time for them to go back with the disciples of the Luo family. Luo Chioli did not follow, but planned to stay and return to the Qingmu sect with Qiyue in a few days. Not long after, Nandong Che and the others also came to the yard. But they didn't come to say goodbye. They just came to have fun. Shang Wan Nanxian went straight to Qi Qi and sat down. It's time to form the elixir. When his apprentice came back, he was busy with the Yi family's affairs, and neither of them had time to communicate. It should be soon. Chi Chi nodded and replied. He was just a little bit lucky now to form a pill. Yeah. Shang Wan Nanxian nodded and stopped talking. Because of his martial arts, he was not very good at talking. But Nandong Che teased Chiyo as soon as he arrived. I mean, girl, what's that on your forehead? It's so ugly. Nandong Che curled his lips to avoid admitting that she was getting prettier. Ha ha. 
I haven't seen you for so long. And you are getting uglier. TSK. Tut. Tut. Xiao smacked her lips on purpose. This person's mouth was just annoying. Are you blind? Where am I ugly? Open your eyes and take a closer look. Nandong Che was furious when he heard this. Growing up, who didn't praise him for his good looks? This girl is just jealous of him. What's so good about you? Do you want to compare with senior brother Nandong? Ji rolled her eyes. Whenever she met Nandong Che, she couldn't help but want to roll her eyes at him. You? Nandong Che was a little discouraged. He was only a little bit worse than his elder brother. Seeing that he was speechless, Jia raised her head as if in victory and snorted coldly. Luo Chuan and Nandong Yu didn't say anything. They just sat aside and looked at the two of them. Okay. Okay. You're awesome. Nandong Che admitted defeat. This girl is now good at cultivation and has a much sharper tongue. It was better than when we first met her. At that time, this girl had almost no cultivation. Whatever she said was what she said. Chapter 636 Beast Tide When will you return to the sect? I have received news before that there may be a large-scale beast tide in the area bordering the Northwest Territory and the Northern Territory recently. All the major sects in the Northern Territory and the Western Territory should send their disciples there. Luo Chuan took advantage of this opportunity. Ji Yao and the others calmed down and asked, Animal tide? Ji Yao frowned upon hearing this. Once this beast tide breaks out, there will be countless casualties. The Northwest region is the base camp of demonic beasts. There are many high-level demonic cultivators there. Every few hundred years, a red tide of demonic beasts will be organized to attack the territory of human cultivators. This is done firstly to compete for territory and resources, and secondly to consume the internal monsters. The survival rules of survival of the fittest can make the experienced monsters live a better life. Although in Chiffon Continent, all major systems are allowed to exist, such as spiritual cultivation, demonic cultivation, ghost cultivation, demon cultivation, and Buddhist cultivation. We all live together in Chiffon Continent. But the materials needed for cultivation are different, and there is no distinction between good and bad. But everyone has their own territory. And if you cross the line, you may be hostile to other monks. Only places like the Sea of Chaotic Demons and Dungeons are where everyone coexists. Well, I'm afraid this order will come down soon. Now many small-scale beast tides have occurred one after another. According to the previous rules, Large-scale beast tides are about to break out. Luo Chuan frowned. And he also, I have never experienced a large-scale animal tide. After all, this beast tide only happens once every few hundred years. And I have never seen it before. TSK. Then don't go. Little girl like you. With your small body. Don't just be trampled by the monster. Nandong Che sat down and looked at Ji Yao and said. Ha ha. Ji Yao gritted her teeth and smiled. If she couldn't beat him, she would have beaten him. Is this beast tide serious? Xia Chiyue was a little curious. She had never heard that there would be a beast tide. It's very serious. I heard Master once said that once a beast tide breaks out, it won't end within a few years. Those monster beasts are desperate to fight for territory. This large beast tide breaks out about once every few hundred years. Every time it requires the joint efforts of the entire Northern Territory. And people must be sent to intercept it. However, Every time the beast tide occurs, the Northern Territory will almost lose hundreds of thousands of monks. Shang Wan Nanxian took over the conversation and answered the doubts of his disciples. However, monks who survive the beast tide usually go farther. Only monks who have experienced life and death will have a smoother path to immortality. That's it. Xia Chiyu nodded, feeling moved. This tide of beasts is a good opportunity to hone yourself. Maybe after several years of accumulation, you will be able to form a pill. Shang Wan Nanxian also saw his apprentice's intention. But he did not object. Anyway, he would definitely go when the time came. So he would just take more care of her. Ji Yu was also listening carefully. In the original book, they did participate in the Beast Tide War in July. This was also an opportunity for her Suzaku to advance. The battle between the monsters lasted for five years before the monsters were beaten back. In addition to the northern region, there are also monks from the western region participating in this war. I don't know if Buddhist cultivators from the western region will participate this time. We should all be sent out during this beast wave. Luo Chuan looked at Ji Yao and said, It is said that every time the beast wave sect will send out many disciples, especially talented monks like Junior Sister. Chapter 637 continues. 
Wanjian sect adopts a policy of more training for the more talented disciples. Geniuses also need to go through hardships to grow. In fact, many times, geniuses always have arrogance. Only through experience can they lose their impetuousness and go further in a down-to-earth manner. Only a genius who grows up is a real genius. I know. Jiyo nodded. She had been home for several months, and it was really time to move on. After she advanced, there was still a lot she needed to hone. For example, although she had already understood the artistic conception of swordsmanship, she was only in the entry-level state. If you use it more, you might be able to achieve a small success soon. Hey, girl, do you really want to go? The beast tide is no joke. Nangong Che also stopped smiling. This girl has just gained a golden elixir. And she will not be happy if she resists the beast tide. I'm definitely going. Ji Yan nodded seriously. Opportunities always come with risks. She might not be able to get the high level monster in her elixir by then. So that Xiao Bai Tuan can advance. Moreover, there are many mountain ranges in the western and northwest regions. So the probability of producing heavenly and earthly spiritual beings is greater. If he encounters one, he can help Xu Xu wake up earlier. Nandong Che curled his lips when he heard this. And as expected, this girl has not changed at all. It's just a pity that he and his eldest brother are going back to the central region. So they can't keep an eye on her. Ancient books! Nandong Yu looked at Xi Yao and said calmly. Xi Yu was stunned, took out the ancient book from the storage ring, and gave it back to Nandong Yu. Come here! Nandong Yu took the ancient book, opened it, and then shouted without raising his head. This call did not name anyone. But Jia felt that he was calling her inexplicably. She stood up and sat down next to Nandong Yu. When she looked down, she saw that what he had turned to was the place where she had studied before. When Nandong Yu saw her sitting over, he stopped talking nonsense and started to explain the formation to her. This ancient book was obtained by him in the secret realm. It contained some formations from ancient times, which are much more powerful than the current formations. No one can protect anyone all the time. She needs to grow through ups and downs. The only thing she can do is to give her more cards. Able to survive well when encountering danger. Jiyo originally thought that Nangong Yu wanted to take the ancient books back, thinking that she had not finished studying them yet, and felt a little regretful. Unexpectedly, he actually wanted to teach himself. And he immediately threw himself into learning excitedly. Xia Chiyue and Luo Chili were a little helpless. During this period, they discovered that Ji Yao especially loved learning. They studied her formations and talismans when they had time, and made rapid progress. Seeing Nandong Yu like this, Luo Chuan frowned with dissatisfaction. But seeing that he was indeed just a teacher's sister, it was hard to say anything. It's just that I have to find opportunities to teach the teacher girl more formations in the future, so that she will learn them all in the future and won't need others to teach her. Nandong Che shook his head aside. Unexpectedly, this girl had won the favor of her elder brother, and he would definitely protect her in the future. Because of his eldest brother's skills, very few people can really gain his approval. He has more sense of responsibility for people and things than true feelings. Cutting off love, and love means cutting off not just love, but all joy, anger, sorrow, and joy. And he cannot feel it. Even though he has no real feelings for himself, he is an older brother's responsibility to his younger brother. Thinking of this, Nandong Che felt a little distressed. His eldest brother should not live such a black and white life. Chapter 638 Take It In this way, several people stayed in Zia's courtyard together. And Xia Chiyue and Luo Chioli also began to ask questions from several seniors to prepare for the beast tide. When Zhao Qianyu and Yi Feng came to Zhiyu's yard, what they saw was that everyone was studying seriously. Zhao Qianyu felt relieved and a little funny for a moment. These children were really boring. 17. As soon as Yifeng entered the courtyard, he came directly to Ji Yao and stared at Nandong Yu defensively. At this time, he didn't care that Nandong Yu had a higher level of cultivation than him. All he thought about was that his 17th son couldn't be abducted by another man. Ji Yao was startled by the sudden appearance of the night wind, and her heartbeat stopped for a moment. Father! Mother! You are here! Ji Yao calmed down before speaking. Ha ha! Yes! Yifeng didn't know what to say clearly because he took a look and found that the two of them were indeed studying the formation. Could it be that I thought wrong? Zhao Qianyu looked on and snickered. Brother Feng had exactly the same mentality as her at that time. But for you, it's impossible for anyone to have any idea of her daughter. 17. Just now your Aunt Lu left with the Nandong family. It is said that your father came home. 
so he left in a bit of a hurry and didn't say H, low to you. She asked me to bring you a message and let you wait another day. Let's go play at Nangong's house. Zhao Qianyu stepped forward and said, easing Yi Feng's embarrassment. Xiao heard her mother calling Nangong Yu and the others a little funny. After this, the relationship between her mother and Senior Lu became better and better. Nangong Yu didn't react at all. But Nangong Che stretched out his hand to support his head and smacked his lips. As expected, his mother was still the same. As soon as she heard the news about his father, she didn't care about anything. He still remembered what his aunt once told him, that his father was a notoriously stubborn person emotionally, and had only known how to practice since he was a child. But his superb talent and good looks attracted the love of countless little sisters. But he didn't care at all. At first, everyone thought that his mother was also in trouble. But in the end, the fire really melted the iceberg of his father. Since childhood, his father has been very strict with the two brothers. He only has eyes for my mother. And he and his eldest brother are just like an accident. You guys have fun. Let's leave first. Xiao Qianyu tugged on Yifeng's sleeves and left the scene quickly. Xi Ye didn't understand why her parents came and went in such a hurry. She could only continue to learn a little more. Senior brother Nangong would definitely leave soon. In a few days, everyone will leave. And Ji Yu will also leave Yejia. Zhao Qianyu prepared a lot of pills for Jiu. When she thought that her daughter would stay on the front line of the beast tide for several years, she felt distressed and could only prepare more things. Here you go. Xia Qiyu also took out a lot of pills and gave them to Ji Yao. But the two of them would see each other again during the beast wave later. So they had no regrets. Thank you, Chi Yua. Jiu accepted it with a smile. It would be good to have a mother and a friend who can make alchemy. Girl, we are leaving now. You have to be careful. Nandong Che knocked on Ji Yao's head. This girl has always been in trouble. Even if he came into contact with her several times, nothing good happened to her. Really, you need to pay more attention to safety. I will. Ji Yao nodded seriously. It was rare to hear Nandong Che say something nice. Take it. When Nandong Yu saw that everyone had finished saying goodbye, he handed over a storage ring. Chapter 639 Water of Heaven and Earth. Jia looked at the ring on her hand and looked at Nandong Yu with some surprise. Nandong Yu just looked at her indifferently, without any emotion in his eyes. Senior Lu just gave it to me before. Jia quickly refused. Senior Lu Huanxue just gave her a storage bracelet before. How could she want something from senior brother Nandong again? I gave it to you. Nandong Yu said calmly, seeing that she wanted to refuse. He directly stopped her movements with his spiritual power. Live well. Nandong Yu glanced at Jia one last time then tore open the space and left. Hey, brother, wait for me. Nandong Che didn't expect Nandong Yu to leave right away and hurriedly tore apart the space to catch up. Shiyo was a little stunned when she looked at the storage ring in her hand and then slowly laughed. We are leaving too. Shangwan Nanxian took out the spirit boat, said goodbye to Jia and Luo Chuan, and then returned to the Qingmu sect with Xia Chiyue and Luo Chioli. Let's go! Luo Chuan smiled and touched his junior sister's head, and took her on the spirit boat towards Wanjin's sect. After getting on the spirit boat, Jiyo had the intention to take a look at Nangong Yu's storage ring. However, as soon as she opened the storage ring, she was startled by what was inside. This storage ring is filled with various shells, densely packed with things. There are all kinds of high-level arrays, high-level talismans, defensive spiritual weapons, and even more than a dozen high-grade talismans. There were several rows of shells inside filled with pill bottles. Jia took a quick glance at them and found that they contained pills for restoring spiritual power, healing wounds, healing souls, and even pills specifically for spirit beasts. All of them were eight. Taste elixirs. There are also many poison elixirs, which can come in handy when encountering monsters in the future. There were several jade boxes placed at the top of the shelf. Jia took them out and opened them one by one. Water of heaven and earth. Jia looked at the first jade box and shouted in surprise. She had seen this. Water of heaven and earth. In the classics, it was said to be something that appeared from the place where heaven and earth were connected. It was a legend. The biggest function of this thing is to build a small world. Although it is not as good as the origin of water, it is still a very heaven-defying spiritual creature. I don't have any space for a small world, so I can't use it. But I can definitely use books. I just don't know if Shushu can be awakened by just relying on the water of heaven and earth. After all, Shushu paid a high price to save himself. Jia felt grateful for Nangong Yu's thoughts in her heart. 
and the favor was greatly owed. But this thing can make Shushu feel better. The temptation is too great for her to refuse. She brought the water of heaven and earth to the sea of consciousness and saw Xilian and Xiao Bai Tuan still sleeping. After the last tribulation, Bai Hu actually chose to sign a master servant contract with herself. And now she is obediently staying in her Dantian to practice. Thinking of the white fox, Ji Yu sighed, since he almost died after overcoming the tribulation. Bai Hu started to practice hard as if he was a different fox. It once said that the next time it encounters danger, it will protect itself. Ji Yu was touched and distressed at the same time. She hoped that her partners could always remain their purest selves and be able to meet the most beautiful things in the world. When in danger, she can protect them from wind and rain and make them happy and worry-free. She came to Shushu and stretched out her hand to touch Shushu gently. She hadn't heard Shushu's voice for a long time. Chapter 640 Chi Sheng Shushu! I will definitely make you wake up! Ji Yao promised seriously, then opened the mouth of the jade bottle and poured the water of heaven and earth towards Shushu. This water of heaven and earth seemed to be no different from ordinary water when it fell down, slowly soaking into the book and drilling into its interior. Ji Yao looked at the book nervously until the water of heaven and earth was completely absorbed but she could not see it regain consciousness. Alas! Ji Yu sighed in disappointment, but suddenly saw that the big words, Attributeless Cultivation Technique, on the book had disappeared. Ji Yu felt happy. This was also the process by which Shushu was awakened. Now it seemed that as long as she found more spiritual creatures from heaven and earth, Shushu would be able to wake up again. Ji Yu touched Shushu happily, as long as it proved that the spiritual creatures of heaven and earth were really useful to Shushu she would feel relieved. She exited the sea of consciousness, and her mood became brighter and brighter, opening the remaining jade box. Jia saw a sword enlightenment stone, a marrow washing fruit, and a body tempering fruit inside. Jia couldn't help but raise the corners of her mouth. Everything in this was too practical for her. The sword enlightenment stone contains the kendo artistic conception comprehended by the kendo seniors, which is very important to sword cultivators. Ancestor Yelly had given one to himself before but it was destroyed when he was going through the tribulation. As for the marrow cleansing fruit, it is used to remove impurities from the body, while the body tempering fruit is very useful in refining the body, both of which she currently needs. Jia put the storage ring back on the jade box cover, then looked at the storage ring and smiled. She didn't expect someone as indifferent as Nandong Yu to be so attentive and give her exactly what she needed. It seems that if I encounter something good in the future, I have to keep it for him. Half a month later, Jia and Luo Chuan finally arrived at Wanjin's sect. They first went to the sect leader Luo Hong to report that they were safe, and then returned to Zhu Peak. When Luo Hong saw the two of them returning safely, the stone in his heart finally fell. In this family war, the Luo family chose to side with the He family. Originally, he should have participated in the war, but because of his status as the sect leader, he was persuaded by the head of the Luo family. This battle already has an advantage, and it won't have much impact with or without him. Although this is indeed the case. Why does this sound inexplicably not quite right? But now that this matter is over, he can rest assured and make arrangements for the beast tide. When Jia and the others returned to Zhu Peak, they found that Jian Song was not in the sect at all, probably to play with the two uncles. Jia and the others could only return to their respective mountain peaks to prepare for the beast tide. But as soon as Jia walked up to Tianjin Peak, she saw Qi Sheng standing outside her house. Jia paused not knowing whether to step forward or not. Sister! Chi Sheng turned around when he heard the footsteps. Shun her! Ji Ye sighed in her heart and walked forward. This time the Chi family had been wiped out. She also specifically asked Chi Sheng and his family, and was relieved after learning that they were not involved. But after all, the Chi family has been destroyed by the Yi family, and Sheng er's grandfather also died in the Yi family, making their relationship a little weird. She didn't know how to deal with this problem. Sister! I'm sorry. Shunger couldn't come to help you. Now Chi Sheng has grown into a handsome young man and has already established his foundation. It's just that his eyes look too tired at this time. And he didn't have the youthful vigor at all. 